there's two trailers. One of them doesn't have Toby and Andrew, and one of them does. Uh, I, yeah, I've heard concerns of whether or not they should. I'm just like, I do not know what the argument is to keep them out of the marketing. I, 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 um, I think it's... I, from a marketing perspective, it makes a lot of sense to show that they're in the film. Um, and the, I guess the thing is, had none of this been leaked, then maybe I would have advocated for not, you know, having them like in the marketing. But everybody knows, you know, like would your just, would your reasoning well. be just to keep the secret? If you have a secret like that, could you imagine how hype it would be if, like, you went into the film and you had no idea, and then you saw Toby um, McGuire and Andrew Garfield Spider Man showing up? That'd be awesome. Like, that'd be that'd be really cool. I um, assume, yeah, awesome but the surprise. level of well, at that point, like, like how much should be kept secret? Uh, I guess the problem is it probably would be hard from a contract's perspective because they'd probably get like top billing. You know, their their names would be uh, because they'd probably get. Like, you know, how how could you keep them uncredited? Like, if they're a big part of well, the film. that, and just the fact that, like, you know, where do we draw the line at keeping secrets? Because, of course, them being in there is, like, 1% of what their involvement is, right? What do you mean, like, um... So us knowing they're say? in there could arguably be the reason we're going to see the film, and the surprises true, will be what yeah. they do and what the story is. Um, I guess it's it's kind of just... I can see the world where none of it got leaked. Um... It's it's very unlikely that that world exists where none of it got leaked, and then you go watch the film and you have no idea. Uh, but I guess the problem is like, how how could you possibly market this film at all without people basically figuring it out? If you if you've got like a Doc Ock, um, and and Green Goblin, it's like wait, if those guys are in, like, yeah, that means like, so yeah, at that point it would be. And yeah, they seem I, to, I guess Doc Ock seems to be the primary like marketing beyond you know peter just himself for the movie it seems to be i like... get the it seems like there's well it seems like there's almost like a list going from you know like in descending order of like doc ock then green goblin then like electro or maybe you know those three definitely yeah but i'm pretty sure there's meant to be more than just those three um i think sandman is like that's yeah no likely. lizard people aren't and talking lizard. about them really yeah, lizard but i'm pretty sure they're in there uh -huh. from what i've heard as kind of, because I've been I've been trying real hard to like avoid a lot of this stuff, but uh, have you been trying? Just, it, you seem to you. <laughs> it seems I, like you were I, looking no, for some of it. I so the thing is, is there's there's stuff that I'm okay with knowing, but like I don't want to know like what's happening in that film, um, and I feel like I've avoided enough of that to where I like if somebody asked me what the plot is, I'm pretty sure I couldn't tell you what it would be i just kind of know who's in it sure but like you have a chance to not inspect um leaked images but you will um yeah i suppose there's that one the the one that came out recently i couldn't i couldn't help myself <laughs> i've seen people see be like definitely fake happened. images but it's like i nah, <laughs> i'm not convinced i i'm not especially the fact that the guy who leaked it apparently got contacted by sony it's like it's probably real which makes <laughs> me think happened. would it be beneficial for sony to be like that's not real or just not say anything just be like yeah that's totally real bud um I guess the thing is, is because he said that they asked him to give up the source, so that right. might have been the reason. It's like, who's leaking this? So why, to... He's not. Why would he do that? <laughs> um, I, I mean, he might if he's worried well, about getting sued. Is it something they can sue him for if it's a picture he was sent? How does that work? Um, well, the problem is that yeah, it was a picture that he was sent, but I mean, like, it's not a film that he owns. Um, so how no, true, of course. So I'm, images, right? I'm yeah. curious. Would it if they were to sue? Does that mean that they would uh, seize his computer to find who sent it? Like, I don't. I don't know that. I don't know that you'd be able to do that. It would just be that, like, oh, well, then you're, well, you're the person who'd be in trouble. I guess my point is just that um, the second it gets online, uh, now everyone has access, whether or not you stop Campia distributing it. Which well, yeah, that's that's kind of. That that's the thing is like you want you want to stop the leak before it happens. And then I wonder if it's just better to delegitimize it by being like, yeah, there's a lot of leaks out. And it's like, have you seen this one? He'd be like, <laughs> yes, uh, there's a lot of leaks mm -hmm. out. And just just pretend as though it's like, oh yes, that one, that's the legitimate one, of course. Until the film mm -hmm. comes out, and then who cares? 
It was funny, yeah, um, you got, you... there's people who, I saw a tweet about it where it was like, oh yes, we will trust the random internet dwellers as opposed to the actors saying they're not in the film. It's like, well yeah, <laughs> like why would the actors I mean, tell the, us they're the in actors... it? But also, the actors keep saying different things. Like, <laughs> they I keep just, going back and forth. It's just funny to me. It's just like, why would the actors lie? It's like, I mean, that's their profession, first of all. <laughs> but, like, that's just well, keeping secrets. I don't know. What, do they think it's as easy as, are you in it? Yes. Ah, you got me. You asked. <laughs> yeah, yeah so because if, if in months from now, they're in an interview with, like, fucking Andrew Garfield, they said, you said you were in it. I'm sure he'd be like, yeah, I did. Yep. Yeah. I did say that. <laughs> like... And just the idea. You think somebody would do that? Just, just go lie. out and talk to the press and tell lies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Don't we yeah. think better of people? I don't know. Um, hello, everybody. We were just talking about hello, Spundo, hi. bro. Um, what, uh, oh, you know what, Rags? This is the first EFAP that, uh, you got this, this thing. You should say some stuff. Oh, yeah. It's, um, hey, everybody. How are you? Hello to everyone. Hi, oh my hi. god, look at, look at that, here. look! Oh my goodness oh my gracious, He's what talking. is that? that. What, it's like what incredible Fox. production value. Look at that. Oh, look at I am. Like oh Fox. my gosh, I'm barrel rolling all over the place. My yeah. goodness god. Goodness gracious. It's He's... really an aileron, though. It's not really a barrel roll. Jumping right out of the screen. That's incredible. That's, that's really, that's really wild. Yeah, so when, when, uh, when we first saw this like in a call, um, I think the immediate thought is, all right, I, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> The um, I've I've been getting some good reactions from people who realize oh who who just go oh shit and they think their eyes aren't working properly. Um, I know Das. <laughs> it happened with him when I was in a call with him. He was like he thought he was going insane for a moment, but yeah. Um, Rigel, uh, Rigel made this for me. He did a really awesome job with it. Um, and in fact, uh, he uh, can I let me put a um a link if anybody wants to go to his. His Twitter. So doop do. I'll copy his Twitter link and. I like how anyone there? listening to this as an audio version will be like, "Oh man, <laughs> like, what, what's so special? What's so amazing? It's just Rags talking. Other than the fact Rags is talking, mm -hmm. what is what, what's so amazing? Oh my goodness! But that's his um, that's his Twitter. He's the one who did this, and it turned out really, really excellent. He did a great job with it. I think it's a cool Definitely. little uh, thing to mix it up with. I like it a lot. And when it matches up perfectly, it's actually creepy. Oh my goodness gracious. I'm a VTuber now. I mean, well, we're, we're getting closer. EFAB in 10 years from now could be fully modeled, animated creatures in the bottom bar, just chilling out. Yeah, Ragsune Miku. We're gonna, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take the world by storm. Oh yeah, and this will be the first EFAB in a while, I imagine, that a lot of people can be listening to this with Rags. Having, them right, having him right next to them. Which Hello. we will look into but i was gonna say we have so many topics today we should that we yes. should probably get started um i know eight minute intro terrifying but i mean trust me we, the, there's a reason the title is called multimedia medley this might be something we do every once in a while where i collect topics over time that are too small for a single efab but if put with a bunch of other things make for a big thing whoa now number one it's gonna be a movie that loads of people will like cover it, cover it to the point of being like, Mola's video on details will be really fun." It's like, guys, I haven't seen it. I have not seen this bill, but I just don't care about it. I, I keep hearing bad things from everybody I trust. I was like, Is that what we're, we're starting off with Eternals, the well, Eternals. That's the idea. Well, well we got right. um, as the title says, Battlefield is gonna be right after, mm. and oh, then. And then I'll keep the rest a mystery. It'll be a fun little adventure for everybody. Let's just say the longest mm. topics are likely the starters. So, right. if you leave now, you'll never know what they are. I mm -hmm. definitely won't be making an Eternals video. I will barely consider watching it when it becomes fully available. I think I might force Rags to watch it with me at least so I can survive, but that's about it. Mm. Um, maybe we'll watch it for the MCU arc that we do in 10 years from now, you know? Either way, yeah. uh, Fringy has seen it. And so it is mm -hmm. now his task to inform myself, Rags, and EFAP chat of what we need to know for going forward in the MCU, because we will be looking into No Way Home, probably extensively. Yeah, of course. But of Eternals course. is one of them movies that's like, you want to check me out? It's like, not really. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. I'm considering this letting Mahler go insane watching it alone. No. I just... <laughs> 
I just don't care. Don't make me make Mattel oh. take your place. Oh. He'll dissolve Ooh. into tears. I didn't tears. know that was an option. Now I feel even less guilty because <laughs> I know there's a different <laughs> sacrificial lamb. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, like that, because I'm trying to think of anything else people would want to know what my plans are with this film. It's just like I just don't have any. Uh, there are no plans. They're just sans plans. And this isn't this even one. a Shang Chi type thing or a black. No, we didn't do it with Black Widow, but we're, we're like, we take the whole leaf, have to go through it piece by piece. I imagine Fringy's gonna be quite expedient with going through the plot. Yeah, I don't, I, I'll be happy to just do it, to, yeah, like, it's not, it's not a film that I have much interest in talking about anymore. All I will say is, I'll try and keep an eye on chat for questions, and I will have questions, and Rags will have questions, but I suppose the floor is yours to, to, to tell us, pretend as though no one has any context for this movie that came out. Okay, so Eternals, the premise of Eternals is that there's a group of about 10 superpowered individuals who came to Earth 7,000 years ago, and they their explicit job is to protect humanity from something called deviants, which are like these weird alien dogs that uh, that run around and weird eat Weird alien dogs who run around <laughs> yeah, and eat people? I, I feel oh, like no. that's the best way to describe you know, them, just weird I'd alien dogs. How do they get dogs. from planet to planet? I, well, that's spaceship? a good question, Rags. <laughs> oh, really? Is so, so honestly, yeah. you just... Free, with your like one sentence, I'm like, I have four questions. I probably shouldn't stop him though. <laughs> yeah. So I guess there's a part um... of me that's like, well, as long as you don't put the alien on a ship, you'll be like fine, right? <laughs> like, oh man. So, no. so uh, well, it, it, there are even more questions you're gonna have. So I'm not sure whether to skip ahead to the full explanation or just continue. Mm -hmm. I, no, we'll continue from. So basically, um, there's this group. And they're interacting with humans, but they're they're not meant to interfere in uh, human conflicts. Um, they're not meant to interfere too much at all. Um, but so they, they do, do interact. Well, so they interact very heavily with the societies that they uh, they live in. Um, heavily like interact us, with them, like giving like, us technology or not telling us yes, what germs are. Yes, um, th uh, giving us technology. Yeah, um, I guess they oh, give them to they give societies and. Of yeah, the so they, they so gave us? one of the characters wanted to give us a steam engine in Babylon. Uh, someone aptly pointed out that's retarded, uh, and then he made a plow. Um, so that's <laughs> one example. But that's wait a it. second. That, so if you if you went to the back, because ancient humans weren't stupid, they just were operating under way less information than we do. Of now. course, yeah. So like, if you went to the Renaissance with a steam engine, they could probably just make those. You know, now that you have Babylon is a little too early. Um, is that, yeah, you but that. still, you'd you'd wonder, like, man, <laughs> oh. if, if you really, really put your mind to it, could you have done it if you had all the plans with the metallurgy be? I, but there but yet? again, they they you said wonder. it was like a little too. And now this is just reminding me. So I should walk through. So there are there's ten beings. So there's Cersei. Her, she can t like manipulate matter, so she can like turn stuff into other things. So like if it's a block, she can turn it into sand. Then there's Icarus, who's basically Superman. He can fly and shoot lasers. He's super strong. Um, these names. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Uh, I'm still, okay, so, I'm still so on the invention and technology thing. Um, yeah, there's that's there's a Fastos. I think his name is. He like manipulates technology. He can make crazy tech just by like moving his hands around. Um, I think it's Kingo who shoots, he's, he shoots, like, lasers out of his hands, like, guns. Um, okay. then there's, there's Slam. a guy called Drug who controls people's minds, so Jeez. that's, that's, yeah. Uh, then there's, um, <laughs> I think it's Makari, really... she, she's the fast one. Wait, Fastos but... isn't the fast one. <laughs> no, fast Makari's fast the fast the... one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and then there's, uh... Athena, that's Angelina Jolie. She like makes weapons out of nothing. Uh, that's and she's like good at fighting. Uh, and then and then you got your boy Chad, who is in the film. Chad, he's Gilgamesh, and he's just really strong. Um, and then there's Earth Ajax. Epic hero. Wait, I thought Gilgamesh was a uh, was a Middle Eastern guy. He was well. So the the epic of Gilgamesh is based on this Gilgamesh, and the, oh. and remember how I told you there's a guy called Icarus. <laughs> so yeah. he it, somehow how do inspired the story Icarus? of Icarus and Daedalus. And now keep that in mind. That's uh, you gotta you gotta remember Icarus flew too close to the sun. <laughs> um, and then there's um. Oh, I forgot one. Uh, there's Sprite. She, like, 
creates uh, a sprite like the beverage. <laughs> yes, exactly okay. like the beverage. Right. Yeah, and she creates she, her sister Fanta. The Fanta, uh, well, the Fanta Aztec Four. Fantos. Do they show no. up? Fantos. <laughs> But maybe maybe he'll be in the sequel. Um, and then uh, there's Ajax, and she's like the leader, and is she it... can heal people. So that Ajax, that's, that's, that's you mean like the, the, just... the industrial no, cleaner? No, no. So is there any <laughs> base power that they all have, such as immortality? Um, that yeah. So well, they're eternal, so they live for forever, seemingly. Um, they've been here and they haven't aged. But um, they can be killed. They can be killed, but they they're all like stronger than a human. Um, okay. Well, Ajax, that, that's like, like Greek hero. Uh, Ajax, A J A K. Oh, I don't know if that's yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's the, now they believe that they came from a planet called Olympia. That's where they think they came from. They don't know where um, they came from. Well, that's well, they, that's where they believe that they don't came know from. They came from. They believe that they came from there. That's what they keep saying. Uh, okay. where from that planet? They have a spaceship but, though, right? The reason why. They do have a spaceship, yeah. The so they don't um, know. They okay. Well, so they they, from, they think right. that's where they're from. The reason why I'm saying they think is because that's not where they're from. But we'll but, get there. Oh well, yeah, I figured. Um, well, but why couldn't they? Um, it can... would be odd to make that qualifier if they really were from there. Why couldn't? Like, no, they... no, no, they're really from there. They just think that. Why? Why couldn't they uh, visit that place? To know? I guess they didn't feel like compelled to because they just always assumed that that was where they were from like they, well, had if they were there and they were from, from there, there sure they, they'd have I, memories I of being there right i think they have memories of being there i think they do but i think they believe that they have a history there um which actually they that's all making false me memories by the mind control guy no so there there is an explanation that's <laughs> It's kind of it's catastrophic in in its full context in terms of like a whole bunch of stuff. But we'll get well, because um, I just want to say, right on its own, this is already really confusing. But on top of the uh, MCU, yes. it's like fucking hell. Well, yeah, because that's the it big makes, thing. Is that yeah? It, it it just humans are shit. You know, <laughs> what like, do you mean? Just because everything we can't even invent our own stuff well so that was what i was gonna say is that th this film has introduced like a, a history to earth that a lot of things have been influenced by these people um that they were at locations that were really important they introduced things that were really important they influenced significantly a lot of our mythology because athena is based on Athena. Um, icarus and daedalus is based on this icarus the epic of gilgamesh is based on this gilgamesh uh, like a whole bunch of these important parts of like human history are influenced by them, and it seems like the implication is if they weren't here, humans would have become extinct because uh, the deviants would have killed them all. Um, so, so you've you've created this like warped history where a lot of Earth's past is like about this group, you know, where there were these really important places, but yet we don't know who they are, and they they don't participate in in society because everything that's happened in the MCU, like up until this point. Nowhere to be found. Like when Ultron tried to blow up Earth, nowhere to be found. Like Loki, uh, Thanos just weren't involved. Um, and then we, like in the present day, um, uh, Jon Snow asks, like, the character, why didn't you help? And she said, we were told not to interfere unless deviants were involved. Like, we, we can't interfere in human conflicts. Now, this gives you some big thing questions, right? Mm. Because if your job is to protect humanity, is to, like, protect them, how can you do nothing if they're facing extinction? Like, is that... Are they cool with that? Are the... So they believe they were sent here by the Celestials, which are, like, these big tall dudes in space are they even an, like... an extra layer of power of different things that we've added to the yeah, sorry, I, now I, where there's so we've added something well celestials have been like in there but not as a focal point except for ego like he's a celestial but but these guys like they're they're like the most powerful agents that we've ever seen in this more the, powerful like, than kang no uh, well no they're not more <laughs> powerful than kang um because so kang, kang made the celestials no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Celestials existed before the universe began. Oh. So you remember so how the we said- Celestials are allowing Kang to write the history of all cause the cosmos? Well, no, they're not, because um, what happens is the TVA, whenever the Eternals do something that d makes the timeline bad, they send a little TVA agent to put his zapper <laughs> against the oh, Celestials. Oh, so they, melt, they melt Sprite and Coke and all those people? 
I well, we got to imagine that they've had to on one or few like a few occasions, like oh my surely, right? <laughs> but I guess we're not supposed to think about that. <laughs> yeah, I guess they couldn't defeat the cloud monster. The pro we get so uh, well, how uh, that's no, we we talked about that. Let's <laughs> say, how did they defeat the cloud monster? Um. Uh, in any case, we jump to, like, so the team is broken up. They break up at the, when, like, uh, now help me, because I keep mispronouncing it. Tenochtitlan Is that what it's called? Aztec Not capital? Oh, uh, well, man, I've been butchering that one, then. No, there it's, when it's, it's a weird, it's a weird Aztec words. Their words one. are, their words are, they're, they're, they're yeah. tough. Um, the, so we, we see them there. Uh, the group decides to split up because they're watching all this bad stuff happen. And it's like, oh no, we, we need to you know, split up. But not before um, the mind control guy stops the siege and leads everybody out of there. Just like takes them all into the wilderness. Um, it's really weird. I don't know why they would do that. Um, it's in terms of a narrative <laughs> decision. But like, in any case, so we're, we're in the modern day. Um, oh, the Deviants, we, we thought we stopped them, but now they're back, and they're, they're, like, trying to kill us. Um, and then, um, like, Icarus shows up to help out main girl Cersei, and then they like, alright, we need to go find Ajax, and then they go find her, and she's dead. And they think that a Deviant killed her. Why um, do the Deviants want to kill everything? That's just what they do. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, they were, that's just what they Oh, do. I guess, yeah, we don't know everything there is ex There is a context, we'll get there. So, yeah, they find out that Ajax is dead. Um, and then this little, like, ball floats out of, like, her neck and then zooms into our main character, um, which apparently means that she is now, like, the new leader of the group. And it gives what? her the ability to... I. So there's, All like, right. a little ball, like a sphere, um that was like goes into the character's neck and then it like shoots out all this crazy magic stuff and then it allows them to directly speak to a guy called Arishim who's like <laughs> this big red celestial. Okay. He's like the big boss. Um This is then, very easy then, to follow. Then, yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's super straightforward and, and clear and easy to understand. In any case, that that doesn't work properly and they're like, oh we we need to go like find everybody so they go on a big old adventure to find all of the all of the characters so they find kingo and he's in bollywood and then they take him and then they go to australia it doesn't look like australia it doesn't seem like it's was shot here um and they they find gilgamesh and Athena, and so there's something with her where like her memories are fucked up like for some reason well, she can't um, remember where she's from there must be well, so it's not just that <laughs> she's there's there's like weird memories splicing in. It's so weird. Like it, it feels like she's got memories that aren't even like hers of her history on Earth. Oh my god! And goodness. she's gone weird and like attacking people. But oh. they'd be working on it. They'd be trying to they'd be trying to fix her up. That's what Gilgamesh is doing. He's trying to help her out. Um, but anyway, so that they're there and they're chilling, and then they need to find the rest of the group. But then Cersei, she finally manages to figure out how to contact the Celestials again. And the movie is about to completely fall apart, like just Again? totally collapse. Again? How many right? times? Well, so this is this is the part where it's like, dude, what have you done? <laughs> like in terms of uh, implications on the world. So, um, this is what we find out. There is a process. Um, the Eternals. The reason why they got sent to Earth is because the Celestials put a little seed. In uh, every in these planets that have intelligent life, they put a seed there, and the Eternals need to protect the intelligent life until there is enough intelligent life that there is enough energy, and then a celestial bursts out of the planet, thereby destroying the planet in the process. Um, so Earth has one of those. There is a celestial in Earth that is waiting to explode out of the planet. Now, you might have some questions like, wait, wouldn't that, like, totally destroy the planet no matter what happens? Because, like, is he in it? Like, if he's in the planet, is that not going to be significantly affecting the planet? Is he not like, melted by the interior of the planet? Um... Well, no, because he's a celestial, so they're, like, the most powerful agents in the universe, except for Kang. <laughs> they're, they're, like, <laughs> and the incredibly TVA. powerful. <laughs> and the, yeah, and the TBA. Um, um, hey, great question. So, is, he absorbs intelligent life to birth? Apparently, so they call it the emergence, and we 
What they're that? incredibly vague as to what actually is happening, but they say, like, the sufficient energy or something of, like, intelligent beings, that's somehow just how it works. There needs to be enough intelligent beings on the planet, and then boom, it's out, and then... Well, um, and then the justification... Well, because yeah. I was gonna ask, like, obviously the process of Earth being destroyed would kill all intelligent life anyway, but is the intelligent life dead by the time it's birthing, because it's absorbed? No, it? because... well, no, because, um, we have to assume that's not the case, because at the end of the film, obviously, there is a celestial birthing out, but they stop it, but all humans are still alive, like, nothing bad happened to Earth. So how's that work, then? Um... I don't fucking know. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Like, I actually- I don't know. I think they just assume that that's enough. Like, I don't understand the mechanics, the physical process that is happening. Is it like intelligence creates an aura? <laughs> and it, it... I, I, I think we have to assume that that's what they think. Um, for okay. some reason. That that's what the film thinks. Um, now, the, the, the logic- Because you'd be like, oh, that's really bad. But the logic of the Celestials is, oh, well- So, now- <laughs> So- the Celestials existed before the universe, so like, before the six- you, you remember? There was nothing. Then BOOM! Six stones hurtling across the Virgin Universe. It's like, well, no, that's not true. The Celestials existed before that. And, okay. the Celestials create stars and planets. They do that. Not gravity. No, oh, oh. Not nebula. Not, not the they bang. do that. Not the- okay. I think we're meant to assume that the Big Bang happens still. Um, but, but they create planets. That's, that's what they do. They make them. All right. Um, now that's, I, you've kind of broken space when you tell me that. Like, the universe works, like it, the, our universe works, you know, it functions. Like, there's, there's explanations for why things happen. But when you just then establish that planets are being created by, like, these massive god deities that move around in space, like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm meant to do with that. How do I how do I understand like the formation of our solar system? D was the moon like placed there by these guys? Did it not crash into Earth during the formation of the solar system? Um, but and the reason why they do that is their logic is we'll see the process that we do of like blowing up planets with intelligent life and creating new um new celestials is that we can then use the energy to basically create new planets and new life and if we don't do that it would be the heat death of the universe that's that's the justification they have um you got any questions my eyes, that? My eyes just i'm just so glazed over i just, typically I... ask questions to fill in gaps but all i've got is gaps really so yeah yeah that's the problem isn't it um uh, but but in any case, so so yeah. uh, Cersei's like, well, wait, that'll kill all the people, and that's concerning to her. It's like, oh, that's concerning to you, huh? When all the people on Earth die, man. I can't think of any events makes you where, wonder, like, huh. yeah, when like a robot sends a giant meteor hurtling towards the Earth. Oh, I thought you were just going to skip to yeah, died, <laughs> <laughs> like half the universe got yeeted. Mm. But yeah, so then um then. Arisham's like, all right, now let me let me pull the blindfold off. So your robots, the the Eternals are robots that were like, they're not from Olympia. That's all bullshit. They're robots, uh, and the, and these these Eternals have been to many planets before, but they've had their memories taken from them. So you remember how I said that Angelina Jolie had memories spliced. So apparently, like she has memories of past lives that she's had. Now, you might have the question of why in the world would you allow that to even be possible? Why would you not just make new robots every single time? Why would you reuse them if that's a possibility? That if they live for long enough, their memories start splicing, and then they can potentially see through the facade that you've told them. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have no answers for you. <laughs> and <laughs> so, <clears throat> so here's another big <clears throat> revelation. The DV. So, um, there was a concern among the Celestials of, man, intelligent life might be threatened by predators. Um, we, we can't have that. So what we're going to do is we're going to- predators? Like, just animal, you know, like, lions animal? and shit. Like, li <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Well, like, lions? Like, intelligent well, you know. life is threatened by lions? Well, so I, I guess maybe, like, in the very, 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 very early stages- well, so yeah, so they say like, well, that's a little concern. Um, instead of just letting that process play out, because that might produce new intelligent life that's even cooler. Um, <laughs> here's what we'll do. 
we'll create uh, super predators, like super apex predator aliens called deviants. What a great name. To... What a great name we're for gonna, them. Yeah, we're going to send them to these planets. We're going to send them to these planets to kill the predators who would prey on the, on the intelligent life. Oh no, they're attacking the intelligent life too. Who could have guessed that that would happen? So, um... The the uh the Celestial should have read one Wikipedia article on a trophic cascade, and they could have avoided all of this. But uh, they didn't have Wikipedia back be... then. Gah. Well, that's that. But they have Celestialpedia, right? Where they just have like all of Nuh -uh. the. But but in any case, yeah, that's um. So that the the Celestial is a they're really stupid. Um, they're they're very very stupid as you as you'll find out even more so later. But in any case, yeah, they created the the the, the deviants. They start evolving. Who could have seen that come? And they start attacking, uh, the 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 prey of the predators that they killed. Who could have seen that coming? Um, and so you're like, well, can't they just like they're they're like Celestials, right? So they can just blow it. They can kill them easily, right? Nope. They got to create their eternal fighter force to then go to these planets to protect them, and somehow the deviants move between planets. <laughs> so that was their plan. Instead of just now, Ooh. keep that in mind. They had no capacity to just like yeet the deviants out of existence, yank them away from the planet. They had no capacity to yank the deviants off of the planet physically and just drag them out into so space. That's not something they can do. I suppose we got to rewind in order to understand every problem here, because I was just like. Celestials, they are created because, like, like originally, first, how did the first Celestial arrive? Mm. Okay, well, we'll put a big question mark know. on that. <laughs> celestials then decided to make more, we need to plant them in planets as seeds, and they need intelligent life, question mark, to, to For some to grow. reason, not just all life. Again, Apparently there is a distinction, <sighs> and this is something that's been talked about, because I've talked about it a bit on my stream. Um... The there was no consideration for like Neanderthals or Homo erectus or any other human species on Earth that I think you could reasonably consider to be intelligent, like by and I guess also like dolphins and chimpanzees and magpies, like they're just not there there are some arbitrary lines separating humans from everybody else. Um and I I I don't know if I want to bring this up yet because you sounds like you got more questions, so we'll just press on. Um well, I, I was just gonna say, like, so, so you're a celestial. We're all celestials. Let's say us three are. We're like, there's our new planet. It's called Earth. We're gonna pop a little seed in there, and then Fringe's like, ah, oh, we got some humans on the way. Better send some deviants to prevent them lions and junk from from hurting them. Can we be like, well, why don't we just wipe them out with our amazing celestial power and just drop random bits? You know what? Why is this even the process? I don't why understand. We, yeah, exactly, exactly. Once you reach that point, why would you do it? If you are this powerful, as powerful as we've seen, you can create planets and stars and stuff, like, and create sent like sentient beings yourselves. Yeah. What are you doing? A deviant, not inter intelligent life. Well, th so that's the part that gets interesting. Later on, we see that a deviant does the big suck on Gilgamesh. It, like, no. sucks out his life force. And then that evolves him into an intelligent bipedal being. He can speak. What are we supposed has, to like, make of that? <laughs> I, well, so I don't know that the film even knows what to make of that. Because he is what I, is something you don't see often in stories. Like, a literal storytelling dead end. Where his story just leads to a dead end. That really has no bearing on the main plot, despite apparently being the main villain for most of it. And then it just ends, and his involvement in the story, like, stops abruptly to where he is no longer relevant, and it doesn't matter what he was doing, and we just move back, our focus back onto what's actually happening. But we'll have to get to that. Um, yeah, I don't know what we're meant to think of that. There's so many things along this process that the Celestials yeah. just are complete fucking morons. That, that's well, so, all I can so gather from this. Well, that's that's exactly, and it's, and the stupidity of them is not even fully been explored. There's still more to come. Um, and so so just for reference, chat. When we talk about like what makes something a one out of ten, usually our criteria is it breaks time and space. Loki broke time. Um. Anyway, um, I get your implication. So, yeah, so well so well so the funny thing is is like I wasn't there when I first watched the film and I wasn't even there like a few days after. Um but man, I don't know. Like <laughs> um in, in any case, um 
something that I forgot to mention was that um, we see a scene earlier in the film where Ajax says, oh, you know, humans, like, this planet's super interesting. There's something special about this place. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, so we, we have that, and so she's found out all of this is happening, and that, um, and that, uh, you know, Earth, Earth is, it, it is impending that Earth is about to get destroyed. Um, so I, now, the Deviants showed up around the same time that Earth was going to be destroyed anyway. That, I have to assume, is just a wild coincidence, because there is no explanation for why both events would be happening at the same time that the Deviants are out running about. The, the claim was that they got released from some ice, that they were frozen in the ice. Okay. Um, so that just happened to line up exactly with when the emergence was going to happen within a week. That's Damn. pretty crazy. Um, yeah, but, but in any case, they need to get the rest of the team together. They go into uh, the Amazon. They find Rook, who's been wi- living in this weird, like, um, weird, like, cults place where he has a bunch of humans under his control. And they live in this little enclave in the forest. Um, and he doesn't really want to help. Um, but while they're there, they get attacked by deviants, uh, that have been tracking them. I guess the deviants can, like, move across, because the deviants would have had to swim across the Atlantic Ocean, because they at, at first attack in, in, uh, the UK, um, and then they get all the way to the Amazon. So I guess they can just swim across the ocean. <laughs> fine, um, fine, one yeah. One of them, one of them can fly, but, yeah, but, and then they get attacked, um, Athena's going all floopy, uh, and so Gilgamesh dies trying to save her. And then he gets, yeah, he gets killed. The deviant sucks out his juice, and then, um, and then for so- he just starts talking about stuff. Hey, and can he I just, I just want to inject gears. there? Would it, would it not be beneficial to have supplied your eternal with the ability to destroy these deviants, even if they get your little little suckers into your back? Feels like a design well, flaw. Why did the, why did the deviants even have the ability to suck out the life force of beings that were created after they were made? They suck all things. Bringy. I it guess it's matter. all things, Seemingly. and they're just compatible with that they're ability. They're compatible with all yeah. of life, even though these are robots, yeah. or biological yeah. robots, which just well, makes you think. Synthetic, mm. Yeah, and they have free will. Just remember, they have free will. They have the capacity to make I, choices. Well, um, <laughs> for some reason, no, but, I'm just uh, thinking yeah. about some other TV show. Uh, but the, the I just I guess I'm interested in the idea that it's like he was defeated. It's like why do your deviant cleanup crew have the capacity to be beaten by deviants? Wouldn't you want to make it so yeah. that they can't be? Why would you make them stronger than that? Um, oh, and also, because I just remembered mentioning Free Will, we haven't been talking about the character, I guess we can reel back to that one later. Oh, but, yes, uh, it's, car- not a Marvel, it's not a Marvel movie discussion until we get into the topic of Free Will. Yeah, um, the characters, like, have relationships with each other, and they have perspectives, and they have um, the the Cersei and Icarus they love each other. They they have a you know Whoa. they have a romantic relationship. So they have the capacity to love each other. They have the capacity to resent people, uh, to be vengeful, um, to to be depressed. They they have all of these things. And you might wonder if that would interfere with like the grand design or anything. But I I don't know. I guess not. There you go. Look at that little love heart. Just making sure chat are following your descriptions here. Yes. Um. But yeah, so they do a funeral for Chad, um, and then they're like, "All right, let's uh, let's let's get everybody back together." They they go back to their ship, which is sitting in I think like Iraq or uh, so- somewhere in the Middle East. Um, they they go to their ship, and Makari's just been sitting in there reading books and stuff. Um, and then they, oh, fuck this part because this part there's like character and plot stuff starts happening. And it's it's a whole hodgepodge. So like. Basically, they start saying, "So, what? What is like our plan here? What? What are we supposed to do to stop the um, the the bad guy? Uh, the, to stop the celestial that's going to pop out of Earth?" Um, and they're tr- they're thinking about their plan, and this is where we get a key piece of information. Um, Icarus visited Ajax earlier that week when she was still alive, oh. and Ajax was like, oh, I, uh, you know what? I like this planet. Um, you know, we, we, had, our, we had our mission, but th- this is the planet where they brought everybody back to life. That's pretty crazy. Oh, look, Cubit, look at him. <laughs> he's, he's, just go- he's just gushing over Chad. Um, yeah, they, they, uh, they basically say like, okay, so 
This planet is super duper special. Humans are awesome. They're the bestest. They're the most unique, interesting, specialist beings in the universe. Which, which is just, I, I love when stories keep doing that. It's not at all annoying when we're talking about a universe filled with like quintillions of planets and and like seemingly trillions upon trillions upon trillions of intelligent beings. Humans are the awesomest, most specialist, coolest guys ever. Um, and then she's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to stop the emergence. And then Icarus is like, and so what, what we find out as well is that Icarus was told he was the only other person who got told about what the actual plan was for them there. So that's a big thing. The Eternals just believe that they're meant to exist to protect humans from the Deviants to no end other than to just ensure their survival, but for no real point other than that. That's what they think they're there for. Um, so only these two know the truth, which is that at some point Earth will be destroyed. Um, and... So yeah, they the he's like, oh, I got to show you something. Hey, look at these deviants that broke out of the ice. All right, I'm pushing you off the cliff now. Uh, and then she gets killed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he he sets it all up to look like she was killed by deviants on her little farm. Um. So, that, so yeah, but for some reason he decided to get the whole team together. Wait, what was and her power again? Te- Healing. Oh, rip. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, what's so, that power yeah. gonna do when everyone's killing you? <laughs> like, oh yeah. man. Um, but but uh, so yeah. So for some reason, Icarus got the whole team together because he showed up at first in London to meet uh Cersei, and they got the whole group together. Why? Why would you do that? Um, especially once you start noticing that they're talking about defecting and basically betraying the mission that you believe to be fundamental to your existence. Um. And so what they start talking about is that that uh oh yeah and they got they got a faster I forgot about him as well so they they go pick him up he's got a little family that he's living with he uh turned his back on humans after Hiroshima he's basically like humans <laughs> fuck him um <laughs> which is but then, so but then dumb he, he, said, he said well it's, it's so reductive and simplistic but yeah like he settles down starts a family. But then he decides to help because he's got like his little son and he wants to, you know, you got to protect the earth so that he has a chance to live. It's like, yeah, what? Now, this kid looks like he's, you know, like seven or eight years old. So that means that he could have been snapped. So I guess you just didn't care. I'm sure they don't talk about it. I don't. Yeah. But uh, but in any case, um, so basically what he says is, oh, so we have now this is where we get into the crazy science fiction MacGuffin stuff. We have, the reason why we don't age is because, I don't know, we have, like, infinite cosmic energy going through us, but we can somehow hack that and channel all of our energy, excess energy, into, like, one person and make them super-duper powered so that they can basically do a super-crazy thing with their power, um, and they want to do it with the guy Druig, they want to make him go to sleep they they want to have him mind control them to go to sleep so that they can think more about what their real plan is um and then icarus is like nah all right fuck it this is enough fuck you um and then he destroys the tech that they're going to use and then he hurts a couple of them and he's like yeah no we're not we're not doing this um and if you try i'm just going to kill all of you uh and then he leaves uh and sprite leaves with him because she's like I, 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 I'm going to help you, all right? <laughs> we're going to Man, that seems that. That's, pretty uh, significant for Sprite's character to side with the... Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure that'll yeah, be really interesting as this goes on. Yeah. As, a, as an interesting choice? Yeah, maybe. Um. So so anyway, they, they leave, and then Kingo is also like, well, I agree with Icarus, but I'm not going to hurt you, so I'm just going to go home. Um, <laughs> he leaves. Uh, so then they're sitting there like, oh, no. There's nothing we can do, you know, we can't do anything um, to, to stop him. Wait, Cersei, that little gold ball that you got from Ajax, we can use that to channel an infinite cosmic energy. Oh. Wow. And we, we, can, we can do this. We can reverse engineer this tech to do something insane that we've never even considered a possibility before, this Unimind thing, in a day. Wow. Crazy. Uh, so what is that. the Unimind? The Unimind is his name for channeling all their cosmic energy into one person so that they've got super duper powers. Okay. Um, and they do that with the crazy little ball thing. Um, 
and so so yeah they do that and then um they they get makari to go oh you're fast run around the whole world to find out where this guy's popping out now of course that's a weird thing where is he gonna pop out like is he gonna pop out his head his head like what, what? yeah I... <laughs> yeah wouldn't he just pop also out if the she whole thing? if she finds him it's too late right well, so they, they somehow have a tech piece of tech that can identify where he's going to pop out. So that's what they used to find him. Uh, so they find him before he's popping out. Okay. Um, and it's in, like, the Indian Ocean somewhere. Uh, and then they, they go over there. Um, Icarus is sitting there like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm glad you're here, Sprite. We're just going to sit here and wait for the world to end. Oh, no, that blasted... They found us, and then he immediately destroys the spaceship that they're flying in, because he is that strong. He is the strongest by far. Like, now, now remember how we talked about how they're all robots that were created? Why can't they all fly and shoot lasers out of their eyes? Why aren't they all as strong as him? Why can't they all manipulate matter? Why can't they all go super fast? Why can't they all heal themselves? Why do they each have a very specific power set? Why yeah, can't they seems like do everything? If ever they get they get split up, they can be easily taken down. So, well, yeah, except for Icarus, except for Icarus, the strongest, and and Gilgamesh, who is like the physically the strongest, but who was literally one of the ones anyway. that was taken down. Yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, hmm. Um. So yeah, it's like, um. <laughs> I I don't. He's so strong. He's just way stronger than everybody else. Uh, and then, yeah, he destroys the ship. Uh, and then, but but then they get out and they're like, "All right, let's let's put him to sleep, Druig." Um, and then Icarus is like, "No, you're not doing that." And then he like shoots him into the ground and like, and then they they have a big old fight. They start fighting each other. Um, but their plan is shot because Druig seems to be out of the fight. Um. So they're just fighting him, and then the the deviant, the evil deviant, just shows up. He just appears out oh, of hi. nowhere and just starts fighting them for some reason. I don't even know what his agenda is anymore. Like I don't know why he's here. I don't know what he wants or what he's doing. Um, and then so the the two fights start happening because like Thena wants to get revenge on him, and they have a little one on one fight, and then she beats him. Uh, and then that's the end of his plot. Uh, and that's it. He's just there, and then he dies. Um, and they're doing their little fight outside, um, and then they, they tie down, uh, Icarus and Cersei has to run up and, like, she, she's got to try and turn the Celestial into, like, stone and try and kill him. Um, she's got to touch then, him to do that, though, right? Yes. So she's running up this little mountain to try and get to if, where he's popping out. If she's touching him, that means it's too late. Because he's already popped out of the crest of the Earth, you're right. So rip uh, Earth, I guess. Yeah. But no, not Rip Earth, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, then there's a little illusion of um of like Ajax, like, don't do it. And then it's like, oh, oh, that's an illusion. Oh no, you stabbed me in the back while I was commenting on the fact that it was an illusion. And then this is the part where Sprite's like, I don't like, you know, I'm I'm like I'm like a 12-year-old kid, except no, I'm not. I'm 7,000 years old, and that means that I don't have the capacity to really lead a full adult life like everybody else. So I'm going to let Earth get destroyed because I want another chance at life. <laughs> like wow, a what a motivation. Life. And she says this all explicitly, basically. She says all this. It's like, thanks, film. You, you you did set it up a bit, but then you just told me. So like, it didn't even matter if I was paying attention or not. And then uh, she just gets punched in the back of the head by Drug, and it's like, ah, all right. Now you, you got you to gotta turn this. You got to kill this guy, all right? This celestial. Um, and then... I think it was at this point that it was like Icarus was like, no, this oh, I'm sad. I'm sad. I, I don't want I don't want to hurt you, Cersei. I'm sorry. And then they all do the Unibide thing and then they kill the Celestial by turning him into like stone. Um and you can see his little head popping out of the ocean and his hand. Um <laughs> so he's gotten a decent way out. Um, but he's dead. Um, okay. Yeah. So he dies and then <laughs> Now remember, Icarus flew too close to the sun. Uh, Icarus just, for some reason, he just shoots up into space and flies into the sun. He flies into it and kills himself. So, uh... <laughs> like, now that was baffling. <laughs> so, Where do we even start with that? So, like, so why, first of all? I... I think he's like, oh, I'm sad. I betrayed you, and, and you know, I thought Arisham's goal was good. I betrayed him too. I got, I got to kill myself. You know, I got to get out of here. <laughs> like, I can't deal with it anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know why he did it. 
uh, and then I guess, so why is it that it feels to me like a hack writer is like, isn't it clever that Icarus flew into the sun, which is totally not the story of Icarus, and well, how then would the happened? story of Icarus even have happened? And yeah, I was going to say, how would they know it? Mm. Why would it be based on this Icarus? Did he fly too just... close? He doesn't have wings. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> so a celestial can be in the center of a planet, but I guess yeah. Icarus can't. He's I, I, see, the, the sun is powerful enough to wipe out an eternal, I guess. I guess, okay. or yeah, maybe not. Okay. We, I okay. think, we're meant to assume that he's dead. But also, right. again, you have big questions of if there is a celestial popping out at Earth. Earth's done. The tectonics, like, dude, it's over. Like. There's no, oh, um, there's no save it How here. big is this celestial? Well, so in the demonstration that we get shown in the little hologram thing, it's basically as tall as Earth from like top to bottom. Oh you know? yeah, we're dead. <laughs> yeah, it's way too but much. The problem is that its its size is not accurately represented at the end of the film. He doesn't because we we also see Arisham at the end of the film, and he's like much bigger than Earth. Um, he's like much, much bigger than Earth. You could probably stack three or four Earths on top of each other, and then that would be as big as him, maybe even more. Um, but yeah, they they kill him, and then Sprite's like, "Oh, I'm sad." And then Cersei's like, "Oh, somehow we have the en we can turn you into a human. We j we can just do that. We have enough energy left over to do that." Uh, and so that's what she gets. So she betrays them and nearly lets Earth get destroyed, but she was sad, so she gets to have exactly what she wants, which is a chance at a real life. I was gonna say, these characters um, sound botched as fuck, because what did you say about Kingo? What was what was his deal? He he was like, I agree with Icarus, but I'm not gonna hurt you to, like, protect my beliefs, so I'm just gonna leave. And it's like, well, you're still essentially abetting their demise. Yeah. So, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you could say that. Like, meaningfully. And then, yeah, just... Man, I'm assuming they do a great job of discussing all of the ethical implications of everything we've been over. <coughs> no, they... We just skip ahead to a couple of weeks later, and they're just... Making it... They're, they're going... So that Hiroshima is something that defined a person's perspective on humanity when nothing... There's no events when before that. When he was that. alive for 7,000 years, he would have seen a lot of bad things happen before that. Oh, yeah, and not to mention after that, and not to mention not that event... Does he context for Hiroshima? Well, I was gonna say, that event is not... It's just not that simple. Let's just put it that it's way. It's not, it's not that simple. If, I mean, if anything, Tenno Tit, like, for that place, that should have been more of a thing where it's like, oh, screw these guys, like, they're Tenno just here Tit to destroy place. this... Yeah, I, I can't. I, I, as tech so, like, capital, because that was a lot con? more. Yeah, because that, that was basically destroying an entire society just to extract as much value out of that land as possible. Like that's that was all that was for. Um, but I guess he was indifferent to that. <laughs> like, I don't know. And all um, the other and all the other I, ho the Mongol conquest. Um, what about the, what about I, the Holocaust? Just any number of bad things that happen throughout human history that they just never they never did anything about <laughs> everyone in chat is like giving us reasoning for why this is all horrible and i'm just like we know it's so much to go yeah. over uh in terms well, of yeah, physics exactly well yeah it just in terms <laughs> of all of that um uh but yeah so we, we skip ahead they're just chilling now the question you might have is wait the celestials aren't going to be happy that you did this and they're going to know right Surely they know, um, but they're chilling as if nothing's wrong. And then all of a sudden, Arisham just shows up. He like freezes Cersei and yanks her off the planet. And then we find out who's also yanked uh, like Kingo and Fastos off the planet too. Now your immediate thing is, oh, so they can do that to the Deviants, and they just didn't. Like they didn't build in a back door to just make them be able to do that. <laughs> but I guess they didn't. Um, so then they that, does they, that not uh, destroy they... everything that's been talked about so far? Well, I mean, like, you think it would. Not yeah. to mention everything else. <laughs> just the idea that, like, right at the end, Arishim is just like, all right, I need to have a chat with my, my turtles. It's like, you didn't... Yeah. You, you, what? You could just pluck us off the... Yeah. What? But that just... Zoom that, here and then <laughs> pluck us off the planet. And also, I will say, I would imagine that it would probably wreak havoc on Earth to have a giant celestial standing next to it. Do they care? You know? W what I mean is wreak havoc in a lot of ways. So first of all, just... Sheer physics, if you've got something that big next to Earth all of a sudden, like, surely that's going to cause some problems with our orbit, <laughs> you know? Like, I it's imagine really so, yeah. big. Um, uh, and it's right next to Earth. You said like, that they weren't allowed to get right into human-human conflicts. Was that because they want to respect the natural progression of things, or something else? Yes. 
yes, but then it makes you wonder, wouldn't fully respecting the natural progression mean to, like, never do anything ever to interfere, ever? No deviance, no eternals, nothing? Just let the process play out? Prime directive. Yeah, basically. But no, that's not what happens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so that he he's like, all right, so I'm not going to kill you, and I'm not going to destroy this planet. Um, I'm going to think about it. Uh, see ya. And then, and then he yanks them and takes them through, like, a portal, and then they leave. And then we got uh, Jon Snow, who was barely in this film. He's Dane Whitman, Black Knight, I think. And he's just like, oh, no. And that's the end of the film. Um, <laughs> and that's it. Sequel, sequel set up. Going to be honest um, with you, you're not get... tempting me to so, see it. So yeah. what you're saying is this is like a 9 out of 10? I... <laughs> that, that... Man, like that... When I first watched the film... Um, I, I was really, I was kind of struggling because I'm like, dude, there's something wrong here. But like, I feel like I got bombarded with so much information all at once because this film is like a two and a half hour exposition dump. That's the other thing. So That's much so exposition. Long. It's yeah, it's it's the I believe it's the longest movie outside of Endgame and Infinity War. Um, and movie so Rob yeah, gave I, it an eight out of ten. Apparently, man. Oof. Jesus Christ! Yeah, so, now, granted, I haven't I seen it, but what uh, based on what I've heard, because I I was quiet for most of that because my brain was just like catching just, up. It's hard to keep up. It really yeah. is. I'm just trying it's to hard. soak it's in hard. all of this. I just I think my brain just decided, listen, just stop asking questions. We'll get done faster. We'll get done. Yeah, and and this is so. I guess um, like I said, when I first watched it, I was I was like, it was kind of a haze. I remember when I got back, I talked to Muller and Az about it briefly, because as I was thinking about it in the car, I was like, wait, that's, wait, no, 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 wait, that doesn't, hold on, what, no, that doesn't work either. Uh, and, and then the more you think about it, like, this is very much a film where, like, as soon as you start really thinking about the core plot beats, it just, like, deteriorates, it completely falls apart. It's, it's just, you've, this, this story in this universe is, like, really difficult to do well. In, in, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it, honestly, to like try and do this story, um, because you know, especially considering the the universe that it's slotting into with all this history, um, and so that. So like, you're left in a situation where we talk about all that. It's like, so plot is a, a disaster. Like it's 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 pretty catastrophic. Um, not about and as the bad world as the building. building yeah. The not as bad as the world building. The world building is like, it's dire. It's 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 dire. And so now you're left with two points. It's like, so we got character and theme. Um, this film has entirely too many characters to tell this to to give them enough time to really flesh them out. Um, ten characters. I can't even ten. remember. Like, it's just like I I just I just think of abstract groups of people. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to because when when it comes to like latching onto things. Basically, this is all you need. Cersei, she's a real good person. She loves people. She just loves people. She's nice and kind, and she's great. Um, and and she wants to help people. That's that's her. And she's the main character. And her arc is, I don't know if I can be the leader. Yes, she can. Oh. Okay, I'll lead. Um, that's all that's right hers. then. Wow. Well. Uh, and so so nice. uh, Icarus is like, I uh, I lo I love you, Cersei, but I love Arish more, <laughs> and I got I got to do what he says. All right. This mission is so important that he's like kind of stoic, and that's that's him. Um, and then and then Ajax is another one where she's like, I, I people are real cool, and and this group, and I love you. You're like my family, but we got to split up. But I I love humans. We got to come back together to save them. Now I'm dead. Um, <laughs> like, and man, and, and as I sit here, I'm like, so so everybody else, um, because I think, fuck. Um, so, like, there's meant to be a plot where Thena has some sort of, like, memory issues, and she's struggling to deal with that, but outside of that, she just seems to really like fighting. She's kind of like Krombopulous Michael. She, she just really likes killing things and fighting. Uh -huh. Um, and that, that's her, and then she gets over that, and, and, and Gilgamesh is just like, ah, you know, I'm a little sweetheart, I'm, I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna help you out. Uh, even though I might get killed trying to save you, because when you freak out, you nearly in in uh in the Aztec capital, she nearly killed a few of the Eternals with the fight that they got into, um, because of her weird memory flukes. Um, but I'm I'm still gonna help you anyway, because he's he's a nice guy. Um, and then Fastos was like, oh, I hate humans. They don't deserve my technology. But I've made a family here, and I got to protect my family. And that's him. 
Um, and then Sprite's like, I'm resentful because I don't get to have a life, but, and that's it. <laughs> um, Drug's like, humans, they don't deserve free will because they use it to kill each other, so I'm going to take it from a small group of them <laughs> and live in the forest. <laughs> um, I don't know what Kingo's deal is, I f it, which is funny because he's in the film, like, the most out of the non-major, like, main two, basically. Um, he's just like, I like acting in Bollywood movies and I'm kind of a jokester and a goofster. Um, I don't know about Makar either. She's like barely a character. She's just there like, I'm, I'm just chilling. I run real fast. I'm like Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, is that everybody? <laughs> I, 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 sure, why not? <laughs> I think, so, so yeah, pretty flat. Pretty, pretty goddamn flat uh, as as an overall cast of characters, and this is putting all to one side. Like, are some of these guys assassinated in their own movie based on the decisions <laughs> they made? You could you could make that argument. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, because just the decisions you make in the context of you've been alive for seven thousand years. Um, this drawing, by the way, does help explain, like, <laughs> basically. <laughs> This, the entire dynamics of this group. <laughs> um, and that's that's it. That's that's uh, that's Eternals. That's um, Eternals. Very bad. <sighs> um. So so, it's so I really guess bad. what made them turn on the Celestials? What Earth was, was going to get destroyed. And that's bad to them compared to other that's planets bad because. Enough. Well, so so that's that's like so w when we talk about moral implications, if you are presented with, let's assume, because the film doesn't really address this, let's assume that the consequences for intervening in in a conflict will mean the Earth gets destroyed by the um, by the Celestials, even though we have no reason to assume that based on everything in the film. If you are presented with the trade of Earth against all life in the universe, like that's an easy trade. Um, and there has like, what does that say about you that you're unwilling to make that trade because you don't want to get involved? And that's assuming that that's the consequence, because we're never told that that's what would happen. They just they're not supposed to. And again, is it a human conflict? If isn't that because people talk about what what's Thanos's role? Like, what is he? Because I'm pretty, I don't know, like, w surely he would constitute, if Ultron wasn't enough, if Loki wasn't enough, come on. Well, I've heard now, universe. I've heard now that, um, I don't know, this is not from the film, clearly, but is it that Thanos is, was doing his plan in regards to the Celestials? And I, I don't know. Meaning, he wanted to wipe out half of life everywhere to slow down how quickly Celestials would be born and thus well, destroy so planets. Well, the funny thing is, is that something that was mentioned was that when half of humanity got wiped out, it's like, oh, that delayed the emergence. It's like, yeah, that thing that you're meant to make happen. Like, man. <laughs> so, I guess you don't care about that. Uh, are, yeah. are we meant to assume that Thanos knows about the Celestials and that his... It, dude, if his plan wipes out half the Celestials, why wouldn't the Celestials contact every Eternal that they have? Well, here's a better question. Like, get if, to Earth. if people are assuming Thanos' plan was to wipe out half of life to prevent the emergences happening on different planets, why not just use the snap to wipe out Celestials? Yeah, if that's... Yeah. And, to be fair, I think that's bullshit retconning, because Thanos didn't mention so anything I. about that whatsoever. He did not. No fucking way, he fails to mention to all the people trying to stop and kill him that, hey guys, I'm trying to save you, by the way, in this manner. Like, literally, there are people who are going to destroy your planet, I'm trying to stop them. Yeah. So that sounds like bullshit. To be fair, this entire movie sounds like bullshit. Yep. I think that's, that's about right. So you're saying you wouldn't recommend myself and Rags go see it? I mean, the problem is that it's probably... that The Celestials are like quite important in the Marvel Universe, aren't they? So <laughs> Yes, <laughs> from what you've said. Yeah. Like, it, it, that's kind of the thing, is, like, maybe, maybe it's something that should be watched because it's, like, it's important in terms of its implications on the universe. 
Um, oh, post credit scenes, which I forgot. So the first one is um, Harry Styles is Thanos' brother, and he just teleports onto the ship with Fina and Makara and Drug, who've gone off into space. They're like, oh, we haven't heard from uh, the guys on Earth. Oh, Arisham. Oh, yeah, if you guys didn't think of that. All right. And then he just teleports on the ship. And he's like, I'm going to help you out. And then the second one is that um, Dane is like, he opens up like a box with a sword in it. And then I think it's um fucking Blade says something to him. I didn't watch that one. I uh, I left. <laughs> um, but that's that's what I've heard that that one is. Oh. Um, yeah. So that's 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 the film. So yeah, you say like worth seeing to keep track of stuff. I just, that's the whole reason you just spoke for the last hour. <laughs> Can you <laughs> keep track of stuff? At what point does that just? Like well, well, yeah, we're we're at, you know, we're at that critical mass point where it's like, dude, it's I gotta just start ignoring big more. chunks of this universe. Absolutely, we we, we said this about Loki, and it's consistently a thing. Loki just kept coming up while we talk about Eternals. It's like that's its legacy. It just keeps getting in the way of everything. Yeah, and so it just starts getting ignored. Um, yeah, it's really Indeed. bad. Um, I wow, yeah. that sounds. That sounds terrible. My brain is going into convulsions right now. I'm I having think... many aneurysm hotspots <laughs> in my synapses, just trying to attempt to make sense of everything that they've done. I'm I'm honestly pretty exhausted by trying to because a lot of it was <laughs> yeah. me trying to like rack my brain to just try and figure it all out. But um, when I first watched the film, I'm like, so that that's definitely no higher than a three. Now I'm at like a two, possibly leaning towards a one. Um, just because of the the stuff to do with the Celestials and everything to do with that. Um, time, what is, like, is there anything you'd praise? Of... No, um, <laughs> like some of the sh some of the shots are nice. Um, uh, the music okay. is is good at, po at points. Um, I guess everybody's trying. Like the acting, like everybody's trying. Um, I, I guess the problem is the problem is I don't know that any character fully escapes like the implications of a lot of just their conduct throughout all of except for maybe Icarus but then he decides to like not do that right at the end and then kill himself and I'm not sure I you know I'm not sure what I think about that um because like if the uh, yeah I, I, I don't know I, I think that's the problem is I sit here and it's like I I don't I don't know what uh what I would talk about that i think is really good because i just don't feel like the character dynamics I, I don't feel like there's much that you can pull from that and that's all you can pull from because plot world building is just like and i guess the theme is the theme is like hey you should protect things you love it's like man all right <laughs> that's do you disagree man, fringy do you yeah. disagree but the film disagrees because the <laughs> Eternals didn't do that for like thousands of um, years. Well, I was going to say the idea that the, the, the undoing the Thanos snap is what earned humanity the right to be protected is like fuck yeah. you. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's all it, it, it takes. Cause, how did the cause, if that's like how did the other races earn protection? Shit. Well, man. here's <laughs> an interesting do? question though. I guess Xandar doesn't have a celestial scene in it, or any number of hyper advanced civilizations out in the universe who surely they've done really impressive things that humans haven't done by virtue of the fact that they can travel through space freely. They've been around way longer. And because it, it simultaneously says humans are really special. Human Earth is a really special place where everything's happening. And also yeah. humans are shit. Well, yeah, it, it's funny, isn't it? Humans are awesome, but also they suck. But they're pretty great, aren't they? It's like, yeah. It's mostly right. just that they're conveniently around I think, well i like think Earth that's is the problem where everything needs to happen i just think this film is pretty vacuous in terms of its commentary on humanity like i, I don't know that it tells me anything meaningful about the way that our societies have uh because it's really the problem is it's like when you're just there like oh yeah all of these bad things that happen it's like well there is a broader context surrounding all of this that like is worth examining when we talk about the strength the merits and the faults of humanity and human societies and things like that. But we don't really do that, despite this film jumping back and forth between time all the time. We only get, ever get like, oh, isn't uh, look, Mesopotamia. Oh, Babylon. You've heard of Babylon, right? Oh, look at these flashpoints. But like, we don't really dig in to anything about commenting on the way that humans operate and what our merits and faults are. 
and what we should do to change that. Or whether the Eternals ever proposed like systems of government or, you know, ever tried to interfere in that way to try and lead us. Like, couldn't that be a story where they did interfere and it actually made things worse? Like, hmm. So is it our intelligence or their love for us that made them decide to save us? And why do uh, they love us? Basically, Ajax, like, yeah, they suck, but also I've seen them, they like, they love and then they create stuff. That's really cool. I, I like them. Um, and it's funny because she has memories of past planets. So she's been to many planets where she was indifferent, I guess, to their demise. Yeah. But humans. Humans are special. Or huh? just that special. Even though the yeah, MC was shown that is not the fucking case whatsoever. We're, yeah, we're not special. I mean, Xandar is basically Earth, but better. <laughs> like, this is more advanced. Yeah, I mean, Xandar is great. I'm very curious about. Xandar is really Yeah, because yeah. you've got to be careful. You don't want to make the point that humans are capable of love as a species, implying that the others aren't. You're like, oof, we got a lot I, of characters you're I just the murdering. Is, I think the problem is that they don't think that's what they've done, but that's kind of the implication. If, if, if this planet is special, but all the other ones, whatever. Because she says, maybe this time. And she says that this planet and the people on it changed me. It's like, oh, so it is just Earth is super, also, super special. Also, design yeah. flaw, again. Well, yeah, why, why would you make it have, so that they have the again, capacity to betray you? The, why do they have the capacity to betray you? Why do they have the capacity to make any decisions that defy your instructions in terms of what you want them to do? And to give them the capacity to create a, tech, a piece of technology that can kill you. It, it's, there should be like a... It's like... You, the three of us have to defend a hallway from aliens coming in. We set turrets, and then like give the turret free will. It's like what? Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> the turret would turn around. Maybe the aliens <laughs> are right. Well, yeah, like oh no, no. That's the big thing. Why give them personalities? Because you you had to like they've got personalities. They've got wants and they've got uh they've got desires and fears. Why would you ever give them these things? Why would you not just make them basically automatons that just kill deviants and then leave? Just have them patrolling the planet all the time, killing them, not interacting with society. Like, you should just have them as drones, like the Iron Legion, just going around killing deviants. Why would you give them free will so that they have the capacity to betray you? That's, I don't know why you'd ever do that. Uh, except if you want this plot to happen. Or well, there's a greater context that we're still unaware of that we'll find out about in Eternals 2. Um... Sure, but I mean, I don't, I don't see how there's any greater context that can explain away all this. It was Agatha all along? What about that? Yeah, maybe she was mind controlling the, uh, the Celestials. She's messing with them. Um, and we'll find out all about that in her show, Agatha. Yeah. <laughs> Eternals. Um, uh, that, that yeah. ladies and gentlemen, is EFAP's in encouraging coverage of Eternals. Yeah, so that's that's yeah. something I don't want to talk about anymore. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised if we do a full EFAP for Hawkeye, the show. That'll still depend on what's in Probably. it. Much like the other three shows, where it'll... It, I'd like to remind everybody, we did not intend to cover WandaVision. We did not intend to cover Falcon the Winter Soldier. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure... Uh, yeah, I think Loki... Oh, after episode... Wait, no. Ep we watched episode one and we immediately did the stream. <laughs> was, Sorry, Loki was the one that pissed us off immensely straight yeah. away. The other two took some time. I, we think, like, uh, I think Falcon and Winter Soldier was episode four where it's like, ah. Wait, yeah, it went from being just bad to like <laughs> offensively bad. Yeah, we gotta talk about this. Um, um, I imagine maybe Hawkeye because like Hawkeye is a character that I'm mildly invested in. So it's like, oh, be careful guys. You'll have to see how they destroy him. Uh, be interesting. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> um, again, we, we just don't have the time to settle between topics. We'll, I guess we're just gonna have to jump to the next one, other than saying, I'm guessing you'd say avoid Eternals. Uh, um, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> as for keeping up to date with the MCU, it's just, again, that's it. You got your update. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. You got it. You'll be fine. And hopefully, uh, but, dude, Hawkeye's out and, like, two weeks <laughs> yeah but it's not finished no. for what like a month and two weeks uh well i guess it's not finished until christmas right so mm -hmm. plenty of time plenty of time yay good oh but yeah yeah well, we got spider-man which that's that's the one we're, we're, we're all keeping our eye on that we shall be dude everyone will talk about it there will be a million Everybody. terrible takes and one good take i'm not gonna say who it's from okay I'm not saying who it's from. I'm just saying there's gonna be one good mm -hmm. take. Um, so, 
I don't know how to segue this. Rags, do you want to try? Well, everyone, as many of you know, I, 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 I try not, I'll try not to get too long into this, but I guess it's more of a PSA than anything. But uh, someone gifted me with a gold edition of Battlefield 2042, and that released in the wee hours of November the 12th. And I've played it, and I've got about... I think I, I have about, let me double check. I think I have da, 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 11 hours that I've put into it. And I'm done. Oh, Battlefield no. 2042 is shit. Oh. I have, no, I have very, very, very little in the way of good news to the fact that probably won't come out. Um, Battlefield 2042 began its lifespan as... A, I, I started it, and I'm like, this is pretty... Eh. And the more I play it, it's bad. It's actually bad, guys. Um, like, I am seriously considering starting to play Battlefield 5. Because I've seen a lot of the comparisons. Uh, but, but, but yeah, I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 1 lately. Um, been, you know, really doing that a whole bunch. And Battlefield 2042 is bad. Um... I'll run down a few things that might be um, that that might be of note to a lot of people. Uh, Battlefield 2042. There is no scoreboard. Uh, Why? You cannot, what do you mean? There's no scoreboard. I mean, there is not a scoreboard. Like you can't just press a button to see what your score is and what other people's score is. Oh, correct. Yes, that's because there's no scoring what? system or points. I. Why? So these things. So. There's no, I, I, I know there, there isn't a scoreboard. This is often shocking to many people, um, but it's true. There is not a scoreboard. You cannot press tab or whatever the button is on consoles. You cannot press your scoreboard button and see two big lists on the left and right of all of the people on the two teams with okay. their name, kills, deaths, score, ping. That doesn't exist. Um, and you can't really see it for yourself either. You can see your... You can see some personal stats, um, your kills, your deaths, your revives. Um, I would hope so, uh, but is that? But I don't but understand that, why that, you would ever not let people see the total cumulative score of the team and all that. Yeah, like whatever. So that means that ultimately, if there's someone hacking or cheating, you won't be able to tell by the scoreboard. You cannot check no. what your ping is or what someone else's ping is uh, that, if they kill you is. mysteriously. Um, you can't tell if you're doing extremely well or you're doing extremely poorly relative to the rest of either team. Um, yeah. You can't, but also part of this is because uh, there's no scoring system or points in this game. You don't, you don't get points. You get experience at the end of the map, uh, okay. at the end of the game, but you don't, you, you don't get points. There's no points to put up on a scoreboard because there's no scoring system. Um, that, so you, it's, if I... The days I of don't. saying, oh, I only had the days of saying, oh, I only had three kills, but I have 5,000 points because I healed and because gave ammo and repaired and, and was helping it. Those days are gone. Those don't, that doesn't exist anymore. That's not Holy a, it's not a shit. thing. Uh, there are no stats page for your soldier, so you can't check your account stats. Uh, what? Like Battlefield 1, it'll say your top vehicle, your top weapon, uh, your top this, your accuracy, things of that nature. You're not going to have that anymore. Back when battle log was a thing that people used, um, yeah, it was extensive with its statistics, win loss rates, um, all kinds of stuff, a huge count of different medals and things that uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Um, however, do, do, there, why why do you think that is? Uh, well, we'll 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 get to the end okay. and we'll ask that because I think the <laughs> it will become clear as we progress. Sure. Um, yeah, there is no server browser. Oh, come on. In a battlefield <laughs> game, because like literally the only way that you find servers is a server browser. You you set to like okay under a hundred ping or whatever you want, and then you filter by you know which ones are full, and all the full ones or near full ones you click on them, and either you get in or you sit in the queue for a moment, and then you're in, right? And one of the reasons that there might not be a server browser is because the lobby disbands after every game. Why? 
What? After every after thought, every game is over. I thought we nailed every... this ages ago with how it adds new people <laughs> who've left, and, and but it keeps the play. I thought we nailed this since like two thousand four. After after every game, all of the players go back to a main menu, and they're split up from each. You, then they're split up, and what then if you play in a squad. Your squad will stay together okay. back in the menu. Like fuck. But, the, but you can't. But there's not like a server that has a a queue, and all the players stay in that server and keep playing maps until they leave. So you just have to like research for matches after every game. You just click play, and it puts you in a game, and hopefully you'll like it. But does it put you in a game right at the start, or will it drop you in like at the middle if you do that? I've been dropped into games that are in progress. Well, I guess um, that's what I mean. It's like, what if I just want to start right from the beginning in the lobby that I'm in? D do I just have to take my chances of, with a search and hope that I get him right at the start? Well, you don't have any other option. That, if you if you want to play, saying, like, if you want to play Conquest, I don't know what the new fucking name for it is. It's Conquest. The new name, the the Conquest. You you press play, and then it will put you into a Conquest game. Hopefully, okay. one where if it's in your zone or region. I mm. hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, what, however, not? If, well, if it if it puts you into a game and you don't like the squad you're in, uh, you cannot choose the squad you want to join. Uh, you, you have to you have to go to a drop down. You have to go to the to the, like a like a list of something. It's like a list of your team and right click on your name. And then there's a change squad button and it randomly will assign you to a different squad. You can't, you can't choose squad. what squad you want to join, and you also can't lock your squad if you just want to play with some friends of yours and don't want to random in there for whatever reason. Um, uh. And you also cannot swap teams. Um, uh. So if, if one of the teams <laughs> getting beat down or if there's a clear discrepancy in the amount of players per side, you do not have the ability to swap teams. Dude, it's not an option. I love how you're describing all these features that are like, oh yes, I remember that from the 2000s. Like, what, yeah. what the hell's oh, going yeah. on? You have no idea from uh, yeah, it's 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 pretty terrible because that would that go that went hand in hand with other battlefields where you're in a server, the game goes and goes, and then sometimes at the end of a game, you know, people will leave because like oh god, I'm I'm done playing for now, and then that might uneven the player list for a bit, so you could go to the team with less people in it to even it out, and also you have more targets to shoot, um, but you can't do that anymore. Um, there is there's no all chat, there's no game chat. Uh, you can only talk to your team and your squad, your party. Nah. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, type anything to the enemy team. That's very toxic, and that is a goddamn shame. Because I loved all chat in Battlefield Four and Battlefield One. It was great. You could converse with the other team, and you can't do that anymore. There is no all chat. So that Man. time when uh, when I was in Battlefield 1 and somebody was running their car towards me and I headshotted the driver with my rifle, but the momentum of his car ran me over and we both said, you know, we both commented on it in the all chat. It's not going to happen anymore. That doesn't happen. It's all done. Yeah, they, they're removing all happening. chat from uh, League of Legends as well, which is famous for all chat, has been since it was yeah. made. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming, yeah. is there some kind of logic of all chat is mean? Probably. Okay. Well, uh, that's probably what a lot of this is designed to do. No, it, imagine everything that's even approaching competitive that's been stripped away. That's why you can't stay in a server with people. That's why um, there's no scoreboard. There's, there, there's no scoring system that tiers the best people up top and the worst at the bottom. Um, or there's no stat page to see how well you're doing. There's no server browser where you could keep going back to the same servers and see the same people playing and recognize names. Because I do that in Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4 and stuff. I would be like, oh, I know that guy. He's good. Oh, I know this name before I've played with him. I know this person. And I know this group of people who play because you recognize them after playing with them a while. And in this, that's just not going to happen. Man, talking about removing um, a feature that has loads of benefits. Where have we heard this before? If not yeah. yesterday. Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, so... There is uh there's no real class system in the game anymore. Everybody can just have whatever they want. There's no uh I guess this is sort of a it's it's sort of together, right? So you have no class system anymore and you have specialists instead of soldiers. Uh one of the soldiers is disabled, not on his bio, which wouldn't surprise me. Well, one of them is non-binary, but one of the one of the characters has a shield that they use and because of a bug, it's disabled. So on launch, one of the 10 specialists their ability, it is disabled. So bravo. Um, at level 30, you unlock the specialist with wall hacks, 
So luckily, I don't think anyone's really gotten to level 30 yet. So that's not an issue. But fuck me playing this game when you can unlock the specialist that can see through walls. Um, <laughs> this is what? Yeah, the, spe the specialists all How's have that? different powers. One of them, their powers that say they can see through walls. Is it like temporary? I fucking hope so. <laughs> I would hope it's temporary. But yeah, this is a game about the United States Army fighting against the Russian Federation Army, and there are no Russian or American soldiers in this game. So why? Because they have the specialists that are all from different places, right? Different countries. Yeah, they're and... they're the no pats. They're not part okay. of any country. They're very okay, special. But, so why do you, why do you, why are the teams Russia and America then? Just because I don't know. A bunch of mercenaries signed up to I fight for the countries. I guess it's, is the argument. I don't yeah, know. it's it's okay. very it's very odd to look around and see the same clones of the 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 people with names and personalities and special voices instead of just seeing soldiers that were designated roles. Because in Battlefield One, you see five assaults running uh, in a direction. You're like, oh, that's that's fine. Those are just those are five soldiers yeah, amongst course, yeah, many other soldiers, soldiers who have a role. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And in this, you see three, f especially at the end screen when they show your squad together. Of course, and, like, they four show of you the are squad doing your the... little poses with your yeah, crazy you, yeah. skins and your awesome you have your pose. Unlocks, yeah. You have your little. You, they're all a bunch of random assholes. None of them are interesting or <laughs> clever or anything like that. They're all just a bunch of random assholes. And so when you see your squad lined up at like the end or whatever, and it just has four of the same clone. It's very, very uncanny. It just doesn't work in Battlefield. I won't bitch about well, it too much longer. Well, the thing is, it's it's a part of, because Call of Duty has their crazy little operators too. Like, even uh, the new one, Vanguard, which is set in World War II, they got their crazy, super-duper awesome operators, um, as opposed to just generic soldiers. We, we are... We are long past the phase of just generic soldiers or even Yeah, you're not a soldier in an point. army anymore. You are no, a very, you... very special snowflake, which is what the army is really all about, is being super individual and super unique. Instead of being part of really a really standing team. apart from everybody yeah. else, instead of being a cohesive, you know, gear in a machine that does a job efficiently, where you are part of a something larger than yourself. Yeah, um, and oddly I mean, enough, also, uh, battles are fun. It's fun to be yeah. here fighting people. It's not like intense or, you know, um, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it's, you know, it's an adventure uh, where but you do the, dances and stuff in the middle it, of battle. The, speaking more on the specialist, because it's an army of the same, spe it's an army of 10 potential specialists against an army of 10 potential specialists. Yeah, right. They all look the same. The only thing that's different is that some of them have little red lights on them and your guys have little green lights on them. Right. That's how you tell the to... difference. As opposed to in old Battlefield games where each different side, each faction had different characters yes. for each class. In particular, Battlefield 1 did a great job. All of the Austro-Hungarians looked unique. All of the Germans had looked unique. All of the Brits looked unique. All of the Australians looked unique. Yeah. And, and different maps would have different uniforms for them too. Of so course. if you were playing one of the naval maps for like the, the, the Aussies or the Brits they would have their own like naval outfits but they would well, all be also, the same you could tell who was in each arm just by looking at someone if there was no hud you'd be like oh that's a german over there i could tell by his uniform or oh that's a brit over there i could tell by the uniform and, and also you had appropriate teams depending on the map like in battlefield 4 um there was always a us side but depending on if you were like fighting china, on the china yeah. map you'd sometimes be fighting against the chinese and if you were fighting in like a russian area or somewhere else you'd be fighting against the russians and you know yep. like in yeah in battlefield 1 um if you were fighting in the gallipoli campaign you know you had like the turks and then if you were fighting in italy you had the italians versus the germans like there were appropriate Depending on which map you're on, you were playing as the appropriate faction, but it feels like yeah, well, long no past factions. that phase. Yeah, yeah. Battlefield yeah, no really. longer has factions. You are one of ten very special operators, and you know it. Yeah, yeah it's, for some reason to fight yeah, each other for seemingly for no things, reason at all. Yes. Um, so that's great. There has been a massive removal of movement mechanics and animations. Uh, so I have not played Battlefield Five past the beta, but I've watched. Um, but I have watched comparison videos on the Reddit. Oh, the Battlefield 2042 Reddit. Fucking, it's a, just a dismal, horrible place right now. Everyone hates it. Oh, uh, is it like but, the Lost of um, Us 2 subreddit when that game gave out? <laughs> kind of. Everyone's, everyone's <laughs> bitching about the game. 
Uh, but there's all kinds of different uh, animations and things that they added for Battlefield Five because there's a okay. lot of legitimately excellent things in Battlefield Five that they added. Uh, like crouch sprinting can't do that. There's no prone aiming. Like if you're like on your back and aiming, that's not a thing anymore. There's no oh, getting right. blasted back by explosions that are nearby. Um, there's not Why a lot of like if you these? if you jump off something that's tall, you'll do a little roll when you land. Um, a lot of the stuff, it's just gone. Oh, also Battlefield 2042, no leaning. You can't even lean anymore. There's oh. no leaning from cover to shoot. That's wow. a thing they took out as well. <laughs> um, Why would you take it out if it's a feature of the old ones? You did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, uh, Battlefield, we don't have the, uh, we don't have the <laughs> Battlefield 5 fortification stuff where you could set up bollards to stop vehicles, set up turrets, set up sandbags, bar the windows to things. That's not a part of the game anymore. Can't do that. Uh, you can't shoot grenades out of the air or throw back grenades. Um, they've removed uh, revival uh, animations as well. Those are gone uh, now. Uh, okay. So yeah, a lot of stuff that simply isn't in there. Um, we have uh, no squad spawn screen, uh, by the way. So when you what? like in Battlefield Four in particular, you'd you'd if you'd click on somebody to spawn on them, you could see their screen, their perspective, so what they're yes. looking at. Cool. So that yeah. was very useful. That's gone. But you don't need that. <laughs> Let's just define how useful a thing is, and then <laughs> yeah, end with it's I, gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might have to. Uh, you might. You have to take my word on this until you check it for yourself. But I think that the sound effects and the sounds of the game are kind of crap compared to old Battlefield. Man, that's like Battlefield strong suit. Yeah. Um, there design. are only. This is something a little bit more uh, easy to comprehend. So uh, there's only 22 weapons in the game. What? No when, when you, when you say twenty-two weapons, you're not referring to all weapons, are you? Like, so what I'll do, you know, in order to answer that question, what I'll do is I will post you this picture that I have prepared. That is the Battlefield 2042 weapon list. No, no way. No wow. Way. Holy. Four assault rifles. Man, you I'm three. You have three <laughs> sidearms, four what? SMGs, four <laughs> assault <laughs> rifles. Two light machine guns, three marksman rifles, three sniper rifles, two shotguns, and a lever action gun. A weird one. Dude, you didn't make mo you didn't make a campaign. It was all multiplayer. What? Are there two? Are there modes with different amounts of weapons, or is it? You can play the portal mode, which I haven't looked at yet. But this is the. But those are just old things. This is the um, mode, I is, assume. This is twenty forty two. The game. It, this is the this is the guns. Dude, this is it. There are games where if you had told me there are twenty rifles, I'd be like, uh huh. Well, we have <laughs> yeah. that. It's called Battlefield Four. Uh, you <laughs> see, in in Battlefield Four, when the game launched, there were seventy seven weapons in vanilla Battlefield Four. They added more with Man. DLCs, but just to put into perspective, in well, vanilla Battlefield Four, there are thirteen sidearms. Well, I because I remember in, in vanilla Battlefield Four, there were different rifles depending on which faction you were in. Like you would start with one or the other. Russia, you would have different rifles. You would unlock them all. Yeah, uh, of course. But, but you would but start with one or the other. Yeah, exactly. Just, but but I mean, that encourages you to use different weapons because you're well, you're inevitably going to get put on different teams. So well, you have the option of using. Uh, so I've, I'm 11 hours in. Uh, I have unlocked uh, an assault rifle, a marksman rifle, a shotgun. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, so, um, oh, oh. yeah, so the lack of secondaries in particular is staggeringly bad because that will greatly affect what primary you use because you can't synergize between your primary and secondary weapon, which was a huge part of Battlefield 1 that I loved, by the way. Um, the, the, and it's bad enough that there's only 22 uh, weapons. They are horrifically balanced. The submachine gun, which we'll get into later, is better at shooting at range than the assault rifles are because of oh, this game's on. horrific gunplay in Bloom. The second marksman rifle is shockingly better than the first, and it's better than the sniper rifle. Um, and I've been killed with a shotgun once because these maps are massive. Uh, and we'll get into that in a moment. Yeah, as why well. would you ever yeah. use a shotgun? If, 20, like, look at, this, look at this map on screen. God, so wide and open. How do I play it for 11 hours? Because I'm a huge Battlefield guy, and I love playing Battlefield, and I wanted to give this game a really fair chance. That's why. And, and from what you've... I'm assuming the conclusion here is just why would you continue playing this instead of a different Battlefield? I, 
I'm honestly probably not ever going to play 2042 again. Maybe in like three years, if they if they haven't canceled right. it, then I might check in and see how it's doing. But yeah, I have no desire to play this. I'm I'm li I'm literally going to go back to playing like Battlefield One. There's uh, a history really there, right, it. of Battlefield games getting better over time. Sometimes, right? I'm very unfamiliar. Yeah, Battlefield Four yes. is like the Battlefield... best example of that. Yeah. yeah, Battlefield Three went to Battlefield Four, and then even from Four to Battlefield One. Uh, I never got into hardline, but even going from four to one, you could clearly tell that there was improvements made mm -hmm. and uh, changes and some experimentation going on. Um, but yeah, and I heard that as I didn't buy five, mostly based on principal reasons. But uh, I think because I got, um, I guess talk about it later, I did get a Game Pass. Uh, so maybe Battlefield Five is part of Game Pass because there there are legitimately really good things about Battlefield Five. Um, that they changed, and a lot of work clearly did go into that game, but that's its own weird side well, story. So, from what I remember, Five was another force situation where, like, at launch, it was pretty bad. Um, yes, in terms it of just launched balance, bugs, way less content. Like, it just didn't have content yeah, when it joined. And when, it, when it launched, there was the controversies of the the weird cyborg women stuff, and them saying don't buy it and all that weird shit. And then there was the lack of content aspect. But there was legitimately a lot of really good carryovers from one and improvements and animation uh, animation additions, destruction and uh, destructible environment changes that were great. And I, I guess the I guess the the thing here was, well, Battlefield five underperformed. So fuck it. We're just going to start from the ground up because this game feels like it's just started from the ground up. Right, um, like, we're not, well, we're not don't finished. worry, guys. More season passes, you know, you can get those starting. Yeah. Woohoo! Very strange. as uh, as bad as uh, as bad as it is to only have twenty two weapons, uh, and uh, the the fact that they're horrifically balanced already. Uh, there's only seven maps. Mm. In but there's also the uh, aren't there the they're the portal maps too, right? That are remakes. Yeah, but of I'm. Old. But I uh, but twenty forty two is a game that I purchased. And that right. needs to have the, the the game that I bought. Like Portal's great and all, but I I bought twenty forty two, and I expect a new Battlefield game with its own content, especially because you didn't have single player. Well, yeah, yeah I was about and, to say because Battlefield didn't Battlefield three launch with eleven maps. Uh, well, Battlefield four, I checked it launched with ten. Right, but it's, and it's bad enough. Seven. It's bad enough that there's only seven. Um. It's bad enough that there's only seven maps. I have not been able to play two of them. Uh, what, just the, no maps? So right, because you can't play serve it. You can't. <laughs> the servers are <laughs> shit. Um, uh, I've spent a great deal of time trying to join games and then getting an error that sends me back into the lobby. I have not been able to play Discarded and Breakaway, those maps. I've seen the loading screens for Discarded many times in particular, but I have not uh, been able to actually play it. Um, it insists on always loading manifest. Fuck that map. In fact, just all the maps. Not really. I don't really care for any of the maps. Um, just not a fan of the maps. And I think part of it is because there is 128 players in a game now instead of 64. Mm -hmm. Fuck Big me. Maps, then. You right. would think that doubling the amount of players would mean it's a lot more exciting. No, no, it's not. Huge spans where there's just nothing happening. And then, then there's massive clusterfucks over in other places. There's just, it's just, if it, it, the game is very boring, oftentimes, um, you're desperately um, going to be looking for action and things. What of about that the weather stuff? How's how's that? The new weather oh, system. Oh, I'll I'll get into the weather in just a little bit. It's further down on the okay. list. Uh, it, oh, it, right. it does make a mention here. Uh, but yeah, map selection is pathetic, and I don't think the maps are well designed at all. Um, there's far less building destruction when compared to Battlefield Bad Company 2 or Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1 or Battlefield 5 in particular. Um, the destruction is far less. Um, I don't, okay. I don't think there's just buildings you could just drive tanks through anymore. I just don't know if that's still a thing that even exists. Um, there's a lot of stuff that they've removed, like Battlefield 5, you could take health and ammo from players who carried it, so you didn't rely on them to throw it to you or give it to you. That's not in this game. When you are when you're downed, when you're uh, when you, when you are downed and you're incapacitated, waiting for a revive, there is no more near my uh, medic indicator, uh, and you can no longer when somebody is downed and you could see that they're downed, you can't press Q on them to let that player know that you're coming to revive them. This was an insanely useful feature that was in oh yeah uh, the, uh, one and five. 
Uh, didn't three have that as well? Wouldn't it? Like, I don't think you or... could, you couldn't you couldn't let oh. a player know through the spot system because you'd get an indicator right. that a player was downed, and if you press Q, that player would get a notification. This player who is this many meters away is a it's medic, and they you. are coming to get you. And that yeah. is a very useful thing. Of course, uh, yeah, and that's that a is, great feature. Yeah, that's not in uh, that doesn't uh, that does not in this nah. game anymore. Uh, and when you're down on the ground, of course, now that now when you're downed, you are in third person so that you could see your skin, which I'm sure that they'll have many to sell you in the future. Yeah. And it's difficult to see who's a medic and who isn't a medic. Uh, All right. That sounds like a great upgrade. Just, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. I'm really glad they did that. Um, let's see. There is um, uh, so you cannot call out to downed game? allies. Or revive. Yeah. Map indicators for downed allies. If if I have an ally who's downed and I see their little downed icon, they could be hundreds of meters away and it still shows me that they're downed. And this adds to the incredible visual clutter that is in this game in terms of the UI and how many how much shit is just on screen at one time. Can you choose uh, no what is, zoom change? Like you choose anything to change um, any of that, or is it all just set? I don't think so. I looked for UI changes in terms of like opacity and what things to enable, disable, and it, I don't think I couldn't find it. Maybe I'm just missing it. Um, there's no, uh, there's no zoom in, zoom out for the mini map, which could be useful sometimes. That's just a feature that they've not had. Um, there is a tactical sprint because we're all we ought to be Call of Duty now. Uh, it has no downsides. There doesn't seem to be any uh, penalty for tactical sprinting in terms of ADS time and whatnot. There is severely limited vehicle customization in terms of the stuff you can actually put on your vehicles and you know countermeasures, missiles, that sort of thing. Yeah, even Battlefield One, if you chose a like an attack plane, you could have three different presets for ground support or tank busting or plane killing. You know. Um, which for sheer amount of options wasn't fantastic, but you had all of your roles as essentially like a, a plain spec that you could spawn as. Um, the performance is really bad, the game. Uh, I have a 2080 Ti and an i9 9900K. Um, game runs like shit. Game runs really bad. It's tough Damn. to play, and if it's hard to, if the game runs poorly, then it's difficult to aim. And there have been plenty instances where a person's right in front of me, or I'm waiting for them, and they come around the corner, and I cannot track them because the FPS is so dog shit. Um, really, really bad performance. Um, it's also very, very buggy, uh, more buggy than normal. There's a lot of huge bugs. Like if you if you're downed and your head on your character model is anywhere like close to a wall, you're not revivable and things of that nature. If you're in a bush, you might not be revivable. Um, you can grappling hook onto smoke clouds because the game thinks that they're objects. Um, all kinds of weird stuff like that. Really, it's really, really crappy. Um, the, the UI is miserable in terms of selecting your weapon attachments, getting into games, changing your weapon attachments, going through your specialist stuff. Um, when you're on screen, what you see, your death screen and what you see, what it chooses to show you and what it doesn't show you, the tab menu, this the UI is garbage. It's horrifically bad. Um, it's, just, it's a pain in the ass to do things as simple as change what weapons, or sorry, what attachments you want on your weapons. Um, and I don't, it, your, your screen is constantly in-game cluttered with indicators, um, whether they be objective points or soldier waypoints or vehicle things uh spotted indicators uh downed icons there's just so much shit on your screen it's super cluttered um when it comes to game modes there's no tdm no domination so the small modes that like war pigeons in battlefield one not coming back there's not a mode like that there's not a domination not a tdm and those would be fun to jump into to just get into a little game and just shoot people up in a 16 v 16 or something like that uh, there's only two modes, which are conquest and operations. That's not what they call them, but that's what I call them. Uh, there's essentially the conquest mode, and then there's the rush style mode. Um, and Jesus Christ, rush with 128 people. Fuck that. I played one game of that shit on Kaleidoscope map, and it was just, it was misery. But uh, that those are just the bullet points I put down. Uh <laughs> <laughs> before we started the thing that's it's the game is soulless it feels like it's been stripped bare of content none of the fun none of the parts feel like they fit together the games don't feel like there's 128 people i don't get nearly the amount of like action that i feel i get in other battlefield uh, games and 
like the gunplay is terrible. Like the shooting in the game is terrible. It's it's super luck based, and there's this horrific random bullet deviation. There, if you go into the Battlefield subreddit, you could see people posting all of their clips of just bullets not counting in horrific sprays when you when you're shooting and bullets just go in all these weird different directions. Um, and as if that wasn't bad enough, because any gunfight past thirty meters is just essentially a dice roll. Huh. Um, but nice. when you shoot, there's so much muzzle flash and so much shaking that it is miserable to shoot people at distance. And half the games that you play, it's going to be in the dark and the rain. So that muzzle flash is just going to cover up your screen and it's going to be miserable to shoot people if you can even see them because so many of these maps are so much foliage and so much crap in the way and the way the game's graphics look, it's just miserable to try and see people. Um, it, I mean, it, it's miserable to just play the game. And it's not even in the, the balance of the guns is bad, too, with the few that you actually unlock after 11 hours. Um, when you spawn into the game, your character does like this bullet chamber animation right. where they check the chamber to see if there's anything in it because we have to be Modern Warfare 2019. And that has already gotten me killed because if you spawn in a hot zone or if the game spawns you out in the open, which is always fun, then you'll be checking, oh, is there a bullet in my chamber? <laughs> and you'll just get shot because you can't do anything because Damn. the flavor animation is preventing you from well, playing the game. But but are the animations cool at least? Because Modern Warfare <laughs> 2019 had really cool animations. They're fine. Like we got reloading while ADSing, that's oh, cool. Okay. I guess. It, is kind of, it, it feels it's funny cool. that it's flipped again because there was a time when it's like, dude, Battlefield's like way better than Call of Duty. Like, what are you talking about? Like, Battle Battlefield's and and then Modern Warfare 2019 came out, and that game is really fun and cool. And then it has those awesome like reload animate, and you can see here because you can see in the, the on display the tactical run. It's like, man, we're just like, <laughs> what? Like, man, Call of Duty, I, like, has again like it's it feels like it's flipped and, and battlefield is like chasing trends again um we have man. i have one more thing listed that i've written uh and then my list is done uh so at the beginning of each battle uh, of each game because it'll often put you into the beginning of a game so you get into a cert lobby whatever game whatever it's even called now and you're waiting to spawn in the game you're waiting to begin the game you you have mm -hmm. to deploy when when the game begins, you have to deploy. What you're not allowed to just wait in the screen to wait. like look at the map and stuff. Yeah, or... you cannot wait. You cannot wait until all of your attachments are set where you want them. Dude, what if I want to pause I, and just like take a piss? I assume <laughs> that's not AFK prevention. That's literally just something they just. It's just the way it is. Well, if you're AFK, then either say, way, you'd yeah, either be yeah. yeah, you'd be AFK in a menu or you'd be AFK in the game. But what this means is that if you don't get your ass in a vehicle at the beginning of the game, you and seriously like 30, 40 other people around you, there is this massive breakneck sprint at the beginning of every game <laughs> that all of the players make towards whatever they can. Because when it spawns, you're forced to spawn. And if you haven't selected a vehicle, which is the vast majority of your 64 players on your team, your ass gets stuck on the ground on your feet in your deployment on these maps designed for 128 people. So Man. you might have to start the game with a 200 meter sprint to an objective that the vehicle people already captured. Ah, awesome. <laughs> and, and it's difficult to tell when you like spawn into a vehicle at the beginning, because it's just the way that the UI is designed. Am I going to be the driver? Am I a gunner? Is this one already taken? Am I, it's misery. It, the game starts out with misery. It's just, uh... it, it's just shit. Like this is a, we lost so much. It's like a bunch of random losers got put in charge of battlefield now. Well, and so they have, I think, you, you said that you were leading up to a point, and I feel like the point is already obvious. This game is, like, significantly watered down for, like, mass appeal. And it's funny, because Battlefield was already, like, you know, a mass appeal game. Pretty mass appealing, but yeah. Feels, There's, yeah. But, but it feels like it, it seems like it's been watered down. It's like, all right, so what are the trends now? So we need to have, like, season pause. We need to have, uh, we need to have Battle Royale. people keep playing this game over the course of potentially Battle Royale, yeah. And it's like, all right, so how do we do that? So we need to have like operators, super cool duper operators that you get these crazy skins for. It's going to be awesome. And just operators in general, because then you can give them like 
oh, crazy little animations and things that they do and their unique shout outs and stuff like that. Um, and we need to build this game to like make sure that there's always content that keeps coming out, whether or not that means that there's a compromised launch product, whatever, because it's the product, it's the live service. We've got to make sure that people keep playing it. Um, and we got to make sure that it is similar to other games that are popular right now so that people feel like they can transition over easier rather than making the game that appeals to... Because we're not interested in, like, Battlefield fans anymore. You know, we need the shooter fans in general, broadly. And so, like, now it... they've created something that isn't really... It's Battlefield, but, like, really watered down, it seems like. I think it goes into, I mean, when you when you tally all of the stuff that's not in the game, no scoreboard, no scoring system, no points, no server browser, yeah, no alt that's... chat, the gunplay that makes shooting at things very, very strange once you get past like 30, 40 meters, it just feels like it's super watered down for the most casual, random people. They've tried to remove any elements of competitiveness from, you're, you are not in Battlefield 2042. That guy on the other team who did really well last game, I am going to get him next game. I am going to show him that I am better. I am going to beat him. I'm going to beat his team. I'm going to find out where he is. I'm going to get him because I'm better than him and I'm competitive and I'm going to show him what for. I'm going to do my best Dude, and I am on. motivated to get that asshole who killed me three times last game from his sniping spot or whatever and or, or his vehicle. I'm going to take him on. I'm going to beat him next game. Or if it's a really close game, I'm going to stick in this server because these are fairly well-balanced teams and I like a close game. I'm going to stay in this server. And it's yeah, all it gone. Like you can't talk to the other teams away from you. That seems I like love it thing. when people say, oh, Rags is hacking or something like that. I love it when there's some shit talk going on. I love it. It's great. It's part of the experience. I love it. There's just no competition anymore. It's not competitive. It's all feels super... like we are. Uh, it feels like there was a concerted effort to almost destroy the uh, the old sort of online space in terms of just like shit talking and banter and memes. Yeah, and, it's you know like the 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 sort of the uniquely online video game experience that um we often bitched about in the past in terms of like shit talking and people on mics and stuff. But like, there's a charm to it. Um, so that, or even just having a good squad of randos you want to stick with. It's literally been a thing that I've done before. Like I don't I because I'll just jump online, in, yeah. Yeah, I'll know, just jump in a squad and random people, even if they don't have mics, they're playing well, they're good at the scoreboard, they will revive me and give me ammo. I'm gonna stick with them and play with them because I know this guy's good. But in this game, like if if you took 2042 and you just if you replaced all of the players with bots, your experience would maybe improve uh how buggy is this game by the way because i know the debate right yeah <laughs> that's it's surprising Very. like you see you see that footage from the beta it's like my god you you don't have long like to, yeah. <laughs> to fix this i think you'd asked about the weather uh, i mean the weather is yeah, fine yeah. the game sort of looks all right overall um it's just that it gets in the way of shooting a lot when you when you look at someone and you have your your scope and your thing. There's just such a lack of clarity when it comes to shooting at targets now. That is very annoying. Um, right. It was really nice, and it makes you appreciate in old games. That is a soldier. I will shoot at him, and I these are my sights, and that is what I'm shooting at, and it's just great. It's great. You 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 can see things. It's great. Can you go prone in this game? Yes, you can. Uh, you can oh. go prone in this game. Shockingly, they haven't removed that. Um, <laughs> give it time. Sure, they, sure, give it time. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's. Uh... Oh, you can't even move. You can when you're prone. You can't ads and move and just stuff like that. There's like a lot of just weird things that you just can't do. Um, it's really, it's just so strange. But hey, yeah. you can run around fast and you could slide jump, so that's cool. You know. So, oh, there's the screen of hey, look, <sighs> I'm the super duper soldier, dude. I it's funny because Halo Infinite's doing it too, and it's like, you know, like it's funny though when you tell me this and everything I've heard about Vanguard, like I've heard so many bad things about Vanguard, it sounds like Halo is in a really good place to just like get back on top. I lit when um, I played the beta for Halo, uh, thanks to you who gave me a friend code to check that game out early. When I played that game in the beta, I didn't like big team, but I'm not generally a big team player. 
But the 4v4 in Halo Infinite, I legitimately had fun with. And when I played it with some friends, we had a good time. We enjoyed 4v4s in Halo Infinite. And if it is as good, if not improved in the real game, I can see myself devoting time to it, especially because the multiplayer is free. And if the campaign yeah, is on true. the Game Pass, yeah. we are absolutely checking out the campaign. Hopefully it's good. Oh, I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to be. What about tornadoes and environmental over. hazards? I, I, I don't I know. Think, I mean, I didn't go to the tornado because it's a tornado, and I just, I'm just trying to play the game. Why would you go to yeah. it, right? You just want to, yeah. And it, and it pops up more often than you'd think a tornado would just pop up in a battlefield, you know? it's, But it's just, like, over there, and I'm like, okay, I'm trying to play a game if you wouldn't mind leaving, you know? Like, could you not, tornado, could you not, could you not be here, you know? I feel like, um... game. I'm just thinking now, because uh, I remember when the first trailer came out, everybody got really hyped, but it was an in-engine trailer that didn't show gameplay, and it's like, I feel like, how many times does this have to happen before we, yeah. you, know, you know, realize, I like, guess hey, maybe until it stops working. the mark... Yeah, but it's just effective marketing, because it's a cool trailer, but there's so many things you can glean from, like, hmm, that's got me peepo sus, and also this isn't the game. <laughs> there's that too. Um... What about the scope problem? Yeah, there's some bitty, there, there's some pretty uh, bad bugs. If you arrange your scopes like in a certain way on your gun, your like if I have a sniper and a sniper scope, which is what you're gonna be having because it's the one sniper you're gonna have for quite a while, um, because there's only 22 guns to spread for the unlocks. Uh, you have to like you'll scope in and it'll be zoomed but if you like heal yourself or do like actions your your scope will just not zoom in it won't be a scope it'll just be like a just a x on your screen that doesn't zoom in there's some weird bugs like that um but i mean there's you can unlock skins there there's not that many camos and the 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 skins for all the characters look pretty pathetic honestly um, right. A lot of the uh, skins you want, like if, oh, I'm Falk the medic, and if I heal a thousand people or whatever, I get the special skin for her, and it's like, eh, it doesn't really look like a medic, honestly, and it just looks super generic, and uh, it's like, I don't feel any desire to play this game, and I don't feel any desire to unlock anything or keep playing. There's never a sense of, I can't wait until the next game starts, you know, so I can get into the thick of it and have fun. It's just, nah. It's such a I I would I'd say the I'd say the game is just bad. I used Damn. to think it was mediocre and lame, but I'm just gonna go out and say that 20, 2042 sucks. Play Battlefield One, play Battlefield Four, fuck, play Battlefield Five. Oh boy, the true hot take. Um, you considering like a maybe a mini a dog bites thing on it or anything? I might, yeah, I I seriously might because I have some footage over it. Uh, some footage from it that I've saved. Oh, I was I was in a call when it first came out. I was just streaming it in a Discord with some peeps, and there was a there was someone in there, and uh, we were talking about the specialists and stuff and the weapons in the game. And she asked, "Are you talking about Apex Legends?" No. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that's one of the things. Did you mention that, Free, in terms of homogenizing the like hero shooter infection, basically? Oh, the hero shooter, it's because it's way easier to, like, sell skins, and every season you're like, alright, new operator, you know, new character, so that's, like, mm -hmm. your substantial piece of content, but then it's just more, it seems, because people get attached to specific characters, and then they want to get the skins for those characters, as opposed to, like, medic skins or engineer skins, it just seems to be hyper-effective, and I think that's the reason why basically every game is doing it. Like every shooter is doing it. Yeah, as um, as much as I I like Apex Legends a lot to play, I don't spend any money in that game because fuck giving them money. Um, it's got I a good battle say the pass. Monetization though, in that one's really bad. Yeah, it's it's got a good battle pass, uh, but like right. everything else is terrible. There, we're talking like thirty dollars for a gun skin, a character skin, and like a, a emote. Yeah, it's nuts. It's insane. Like that twenty dollars for just a character skin in a first person. It's it's shit. But, but it's funny, right? Because um, I it's I gotta stop saying that. Cause someone in chat was like, you know, someone says it's funny, but it's never funny. You're right. It's not funny. It's depressing. Um, there is always the discourse, except for Halo. That's right. Halo is the one that's not doing the heroes, which is kind of interesting because it's just still sticking with Spartans and the customization for them, and that's that's fun. 
Um, there, there is a lot of complaining and, and criticism of this trend, you know, of hero shooters and like, um, you know, battle royales and season passes and skins and everything like that. There's a reason why Battlefield 2042 is this way. It's probably going to make a lot of money. It just makes a lot of money. It's it's these games make so much money. I'm pretty sure Modern Warfare, like Warzone, makes a billion dollars more than that each year for Activision. Uh, yeah, that, why make a good it, Battlefield game when you could just make a shitty one and then sell seasons of content or sell skins or sell weapons? Uh, you know, they, they only have 22 weapons. You bet your ass they'll sell you more. And it's not like it's not like a Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1 situation where you had a game that was full of content and they made these big DLCs that had all these maps and new weapons and challenges and all kinds of stuff like that. It's just, no, nah, we're just going to... Here's just, uh, yeah, only 22 weapons to start out with. Battlefield 1 had more weapons than My, my impression is... That I'll, Easy. Oh, that'll, that'll be, I think that... What I get the impression is, I think we're past the point where they're going to sell you explicitly like weapons or characters. I think we're past that point. I think they've realized now that the model is you release the content altogether, but like season passes for skins and stuff, that's that's where you make your money. Um, Because you keep the community together, you don't break up the community. But there is a lot of pressure on you. You want to get into that season because once that season's done, Halo is the exception where they don't lock you out of seasons. Most games will lock you out of that season. When it's done, it's done. You had your chance to get the skin, you failed. Um, better luck next time. And so then there's just a pressure to keep playing the game to get super immersed into that one ecosystem. And there's pre oh, look at that guy. He's got the skin, ain't he so pretty? Look, he got that skin. Wow, I want that skin. I really want that skin. Next season, oh, the new skin. No, fuck this, this skin I worked really hard to get. It's that new skin that I want. And it just keeps you locked into that ecosystem. It keeps you buying things and paying into it. And you keep playing it, and you don't play other people's games. Um, it's just that that's the that's the system, and it's highly profitable. I remember it skins so being so much more profitable. wholesome when they started out in games. I do too. Um, yeah, I do. From from memory, like League of Legends back when it first started, there was a character I played a lot was Viga for mid lane, and he, there was a Gandalf skin for him because he's a wizard, and I was like, I want that. And I don't care to get any other skin ever. The Gandalf skin is the skin I will use <laughs> yeah. forever. Like, those are referential and fun skins, but, you know, the model, like you just said, now is like, look at this fucking one, how cool is that? And you're like, yeah, that is pretty cool, actually. So you should get that. Oh, oof, yeah. And then as soon as, like, the tie was over, I was like, that one's shit. Get this one. Look at the, oof, look at this new yeah. one. Ooh. Well, it's all in trends. The, the skin is cool for as long as nobody has it, and then once everybody's got it, the next one comes out, and that's what people want. Um, and it's, and it, again, in a first person shooter, you can't see this. You can only see it when you're dead or like at the end of the game, when you do your little dance. Um, but it's all about other people. It's showing oh, yeah, off the, other uh, people. Look at this thing I got that you don't. The takedown. So the, so oh, there yeah, are yeah. in, in this game, there are takedown animations. If you get up of behind course, someone with a knife. Every They're shooter third... now has takedown animations. They're third person now. In Battlefield yeah. 1 and 5, they were fairly short and they were first and person. Three and, four, and it was, and it was based person. on the melee weapon you had. So if you had a knife, you would do a knife takedown or you'd like stab him and get behind him. You'd stab him. If you had a club, you'd like beat him upside the head with it. If you had like a pickaxe, you'd you know put the pickaxe into him. And the, so they were all different and they look pretty good for you know first person uh, you know stuff. And now they're now they look shitty and they're third person. Because but every shooter has them now. Yeah, you gotta have the third person finisher now so that you, you can see the You need to see skin. my character. That's right. My uh, character and my skin doing the takedown on your character. And the animation's crap too. It just it's just, it looks really shit. Yeah, I've seen um, they're not good. Yeah, they're not good at all. They are bad animations. Uh, I real I like that there is this there is this fluidity in the battle. So if you if you put the if you equip the dud grenade as a club that you can unlock in Battlefield One, it's just this big heavy grenade that's just a dud, and it's essentially it's a club. And if you go up behind someone and you melee him, you just thunk him right on the back of the head, and you keep going. And it had this. It's very satisfying to do because it doesn't like interrupt the flow of the game. Really, you just thunk him on the head. And they just yeah. and they fall over, and then you just keep going. And it was really fun. It was really kind of great. <sighs> Good times, not Good like times. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said it try to be short, but I was wrong. I lied. No, that was short. <laughs> Battlefield 2042 is crap. So, 
Moving on. Well, I, if, if that's all you wanted to say. Oh, well, there's another thing I forgot. There you go. This is actually a big one. This is not. This is actually a big one that I hate. In Battlefield One and Battlefield Five, whenever you damage enemies, you or damage vehicles, you will get a number that is first off points that you score because you score points for damaging the enemy, which sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, but you see how much damage you've done in that number. So if I have my Selb Slaughter 1906 Marksman from Battlefield 1, and I shoot someone, 36 damage. Yep, 36. I got to hit him three times, barring leg shots. And you you know when you shoot at people how much damage you have done to them. Um, should I should I press an advantage if I got a lot of damage? Or is it even worth shooting at him from this distance? Um, if I'm shooting at a vehicle with another vehicle, how much damage am I doing? That is, that's not in 2042. They remove that. When you shoot people and inflict damage, you no longer get damage numbers for what you're doing. So you don't know if you have to shoot them again. That's you don't know how COD much damage it, right? your weapons are doing at ranges. Huh? That's the way COD does it. Uh, well, in COD, everything dies in two bullets, so I don't know how useful it is. But <laughs> that's true. In this game, with the ranges and the different kinds of weapons, it's very useful to know. Like my submachine gun bullet damage at this distance, it's really useful to know. Um, especially like if I'm in a minigun on the ground and I'm shooting at a helicopter, I'm getting some hit markers, but I don't know how much. Like, is it even worth doing this? I have no clue if it's even worth damaging and, and wasting my time peppering this gun uh, this gunship up there with minigun fire because i just don't know if it's doing have i done 10 damage 20 have i done five is it just not even doing anything really you don't know so that's that's not in the game they remove that and that's fucking shit because that's a really awesome and useful thing to do and it's great when you throw a grenade like the other day i was playing battlefield one i threw a grenade and into like a bunker where there are a bunch of enemies and i did 272 damage i didn't get a kill but i did to like a, a, <laughs> whatever number of soldiers i did a total of 272 damage and i was like wow that's kind of amazing i know that grenade did that much damage to that many people and i didn't quite get a kill from it but that's not gonna happen anymore um uh, now i think i'm done no, I'm not. It's really the the it's no, I'm I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop there. Let let's just proceed. <laughs> let's proceed. I'm going to stop there. I won't talk about how miserable it is, miserable it is to hit people with vehicles and stuff like that. It's you, you're scary. welcome to do that. I think people would be interested to hear it. No, it's short thing. When when you're in the air and you have like a minigun on a gunship or a helicopter, it is mis Oh, they're yeah, like spotting is completely different. You don't spot people and a little icon pops up over their head, which is Fine to a degree. I'm fine with a spotting change, but you don't spot people anymore. You just spot like a general area where you've seen someone, which is all right for infantry. But when you're in a helicopter or something and you're struggling to just make out people to shoot at, especially when you have to be very precise with a minigun and you have to hit them a lot with it to kill people. And like the little grenade launcher on the helicopter, the attack helicopter is just crap. It does such little damage and it flies so slowly in such a arcing trajectory. It's it's not fun to be in vehicles. So that's that's another thing that I hate about it. Oh, you can't dive underwater anymore. When you swim, you can't dive underwater to avoid being seen. That's not a thing anymore. You're just you're just stuck swimming on the top of the water. You can't prone when you're swimming to go underneath the water so that people can't see you and you're also not spotted when you're under the water so if you get spotted in the water you could dive and you're not spotted anymore well, why not so, have that in the game well i don't know i guess it's just one of those things that they thought wasn't worth making god man there's a lot of missing features did they like not carry this over from a previous engine or whatever this they... is clearly just it seems to be just it's probably the same engine of a kind but it's just clearly not it wasn't made by the same people or it wasn't made by people who care or different teams worked on it without talking to each other. And it, it doesn't feel like a Battlefield game. It feels like this weird like if a double A if a random startup double A level company just sort of made this as this upper tier indie project, I'd be like, oh, wow, this is kind of impressive for his team's first go, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, mm. uh, Mm. Yeah. So Frostbite, the bad engine base. No, Frostbite's good at being a Battlefield thing. It's good. But you could fuck it up. I mean, Battlefield 3, 4, 1, all these games use Frostbite. 
It's not good for some other things, but it's good for the Battlefield stuff. Um, someone said apparently plenty of developers left dice after Battlefield 1. I could believe it because that's like the last one I really liked. It's the last one I stuck with. I still play it. A lot of people still play it. When's uh, yeah. When is Infinite out now? Uh, it is Doom. coming out in December. Well, the multiplayer, I think, is coming out in, like, days. That's a rumor. Um, That's a rumor. Apparently, it's an unsubstantiated one, too, so... So, who knows? Yeah. Because the oh, anniversary I guess we'll see. for Xbox is, like, tomorrow. Um, I guess so. Um, came out the same day, so maybe. You two are going to be right on that, I'm assuming, the Halo Absolutely. Infinite. Absolutely. Yeah. Which means I should probably do it, too. <laughs> to make sure that we're uh, able to talk about it as a three. Yeah. But yeah, the battlefield's looking good. Looking good. Would you recommend it, Rags? Full price? No, I would not recommend anyone play it regardless of the price, unless you have sheer morbid curiosity. It's not fun to play. It's not fun to play. <laughs> That's my take for DS2. Like, only curiosity. <laughs> That's the only reason you're allowed to buy it. Yeah, it is just... Uh, not good. Don't, don't, don't do it. Battlefield 21... Or 2042 is shit. Damn. Don't do it. Well, moving on. Yeah, I mean, you know, that could take us to subject three. This is less of a uh, of a discussion, more of a ooh, how neat. That's that's the vibe, all right. Beforehand, yeah. um, it would seem that the 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 Rugs plushies are already on their way to the public. Indeed, uh, I've been getting some pictures and people have been telling me that their uh, rags plushes have been arriving and they look pretty good. I'm just going to post them all in a row and you can say wow. whatever you wish to say. I've been trying to grab these from Twitter, folks, as well as I saw a few on Reddit. Um, oh, there if, he is. If you want to just yeah, post your rags hanging out in the real world of Woonies, I'll try and get them together and we'll show a few on the only app. At least this Very neat. gives an idea for people who had no idea what the hell this even is. Um, these, these are the Rex plushies. This is, I believe, yeah. Nidrotix, by the way. Just chilling out on his uh, little arcade machine there. Keeping watch. All right, yeah, I saw that one. That was a good one. Just making sure shitty media doesn't doesn't slip past without commentary. That's the idea. Yeah, that's right. As if the stream hasn't already proved that. <laughs> we're we're tacking on, tackling Eternals, Battlefield. Nothing's getting past us. No, we covered everything so far, and there's even more. Um, while you're while you're posting some of these, I guess it's slightly adjacent. So because Battlefield was so shit, um, I got the I got two months of uh, Game Pass for free because of Discord. Uh, I guess Discord Nitro or whatever. So um, I downloaded Back for Blood and I played that with some friends, and that was fun. I had some fun with that. We'll tackle higher difficulties later, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we pretty pretty neat. I thought that game was pretty neat, worth a look. We had more fun with that than I did with Battlefield. Oh, good. Well, uh, maybe maybe we do good. an EFAP gaming for that at some point. I don't know. I think that would make a pretty good EFAP gaming. Yeah. Yeah, these these rags, man, they're just all set up, ready to go. Ooh. As we so said, the back for Blood's difficulty is totally jacked. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, it is. But that's another thing for another time. Uh, these are looking really good. I was worried because um, mine looks, you know, great. And I was I was just there's always that little thing in the back of my mind like, oh, is the prototype just really, really nice? And the rest of them are going to be kind of meh. Are they going to skimp on the quality? But these look good. Yeah. Really and glad I'm, that they I'm all turned out. This hearing way. a lot of good approval of them. Obviously, the my ones are going to take a little longer, apparently, because of the tentacles. <laughs> it's, a, it's a strange oh, yeah. addition to what are usually more simplistic plushies. Yeah, yeah. But they shall be on their way as well. Yeah, we got photos from across the interwebs. Obviously, if yours doesn't show up, I'm sorry if I missed it, but uh, I'll try to grab quite a few. Is it, is it, good. Uh, can you, was it is there 3,000 rags out there? Is that what it was? Something like there. There's quite a few. There's They're out there. They got a lot of buddies, a lot of friends. Mm hmm. And they all seem so happy, which is the important part. Mm hmm. Just chilling out with everybody, talking about media. Oh, I reckon you'll like this one, Rex. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you look so hippie. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's a good one in the helmet. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, they're, they're, they're all over the place. And uh, obviously, because we talked to uh, you lot last stream. I can't remember if it was last stream or not, but it seems the, the, the fan base would appreciate one plushie per year it was the highest voted, so... All right. Ooh. We will probably try and figure out what what the plan is in that regard, but that means it's not too too late in terms of the 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 realm of eternity in terms of getting your hands on a plushie that relates to us in some way. Unfortunately, these ones uh, will not exist in another thing. I don't think anyway, because we'll probably do different ones. But check that one out. Look, he's he's on the computer. Probably trying to play Battlefield. Watching. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no. Rags, did you get at the Rags beers? Uh, no, not me. Oh my goodness. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a tie laughs> oh my gosh. He's, he's uh, just... And I kept this one for last. It just felt it's, right. It's, 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 it's even grandma's tablecloth, too. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> Not with the door open. No. I appreciate this image because that is a <laughs> dangerous place to place your plushie. Is, I assume it's clean. He, yeah, no, of course, but you get all wet at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it would be all wet. And he's like, oh no, he, he got here and then he fell in the pot. So I assume that is really funny, this is right before you realize they opened the door and you're about to be outraged. I gonna. I, this is unacceptable. Mm hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, thank thank you a lot for sending them in. Like I said, I'll try and keep track of them, uh, so we can just show them off at the beginning of EFAPs. Maybe this is how they're doing, and um, I think the Mola ones are on their way. So excitement abound. Now we have completed <gasps> three forms of media coverage in just two hours and fifteen minutes. So we got plenty Earth, of time left. Wind, fire. Yes, this, which means there's clearly only one more, or maybe even ten. I'm gonna give you guys. This was the watch together I was using for the, the um. battlefield footage, so just ignore that, I suppose. But our next topic is one that's kind of old in a sense. In a sense, what I mean okay. by that is the uh, Jay ruffled feathers back in the day. Well, Jay ruffles feathers all the time, um, and sometimes they're rather amusing feathers that get ruffled. Mm -hmm. This one is a fellow efapper in a sense, if that word could be considered something of an action, meaning to pause videos while responding to them. <gasps> you see, uh, there was a point, I think Jay did a stream, where, uh, like, several content creators had, um, you know, like, because of, of the Hassan stuff, I think this was prompted. And so Jay was, like, checking out other people, reacting to different videos. And one of okay. them was, um... The unfortunate... I don't even know that uh, we've ever... I think I've, I've definitely seen Jay's video on this topic, but I don't know if you guys have, about um, Jay responding to Zack Snyder about Batman. Oh! Um, this guy. I think this guy's familiar. Like, I've seen one of his angry you, Jay responses. Yeah, you must have seen something to do with this before. This has always been, like, a thing where I was like, we'll probably cover this one day, because it's pretty funny. But um, someone decided they would cover Jay... Uh, and Jay's video on Batman, so we'll be able to look into the mind of someone who does the thing that we do, but, you know, their version. Now, we watched Hassan try to do this back in the day, and his wasn't very impressive. So let's see, let's see this, guys. Uh, some um, Ty's Corner, I guess? Ty's TV Corner? Ty's TV Corner. I wonder what TY stands for. Shouldn't there be a dot after Y, though? Uh, I think so. I don't remember how that works. Uh, but so maybe it's... Wise corner. TY's TV corner. I think, so I think, yeah. Dot, dot, apostrophe S. Um, so yeah, several people in chat are like, they've seen this already. Well, you know what? We haven't. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it a go. Like I said, completely neutral. We're just gonna see what the coverage is like. Uh, we're gonna begin it. I think here is where he's he's aware of the video and he's, he's booting it up. So let, let's have a look. See, we got... Since the, 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 we're doing multiple topics today, so we're going to go on this video for about seven minutes. Why is uh, the, the text overlapping over the, the white block thing? Oh, I do see it on the, on the bottom left. It does. Yeah, like, yeah. what is that? He should have moved it to the left further so oh. that the red of the so the exclamation mark doesn't Yeah, I was going to say, you got a big white gap yeah. here. You, you just got move enough it over. space that you could just... Did you... 
why 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 and also this this uh this shadow man oh it's a it's a very far shadow the thing's <laughs> to be fair this okay. person loves snyder's content so it makes sense that his lettering is bleeding <laughs> I, Fringy, does it bother you that in the bottom right, the little gray thing is just hanging off of the edge when nothing else? Yeah, I, I, uh, oh. I'm not. The, 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 the black space just on the right hand side. Why? Like that's just really weird. Well, it's not just on the bottom. Look at the very top. Oh yeah. What? What is? What is? <laughs> uh, black line. It's not even full. What are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, need some changes to get done there, but. Yeah. Yeah, context wise, just big fan of Batman, big fan of Snyder's work, annoyed that Jay has made a video critical of such Snyderisms. So let's see how it goes. Batman killing. I was like, I was way Batman off. is a beloved character who is often, although not always, portrayed as having a strong right, aversion to killing. Alright, so let's watch this and let's like, see why he's like, so bad. What an interesting You're talking over the, <laughs> you're talking over the, the, the video. Really bad start, yeah, like... <laughs> Very interesting voice he has. Yeah, uh, if I was to try to do an impression... It's like that, but uh, I need to have smoked more. Uh, it's like Patty and Selma. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, Jay, Jay opens with saying, like, Batman has, uh, has been seen to kill before, but typically doesn't, has a pr and then meanwhile you just have him going, let's see why this guy's butt hurt. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay. You don't even know yeah. that he's butt hurt. You don't know, you haven't seen the video. I was gonna say, alright, but great start, we'll see how it goes. Oh, guys, I, I, um, I, I, someone posted this, and I just want to let you know. Is important. The Ohio butthole tickling bandit has escaped custody and is being hunted by police. So just be aware oh, no. that he's at large. He is currently he has currently escaped a maximum security facility, and the Ohio butthole tickling bandit is out there somewhere. Does he um? Is it, are they Ohioans? Is that how they're referred to? Because they should be terrified. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Really. Well, anyone from Ohio in chat, you best lock your doors. Butthole tickler is coming. In the general Ohio vicinity, we don't know if the Ohio butthole tickling bandit is crossing state lines to tickle buttholes in other commonwealths and whatnot. We I do know not that know. plenty of people would be on board with a bit of a tickle, but just don't, you know, be careful. That's all I'm saying. Be careful. Indeed. Character whose initial motivation was the loss of two people very close to him. The unnecessary death is one of the last things he would want to be responsible for. So then, when we come to Batman v Superman, oh, we've changed the UI. Look at that. Oh, oh now yeah. it's gone. Okay. It's mo. Yeah. Thank goodness. I mean, that does yeah, look. That's better. easier on the eyes. I will say. Yeah. Yeah. This is just a minimalist. Yeah. I like. One of justice. Bang! 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 Oh. No. <laughs> now we've no. got a new one. <laughs> no, we got another one. It it's it goes from the dark gray to the white and bright red. I'm like, ah, my eyeballs. I guess this I, is... so something's throwing me off in terms of the alignment of the text. It feels like it's not quite centered over there. Yeah, um, well, it's the it's not it's not the left to right centering. It's the up to up to down centering. Yeah, that's, that's what's throwing me off. And also, yeah, like also the one at the top, you should have the Daily Show by Bop. It should be in the middle of the logo. Like if you're going to do it, it shouldn't be up top. It shouldn't be at the middle of the logo, the circle. It should be in the middle of the whole thing. Wait well, a second. Um, too. Ty's T Corner, but this corner. show is by Pop. The Daily Show by Pop. And then at the bottom, it's Ty T. Wise corner, Ties, not yeah, wise again. E corner. Yeah, so I'm, I, I'm lost. So Who, pop. High if you look at the app for Twitter, wise. it says pop underscore culture. So is his team called Pop Culture, and he's Ty? He's Pop. No, he's Pop because this is the Daily Show by Pop. And he's clearly the only one responsible for this. <laughs> so. At Pop Culture 2020, is he going to have to update that this year? I think they just keep oh, it the yeah. same. It's true. Is someone going to claim that name and really cuck him out of No. <laughs> Just go there and they, oh, no, so it's a good, oh, no. I was like, I was way Batman off. Batman is a beloved character who is often, although not always, portrayed as having a strong aversion All right, aversion so let's watch this killing. and let's like, see why he's like, so butthurt. It only makes sense that see for a character butthurt. whose initial motivation was the loss of two people very close oh, to him, no. the unnecessary oh, death no. is one of the last the things pearls. he would want to be responsible for. Oh, yeah. So then when we come to Batman v Superman, Dawn <laughs> of Justice, bang, 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 <laughs> bang, <laughs> bang, 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 b
he kills what? a few people. What? Okay, so that, was, that is not that, hard to follow. So, Jay's making the sounds I'm of guns. What? What? <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? That's, that's one of those what we call rhetorical strategies, where you just sound shocked <laughs> so that people will yeah. be like, you're right, he did make a bad argument. It's like, all Jay did was make gun sounds. You're okay. You're okay. He, he then shows a picture of, of uh, was it 60s Batman? And then the screen goes red to imply he is indeed killing people in this. Jay has not yeah. said anything incorrect yet, or rather inaccurate yet. What? But that's not necessarily a problem, is it? There's nothing inherently wrong with exploring a darker version of the character. One who's either turned his back on that code he once lived by, what? or never had that code. What? <laughs> what? I was just saying what? This is so vacuous. Like, what? say something. What is he- what's the matter? Like, what? What are you- what are you upset about? in the first place, and exploring those ideas could be especially appropriate in a movie like Batman vs Superman that's all about questioning the morality of our heroes, and all that's right. one way you could plausibly all right, defend so, so far, the I'm not, I'm not seeing what the problem is. Why are you talking <laughs> over the video? <laughs> I'm not seeing what the problem is, which is odd considering how much I went, What? 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 Well, I don't see any problems yeah. here. Yeah, of course you haven't seen any problems yet, because Jay has only told you what reality he hasn't is. He hasn't actually <laughs> made an he's, argument he's yet. He's laying down the groundwork for a future point. Oh man, top notch so far. Questioning the morality. Also, yeah, talking over instead of pausing. Come on, we yeah. know you could do better than this. See, of our heroes. What? And all right. That's one way you could plausibly. All right, so so far I'm not. I'm not seeing what the problem is. Superman, without coming across as what? a giant gaping penis. <laughs> here's how. Really? Here's how Zack Snyder defends it. Someone says to me like, "Oh, like Batman killed a guy." I'm like, "Fuck." <laughs> Really? I'm like, wake the fuck up! It's one thing yeah. to adapt a character wake while the like, fuck up. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's this is so like, edgy. Is, holy crap! Okay, because <laughs> it's funny for our position on this is is like oh. what this is the closest we will come to agreeing with Snyder in that clip because the rest of it it gets a little batshit. Um, but I guess intended the, the things that he argues that Batman would do. Uh, Killing is something that it, it's not even something I say that Batman would kill. I'd say Batman is probably going to, judging from all the things that he does. Um, and it's just it's something that is very annoying. difficult to avoid. And I think it would make for great storytelling to have him address it. Um, yep. So I, I think uh, Jay is relatively on that side as well. It's the rest of the clip that becomes problematic as a word. But uh, I just I just love this guy's reactions to things. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> aspect of that character, but well then said, to act Zach. like anyone who's unhappy with the change that you decided to do. He's cheerleading Zack Snyder whilst Jay's trying to make points. Like. <laughs> you go, Zack. Fuck him up, Zack. Yeah, you tell those guys. Also, wait, why is... So now the video is on top of Ty's corner. It's cut off half of it. <laughs> Yes. Why is that happening? That happened. Jay's video didn't change its size. <laughs> I mean, Jay's video I, leapt I, out I, of the I, screen. Like, I don't know how he would have done that in YouTube. Clearly, Ty has, like, done something. He's done something. <laughs> done something. Because being an idiot is kind of pretty unreasonable. There's nothing wrong with exploring the idea of a Batman who kills, but acting like that's the only way Batman could be is just like, I'm sorry, what? But Zack is just getting started here. And then you come and say to me something about like, oh, my superhero wouldn't do that. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> like, all I'm right, like so first off, you're on the fucking road. Hold on. <laughs> he let Zack finish. He's like, I wouldn't want to interrupt you, buddy. <laughs> So he, first of all, he's not present. I could not interrupt him, <laughs> even on video. Oh, that would be I weird. <laughs> I can't pause him. On that. Okay, so first off, he's taking this interview way out of context. We haven't even gotten to a, a, the point he's clearly going to respond to. Calm oh, down. No. Yeah. He's picking what he wants from the interview and inserting it to create a narrative. You don't I don't know even what know what it is yet. We don't even know what it is yet. We literally You're just assuming it's I know where this goes, but it's in what Zach says. I think Free does too. Uh but we we like it hasn't been said yet. Jay hasn't constructed a narrative yet. So like what are you responding yeah, you don't to? I don't know what the narrative is. 
And the way that you highlight how someone's taking someone out of context is to provide the additional context that's missing that counters the narrative. We don't even have one. Yeah. This is... Have you seen this interview before? If you've seen this interview before, let me know in the comments. Because this interview is... So basically, the what way he's doing you are speaking <laughs> just feels very desperate. <laughs> a little bit, you know, like, like, uh, yeah. Like, I, all right, I, the I, interview, I, it, like, have you seen? So, in I, he's taking it out of context. The interview is, you know, like, come on, like, guys, <laughs> come on, no. <laughs> like, what are you? Calm down. Well, it, it, he sounds like the kind of person at this point. There, if you were to call and you're like, right, let's get one thing straight. Okay, so Batman was originally in a comic, right? And he's like, I, I, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And you're like, what? <laughs> Batman was in the comic book. <laughs> I know what she's doing. <laughs> you see enemies everywhere trying to take the movie down. You're taking him being in a comic out of context. You're like, okay. Are we going to continue? <laughs> like, what would I say? read the comics. <laughs> Here's, he's explaining why Batman acts the way he acts. And he gives pretty good reasoning. Batman doesn't kill because he like he's bloodthirsty. He kills... I don't know. And, he and seems pretty that, bloodthirsty. He's pretty bloodthirsty in the BBS, yeah. yeah. If, you brand, if you brand somebody and you know that that will get them killed in jail, that's like... That's you peak bloodthirsty. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I'm going to torture you so that someone could kill you later because of it. He's also screwed here because Zack already said he was responding to the idea that super, my superhero doesn't kill. He's, so he's saying all of them do. Like, Zack is like, oh, how cute you think your superhero wouldn't kill someone. It's like, it's not even about Batman anymore, it's about all of them. Yep. You know what bothers me, too? Is even him in his own camera view is way over to the right <laughs> standing. <laughs> Most of it's just empty space in a wall. He's, like, crowded himself over to the left. At least you like can see the a... Batman symbol. It's like he's sure dodging he laser lines from Resident Evil, and he has to be over here on this side of the camera. Oh. Definitive proof that any of the people in BVS that he attacks in the warehouse are dead, right? I mean, oh, oh come, come on. on. Oh, oh, God. oh, you quit that. Dude, you oh, have that God. giant crate lobbed in his face and hit the wall of blood? <laughs> yeah, you know, we don't know. Besides, does that matter? Compared to, we know that he, he like landed his truck, his car, Batmobile on top of a person. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, so I, I know that wasn't that. in the warehouse, but why does it matter? That's just, we're talking about him killing people, right? And also, how do you feel about Zack Snyder's Justice League where Wonder Woman is throwing the dudes so hard into the wall that their skull splits? Um, is, is he cool with that? Yeah, I don't Wonder know if Woman? he's cool. I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about Wonder Woman fans to know if they found that. I, I, I think, do Wonder Woman people not care if she kills people? I don't remember. But I thought that, that didn't High Top say, like in Patty Jenkins, you know, uh, the, the, the Wonder Woman, the, but oh, everybody hates that. Well, movie, so well yeah. uh, if you remember, there were tweets that he liked saying, uh, to be fair, these are separate movies, these are separate in interpretations, and so it's fine. As, as in Even literally... It's the same person in continuity. Yeah, like Wonder Woman 84 is separate continuity from Zack Snyder's Justice League. And it's like... I mean, I guess it is, because his isn't canon. Oh, that, they would be technically right, but they're not arguing it in that way. No, I know, I know. They would be like, Man of Steel is not in continuity with BVS. It's like, what? Well, yes, yes it is. But it's like, nope, <laughs> it's they are separate sequel. movies. They are, they exist separately. And you're like, wow. That Quinton logic, yeah. you know? We naturally assume that the one that he hits with the, uh, with the, the crate, Obviously, that guy might have died, right? Obviously, Obviously that he guy might have died. died. <laughs> Trust me, a lot of people I don't in that know, scene. Man. I'm pretty sure that if you get a crate thrown at your face so hard that you fly into the wall and crack your skull. Remember the guy he punched so hard his face, like, planted into the ground? Yeah, and also, what about the dude he, like, threw the- he- didn't he blow up someone with a grenade? Or, like, he knocked the grenade out of their hand while it was live and then they got blown up. And he stabbed somebody. And he stabbed somebody, yeah. I'm not, not saying that that's a definite kill, but, I mean, we've got lots of big question marks. Ah. <laughs> Goodell obviously might have. It's an obvious might. I guess that's, that's, you could say that have. validly, I, I suppose. I think you can say an obvious might, yeah. It's Wait, when... did that guy say might have or would have? Obviously might have. I guess his point is that we it's neither definite nor... Obviously, he might have died. 
yeah. he's saying. Like, or as, as to where it's ambiguous if he might have died. We are strictly, we're definitely not in the one or zero, we're between it. We, 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 we don't there know. Is definitely, yeah. There is definitely a level of ambiguity. I'm tempted to just randomly say what throughout Goodell, though. What? <laughs> He hit him in the temple with a with a two hundred pound crate, most likely dead. Uh, however, <laughs> Zach. However, however. Moving on. <laughs> I'm curious what this however will be. It goes on to explain why he uses this version of the character. Uh, what this guy is doing is taking that video. You don't know what <laughs> we, Jay's we, doing. We haven't gotten to what Jay's done yet. I don't know what Jay's evil plans are. Piecing it apart and creating a narrative. To fit his video, uh, so yeah, I'm already pretty aggravated. Uh, you know I, mean? I can see that. So, and it's a cool point of view. Look, I'm 100% fine with it. There, it's a cool point of view to be like, my heroes are still innocent. You know, my heroes didn't fucking innocent. You know, you can kill people and be innocent. So this is this is what I mean. This is Zach. It's really fucking strange. Uh, listen to what he says next, Rags. Right? I don't know if you're ready for this. If you haven't seen this clip before lie to america my heroes didn't you know embezzle money from their corp my heroes didn't fucking he's taking this way out of context any atrocities <laughs> my yeah, heroes you have to say that because this is an absurd statement he's basically so, contesting the idea that there's any hero who just is like doing these obviously wrong things so we, we does he just not think that there are there could be good heroes we're we're on this the the stage kind of with him when he says, "Hey, Batman could definitely kill a person even with the code True. he has," and we're like, "Mm hmm, mm hmm." And then True. he says, Good. "And you know what? Your beautiful, innocent superheroes—they've embezzled money, they've caused atrocities," and we stop moving away from him because we're like, "Hey, uh, Jay like, and I'm like, "What?" I don't know. I don't know what the fuck Zach is talking about. He's like, you know, he's basically said all superheroes aren't innocent. They will lie to you. They'll lie to America. They'll embezzle money, and they will commit atrocities. It's like, okay. Wow, that informs a great deal of what it I've really does. I'm like that's cool, but you're living in a fucking dream world. Oh, yeah. Now, do you think you are? <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So, fuck me. So, but. He's like, oh, you've taken it out of context. Like, is that not? We've got the point. That was the point. And in you full. agree with the point that he's made. Exactly, but said, yeah, apparently it's out of context. We're taking Pop out of context, taking Jay out of context. It's possible that we ourselves are not even in context as we speak. <laughs> I feel like you just took me out of context there, Rex. Apologize. It's just funny to say you're taking him out of context. True. Like five <laughs> no, seconds I have, later. <laughs> I've not taken you out of context. I have jumped into out of context with you. We together. Ah. I've joined you. I haven't taken you out of context. I want to you be in this world. You joined out of context. I'm standing yes. here out of context. Oh, Come out here. The grass is greener that's... out of context. Dude, that that would. And then I say a, um... that sounds horrible. I'll never join you. And then I jump in. That would have been a um a really good joke for the story train episode of Rick and Morty to have gone from the context to out of context to escape that would have you been, know something. Yeah. That's yeah, uh, that would funny. Yeah. We have to go out of context. The only out of context, Morty. <laughs> Remember he's like tell a shitty story. He's like I didn't realize how odd the theme that would be. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> he's taking this way Commit out of context. Any atrocities? I'm like that's cool. But you're living in a fucking dream world. You oh, are. Yes, the old, your perspective yeah, is cool and all, but also it's wrong. Both our perspectives are valid, but you're living in a dream world. I also really like the idea that Zack Snyder thinks that, oh, a billionaire whose parents are murdered, and then he dresses up in a giant bat suit, and then goes around beating up criminals, and then also there's a man from space who can't be destroyed and he can fly, and then some guy cuts his hand open, and puts an alien in a puddle. <laughs> oh my and god. Then this... <laughs> hey, he is describing what happens in these films, okay? Don't... Yeah, point out where he said that was wrong. <laughs> yeah. The fucking creation of Doom stays hilarious. This guy's retarded. Blob <laughs> this guy's retarded. He's, he's he's retarded. That's definitely not what happens. He's what's happening in the film. <laughs> um, yeah, this is one of those, I hate to break it to you, buddy, he's not lying about the film's events. Uh, <laughs> so, like, what you think is retarded is Zack's work. I don't know. ...out of it and tries to destroy a city, 
that's not a dream world. But as soon as one of those characters thinks murder is bad or doesn't lie to America, embezzle money, or <laughs> I don't understand where he's atrocity. coming from right that's now. <laughs> it's, it's pretty simple point. This world is absurd, but that's not a dream world. <laughs> as soon as he starts embezzling money, like Man, Man of Steel, that's that's not a dream world, and until Superman starts like not embezzling money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I don't understand the point. It's like you just called him retarded. Too many words. I don't, it, it is weird how he's called somebody retarded and then to two seconds later say, "But I don't understand what they're saying." Yeah, to so fervently be anti their point and then to be like, "Wait, what was their point?" <laughs> like, what? Yeah, oh. I don't even understand it because I was talking over their point. <laughs> You're living in a fucking dream world there. That would never happen. No, you know, no, 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 sir, what suspect. you're doing- Just pause the video and talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 sir. <laughs> sir. No, 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 no. Why is this guy- not, Why does he keep talking? Stop! <laughs> you're interrupting me! Why this doesn't make sense. Stop talking! <laughs> just you're, just, just you're creating your own also, narrative. Oh my <laughs> god. Creating oh, your narrative. own narrative. <laughs> you can't just do that. And then for some reason he puts a comment on the screen that says, What's up, Tyler? <laughs> Maybe it's an automatic thing where like- I, ass I assume- isn't this the feature from StreamYards where you can- uh, you can click comments and then they come up individually? Because I feel like we should have seen more. Right. Yeah, StreamYards- no, no one watches him. <laughs> I mean, it could He's just be his chat. It could. But the, okay, see the reason rags that I was like, no, you can't be right because if any more than fucking one person talk, it'll start to take over his camera. Imagine we had that for EFAB. <laughs> <laughs> just, the more people talk, it just goes and it over was the just screen. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah, you can click them. What did I walk to and do? Letting a video speak over you. What's up, Tyler? Also, hi, Rags. Gilbert Godfrey's Detective Clone. Dream World is a great game. Goodell Ball this. Base Tyler Kick J. And it's just nothing but constant stream of comments. <laughs> I agree, Tyler is pretty based right now. Top notch. Yeah, Maybe I point out Tyler. that there are already a countless number of portrayals of Batman, oh successful god. or- Oh my god. What, what is wrong with that? Oh that he said that there are several portrayals. He's face- he sees face palming <laughs> at the assertion that there are many different well, portrayals head, of head, Batman. His, his forehead palming, really. He's literally broken. He has no idea when he's supposed to react and to what. Jay said the most innocuous yeah. thing ever. There's lots of Batmans. Ah! Ah, I can't handle such a thing. You're like, why? <laughs> He's like, wrong? how come no one's ever told me this? He thinks that Zack <clears throat> Snyder is the only version. Apparently. And he's like, what? There's been others? That's the, um, the not like this emoji from Twitch that he's doing right now. I don't even know how to, else to describe it. To me, that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My whole world is falling apart because he said there's more than one Batman. Huh? And he has a rule oh against or aversion to killing in so many of those that it's become a central part oh of my his character's God. mythos. <laughs> what are you <laughs> doing? What's wrong? What's happened? I don't... Why do you have so many horrific things to say? <laughs> I don't think about subjecting what? him. Right! Every but the Batman that we're getting in BVS is a different Batman. Yeah, yeah that's, so... Oh, that's, wow, so thanks! That's, that's literally the point <laughs> that's, that's what being made. Yeah. said, <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know, Jay said this more than once already in this video, and he's just like flipping he said it out. A few times. Yeah. yeah. He's fucking lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> he's lost his mind? <laughs> Do you think that if I were to ask Zack Snyder about his Batman, that he, that he would agree with me mind. if I said he's lost his mind? <laughs> Zach, I'm really glad that you made a Batman who's lost his mind in your yeah, new Yeah, I wonder what he would say to that. Yeah. <laughs> he's is, like, wait, what? How is that your defense? Unless he's talking about Jay. I assume he's talking about Batman. I think he's I talking about Batman. I assume he's talking about Jet Batman, yeah. Jetman. Yeah. Jayman. It's become a central part oh of my God. Jay. mythos. The day doesn't go by when I don't think about subjecting him. Right! But the Batman that we're out. getting in BVS is a and different and Batman. If I do he's that, if fucking I'm lost his mind, basically. <laughs> Like, um, the Joker murders so his adopted son! And and you just <laughs> keep talking over the video. <laughs> Not gonna pause Jay, nope. Apparently. He's so close to the mic, he's getting so mad that the microphone is shaking around. It's like, moving around. He's yelling at him so much, it. the mic's like, like, whoa, whoa. This is yeah. the worst of, like, the Snyderoid sort of infection, where you just, you can't even hear things, you just react. You're just like, wah, wah, wah. Well, yeah, it's, it's, because it, of it, it, it seems like, um, 
you you've assumed that it's arguments you've heard before, and maybe they are arguments you've heard before, and you just weren't receptive to them. But you've totally jumped the gun. You have no idea what the broad point is. And, you know, Jay usually reasons well. Just listen to the fucking thing yeah. that he's saying. How about that? That'd be great. Yeah. The the that's the reason the we're Dark seeing Knight, this Batman. Living in a dream world as well. Stop it. <laughs> Somebody needs to find this fucking kid and, and smack him in the mouth. Oh my um, good god. <laughs> <laughs> that went from 0 to 60 fairly quickly. Oh my god. <laughs> smack them what in the was mouth that? For his crimes against Batman. Are you can deal with that? Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Someone needs to find this kid and smack him in the mouth. Oh my god. I'm That's trying to think of something like... Literally <laughs> I'm gonna say it after a clip of like Winnie the Pooh. It would just be really funny. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it's funny because you're like, why are you so angry? What did Jay do? <laughs> he down. said that there are multiple versions of Batman, and then proceeded to show <laughs> clips. And multiple Unacceptable, Fringy. Unacceptable. You've gone too far. Yeah. First rule of Batman: you don't talk about Batman. You don't talk about other Batman. You just talk about <laughs> your favorite Batman. Oh, and someone's highlighting, it's like, it feels feels like a bit of a sunrise sunset here, like, uh, since EFAP 5 being, you know, Jay's video on me, and now we are watching someone react to Jay, and, <laughs> like, it's defending and do so him, essentially. very poorly. There's not much defense for us to do, we're just, this is just funny, like... Yeah. Andrew World Zach, are you gonna tell me this isn't real? Are you gonna tell me that people can't just put themselves back together when I punch them into little bits? But at this point you may be thinking, Jay, in portrayals Jay, like the Dark Knight. Jay, you're fucking retarded. Yeah, Jay. <laughs> Rude. All of your words and your sentences. He's got all your thoughts. He's got emotions, but he doesn't know how to express them uh, properly. He's just he's just wailing, going nuts. I genuinely would like to ask him at this point in in this moment in reality, just be like, "What was Jay's point?" And he's gonna be like, "He ah, uh, he's he's taking Zach out of context." Like, okay. You're this far into the video, and that's all you got. Does end up killing. At the end of the film, to save the commissioner's son, he kills Harvey Dent. To which I would say, right, this yes, is only one but example. That brings me to. <laughs> you don't know what the example is in favor you of. You don't even know where he's story. going. You don't, yeah. And that was something Jay already said. It doesn't matter, I guess. The distinction. Zack Snyder nice portrays pink. the people criticizing. <laughs> Does that upset you? Nice, nice pink. Why oh, you use red like a man, like I use? <laughs> Yeah, like you gotta use pink. Why blood, you gotta use light red? Blood red. That's real. <laughs> bright blood red. Fucking Cleon Super blood red. red. And then black at the bottom there. Black blood because that's edgy. That's edgy blood. It's very edgy. Fucking nice. It's like pink. it's like venom. <laughs> I like that you put pink in capitals because <laughs> how emphasized it was. <laughs> His portrayal of Batman as saying, oh, my God. oh, Batman killed oh my a God. guy. Someone says to me, like, oh, like, Batman killed a guy. I'm like, fuck. But, Zach, All right. come on. Oh, come God, on I'm, so, I'm getting so aggravated. He doesn't kill a guy, does he? He obliterates these guys with machine guns built into his Batmobile. He performs a fucking airstrike on these guys. Shoots at all these guys. Harpoons this fellow. Lets these guys get blown up. Stabs this guy in the chest. Blows these guys up. And I could go on. Yeah, he I'm surprised <laughs> Jay didn't include the one where he landed the Batmobile on top of a person. Oh, like the that. Oh, head, yeah. a couple murders <laughs> slipped through the cracks. You know, <laughs> and oh, also that dragging man. that car with the people in it around for a <laughs> That was funny as fuck. Fuck! It's just, yeah, for someone really who funny. you know comes in not realizing what kind of Batman they're dealing with, when you see him do that, you're like, oh, that "What was, the uh, fuck?" When I watched that in the theater, I was uh, I was kind of baffled. It's like, wait, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> that that dude's dead. Okay, I, I agree with that one. one. Yeah, he's definitely dead. He said he might be, but, okay. <laughs> Watching the car <laughs> obliterate, and he's like, "Okay, that guy's dead." <laughs> the screen. A fireball. <laughs> I think he was talking about the dude who had the crate thrown at his face. No, it's like, oh, that yeah, actually... I'm commenting on the the funny imagery right now, not necessarily it the. It is funny. Oh, yeah. that guy's dead. Is it's just totally <laughs> bright white. He's, he's literally ashes descending to the ground like a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> you know, no, no, might these guys dead. have families, kids, wives, husbands, mothers. Right, but they chose the wrong side. They chose the wrong side. Jeez, or... do we even need to express oh. where that logic will lead us? They chose the wrong side. This is movie Bob level logic. <laughs> I just gotta say. 
<laughs> they chose the wrong side, so I guess. So do you, uh, do you remember where he said he's doing this because he lost his mind? Now it's they chose the wrong side. Yeah, because you've changed from what he's doing is wrong to, well, look, hold on, all right? <laughs> I look. feel that there is a fair argument to be had that Batman, if you can, you know, dismantle these people without killing them, is that the superior moral option? Um, no! It's like, no, they chose the wrong side! And the decision was to no, know if they chose wrong. You can't wrong. leave them alive to commit more crimes again. And the cycle has to end somewhere. The cycle ends with me. Having machine guns. <laughs> and airstrips. Batman casts fireball. <laughs> and they're day. dealing with if a Batman who has well gone I, I what I'm full the, fucking... The point is that in so like, many portrayals... Don't I don't give a fuck anymore. anymore. What did he say? He, Batman's gone full fucking I don't give a fuck? Full is that what he said? Frontal. Full frontal I don't give a fuck. Because he's talking over the video. Well, like, I was going to say, you, you have to just ignore Jay if ever he talks, which is actually annoying to do, but it's, I, just, I guess that's the way that he set this up. It's very entertaining in terms of not confusing at all. These kids, wives, husbands, mothers. Right, but they chose the wrong the side. I'm, I'm and they're dealing with a <laughs> Batman who has well gone I, I don't know full fucking. Is that in so like, many portrayals I don't Batman, give a fuck he anymore. He's boy, branding criminals. He and he this is a parent from the beginning. Other people from. This is a parent. Oh, parent from the beginning. So that, that doesn't address doesn't... anything that's being said. So if anything, that yeah. confirms what Jay says. Yeah. yeah. I, I... There's not much for us to do with this. It's just like the, yep. point, the point that Jay's making here is it, it isn't. It isn't like that. He's killing people just through the process of fighting them. It's like he's going out of his way, yeah. almost to to just exact vengeance on these people and blow them up, <clears throat> and stab them in the heart. Yeah, call, call him bloodthirsty. It's like, of course he is. Yeah. It's not just killing people. There, there are degrees to which this is. But again, you'd grasp this point if you were actually like stopping and listening and and not talking over it. Because well, you have to let these people do it eventually. It's like you understand you're not defending anything here. Like you're making it much worse. You yeah. you make Snyder's work look so inept that people have to go. He's lost his mind. They deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's oh. like when you when you tap people's knees with the little knee tapper, uh, and it <laughs> kind of lifts up. You know, like that's what you are. You're just. Like you're just it's just a stimulus and response. A That's all it is. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, you're a reflex. Yeah. You're a, a, Which a bipedal reflex. Might uh be good for the people who already agree with you and just hate Jay's video, you know, through its existence alone. Like you'll get some people being like, Yeah, good coverage. But like if anyone listens to you, <laughs> like I don't know if this is gonna gain anything. So, bank. in much the same way that Krypton had its chance, those criminals had their chance? Yep. Those, dude, those Kryptonian embryos chose the wrong side. <laughs> they chose I like the, the, I like the <laughs> idea of that scene playing out with the criminal Superman staring at him. It's like, I have a family! And it's like, well, you had a chance. You had like, your chance! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suddenly it feels a little bit uncomfortable when he could easily yeah. not kill them, yet chooses to kill them. Yep. And he this is a parent from the beginning. Other people from feeling that same pain, and in this version, he probably inflicts that same pain on some other people himself. Which again is a perfectly legitimate road to take that character down. If you want your movie to be dark and edgy and fuck knows you, yeah. Do, now you're sure. screaming and getting and really mad just seems pretty stupid. Now, doesn't it? Well, when now he's he just, quiet when he hears Jay yeah. saying this because he's like, "Wait, what am I? Wait, yeah, what, what, just, what am I doing? You just, you just." Jay has just said, yeah, so you can do this. Meanwhile, you were yelling at him and calling him <laughs> retarded while he was explaining all the way well, up to this point. Specifically, he was yelling at him when Jay was just laying out the facts. It's like, what do we have here? Yeah. It's like, this kill, this kill, this kill. Okay, can it be done? It's like, yeah. yes, it can. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, so disagreeable. Can't handle it. Or explore that potential angle. But surely you have to understand the distinction here. In your movie, Batman didn't kill a guy. I don't in like the this. Dark Knight, he kills. <laughs> <laughs> he just says, "I don't like this." We can tell <laughs> you like don't a like child it. In a new environment, uh, I don't like this. I feel uncomfortable. I don't know why I don't like it. I just know I don't like it. I don't like a this. guy when he has no other choice to save the life of a child. But even though he kills a guy in the movie, he's still portrayed with that strong aversion to killing that we've come to expect from his character. In your movie, he powers through kills like he's going for a high score. That's where so many people <laughs> oh, take man. issue with your movie. But even what's your response to that? We fight. By the way, we yeah. finally see the point Jay is making, or at least the first one. Yeah. 
So now respond to it. What, Jay's distinction is pretty apt, I think. A Batman who has to kill because he's ran out of other options versus a Batman who loves to kill. Yeah. If he did just kill one guy in Batman v Superman, this defense still wouldn't work. Batman is. I have so much to say about this. Then stop, pause it, and <laughs> just say it. Say stuff. Then stop, pause it, and say it. I know this might sound strange, but gather your thoughts for just a moment. <laughs> And we can get through yeah. this together, I promise. I I am I have so many things to say. I'm gonna wait though. <laughs> and having a version of him that takes his famous no killing rule even further than he takes it in the Dark Knight and refuses to kill anyone under any circumstances, you'd still have a believable character. This wouldn't be a dream world. Well, no, it would be a dream world because it's like a sci-fi setting with aliens and fantastical elements, but it wouldn't be a dream world for the reason that you think it would be. Mr. Snyder, you seem to think you're right, but oh you're just God. edgy. You're so <laughs> something that's really funny that I'm noticing here is that it's like, you are providing so little commentary and allowing the video to play for so long that like you you're kind of like not transforming it in any way no which, which there's an um, irony there because he's ripping into it so he's not like yes but at the same time he's still benefiting from jay having made cogent points at a well-edited video because well, <laughs> i could watch i could watch jay's video through this and get a lot of it as long as i just put aside the commentary like i just zone it out but you're not pausing, you're not providing any substantive criticism. You're just kind of playing the whole video and not saying anything. Well, you, you keep talking over it, but, but like, <laughs> there's so many stretches of just nothing. It's just the video playing and he's putting his hands on his head like, oh, and oh the thing is, this is wrong. Oh. He said more when Jay hadn't made his point yet. Now he's saying nothing yeah. when Jay's actually completed some points. Actually making a point, yeah. Um, it's harder to make knee-jerk reflexes to that, maybe. His brain has to sort of do something. Has to there. actually acknowledge and deal with the point, yeah. yeah um, yeah. I just liked Jay's comment there as well. He said, uh, Zach, you're not correct, you're just edgy. Or whatever. <laughs> but the, the yep. way that he's approached yep. the superhero is like, yep. ...represented the issue that people take with your portrayal oh, of this character, man. and then you made a counter-argument that doesn't even work Bro, against the misrepresented uh, version of... He keeps playing the fucking same clip! <laughs> <laughs> he's playing the same clip without audio, but he keeps playing the same clip. It's a reference! He's so mad about that! It's a literal it's reference! So like, how dare it's, you it's, use the image of our Lord and Savior Zack Snyder in vain? I find it really funny Bro. that he's so mad about that clip. <laughs> Specifically. That's all he's got. His brain is like, I've seen that thing several times and I don't like that you're using it over and I over again. Like but the whole idea with the video is to respond to the thing that was said in that clip. And so of course he uses yeah, it as a reference. Muller, you know that. Fringy knows that. And I know that. But does he know that? <laughs> just, is he or aware? is this just like free content for him, essentially? <laughs> seem to think you're right, but oh you're just God. edgy. You've misrepresented the issue that people take with your portrayal oh of this character, man. and then you made a counter-argument that doesn't even work Bro, against you're... the misrepresented uh, version of the character. You're playing the fucking same clip! To. Oh. Same, the same clip! The most same clip! Have with and as Rag said, he's not even playing the clip, it's just the visual. He's like, talking over it, it. yeah. No, no audio. You've just gone, you think Batman doesn't kill? Actually, he just does. And if you disagree, you're living in a dream world. Killing is just a part of life. Everybody does it. And now you're going <laughs> Look at him being a fucking <laughs> I can believe that Zack Snyder thinks that. Killing's a part of life. Everyone does it. Killing is just a part of life. Mm. It's like but the Lion yeah. King or something. I don't know. Fuck it. And Shut the fuck strategy, up. Even oh, yeah. you check the phone while text. the video's playing? Really? God, he's a... Uh... Just gotta the, text the, my mom to see if the nuggies are done. The energy, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this, is a, this is a foul energy. This is what I, I think a lot of people think of us that hate EFAB. E like, this is what they imagine we do. It's just like, it's really, this is polar opposites from what we intend. Because uh, he's just so fucking angry, but he just doesn't know what to do with it. Well, I mean, it's, it's pretty clear at this point that he's entered into this video with super bad faith. Yeah. Um, that he, he's here to play it and then say it's <laughs> stupid, and then have people at his fan base be like, yeah, stupid. His only faith is in his lord and savior, Zack Snyder. Zachariah Snyder. Forever. My mum says I'm not allowed it. 
but she doesn't have to know because <laughs> I bought it at the shop myself. And normally they're supposed to ID you when you buy it, but they didn't ID me because I'm not a teenager. This kid is I'm a so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike me. <laughs> Unlike yeah. me. I am a sophisticated comic enjoyer. Oh, I know I all the away. Batman lore. That, but I still bet you couldn't genuinely look me in the eyes. This guy is insane. Like, he writes with insane capitalized. I don't know what what happened. You know what I mean? Like, I I hope EFAP chat would call us out if we went this crazy on a on a video that's barely said like anything that's not just true. Like, uh, most of what Jay has said is describing events from content. Yep. It's is just a film. Yeah. That's yeah, was... definitely not something Zack Snyder would probably say. Before I go, I'd just like to say a big Before thank I you go, to all my Oh, wow, that's his it's over. <laughs> he's, he's angry it's at like Jay saying it. he's leaving. <laughs> it's it's so funny because he has it. All he said is, this is out of context. Oh, you're retarded. You're retarded. God. Oh, my God. That's it. I'm so angry. Ugh. I got so much to say, but I won't. It's like he's that guy from Destiny who wants to tell you the law, but he won't. <laughs> <laughs> look me in no, the it's tell us the, the law. Guy said, so many things have happened that are amazing. Oh, I, I'll tell you maybe later, but not now. Ah, what the fuck? Ty, please tell us your law. Do you see tell talk me that knows. that's definitely not something Zack Snyder would probably say. Before I go, I'd just like to say a big Before thank I you go, to all my patrons. Oh, the fucking retard. I would like to let you know. Oh, he's <laughs> retired. He's a retard. <laughs> I'm a retard. <laughs> I think his mind started off with saying retarded, but then he changed then he his said, mind I'm a, halfway through yeah. the word. I I'm a he said I'm a, and then he was like, oh wait, I can't be I'm he a retarded. Abort mission, yeah. that's you can't, I'm a retarded. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a retarded. <laughs> Which only works as if you're trying to portray that as something the other person would say. He probably should have but... committed to it. It would have worked yeah. better. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a retarded. Instead of bailing out halfway through. <laughs> 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 No, sir. It is you who are the retarded. I have not yet begun to retard. <laughs> the things I said in this video. Then this I'll check out my uncut Zax. Okay, so let's go find Christian's com. Uh, bro, I don't have time to find Christian's comment in this. He literally searched for like six comments. <laughs> He's like, I don't have yeah, time. Yeah, you do have to just look through six. Come on, bro. You don't even have a Your chat doesn't have a scroll wheel on it yet. <laughs> Slur. Hey, but I am gonna leave a comment. Oh. And I'm gonna say, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> is that, is oh that, is that okay? I, I would like to say. Jay has been nice. right. Oh my. Jay idiot. get destroyed, idiot. Got him. Oh, it's got like seven exclamation points too. That makes you know that he's more powerful. Yeah. He should have said what? 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 Him, but like, I don't want to. I don't want to be the person that I I, I say not to be. <laughs> what? The person Jeez, says people... What do you tell people not to be then? <laughs> oh my say, goodness. Didn't you say people should punch Jay? Like <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah. Punch his kid in the in the mouth. He specified the exact body part, the <laughs> mouth from which all of these lies and heresies spew. <laughs> And believe it or not, that is actually the uh, the place where I was going to end this this part of this guy. He's he's a fascinating one, um, though it's worth oh, mentioning yeah. that Jay, of course, caught wind of this by chance, and um, <laughs> d d d you can find Jay live reacting to it. I don't know exactly what the video is called, but you should be able to find it with a selection of keywords. Um, but of course, it didn't go well for this guy because Jay's fans were like, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> he was just like. Um, <laughs> The rags. Would you like to read uh, this this lad's commentary in a comment section in response to oh, yeah. Jay's coverage? Yeah. Okay. Um. Pop culture corner. Okay, everyone that's coming from JXE, this is a video from months ago. <laughs> a viewer asked us to watch it. I do regret saying some stuff, as that is not our intention here at Pop Culture Corner. <laughs> It's... Oh right! It keeps going. I I sorry. I got to the end of the lo whole line, and there was an exclamation point. Here so my pop. brain's like, "All right, we're done. Time to pause. Next thought incoming." <laughs> but it was not. <laughs> I do regret saying some stuff. Wait, people are saying you need to not... talk in his voice. All right. 
Okay, everyone that's coming from JXE, this is a video from months ago. A viewer asked us to watch it. I do regret saying some stuff. What? As that is not our intention here at Pop Culture Corner. We try to promote, educate, and otherwise inspire people, not focus on hate. This is an example of hate and how it is certainly me. We were still very young and eager. <laughs> Wait. We were very young. <laughs> it was months ago. Wait. What? <laughs> That's like something you say as a joke. <laughs> like like, like sometimes when we're having conversations, someone says, but Rags, didn't you just say? And like, and they'll be, oh, that was just such a long time ago. We can't focus on the past. <laughs> when it was like seconds before, that's the joke. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We're good. We're good. This is an example of hate and how it is certainly me. What? Wait. <laughs> And how, whoa, this, this is an, this is an example of hate and how it is certainly me. We were still very young and eager as a channel. We do not have any ill intent or hate for Jay. If you scroll through our videos, we rarely do anything like this. And we try to be happy. Please. I understand if you're eh, a fan of this person, I'm oh, sorry. We have never brought up another video from this person, and I don't see it happening anytime soon. And then look at what he says, uh, apparently a couple days later, if not one. Now I'm getting tired of it, so we'll do this the other way, I suppose. What? <laughs> it's like, oh no, what does this mean? It sounds so ominous. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that meant that he's like, he's blocked the comments, or if he's, I don't know, he did something. He wasn't happy, of course. You can't blame him, yeah. or I guess you can. <laughs> He just doesn't seem happy as a person. <laughs> he seems upset. But I don't know. It's been it's been months since then. Maybe he's a different person. <laughs> I feel yes, the maturity really of both grown. himself and the channel. They, it is oh, you know when a channel's first started. Every day, you know, day one it's like it's age one. And then day two it's like you doubled your age. That's quite a bit already. Another two days, that's another double. So it makes sense to some degree. Best of luck with your reacting. Um, I don't know that Jay would have been upset at all by this. I think Jay just thought it was fucking hilarious. I would if I saw one of my videos getting that kind of reaction. Um, Snyder people get very upset very easily. We know about this. Um, but since there's no other way to segue this, I will then add on the end of that sentence. You know, a lot of people get angry in a lot of different ways. And, um,. As you were, would, would have seen in that video, it touches on subjects related to Batman, his portrayal, whether he should kill. And so what I've, we've still got videos to come, but we've also got comments to come. Ones that I have picked out as, as EFAP has gone along, because I've been like, this will be an interesting thing to talk about sometime down the line. And um, I believe, we, we remember we streamed with uh, Colin Sanders about the old Batman stuff? With the yeah, I do. Old I Dark do Knight that. Returns, some other things, his video on, uh, yeah. I, 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 it was a fun time. I spotted this comment, and I thought we, we would take a look at it. Uh, I, I don't know, if, Fringy, do you want to read this one? We got lots of reading to do today, so I figure we'll okay. uh, go back right. and forth with it. Um, What's this? Hold on, let me, let me pull this over on the bigger screen. I'm so annoyed by uh, at the adaptation arguments. Yes, how good an adaptation is doesn't say anything about the quality of the writing necessarily. But to say that it's irrelevant is so weird to me. You guys like your hypotheticals, so try this one. I make a movie called Lord of the Rings. Should be the Lord of the Rings book. The Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship. Not his version. Yeah. No, his is the freedom of adaptation, so, my friend. Be, Lord of Rings, Fellowship of Rings. He already got you. He <laughs> caught you in his his trap. Fellowship of Rings fell right, right into it in the trap. <laughs> uh, Lord of Rings, Fellowship of Ring, uh, and use the character names and location names, Etika. However, it's actually the father. Imagine that film didn't already exist. Let's assume it's well-made acting Etika. 
oh, that's that's it, just acting, and et cetera. Oh. Is it a good Lord of the Rings movie? Could you understand Lord of the Rings fans not liking the movie, even though it's well written? Would you agree that Ab using the Lord of the Rings name to tell this story was nonsensical and pointless? Should we stop there? If you start, okay, sure. Um, so I guess on that first sentence where they say, "But to say it's irrelevant is so weird to me." It's like so it's irrelevant to the quality of the writing, if that's what we're discussing. Yes. Um, which is what has been said. But um, so it is irrelevant. Yes. We discuss all kinds of things. Like the I take this as annoyingly as somebody in this like if they were in a Discord call talking about, oh man, what do you think the uh, the spoilers for Spider Man is going to do for the film? You know, I think that's going to affect the enjoyment of blah, blah, blah. We're talking about it, and then um, someone in chat is just like, guys, this has nothing to do with how well written it is. It's like, I know, that's not what we're talking about. And yeah, what what I'm so implying with that relevant. is. We, we will happily talk about it or not talk about it. Like it, it was just whenever it comes up. If, for example, um, an adaptation of the Lemony Snicket books comes out... Actually, fuck it, let's just say a movie adaptation of the Buffy show. Then I'm going to want to talk about how it probably shits on the series. Fringy will add in comments as well. But as all three of us will be aware, that, that, that discussion is its own discussion. Meanwhile, yeah, so I, I guess this is... So I was gonna yeah. say, so take Dune for example. Let's pretend Rags, you haven't read it, and and Fringy hasn't read it, and I haven't read it, and we watch it as a film, we judge it. If someone was like, "Where the fuck was the adaptation discussion?" I'd be like, "We're not doing it because we don't yeah, have the capacity." We don't know. Um, yeah. I guess it's hmm. so saying like it's say, but to say it's irrelevant is so weird to me. It's like it'll be relevant if it's relevant. It's gonna be dependent on like other factors. But if we're talking strictly about how well written BVS is, we're not gonna reference the comics at all, and we don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of the weird thing about this comment. It's like, why are you annoyed that it's being omitted from the discussion? Because there are plenty of discussions where adaptation is omitted. You know how many films are based on books? And I'm confident how many of those haven't been read by you? Mm -hmm. Like, specifically? Oh, Hill House. House. We always you bring don't up talk Hill about House. It. Probably and, most. And, it's, and it's, it, is a, it is irrelevant a lot of the time. Why are you annoyed that we're choosing not to talk about it? Well, and it gets more interesting because You're not this about a thing that I really like and that I think deserves reverence. This hypothetical they've given, I'm pretty sure we've given it. Um, because the Colin yeah. Sanders EFAP was that after 150? It was right. I think. Uh, I think it was before was 150, before? right? Fuck, like my yeah. memory's all blurred. Well, anyway, um, during 150, the third part, I'm pretty sure I posed a question like this, where I was like, "Let's take something that we know is incredibly well written and just change all the names of the characters and the title," which, by the way, is what Hill House is. As a show, a show yeah. that everyone seems to really like. It's a show that shits all over the source material. And 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 I said when I first discovered the show, I was looking at IMDb reviews, and I was like, oh no, there's lots of low reviews. Why? And it's like this is not like the book. This is a shit on the book. This is bad for the book. And you know, the obvious question comes up: Why would you do this? It's really rude. And it's like okay, and we can talk about that. Doesn't change how well written Hill House is, though. No, because if the logic is that it becomes better or worse written because of the name. Like, you just change the name, all of a sudden it becomes better in terms of its writing. That sounds to me like a really bad system and if for trying we, to figure out what is good or bad. And I think another scenario I gave was if we found out that Tolkien actually adapted his books from comic books, the first ever ones written a bazillion years ago, but he kept them hidden. They were called Lord of the Rings, but the story in them is all Star Wars. And he just said, he was like, I'm adapting this into the book. It's like, do the books become bad now? Like, No. That's, yeah, it's, it's stupid. I, I do like the comment. You guys like your hypotheticals. It's like, yeah, I do. We love them. Hypotheticals do. are great. Hypotheticals Analogies, are great. hypotheticals, love them. And whenever people get upset about them, it's usually because they don't want to bite the bullet on a particular position that they actually hold. And so, oh, that I love can never happen. That would, that, that's ridiculous. That would never happen. That's, that's, not that's, that's a good point, actually. Oh. I, I don't know what just came over me. So the, you're right. That is ridiculous. Now, that's right. our logic. Now, he's because his question is, is this a good Lord of the Rings movie? And so, well, if we can. That's not our. Well, if we rejig the question to mean. Exactly. So, if we rejig the question to mean, is this a good, adapt a faithful adaptation of the books, The Lord of the Rings, then I'd be like, oh, well, no. It's not faithful at all. And then it's like, could you understand Lord of the Rings fans not liking the movie at that point? It's like, of course, we have n literally, you can dislike a thing for any reason you want. Um, yeah. You know, depending on it, we can make fun of it or appreciate it. For example, there are plenty of people who just like cannot watch like war movies because they just like, and there's veterans who can't watch war movies. It's just like, it's too much. And if, if you're like, 
I, I, I do not like movies like that. I can't handle it. I just be like, that's fine. Um, I know plenty of family members yeah. who cannot watch horror movies. They're just like, not doing it. I'm just like, it's People totally fine. People have preferences. People have I was experiences by in color. In my basement once. I, can't, I can't watch this. It's too close to home. Exactly. Well, that, um, yeah, that, that, that's never been a thing about EFAP, though, or, or the standard. Obviously, people approach stories with their experience and their preferences, and that's totally fine. Um, but it's, a di it's, it's different. It's a different conversation. And then you got, would you agree that abusing the Lord of the Rings name to tell the story was nonsensical and pointless? So let me ask you this. If we, we take someone who adores Hill House, the show, and then a fan of the books is like, do you not agree it was nonsensical and pointless to use the Hill House IP to do this? I would have to imagine, just by thinking about it, that is how it got made, by using that IP name. Uh, mm -hmm. People know Hill House more than they know <coughs> if he called it something else, like something more generic. He used it to uh, sell the project, and then he made the story he wanted to make. I think you're allowed to say that's a dick move. Um, and you can make it specific that he's using the fans of a different IP to sell his own story. I think that's fair. I just want to separate out whether or not that means the story is poorly written or not. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing about that is there is one Hill House, the Haunting of Hill House book, uh, as far as I know. Meanwhile, we're looking at a lot of content for Batman. Um, and so I guess unless you're specific about what you're adapting, like the difference between Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man and, and like Spider-Man colon, you know, whatever. Spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can get down to more specifics, but to be like you're abusing the name Batman when you create something like BVS, I'd be like, which Batman are you abusing? Is it all of them? I don't think it's all of them. Gets a little bit more complicated. Um, but again, I don't mind if that's your reasoning. If you're like, I know Batman from the comics, and he shouldn't be fucking shooting people, I am done with this. I'd be like, alright. Uh, that doesn't bear on whether or not it's well written, and that is why we don't bring it up. Typically. But, uh, sometimes it comes up, it's fun to talk about, and that's what the Colin Sanders EFAP was yeah. about to a degree. I think we talked about it a lot. Continue. Uh, if you start from zero, and name your story the same as an existing story in another medium, okay. It's reasonable for people to expect you to actually tell that story and not your own fanfic. Exceptions would be films named after the main character, possibly some others. I'm talking in a general sense here. Of course, there are always exceptions. Uh, MCU Civil War works because the MCU versions of the characters have already been established. Ooh, already Give, in trouble now, now. Now, I already saw the first exceptions would be films named after the main character. Why? Why? Yeah. Mm, what if the Steve Rogers could have been the name of the first Captain America movie? Yeah. Well, what if the Lord of the Rings first movie was called Frodo and the Shire, and then it's just got nothing to do with the books at all? Yeah. Is that okay? Well, what if, what if theoretically they named the first Doctor Strange movie after Doctor Strange, and they just called it Doctor Strange? Oh. But then, hmm. What if they if they did that if they went down that route? And it was just about him being be. a regular doctor, yeah. <laughs> He's just yeah. a regular doctor. <laughs> no Another magic successful bullshit. operation, doctor. Yeah. yeah, I'm pretty good at what I do. I like being good at what I do. So, I like being able to cure people and being good. Uh, this is what we start to call as well. Like, there's some holes appearing in your logic here um, that worry us, and this is why we don't tend to use this as anything of an indicator of quality because we're just like, what the <laughs> hell are we dealing with here? Um, also, I, I like that Civil War just gets exempt. A lot of people exempt Civil War. And it's like, because I don't it think it should be, yeah. considering a lot of people will maintain that Civil War is bad because it goes against the comic. But simultaneously, yeah, people, people are like, no, that. that's fine. Um, people, yeah. So I let them have fun. If you hate it for that reason or don't hate it for that reason, whatever, that's fine. Go nuts. It doesn't affect how well written it is. Uh, I'll say it's reasonable for people to expect you to actually tell that story, not your own fanfic. Sure. Yeah. I, I don't, when have we ever implied otherwise with that? that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah, if you made, if, if a movie was going to come out in a few years called, I don't know, um, what's the, the Lords of Discipline, <laughs> and it wasn't anything at all like the book in any way whatsoever, yeah, I would be reasonable to expect it to be like the book. But if it wasn't, I'd be like, all right, I guess this is just something different. Huh. All right. I was kind of excited to see that, but I guess we'll check this one out. I'd be curious then if the logic works in reverse. Like if I called something, let's say, Descent on Doom, and you'd be like, okay, what's, what is that? And I'd be like, it's Lord of the Rings, basically. I just adapted it. I just called it that instead. Like, is that a problem? I guess that'd be okay. I'd assume that's okay, yeah. 
And of course, what if you what if there is a book that gets adapted into a film that is not faithful to the source material, and then somebody adapts that film, like they remake that film, but it is basically identical to the book. Oh, uh, the the one I like to bring up because it's super interesting is Doctor Sleep. Sleep. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that adapting the sequel to The Shining while adapting the sequel to The Shining, the book, the movie, trying to combo them, and it's from what mm. I gather from super fans, it's a bit of a mess. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I don't know. So the the first thing I'd have to say about any of this is like I don't understand what we've said that contradicts this stuff. Really, I don't know what you're upset about. We just tend not to talk about it. And but if people want to talk about what they like or dislike when they're on the cast, like go right ahead. And if they say, like, oh, I've enjoyed your discussion on Dune, guys, but fucking hell, it's such a bad adaptation, we'd be like, oh, okay, like, uh, yeah, all right, yeah, I I, I can't really add to that. Um, we'll take away from it. I I just be like, hmm. Um, and this applies to everything. I've not read through all the Batman comics, so when someone says it is inaccurate, I'm like, okay. Um, so the final statement is, give your own story its own name and there's no problem. It's like, what a weird system. The I mean, name determines. So again... I don't even know if it's possible for a name to impact the quality of the story. I don't see how... Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I his see. point is it can impact people's expectations, and it's just like, true. Yeah. yeah. But a lot and of things can impact your expectations, like trailers and marketing and who's in the yeah, cast, who's it making it. And... Yeah. I, I don't know what to say about, like, uh, so, so you know, like, that scenario I just said, if a wizard came down and said, yo, if we don't do this with Hill House, it doesn't get made. It's like, damn. Yeah, then, sorry, we, we gotta do this then. <laughs> and, like, I prefer that it's made than not, so I, I, I guess, I, I guess we have to take that, 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 that element that sucks, that there's gonna be people who are tricked into thinking that it's gonna be a faithful adaptation of the book, but it's not. Um, presumably, you could find out. I don't know what Mike Flanagan said about it running up to it. There's no way he would have claimed it was a faithful adaptation unless he's a fucking big old liar. Um, yeah, do you want to do the last one, I guess? Oh, uh, I don't know why the EFAP crew is okay with Batman killing people in the DCU because why does he engage in fist fights when he could end the fight easier with a gun? It breaks Batman. It's why does he engage um, in this fight? Why? So this is oh, this yeah. is interesting because like <laughs> I didn't notice that. the the primary argument, which seems like they don't disagree with us on, which is that he can kill people. When you do the reasoning stuff, I don't know that I necessarily disagree with that. It seems that he should have better technology to deal with people if he's so bloodthirsty. Like, why doesn't he have a yeah. rifle? I guess. But that's just inconsistent within the film. Yeah, like that. Like I don't Batman, feel like this. It doesn't. I'm totally uh, prepared to kill everybody in this room. I don't have a bat gun. Yeah, um, I, so I guess in a sense, like, I agree. Uh, I don't think we ever went against that in our coverage, did we? I don't think so. I think, I think we I were think more so just blown is, away is the... by the killing. <laughs> yeah. It is, uh, it is, um, it is this pretty is what this surreal. Batman does. This is what this Batman does. And, like, we, we've we gotten... We, we've, we've complained a shit ton about the characterization in all of Snyder's films for all of them. Oh, yeah. Like, outside of whether or not he's killing people. Uh, but uh, it was kind of weird to end it with it breaks Batman. I guess they just mean the character Bruce Wayne in the, in the, in the movie. Um, makes him look kind of silly. But uh, I don't disagree, necessarily. Yeah, he should be, he should be more equipped to better kill people faster. Um, yep. Especially if he was able to get his Batwing. It's like, he must have rifles at home. I don't know why he wouldn't have picked a few up. Um, you can't even argue that he did it for stealth when he did what he did with the fucking, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, so hopefully that clears that up a little bit. Um, but we we actually fresh off the presses a different complaint about our adaptation Ooh. argument from the subreddit, Ooh. and this doesn't regard Batman. Well, I guess it does regard oh, Batman nice. a little bit, but it's mainly oh, about Spundo wow. Man. Spundo uh, man. Of course. This is. I don't Spundo know. If, since we're still on adaptation, Spundo do you want to take it from you? Ah, uh, sure. Um, let me just close that. So to be fair, the title of this okay. one is regards to specifically you, Fringy. So. Oh, is it? Okay. Mm. Um. I like Homecoming, and I think it's a good movie. Uh, part of me greatly dislikes. I this grammar and punctuation do what you can for you uh, greatly dislikes because it's not really a spider-man movie because they change so much so it, much 
They changed so much, it really is Iron Boy. Iron Boy! Iron <laughs> but again, Boy. I still think it's a good movie. And when I separate it from the Spider-Man comics, I, uh, uh, I agree that a bad adaptation does not make the film itself bad. However, I think Fringy is bullshitting when he says that there is no definitive Spider-Man and that 616 doesn't count because he's too different. Um, if you read 616 Spider-Man, it is the most popular and the one 99 adapta- uh, 99% of adaptations take from because uh, it is seen as the definitive version of Spider-Man. Also, 616 Spider-Man has always been pretty consistent with its story and lore and characters. Sure, there's usually some slight changes in personality when the new writer comes, but usually they are very minor and it is the same Spider-Man. It's not like a new writer comes along and all of a sudden Peter's father is Tony Stark and his personality is a depressed emo who never makes jokes. No, in all runs of 616 Spider-Man, he is the same guy as Marvel has a status quo for him. Also, a lot of big changes that do happen to 616 Spider-Man are temporary to shake up the status quo to go back to normal. Like Spider-Man was rich and in charge of a company, but that only lasted about mm. 30 issues over a 600-issue comic book. For reference, 30 issues would be about three years, nearly. <laughs> um, wow. It was quick. It was uh, because there's usually an issue an issue per month. Um, all the time, Spidey had a car, but again, that only lasted I like that that's considered a significant like thing. <laughs> Spidey has a car. All the time, they call themselves Spider to detach him from his emotions and humanity during the Clone Saga. However, once again, they return to the status quo for Spider-Man. There is an established status quo of Spider-Man 616 with big changes usually being temporary and reverting back to the status quo with few exceptions. This status quo has been established in the original run of Spider-Man. Yeah, I know. Please mix it up. And has been pretty consistent over the years. Uh, Over the year. Okay, over the years. That is the definitive Spider-Man. Fringy is completely wrong. When he says six, uh, Earth 616 Spider-Man is too different to ever get a definitive version of the character. Sorry for the rants. I just hate how Friggy cries at every change to Batman from the comics. But oh, then defends the Spider-Man do. changes by saying there's no definitive Spider-Man. So you can't adapt him properly. When you use the exact same arguments to all of Friggy's complaints of changes to Batman characters and lore in Batwoman. Put simply, there is an established status quo of Spider-Man 616 with big changes usually being temporary and reverting back to the status quo with few exceptions. This status quo has been established in the run of the original Spider-Man and has been, you've said this already, and has been pretty (laughs) consistent over the year that is the defense. You, I I feel like that last sentence is just copy-pasted, like, from things that has already earlier, yeah. Um... Fringy is completely wrong when he says uh, Earth 616 Spider-Man is too different to get a definitive version of the character. Yeah, that's literally the same one as in the paragraph too. Also, hi, Rags. Hello, hi. Um, um, interesting. So uh, I, feel like you've, I feel like it's missed the... I think, because the problem is, like, I can't remember exactly what I would have said, but I think the point I would have made is that... You, what I don't know, what if I just decided that my adaptation of Spider-Man is that arc where he was rich and in charge of a company. Or like, Ooh. what if I picked the Spider-Man arc where it was that he had all of his like personality altered to um uh, during like the Clone Saga or something? Would people be cool with that? Or Does like, what, what am I pulling a, from? I got a, a status quo is descriptive, not prescriptive. We don't return to something because it is the status quo. That's, yeah. Right? A status quo. You could change the status quo by just doing different things consistently uh, into the mm-hmm. future and that will become the new status quo yeah uh, there's two significant things to clarify for this. like one fringy have you ever said the batwoman's writing is bad because it isn't sticking to batman no i I, I think i've always been pretty explicit that i just hate it yeah like he, i yeah. just really don't it's like awful. it. he doesn't like it yeah uh, it's very um, especially when you it, it <laughs> you can say that this show is really bad and also this show uses other things and craps all over them and then it's right to prop itself so, up so like for instance with uh in, in in batwoman it's really annoying when they're like oh bruce killed the joker that just pisses me off um mm-hmm. if there were actually a criticism within the story it would be in relation to like batman like it's frustrating that batman is um woefully uh stupid seemingly in the well, in the course. batwoman universe incompetent very incompetent it seems incongruous with what's been established in that world but i hate it personally 
That's well, yeah, my when, problem with it. If, they, have, if, if for example, if they're, if they're like, ooh, big bad villains come back to Gotham this episode, it's like, who? And he goes, Mr. Freeze. We all go, oh, no. Yeah, and it's just if someone was like, well, yeah, they'd be like, guys, they haven't even written him yet. Like, how can you complain? And I'd be like, I'm not, that's, I, it could be good. We always have that. It could be good. Could be good. But like, I'm not looking forward yeah. to my memory of Mr. Freeze at his best or whatever, which includes Batman and Robin, is going to be ruined by Batwoman. I can't handle that. He's yeah, like, uh, it's just it's, it's upsetting. Yeah, it's just, I, I get annoyed by all kinds of things, and we're supposed to be having fun while reacting to stuff in Batwoman. It's not a serious breakdown of how much this isn't like the co like. What do you think that we'd be appealing to? I guess he thinks that like, you're appealing to what Batman should be. I guess his logic would be that I have a Batman bias that I don't have with Spider Man. Um, um, even if that were true, that's valid. As, uh, what I mean by that is, like, I'm biased in favor of everyone sticking to how, like, Buffy should exist, right? If they made an adaptation, I'm not with Charmed. And you'd be like, wow, hypocrite. I'd be like, well, no, I, that's just my preference, and I can explain that. I right. watched one of them, and I didn't watch the other one. Yeah, exactly. That's it. I mean, as as for the thrust of the... I think the, the broad point was, so, there are a lot... So... Yes, there is like the main continuity of Marvel comics, and there's Spider Man in that. There are a bunch of other different versions of it, like Spectacular Spider Man and all of these different ones from different universes. Um, so I think the point you extract from that is so I could adapt like a Spider Man that is different from the main Spider Man, and is that bad? Like if I do Spectacular Spider Man, but I don't call it that, is that a problem or is that good? Or would it be bad because I need to put the spectacular prefix in front of it? And then once I do that, the film becomes good. Mm. So that's like a really inconsistent standard. But even then, I just don't know how much I believe that over the course of like 70 years of comics, that there weren't substantial changes where like he was very different and that you could pull from those. Or even that there was just a gradual change, that like he gradually shifted back and forth between certain attributes that just kind of got ramped up a little bit and then slowed down, and people just didn't notice because it was so gradual. Like, it where is... you could pick a comic from the 60s, from the 80s, from the 1000s, and you just put them together. It's like, well, he is kind of different here. And it wasn't because there was a deliberate choice. Like, they may well have wanted to return to he's poor, he's down, but, you know, he's a goofster and he tries to do the best that he can. He loves his family and responsibility. Um, but, but it just naturally, there was, like, changes that happened gradually over the course of the comic book and if there were changes then, then you pulled from like one era and then you pulled from the other and then somebody could say it's a bad adaptation based on their memory of that particular era it's well, um, just we've got examples yeah. of this changing because the obvious thing that we might say is ah, i see so the definitive quote-unquote spider-man is determined by what everyone mostly like like what most people end up liking the most like, so what if that... Sh that sounds like shaky ground. Definitive Spider-Man might change. Yes. Now, uh, I watched yep. Ankula's Christopher Lee uh, videos both recently, and uh, he highlights Bella Lugosi is the one that made Dracula, like, this very famous figure into film, and then Christopher Lee reinvented it. He came in, and mm -hmm. he made him more charming, and there was a sexual element that wasn't quite there before. Uh, now, this is me just going from things that I, I got from the video. I only need it to be theoretical. It doesn't actually need to have happened. Point being... He changed Dracula. Dracula is no longer the same. And then you have the Bram Stoker Dracula, and if someone was like, that ain't Dracula, Christopher Lee's Dracula, and then someone goes, no, that ain't the Dracula, it's Bela Lugosi Dracula. And then someone goes, no, it's Dracula from Van Helsing. The 2000, is it three movie? <laughs> I can't even remember which Four. year. 2004. Four. You'd be like, that's definitive Dracula. Um, or the Dracula from the Buffy series. is like, that's the definitive Dracula. It's like, well, I mean, there's a little, and if someone said no, because there isn't a definitive Dracula, I'd be like, there isn't really a definitive anybody. No offense. Well, um, and I mean, because uh, when it comes to Spider-Man, there are a lot of people. I would wager that more people have watched the Raimi Spider-Man films than have read Spider-Man comics. Um, yeah, I might be wrong about that, but that wouldn't surprise me if more people have. And I bet you there's someone like, web shooters, what? He shoots him out of his wrists. Right. What? Why did they change that? He, um, he shoots him out of his wrists. That's what he does. And yeah, so I appreciate people being upset when it's not like the Spider-Man they like the most from the comics. I just think it's a strange argument when you say it's not Spider-Man. And you're like, which one? And they go, no, no, Spider-Man. Definitive Spider-Man. you're like, um... Okay. Well, yeah, because at that point, it's like, well, which one cuts? And, and it's just, when you think about what people's perception of Spider-Man is broadly, a lot of it's going to get pulled from the films. 
Uh, a lot of it's going to get pulled from the comics as well. For some people, it's going to get pulled from the game that came out recently, um, or certain animated television shows, um, or just things that they hear from people about what Spider Man is. Like, people are going to be latching onto different things. To say that, like, if you got everybody in a room who's ever heard of Spider Man and asked them who Spider Man was, that you would just across the board get a very consistent answer. I don't know. I think you just get, yeah, he shoots webs, crawls up the walls, and that's like the Uncle most ben. that you would get. You maybe get some people say Ben and responsibility, uh, and then it would start to go further. further. Like the amount of people who say hey, poor, right? Him being poor, that's like really important. I wonder how many people would be sitting there like, is it? Huh? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe. Yeah, because like once you veer away from core values, you start to get complicated. It's like, does he have to be poor to learn about responsibility? Couldn't we have stories where he learns about it through right. having been rich? Exactly. So it's like when you ask people, does Batman kill? Most of them are going to say no. But the reasons why might vary depending on which interpretation it is. It might be because it's strictly like, well, that's not my job. That's the police's job. I don't want to do that. It might be, I'm scared that if I do that, I'm going to cross a line I can't come back from. It might be, well, I don't want to do to other people what happened to my family, my parents. So you can still latch on to the, um, um, you can latch on to like the core point. But even then you can start tweaking and messing around with that. Yeah, I feel like you'd want to mess with all of it, right? And then you want maybe a dark Spider-Man where he learns the alternative message or something like that. Um, the well, after Uncle Ben, he's like, clearly there's there's no fucking justice in this world or something. You know, he, he goes, you you can. I think Jay referenced how like a Batman story could end up being that he decides to inflict the very pain that was given to his parents could instead end of that way, yeah. And if someone was like, yeah, but that's not Batman, I'd be like, okay, um. That sounds not a like different you're version of Batman we're not talking about. It would be fine if not for the fact that I'm like, are you it makes it sound like you're saying it's worse as opposed to saying it's different. And then what am I calling him? It's like it's the superhero name's literally Batman, but I can't call him that apparently because uh this the, the biggest shame for the, for me with this is uh, Miles Morales. Uh Into the Spider-Verse is awesome. Um but like a lot of people like you can't call him Spider-Man. It's like Yeah, okay. he's not real Spider-Man. It's like, well, he's called Spider-Man, he shoots webs, he crawls up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, 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 and there's the thing, a pragmatic fucking argument here of just like I can't call I gotta what do I call him it's like Black Spider-Man or something I'm like oh man okay like, well I'm not doing that because he's called <laughs> Spider-Man <laughs> that's, that's his name that, well that's what that's what Luke uh, that's what Luke Fox calls him I'm sure uh, oh yeah that's right yeah yeah so I guess the only other thing I'd probably want to mention, that, like that opening of being like, it's so much, it really is Iron Boy. I'm starting to, like, the only thing you tempt us to do when you say that is like, as opposed to Uncle Boy, I guess. Like, because it's, it's just as like disingenuous both ways. Um, he is Iron Boy, if Iron Boy is defined as he has help from a mentor who this time happens who to be Tony Iron Stark. Man. Yeah. Because um, of course there's the shitty arguments of like, he doesn't do anything for himself in his movies. It's like, he does, and it's so awkward. Because, like, Homecoming, it just shits all over that perspective. Like, what does he do with the finale? He's like, he takes down the villain himself with his own gear. With no support. And you're like, yeah, but the Vulture is a Tony Stark bad guy. It's like, did no, you watch the movie? It's clearly not Tony uh. Stark's bad guy. So yeah, um, I don't know. I, I, cause I, this is a, will be a constant argument, and I just hope that this clarifies something and, and, uh, as we go. Well, but, um, I, 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 I can hope for I can hope. Will, but, <laughs> um, yeah. but speaking of Spider-Verse, this was accounted for. I had a look in the comment section and someone clarified the difference and how we, we'd still be wrong even with referencing that. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Into the Spider-Verse is an entire movie about what it means to be Spidey. It wasn't until Miles learns a lesson that he's able to grow into himself and the directors won an award because to signify this, they animated him in 24 frames instead of 12 to make his movement smoother. Spidey loses something, uh, someone extremely important and close to him, as a result of real or self-believed inaction. Peter letting the robber go and Miles freezing up, uh, letting his uncle be shot. Each learn that when good men do nothing, people get hurt. MCU Spidey lacks this as Tony didn't die because of his inaction, and we don't see as much establishment of their relationship. Peter and Miles have known Ben and Aaron their entire life, so the audience can assume that establishing shots retroactively apply to their relationship. We see the beginning of Peter and Tony's relationship, and what we see is the one lesson in Homecoming, a fight in Civil War, and joining him on Infinity War and Endgame. It's not enough to have Tony replace Ben. 
MCU Peter is also weaker in terms of agency. 616 Peter is a genius who can calculate exactly how much webbing he needs for each application in real time. <laughs> Homecoming establishes Jeez. that Peter just asked the Stark suit to figure it out for him. Since web slinging is just weaker flight, there's no reason, uh, no reason not to slap anyone in an Iron Man suit with cables and replace Peter. Just, Man. just finish it. And we'll go through it. Finish it. We'll go through it. Yeah, these bits of character that no longer exist are why we can tell the difference between Thor and Cap with Molnir. But Peter is just Iron Man Junior. Many characters could fulfill his role and allow a faithful Spider-Man to exist. Marvel could even rehash the Anthony Stark plot, like they did uh, in Civil War, and have a younger Stark take over and struggle with filling in his own shoes. People who want to see Spider-Man want to see Spider-Man, not some guy with spider powers. Since there's no requirement to name him Peter, choosing to do so comes with an obligation of faithfulness, which is why people are upset. Man, there is so much wrong with that one. Yeah, this one's a bit more egregious than the first. <laughs> this is the... Christ, yeah. So, uh, so the, the overall message seems to be that what makes Miles Spider-Man is that he similarly loses someone through inaction. And apparently, judging from this, that is the core aspect of Peter Parker but also Spider-Man, if you want someone else to be Spider-Man too. To be Spider-Man, you have to lose somebody through inaction. Yes. I do wonder if that's something that if I asked people what is what defines Spider-Man, if they would say that, but... Well, it's interesting because we pick up with uh, with Peter in the MCU as he's got that lesson down. The MCU he's challenges... He's got that lesson, yes. The MCU's point is to challenge that perspective, which is what I appreciate about Homecoming so much. Homecoming's like... Oh yeah? You should never, like, not act and stuff? It's like, hmm. I wonder if we can make it so that that sort of drive can lead to worse results. Um, and it's, it just needs refining, which is what all arcs pretty much do. They just they take a thing yeah. that you had, and then they're like, there's a few flaws here, you maybe want to alter it. Um, so, what have we got, exactly? Um, Tony didn't die because of his inaction. It's like, that, that for some reason is a problem for... Defining him as a Spider-Man? So, so, in order for MCU Spider-Man to be defined as Spider-Man and not Iron Boy, he would have to have Tony die through his inaction. And you're telling me that in that alternate world where that happens, you're still not going to be calling him Iron Boy? I fucking doubt I don't it. know if I buy that. <laughs> um, and interestingly, like, Spidey in, in uh, Homecoming Civil War, Infinity War, are all, he's all very trigger-happy. He's like, I will never do inaction, basically. And then we, we arc yeah. him in terms and of look he's at the consequences. so Yeah, he's so exhausted and ridden with PTSD that he doesn't even want to do anything anymore. He just wants to go on fucking vacation. We're doing something different. Um, but we're still in the same realm. I feel like the spirit is absolutely there. Like we're exploring these ideas with oh, yeah. different lenses and uh, alternate angles. Um I it's found it's not Ben though. I found it super interesting that it says We've got Homecoming, Civil War, and him joining him in Infinity War and Endgame, but it's not enough to have Tony replace Ben when Ben is in what half it's an hour one movie of both of those the movies. First act. Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. That for some reason we've defined that like the relationship with, with Tony and and Peter isn't meaningful enough. It's like if you Even say so. Even though it's over the course of several films. And yeah, it's you can't evolving and changing. You wouldn't be able to appeal to like, yeah, but there's a history with Tony and ben, uh, with Ben and Peter that we're aware of. It's like there's a history there for them too. There's years between these films. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I, I just I just feel like that's your bias slipping through. You you can't handle it. You've literally mm -hmm. defined how much more time and more relationship we see with them, but it's just not enough. It's like okay. Also, and then and then we see the next point of anybody just put him in a suit, and it's like, dude, Spider Man is a lot. The whole point in Homecoming is cringe. that he is more than the suit. Like, that's the that's point a, of That's that an film. explicit line, is that it's yeah. the person himself. That's why it matters that he's in the suit. Yeah. You um, couldn't just put anybody in that Spider-Man suit and, like, and have them succeed. Because, again, you need to be strong enough to, like, actually do the web swing. He created the webbing. He made it himself before Tony ever exactly. made the suit exactly. And for him. the idea that he fumbles with the webbing is much more something that much I appreciate compared to yeah. he's a genius who can calculate how much webbing he needs for each application in real time. It's like, oh yeah, god, fuck that's, off with your OC. That is sure he's very the yeah. That's when the when Rag says his has an armor suit and can fly. I say, well, mine eats armor suits, so get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, okay. mine's immune to bullets, and he's faster than light, and he can teleport. 
Mine's a genius who can calculate exactly. Oh, it's like, like that's, that's what makes you a genius, I guess. Yeah, like, put him in an Iron Man suit with... So the big thing that I think it's safe to assume is that the reason why Spider-Man can do a lot of the web-slinging is very strong and very good reflexes. Normal people can't do what he does, even if they have the webs. Yeah. Yeah, There's and, no and uh, Homecoming has him falling asleep in the lesson about physics, because he knows this shit. Yeah, he's figured it all out. He figured it all out with his little webbing because he's a smart boy, but he isn't so smart that he can figure he's, out exactly it's how the classic, much webbing he He's got a lot of book smarts. He's got fuck all street smarts. Yeah, and that's what we see him learning about in Homecoming. We see it all in that movie montage of all these mistakes he's made. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're just watching a kid become an adult, which is really neat and doesn't get appreciated because everyone wants to see Spider-Man, meaning Spider-Adult. Yeah, uh, we, we ain't there yet. No. Um, yeah, because you've got Homecoming establishes that Peter just asks the Stark suit to figure it out for him. And how does that work out? It doesn't work out. It doesn't yeah, work out. It fails. A lot and of it he fucks gets, up. He loses. He screws it up. Um, since web slinging is just weaker, weaker flight, that's a really interesting comment, by the way. Web slinging is just weak, weaker flight. It's like, I mean... I guess technically you can argue I mean, it's that I, it's, why? I feel like we're dealing with very different applications. Yeah, there's the things that web slinging can do that flight cannot. Oh yeah, if we're yeah. yeah yeah if we're talking about just in form in terms of movement, sure. But the webbing has applications. It's a tool. Yeah, he uses it in fights. He uses it to like repair things. He uses it to restrain people. He has different types of webbing. And so they go on. <laughs> There's no reason not to slap anyone in an Iron Man suit with cables and replace Peter. I can give you a few reasons that are strictly about character, yeah. which is the whole fucking reason. You don't want anyone mm -hmm. in an Iron Man suit. That's like Tony's whole no, concern. You want, you want a really good person. Yeah. A responsible person. And Peter, he's, he's working. He's getting and, there. He's becoming more responsible. And it says that these bits of character no longer exist are why we can tell the difference between Thor and Cap with Mjolnir. And it's like, wait, you think there's just nothing for Peter when we've these movies are all about him as a person? Yeah. They tell us exactly what he values and how he goes. He's like, he's, he's going off road in Homecoming and in Far From Home and he has to come back because he's, he's learning, as you say. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Marvel could even rehash. That's fine. Um, and yeah, and then to end it with, this is why people are upset. It's like actually, it isn't. Uh, if you ask everybody why hard. they're upset, they all have different reasons. Um, I'm sure they they broadly agree with a lot of these things. But like, you'll have a passionate group of people declare that Peter never fucking does anything himself in Homecoming, and then you go, what about the time where he does? And then they're all like, um, it's not enough though. No. And you're like, okay. You were so passionate. It seems like you don't even remember what happened in the movie. But that's fine. It's okay. We'll be you're here. Like, uh, <laughs> he's like, hi. He doesn't know what he's angry at. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, the, the, that's it for the adaptation portion of the multimedia medley. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I don't know what else we can do sometimes. <laughs> that is because we keep we just keep going over the argument over and over and over again, oh, yeah, trying yeah. to re clarify, trying to address the holes that people think that they're poking through to, to clear, you know, fill them back up again, but then give it a couple of weeks and then it just goes back to the same arguments again. I know we piss people off with it, but it's the best that we can do in terms of this. Yeah. It seems like the most consistent way to look at all of this, so we'll have to keep checking out the arguments as they come up, but uh. A lot of them seem to rely on just not having listened to what we said anyway, so I'm just like, alright. We've never taken issue with people getting annoyed by it. Like, you can no, get annoyed by it fine. all you want. Be annoyed by it. Just don't say that it's bad because it's not the same. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. say it's bad because you don't remember the movie. Now. <laughs> uh, going back to Watch Together. We're not, we're not, yeah, oh, we're not, I, we're not, we're not, we're not done with Watch Together. Not, <laughs> we're going to be popping back, back and forth with this boy. I'm still in it. Like I said, multimedia yeah. medley. I'm going to call it That's multimedia right. medley two if we do this again. Just the next time, all yeah. over the place. So this was sent to me on Discord, and I don't care about the the wider context. It's just one particular argument that really interested me. And I ended up, I think I was going to call with you guys, and I told you about it. So it's just like he said this, and you guys like what the fuck. So now we'll watch it actually Super happen. The Red Ugh. Skull is indeed. Oof. All right, so the context is... Let's watch Nerd Erotic, an angry, toxic nerd. So the context okay. is Thought Slime, a YouTuber, is responding to Nerd Erotic videos, and he's called the stream Let's Watch Nerd Erotic, an angry, toxic nerd. Uh, doesn't, nerd Erotic makes a lot of enemies. It's just like us, and that's, that's, that's fine. Um, 
He's reviewing, Nerdrotic is reviewing the first episode of What If, which all of us have seen. Um, yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. Well, all of What If was pretty bad. For, well, at least the ones I saw, of course. Uh, now, where am I going here? All right. So, um, I think this will have the context. I don't know if I need to set it up, but yes, we'll see Nerdrotic make a point, and then we'll see Thought Slime respond to it. And like I said, I'm not too concerned about Thought Slime or Nerdrotic. That's not really what we're here for. I just want you to hear the argument. So here we go. Gather around, kids. Let's have some fun. Essentially, what if Captain Carter was the first Avenger? Is Captain America the first Avenger condensed down to a half an hour with some noticeable differences, including the hero's journey, everything that led up to Steve Rogers becoming Captain America, which is what true. makes him absent. Captain America, not the serum. That is No, it's the serum. It's very clearly the serum. You no, know how I know? Serum. It's because he's not Captain America in this one. Because he didn't get the oh, I don't know why. Because, I don't know why. Is brilliant. Why, why is he so smugly smiling about such a terrible point? So, so wow. yeah, this is like to me. I'm just like, holy shit! You do not want to be arguing this. That what you makes you so Captain stupid, America? You think the point is good. Is, is the, the serum? Yeah. That's, that's oh. totally not how it works at all. You're Captain America now. You got the serum. You're Captain America. Yeah. So <laughs> there was remember remember the line. Look at that. I can't remember the guy's name. You know, he's strong. He's fast. He's a bear soldier. Uh, he obeys orders. He's a soldier. Like he's a bully. And then you don't win wars with uh, niceness. You win them with guts, grenade, and then Steve jumps on the grenade. It's like yeah. It's what makes him? That's cause what makes him Captain America. This is why, by the way, the I think when we were covering Falcon the Winter Soldier, when it was like Falcon isn't uh, Captain America to me. Um, if he were designated in universe with that label as like an official military one, I'd be like, fine. But what makes Captain America Captain America is fucking beyond that, and it's beyond yeah, having powers. That's just garnishing what the label meant. As we've what talked about with, uh, yeah, like it, it's it's not. You don't just get to have the shield. It's like there you go, Captain America. <laughs> put some stripes on you. There you go. There you go. You did that's it. That's what makes you Captain America. Yeah, and doesn't it has nothing to do with his character, which is weird because he's almost entirely known for his character. Exactly, the most be... important part. It's not that he is a guy who's really strong and throws a shield like a frisbee. That's like the surface <laughs> level observation. Yeah, it, everyone references the jumping on the grenade part. I think a lot of people see it as like that's Captain America right there. That is Captain America. That's Captain America. It's jumping on that shield to save the day. To, to it, it is about being good fundamentally. It's and not about being really strong. Gary's right. We don't get that for Captain Carter. Uh, well, she no, just comes right in. That was the first act. We yeah. we yeah we skip that. And it's you know Captain because Captain Carter is well not Captain you know she Peggy is a supporting character in that film. We get stuff for her. But I mean, if you want to do it right, you would need to take it from her POV and work from there and lead up to that point. Yeah. But the problem is, 30 minutes ain't enough time to do that. You don't have the time to do that. And you could have made it work. And it's just funny to me that, like, his logic here is, well, he wasn't Captain America without the serum, so... It's like, yeah, it's like dude, nailed it, bro. That's so vacuous. Um, and yeah, to me, it's just like, ha, got you, Gary. It's like, why are you making this point? I don't think why you'll stand you so by this. Why are you so smug about it? It's yeah. Not, um, yeah. The, when has it ever been that when you pass down labels from superheroes, it's literally just about so, whether or not you have the powers? it's funny, because now I'm going to ask him a question. Isn't Sam, Sam Wilson is Captain America now? He doesn't have the serum. <laughs> that's that's a, a regular point. Dude. That is a big point that so Sam made. So apparently he's not Captain America. Which, uh, and as far as I'm concerned, yeah, you, you wouldn't need the serum to become the next Captain America. I Walker agree with wasn't that. And Walker didn't have the serum. And he was Captain America before he took <laughs> the, the new serum. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to explain to us how these, these mechanics work here. Um... Yeah. So I don't know. I was I was pretty amused by this because I was just like, what a fucking awful... Because like, someone linked it as just like, this is not the ode that I think he is, thinks it is. No. <laughs> it's like, it's no. Um. And yes, Thought Slime's, Thought Slime's goo is not my goo, alright? That's just... This is that's, some it's gross off-brand goo. Some other goo. gross shit, yeah. Who knows? We, we say stay away from that goo, everyone. We don't know what's going on. Stay away from that goo. Yeah. Um, and pending information on my goo at some stage, eventually. Um, oh, Rags is currently muted. I was gonna. Yeah, the next thing weird. regards him in some way. Oh, Good Lord. Uh, should we skip that and then come back to that mm, one? What, what, what can I throw or, it instead? 
All right. Well, we got we got some other. Sec it depends if he's like going to be one second well, or ten minutes. You know. Uh, I want coffee. Might this be <laughs> a, a good brief? time for me to just talk to chat while you go get coffee? Great for preve. Yes. Very I well. Will do that I'll in five minutes. How you doing, chat? How have you found the multimedia medley? I'm telling you, we're only let's see how many subjects we've got. And by subjects, I mean how many URLs I have to go through. Okay, so we got one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. To be fit, half of these are images of comments, so they'll be relatively quick. The others are videos, and oh man, we got some fun stuff left for you guys. Uh, we're up to four hours almost. Can you believe it? Um, very thought provoking. Wow. I've seen some people saying they're having a lot of fun. Um, I imagine the variety in topics is probably something that shakes things up. Um, but of course we can't be as thorough as we may be sometimes. Uh, I still don't even know what we're covering next week, you know? But I know that we, we're going to have definite things to be covering as time goes on in terms of new releases. Who knows, maybe even a full Halo Infinite breakdown. Could you imagine it? Um, I think we need more super chats. Well, uh, obviously, once we get to probably five hours, depending on how far we are, I'll try and get into the super chat portion. Should want to be able to go over our limitations. Um, is the bad writing is when Peter Parker Parker is X Twitter thread coming up? You know what? I'll put that on our roster because it's funny. I don't plan to go into any depth with it. I'll just post the comparison of what Jay said with what was said days after because I think that's in one of my tweets. I was watching Doctor Who with Jay and that happened. I was like, Jay, look at this tweet. Jay was like, the fuck? Really? <laughs> I was like, yep. Peter Parker has to... has to see Which, you know... I can understand a sentiment beneath it um, that's actually of interest, but like when you do it as blatantly as the tweet did, which we will, you know what, that'll be the next thing we look at, because that's kind of slightly more on topic than it will be in moments from now. Um, so that'll go there. Excellent. Free needs to install coffee. True. You don't want to add to the pile of, of SCs? If we can, because I'm pretty sure that both these lads have another five hours in them, so I reckon we'll be able to get through today's at least. You gonna play the other Halos in preparation for Infinite? I won't have the time, um, but you know my perspective will then be tempered differently than Rags and Free, being that I will be like passionate wise. I I have played Reach and Three, but I won't have much context, so I, I can maybe offer a slightly alternative perspective. Um, if they release that campaign and it's multiplayer, I wonder if we should all play it together. Or should we play it separately so that we can appreciate the story? You know how it goes. We could be memeing. Four hours of just half time. Well, I was going to say, this is a good half time point. It's like, we've hit four hours, gentle viewer. If you wish to go to the toilet to prep some food to get yourself a drink, now is the time. Not that you could just pause it anyway. This is actually for the live viewers. All of you in chat, I can see that you need to be watered. Your jebs are getting tired. We can't have that. Um, I doubt the story will be good. Yeah, I, I, obviously, I, I'll just take it for what it is. I'll chat with them about it. I don't know what we're gonna be dealing with. Um, we're fine, long man. I mean, some of you might not be. You never know. Got to remind people about their. See, someone said their flaps are dry. So can't have that. By the way, the removal of the um the dislike bar. I think that's hilarious because. The Jamie Nicholson EFAP will now be like, <laughs> it'll just have loads of likes. Because, as far as I'm aware, that is one of the more liked EFAP episodes in terms of raw numbers, just because of the, the, the EFAP community being kind of desperate to push back. Let's have a look. Nicholson. I think it has an unusual amount of likes, at least. Um, yeah, because it's 9.6 to 9.5 right now. It would be fun to do a perfectly balanced meme for this, but I don't think we're going to get to that point. Because they're removing it! At least, um, I thought they'd removed it already, but I guess they haven't done it yet. Um, did that one get ratioed? It did, but I was going to say, I'm pretty sure it has more likes than a lot of normal EFAPs do. Let's have a look here. 
Um, if we take a random, let's go with a what was what was a what was a recent EFAB that's been out for enough time that covers something topical. Um, Shang Chi. Uh, yeah, there we go. We'll, we'll have a look at this one. So, the Shang Chi EFAB has 2.4k likes. The Jenny Nicholson one has 9.6. So I'm willing to bet that once they remove the dislike bar, it will simp it'll go from being one of the most disliked EFAB episodes of all time to one of the most liked oh, episodes right. of all time, which is pretty funny, I think. Hello, Rank. All right, I'm back. Sorry to step out. How the how's thoughts line coming along? Um, this is brilliant, brilliant take uh, being. We were we were just well. having a chisel chazzle about it. We kind of ended that topic, but because you were gone, uh, Fringy enough. wanted to get a coffee, and I was just chatting with the audience while we waited. Awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Fringy brought up, by the way, God. that when John Walker became Captain America, he didn't have serum, and then when Sam became. Captain America, he didn't have serum. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's getting yeah, a little bit confusing. Hmm. Maybe yeah. it's not about the serum. I just gotta agree, disagree with him because I gotta disagree with the guy. Mm hmm. Speaking of which, well, I guess this isn't really speaking of which. I was, uh, I was reminded of this in chat, so we'll have a look at it while Fringy's getting the coffee. He'll, he'll come yeah. back and appreciate it. But it's, um. Oh my God. So Jay, in all of Jay's wisdom, puts out a tweet. On November 8th, saying, Good writing is when Peter Parker has a shitty life. The shittier the life, the more good the writing is. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the following day, a tweet goes viral. Uh, do you want to read out what it says, Rags? Let's see. Spider-Man from, from RPK News 1. Spider-Man No Way Home will do to Holland's Peter what I always wanted. Make him suffer. <laughs> I don't hate Holland's Peter or anything, but that's the whole point of the character. He has to suffer and lose everyone <laughs> he loves. Jeez. Um. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck y'all. Yeah, it's a little bit of a like, oh, oh okay. Messed up. Um, so, yeah. Nice, nice going, Jay. The fucking timing. Um, I, I the, the funny thing about this is like if anyone tried to argue the sanity of the comment, they'd probably be like, "Well, we want our characters to experience hardship, right?" And it's like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." But I mean, read that literally. <laughs> Make him suffer. It's like, okay. He has to suffer and lose everyone he loves. Like, damn, son, calm down. Yeah. Um, and I just think Spiderman fans, man, they they say some stuff because Jay has put out tweets because Jay's argued with fucking shit tons of Spudermans fans everywhere, um, that, like, the Spider-Man fanbase is insane, it's just like, I don't know, just every fan base, right? Because the Snyder people, are, are they worse or better than Spider-Man people? It's like, I don't know. How do we rate these people, right? So I've returned from the grossing... <laughs> I think it's Snyder. I went outside just to touch some grass, and now I'm rejuvenated. Excellent. I was just showing Rags this, 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 these two tweets. Touch tweet the grass. Consume the beans. Don't you love these tweets, Fringy? Oh, yeah, I remember seeing that. That's funny. This <laughs> <laughs> is really amusing. Jay should start collecting, like, the tweets that just specifically ask for Peter's suffering. <laughs> just put them in a big collage. <laughs> and uh, have you heard, like, Tom Holland put out a thing being like, this is the one where, where you know, it, it experiences the most suffering. It's the hardest one. It's just like, oh, I'm so happy he's suffering. He's like, okay, okay, all right. You're gonna be just, fine. You just hate Spider-Man secretly. Just a little bit. Now, this one, is, it's it's an island of a topic. It's gonna be real quick, but it's just funny and I don't know where else to put it. So, you remember us covering good old Julia Cudney, the one who covered uh, Black Widow? She was talking about yeah. how she said, as no doubt you're aware, it's like genius or something. We were like, oh. Yeah, genius masterpiece or something like that. If you also remember, the way she words everything, or rather types everything, I guess, is uh, everything's lowercase no matter what. Um, and yeah, it, I don't know why that's a thing. That was one thing that was commented on among many things. So uh, you know, J Julia's got a Twitter, and she did she did put out a tweet regarding our coverage. Ooh, um, okay. so let's let's check it out. All right. The <clears> only <throat> criticism the mob has of me that snuck through the cracks of my defenses <laughs> is that I don't use capital letters. That's so heckin' valid. I'm sorry, letter police emoji. 
it's the like, only criticism. It, 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 somehow I feel like a, a couple might have slipped through and you chose the one that sounds the least important. <laughs> yeah. Just a theory, but... Uh, you type like a child, but she, it's the least of your concerns. Well, she's also unprotected. It's just like, this, this dynamic we have on the internet sucks. Where someone's like, I'm going to talk about your thing, and you go, ah, and run away as if bombs yeah, are falling. They protect themselves. All they have to say is that I don't use capital letters. Ha! That's the only thing that snuck through the cracks of my defenses. I protected my Twitter account because I'm such a cowardly little bitch. <gasps> I mean, a little bit, yeah. I, I, I don't. They, they do this whole because, like, they talk about it more than it happens. The whole like EFAP and Mauler are sending their armies after you, and it's like, dude, it's like, it's like fans of ours who like to talk about this stuff. You really get the crazy ones. Like, calm down. You'll be fine. You'll make it. I swear. Um, but I still stand by the fact that I think she was hoping for the Jenny sort of result. Problem is, Jenny is way more popular. So like, you, you gotta, you gotta rise those ranks first before you'll get that kind of protection. One day, though, maybe. Yeah, you're, you, you have not risen to the level of having outright sycophantic fan bases that will defend your precious womanhood. Now, um, next topic, which is rolling by here. We got... Yeah, oh, keep boy. rolling. There was, there was a discussion we were having uh, in one of you have... Uh, I think it regarded alternative endings slash payoffs in Shang-Chi. Um, okay. We, we were like, what could happen, what could happen? Rags, you had a suggestion. And, um... I guess, I guess I'll read this one, because it regards you. Dun dun dun. So, Wait, on the Shang-Chi stuff? Yeah, yeah. So what you did, you fucking failure, was you, um, okay. you pointed out, <laughs> you pointed out an alternative thing they could have done in Shang-Chi, and, um, this person was a little bit upset, because what you suggested- Oh, the arrow thing? No, the, the well, uh, so spe specifically what they're going to be referencing is that you said, that what we could do to create some level of stakes in regards to the magical rings is for him to know that using all ten is something no one does because it can destroy you. But we can have him use one and, you know, one does X, and then two together is more powerful but hard to control. Yeah. That sort of leveling up. And you said, like, all a right. big payoff could be... We, I don't know if you said this, but obviously you could have it be that the dad uses all ten to save his son or something like that, and it kills him. You know, you could... You could there's lots of different things we could do with that. So, you said that, okay. and you have... Yeah a reputation in regards to a particular genre, and so this person pointed something out, and I, I would like us to discuss it. So here we go. They said, Can't believe Rags pointed out one of the oldest, most overdone anime tropes, and didn't even know it. I'm only gonna use one ring, up to, no, you never used all ten rings before, you can't handle it. Is anime as fuck. Kind of annoys me, <laughs> actually, how Rags talks shit on anime, despite not seeming to know the slightest thing about anime. Let me guess, characters talk in anime, and they might even consume food for nourishment. Wow. What Congratulations, Rags. You've already destroyed the entire thing. Uh, the first uh, and only point that needs to be made is, yeah, that uh, does happen in anime. That's not an anime trope. That's a storytelling trope. All right, well, moving on then. Yeah, well, <laughs> I but know I know that there will be people listening being like, well, well, when does this happen in movies? And so maybe we can brainstorm. Um, I'll go first. Fucking Ghostbusters. Use the proton packs individually, put them together, and yes, you get more power, but holy fuck, you're gonna destroy everything. And you know what they do in the finale? They fucking cross the streams, bruh. Yeah, all that, the time they yeah. set up the idea that there is a powerful thing that's very dangerous, and only at the end of the film, when the danger is at its height and the stakes are at their highest, we have to do the thing we mentioned before that's very dangerous. Yes. Um... <laughs> I guess, because a lot of people say it, I am add two. I am add one add two. Uh, I am add one cranking the arc reactor to full. It's like, but you're gonna die. And he's like, you gotta do it. It's like, oh, we don't, yeah. we don't, we don't push it to the line. It's like, we gotta do it. It's gotta be done. I am add two. Fire the repulses at each other. Are you fucking crazy? That's what is it? It's like, just do it. You gotta do it. Like, yep. Both very anime, I guess. And this that's... is your brain on anime. You just attribute to anime all of these things that you see in it and think that it, like, belongs to anime what? or anime came up with it. Fucking Lost Jedi did this. <laughs> like, oh. you... I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to reference such a monstrosity, but it did do it. Um, Logan. I feel like that's going to be one that everyone's going to be referencing as soon as they remember. The big payoff. I'm going to be nice yeah. and vague. The big payoff in Logan is literally this. 
Uh, yep. I guess it's gonna happen a lot in superhero content, because this is literally the, the power level thing. It's like, of course that comes up in superhero stuff. Um, so yeah, very strange to say that it's an idiot move from Rags to not notice how anime this is. It's like, oh, hey Rags, you know when you suggested that the villain is defeated by the hero? I bet that happens in anime once. It or happens twice. in anime all the time. I bet. I bet when he. Well, I bet when he kills the bad guy, he even screams out loud the name of his attack. <laughs> Super fire lightning bolt. <laughs> Whirlwind blade storm. And then he hits him with whatever that is, and yeah. then there's a flash. And then I reckon Doctor again. Strange should do more of that. Labeling the spells as oh, they do that in Harry Potter. So yeah. So yeah. Watch things other than anime. That's right. Yeah, I, I just, I, when I saw this comment, I laughed. I was just like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I, I believe it had several upvotes. I cut them out because I try to cut Man. out names a lot of the time. But <laughs> yeah, I was just baffled by it. Like, the fuck? Um, and then, speaking of strange comments from different videos, I can't remember which one this is from. But um, I don't know. I guess, Rags, do you want to take this one, bud? I, I just. I would love you, to you, take you, this, you, you this go one. Nuts. You go nuts. Ooh, it's a chonky boy. Chonky boy. Let's take a look. I love me a good chonky boy comment. So Jen, Daniel Chico says, what do you think you are selling with the Super Chats? A moment of attention, a brief conversation, you gain money to feed parasocial relations. You should always assume your Super Chats come from emotionally invested, mentally challenged <laughs> people who distort everything they hear tangentially related to themselves. Take any random giving you money for attention, and this description is more likely to be true than false. So, I just saw this and I was like, Super Chats come from emotionally invested, mentally challenged people? <laughs> like, yeah, what? What the hell? What's... I'm um, so glad we have an army of emotionally invested, <laughs> mentally challenged I... people who throw money at us. It feels so awkward because I was just like, I mean, I said Super Chats. Am I also that? I don't understand. Like, what? I don't I'm, I'm very confused. My hypothesis is that he gave money to his favorite fav favorite Twitch streamer or 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 cleavage streamer or whatever, and she didn't say his name on stream like she did with all the other simp boys. Mm -hmm. And so he's very it ruined super chats for him. He's very upset now, and he thinks that he's projecting onto everyone else who gives money to a creator. And then, uh, so I was gonna say we could counter all of this, but that's why I've left this other comment in because they do a fantastic job. But I guess there's the middle one first. If you wanna, uh, <laughs> how do you how do you know that telling anyone to assume that all super chats come from mentally challenged people is an asinine request, right? You said oh, you, you do said, know. You do know that well, you do know. Yeah, you do know that telling anyone to assume that all super chats come from mentally challenged people is an asinine request, right? I don't even know what what do we gain from doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what? If we read all of these assuming you're all insane, like, yeah, okay, that's gonna help. Well, it's what? because they're, we, we don't want them to snap, Mahler. We gotta keep them oh. placated, right? We don't want all the crazy people in our audience to go nuts, so. Alrighty, now we got the last one, which you may as well just oh, read as this whole thing, I guess. Yeah, you never know. Just what these super chatters we get, they're just one unread super chat away from a school shooting. Oh, yeah. We don't want to be responsible for any of that. You In that case, you better going. stay here listening to EFAP because we're nice and chill. We'll bring you down to, 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 to Earth. It'll be great. Let's see. So Aaron says, what the hell? You do understand that sending a super chat is a great way to get personal questions answered. To make the hosts aware of something you might want their input or reaction to. To attempt to make the host laugh or discuss something you find amusing. Or to just so support monetarily with a kind message. It's not about building a social relationship or rather the or rather the host for most people and your implication that most people who send super chats are mentally challenged is interesting to say the least it is true that for many people their super chat is the only personal interaction they have with the host and if it doesn't go the way they were hoping it can feel a bit devastating and more and more super chatters need to understand that the host enjoy essentially every super chat and will discuss whatever comes up which will sometimes not be the thing the chatter wanted but this painting of super chatters as mentally challenged people just looking for attention is ridiculous and is not helping the slightest. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much sums it up. <laughs> yeah, there's not much else I can add to that. Um, yeah. There's loads of things that are fun about yeah. super chat and that go beyond parasocial insanity. Uh, sometimes, like, like he just said, it's just like sometimes you just want to ask a question and guess answered and that's done. It's like, thank you. Um, I just, just a second, I, I noticed this. 
and it, it's given me the big smile. I noticed this in our chat. And I just want to point out how wonderful this is, all right? So this is layers. <laughs> this is what we yeah. call layers. <laughs> so let's start with the let's start with the comment itself, right? I am a retarded. A reference to Ty while also misspelling retarded. Perfect. Excellent. That's good, right? But it goes further. It does go further. We've got more layers, more layers themes. to this. His name is Waffle Time. <laughs> yeah. But his picture is that of a bagel. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a waffle. It is very clearly simply a plain bagel. That's subjective. On white background. We have so many layers to this that it makes me smile so much. So that when you take in the full picture of Waffle Time with the bagel picture saying, I am a retarded, <laughs> this is just so good. And it brings me joy. No. Oh, no. We're on a train. On. You know, we're on this wonderful train. Now so we, now you thought done. all of you in chat were like, is that it for the, for the anime? No. There was a post. Oh, boy. And it regards, oh. I'm pretty sure all three of us this time, at least rags, but it could, I think it's all three of us. So. I would oh like, even if you guys know the context, don't say it, all right? We're going to show chat first, because okay. right. they'll start to guess it, but it's okay. So this comes up on the subreddit, and I was a little bit confused at first. It says, wow, look at how similar the, these anime characters are. No, I'm not mad, why do you ask? And so I see this image, and I'm like, I don't get it. What, what's, what's the reference? Are they, is there... Don't, wait, don't figure, you'll get told, don't worry. Just because I'm going to try and keep this a little bit secret, because it's a funny payoff for this. So, oh, okay. I, I, I'm like, I, I'm just like you at that moment. I was like, I can't remember, I don't know what the fuck this is referencing. I was like, 26 upvotes? This is something I'm missing, and I'm fucking host, like, with you guys. Don't, don't fucking, how do we not get our, I hate it when we don't get our own memes, you know? I'm just like, fuck. We failed. And then I remembered, there was an EFAP, where <gasps> we were sent a super chat. Yeah. And the super chat was in regards to Weekend Warrior, and what his favorite Hololive person was. And we were like, oh, oh well, we, oh, it's that we, thing. we can't I, uh, comment because we don't know much about it. And then we're like, let's go to the website. And Rags, I believe you said it, and I'm pretty sure that we all agreed. You, you foolishly said, what the fuck? These are all the same. And you pissed off <laughs> everyone. Now, for anyone in chat who just saw the image I showed, right? So this one. So they're saying like, oh, look how similar these all are. It's like, okay, so what, what did we say was similar? What was the image that we made fun of? Um, oh man! It's this. Oh, oh my God! No! <laughs> ah! I'll make it go away. So, now I'm more than happy to concede that they likely have different characters. Like <laughs> that's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> but when you're like, "Wow, you think these look the same?" It's like, yes. <laughs> Come on, yeah. yeah, they do. It's it's yeah. all just the same cookie cutter <laughs> VR character. They all have a leg up too. Like, is that? A thing that everyone they all does. Have a leg up. They're all the, the main, the the really the only things that make them look different is that they have different color for the hair and like the yeah. dress, and a slightly different style. Is... The faces and the body type is like identical. These are this is a I like I know they're fake people, but these are really fake people. That, yeah, <laughs> like Tony Stark is a fake person, but. <laughs> He's not, like, a fake person. <laughs> and, uh, I think I saw someone say, no, some of them are winking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and someone said, like, sometimes winking. they wear different clothing. I'm like, we were commenting strictly on this. This was the image we were commenting image. on. Yeah, on this particular but image. Why were people uh, so upset with us? What the fuck? This is totally reasonable to be like, oh, yeah, they look the same. Me. I, I squirm looking at this. <laughs> and I'm baffled. If you go uh. back to the previous image, it's like, you've got... A dog, and then a wolf, or it could be a dog, I'm not 100% sure. This weird, like, Pokemon creature. Like, a, a much younger kid, what seems to be like a, well, a yeah, young adult. I, I and know what, cause, cause how is this the same? <laughs> I look at this and I'm like, yeah, these guys do look different. They have different faces, different body types, very different clothing. Like, they're different people. Exactly. It's like, a, and I don't know if that's the joke. It's just like they're sort of in on it or something. But I, I don't. I started I think... watching the first episode of Cowboy Bebop. All of those people look different. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, I was... I'm, I'm gonna continue watching it. Way, well, that, that, I, there's, you, I, there's your, right. art, there's your, there's your. Art, oh. I'll throw the bone. I've started watching Cowboy Bebop. So, mm. I think one of them does not have a leg raised. 
bottom oh. row, third no. from the right. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, the there left. is there is one there that has uh, two, yeah, she has two, she has different colored down. leggings. Ooh, I think one of them is slightly so risen off it, the ground though. You're right. It is. I, oh, oh yeah. well, they, it might. They might be. One might be further back than the other. Okay. Ooh, right. It mm. might be. It's hard to tell. Because Let's get a science team. All on the this. other ones definitely have at least one leg raised. It's like yeah. That is, the best I could say is that her tippy toes are on the on the ground. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. what's well, one is. Hmm, mm. I think I was too charitable. Ah, <laughs> uh, hmm. So yeah, I I was just laughing at that. I was like, I gotta put this on you. That was so amusing. Um, which takes us to a different format once again back to watch together yeah all right, all boy. Right. Watch what an together. exciting journey okay i don't know how else to explain the context for this than just saying what it's titled a fish biologist reacts to hassan's thalassophobia <laughs> what? <laughs> all right so in no greater context, there's a guy who I guess runs a fish biologist channel, I'm not sure, someone made a compilation of him reacting to Hassan, talking about why he's afraid of the water. Now, I didn't know that Hassan feels that he shouldn't go in the ocean ever, but he does, and he explains oh, his reasoning. Okay. And uh, what we're going to do, I've, I've just set some timestamps, because we can't, I don't think we're going to have the time to watch the whole thing, we've got some other stuff to do. But I was pretty amused when I put this on in the background, so we're going to check it out. It's like a, a, a song. Um, yeah? If you give me just a moment, I'll be back and get, I'll be back. I gotta go get some. Okay. One moment. Um, One moment. All right. Um, I will boot it up. So, what is, what is the phobia specifically that's. So, thalassophobia, that. as far as I know, is just you fear, like, open water. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, I, I guess look. I can see how that would be something that. Uh, thalassophobia is the fear of the ocean or other large bodies of water. This phobia may okay. stop people from visiting the beach, swimming in the sea, or traveling by boat. Now, uh, man, imagine uh, imagine if that stopped you traveling by boat. God damn. Well, that's the thing. I um I don't know that I, I would have anything close to what would be considered thalassophobia. I do like find the idea of being in a completely open and vast ocean just in the middle of it kind of terrifying, but that's mainly because well, sure, I feel like I'm I mean, gonna die. Wouldn't like, everybody Yeah, I feel like because it, it's funny, right? Because I live in a country where there are shit that is in beaches that people go to regularly that is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, like blue blue ringed octopi, um, box jellyfish. Um, of course, we got lots of sharks and stingrays over here. There's a whole bunch of things in the water that might kill you. Um, but even then, it's just the easy rationalization is, oh, but like that's super duper 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 unlikely. It, it is... It is. It would be the equivalent of I don't know going for a walk, um, I don't know in a wilderness area, and then um, in Australia, and then being worried that you're going to get ambushed by like a dingo oh, or a right. platypus or something. Yeah, um, yeah. We were just talking about like how fears work and stuff, and it's like yeah, there's yeah, stuff that's course. within reason, but there's also stuff that's absurd. And um, uh, I, I totally understand people having thalassophobia is totally chill, but like I was just saying, I, why... I understand why someone yeah. would develop it for sure. It's um, just, I mean, of course, because I'm trying to rationalize it, and it's you know these are phobias. It's um, yeah, uh, but it's yeah. still interesting because if someone has a phobia, say for example, I just I have a standard fear of the dark, and I tell you because I'm pretty sure tentacle monsters are in it, you guys would be like, um, okay, <laughs> giant squid. Just, yeah, meanwhile, if I just told you, no, nah, I just, it's kind of irrational, it's something that happened when I was younger, and I just, I can't, you know, whatever, you just be like, oh, yeah, fine, but the second you, like, rationalize it that way, you start to be like, uh, okay, and there's more comment to be had, but, um, what's happening is, Hassan's doing one of his famous streams, and he's checking out a video, uh, I think called, like, the five things that you didn't know were in the ocean or something, and, um, he's oh, just reacting okay. to it, and then he's talking about why he doesn't go to the ocean. Something I didn't even know was a thing, but... Uh, yeah, this guy is going to respond to it, and we're going to respond to this guy responding to Hassan responding to that video. Because right, this is EFAP. All right, here we go. Anyway, yeah. Shall we watch Hassan? Hassan's a uh, Turkish politics guy, very big streamer, a lot of people like him. And apparently he watched the Five Most Mysterious Unexplained Sea Creatures, which we've already watched. But I think it'd be interesting because he has absolutely no idea, like he knows nothing about the ocean anything or something. I was gonna anything. say anything really like we've learned There's this. no idea. I'm shocked he can dress himself in the morning. It's the kind of thing where you'd be like, what do you think Hassan's opinion is on it? You're just like, stop. There's no point. Why? Why? You're not gonna gain anything. I don't care what the subject was. You're just not gonna gain anything. In general, he's a politics guy. So like this guy that a lot of people look up to is the super intelligent, well-spoken guy. 
Let's see if he believes. Oh, the well. <laughs> 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 what the fuck, bro? <laughs> Unexplained sea creatures. These things once again show us the endless possibilities the ocean is home to. Yeah, fuck that. Sit back and know that's that a coral reef. What? Coral reefs are great. They're colorful Shark and they're big habitats. <laughs> that's Jesus. a weird statement. Fuck that. A coral reef. You know how many people visit the Great Barrier Reef <laughs> specifically to look at those things? They're it's, cool. It, and he the got great off the barrier chair. Is like, barrier of intelligence. Yeah. It's like a, it, it, this almost feels like a callback. It's like, look, he's left. <laughs> it's the thing that it's he does. It's already gone. It's been two seconds and he's gone. <laughs> By unknown sea creature. Is he even watching it? In 2003. <laughs> 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 it's it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's like... He has no idea. <laughs> he's just stumbled into this hornet's nest. <laughs> Filmmaker Dave Rigg himself theorized the only explanation could be that another, even larger, cannibal great white shark was responsible. Not the only explanation. I don't even. Does he even listening? Does he even have the headphones on? Tons, making it one of the largest great whites ever recorded. Does he even have a brain? The only other <laughs> if he look, he looks bewildered, Hassan. But he often he does. does. He has no idea what yeah. to think. Motherfuckers want to go in the water when that's there, dude. No you want to go exist on? Uh, you want to exist on the surface of the planet while polar bears are a thing? That's dude. how yeah, useful dude, your tigers. observation is. Someone in this chat Spires. brings that up, and it gets pretty funny. Oh, d I, right. He's gonna yell at him and then ban him. Isn't he? <laughs> like, well, I'm not gonna go that far, but he will. He will address that argument okay. in the, the most right. Hassan way possible. Okay. Straight up, no, thank you, dude. Okay, I do not understand. Why the fuck you would ever go in the water when there's like a 0.0000001% chance that that's in the water with you? Like, <laughs> I assume the sun doesn't drive a car. What the? Yeah, because it's a lot more likely that you're going to just die. Just... It's Again, the easy one is you're more likely to die because a coconut falls on your head than you are to be eaten by a shark. Because yeah, when know, I first heard this, I was like, what? Like, you can't be serious. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'll do a lot of things where I have a 0.00001% chance of dying. That's called, like, existing on this planet. Pretty much. At any given time. Walking next to the road, crossing the road, driving. There's a likelihood that know, we could like, get an aneurysm at any moment. Like, Yeah, of course. There's a likelihood I mean... of a lot of things. <laughs> not him. That, that requires brain activity. Uh, okay. He's not going to get an aneurysm. His brain There's has not... already reached entropy. <laughs> There's not that chance. There's not. It was like eaten by an orca, right? So it's like an animal that has never once harmed a human outside of captivity where, you know, they're kept in very small cages and horrifying conditions. And, I, you know, I don't blame them for lashing out. In the wild, an orca has never hurt a person. So... Or was Alpha pulled deep down in the ocean and... Um, That's so awesome. <laughs> I was going to say that image. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, like I said, we're not going to watch the whole thing. Not not just for the fact that we we got things to get to, but also because I'd recommend this video. Um, oh. I just say check it out. This does look fun. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, we're mainly here for Hassan to be fair. Haas, this video now, is fake bullshit. They're proven biological explanations, and these are common animals. But after reading, oh, just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to play that again for the appreciation. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> Haas, this video is fake bullshit. There are proven biological explanations, and this are common animals. But after reading, <laughs> so we just told him it's like fake bullshit. There are proven explanations, and he he just read it and then did not react at all. He didn't even say okay. He didn't say no. He just read the message and then just restarted playing the video. <laughs> That's our boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just brain is just not registering that shit. It's done so. <laughs> the fuck is that about? That is definitely not an orca, but it could be an Look at that friendly orca. Or an undiscovered creature. Why does he keep so leaving? Do similar to that. Is this what Hassan streams are like? I've never watched a Hassan stream. <laughs> My friend. He's discovering the joy of Hassan's stream. Welcome to the family. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Hassan Piker. He's talked twice the entire time and just keeps <laughs> walking away. Why would you ever watch this? Something. What a fantastic question. Yeah. This is just, you know how I talk about not stealing content? You know, adding your own thing to it? Trying to, like, add your own information? <laughs> this is just flat-out stealing content. 
He just doesn't care because he has a wide enough audience. That's hilarious. That's that's our it, video, comrade. It, it is starting to get around, I've noticed. More and more people are adopting the sentiment of man. There's like Twitch streamers who just, they just watch stuff. And like, remember how we all hated that and now we don't care? I'm fucking what so, happened? so glad this person comes to the exact same conclusion we did, but on a completely different genre. It's just like he's doing <laughs> yeah. the exact same Fish shit biology. to everyone. <laughs> this is what Hassad does. I was hoping, though, through this video to learn some fish facts as well. Like I was hoping so as well. I hope we get Maybe some. Maybe we will. Um, you might do in the parts between, like I said, because, I, I, again, I would probably yeah, promote enough. this video, or rather the channel. I'm not 100% sure what his channel's called, though. Uh, I don't know if he made this or not. AVNG. -A Is it? Yeah, I, I'll post the link in the... Um, Angry video game? <laughs> no, I don't know if it's AVGN, but... Well, because I was going to say, is that his channel or is that a compilation channel? I think it's his channel, yeah. I'm not sure. There it is in the chat. Uh, AVNJ, yeah. A did I say G? I'm not 100% sure anymore. I've kind of forgotten, but I think you were right about that channel. I think that is his, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, big channel. Don't know how well people know this this channel at all, but yeah, link in the, in the chat to check out the full video. We're just going to be checking out little bits. Little bits. <laughs> just eat some fucking shit, you fucking stupid <laughs> bitch. Uh, just kidding. I don't know why people watch this. Straight up the fucking point. That is why I don't go in the ocean. So the blue whale can't eat me, okay? <laughs> the blue whale? What? The blue whale, okay, the carnivorous. Hassan, thanks for sharing, I guess. Thank God the blue whales won't eat you if you don't go in the ocean. You got a valid point there, my dude. Okay. And here you are making fun of me, saying that I'm crazy for That's, not going in yeah. the ocean. <laughs> you are a little bit insane. Yeah. You are a little insane. Do you think you're gonna get? Eat I'm pretty sure I watched a video on this. Uh, that like it's specifically because blue whales have the bristles. Um, that make it so that krill and stuff go into their mouth. Yeah. But, um, bigger things don't get in there. I think that the video that concluded that the one you need to be worried about is a sp I don't think it was a sperm whale, it was- there, there is one whale, um, but it's mainly the teeth you gotta worry about, not being swallowed whole. Hmm. Baleen, is it? Uh, bra- oh, no, uh, now I'm getting confused. You got Braleen, Baleen, Baleen in chat. Balin? He died in Moria. Okay, people- a lot of people are saying Bal- yeah, I don't Baleen. know that he- it's did he die in Moria? He was buried um, in Moria. I mean- we just well, saw earlier, though, that this guy said that orcas haven't attacked humans, so... Or don't often attack humans out in the wild. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Did... So, it, Lord of the Rings nerds in chat, did Balin die in Moria, or was he just buried in Moria? Let us know. Also, it's weird that how, uh, how many people just randomly know the correct terminology for yeah. whale bristle, blue whale bristles. Also, it is Balin. Hey, look, all right. It's, uh, Balin. it's, yeah, Balin. Oh, Balin. Yeah, Balin whale. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, stop. No, we wait, Lord of the Rings stop. is Balin. <laughs> Balin. The Balin whale. <laughs> or Baleen is, well, maybe if Balin, you know, maybe he didn't feel comfortable in his. <laughs> He's Balin. The, the point right. is. Did, did Baleen the whale Balin. die in Moria? <laughs> Believe <laughs> the whale. Just Maria. sitting there. On the <laughs> There's probably a, well, there was an underground lake where the Balrog fell in. Yeah, so maybe that's where Baleen is. Maybe that's where he's just sitting dead. <laughs> they, they buried him next to Balin. Well, yeah, it was whenever they wanted to feed him, they'd get some uh, shrimp or whatever. They'd throw it off the bridge of Khazad Doom, <laughs> and it would a week later fall. A week, week later. <laughs> I like the idea that there's somebody whose job that is, and they're just watching out for that fucking Balrog. It's like, what the fuck is it? <laughs> like, I love the idea. Just keep no, that's not the Balrog. That's Baleen. Yeah, she's great. Uh, uh, Baleen, that's right. Yeah. The idea that they do feed it that way, but by the time it gets down there, it's rotted food. It's all like, <laughs> yeah. for fuck's sake. It takes so long to fall down. <laughs> they generations have been feeding, so you can't not do it, or else there's a gap mm -hmm. in the food. The fish, the, the shrimp die of old age before they <laughs> hit the bottom. You drop them in their fish bowls so they can survive. This, this impromptu Lord of the Rings segment <laughs> was brought to you by Blue Whales and Hassan. Look, Hunter. Hassan's been streaming for seven hours. Damn, he's beaten us. Yeah. He's also okay we to do that, here. by the way. We're not. Crazy for not going in the ocean. 
but you hey. are crazy. You are absolutely crazy. There, the blue whale is not capable. It doesn't even make. It makes no sense, and it's so dumb. It's just just because something's big does not equal scary and dangerous. Guess what? I'm not gonna be eaten by a fucking blue whale. You're right. You're not, and nobody is ever. <laughs> <laughs> Whales don't eat people. So that's a fear you can rule out. There has been some speculation. I don't want to be attacked by a bear, so I'm gonna live on the ocean. Yeah. That way they can. Right. Yeah. So that's the obvious fucking counter. <laughs> I don't want to be attacked by a bear, so I'll live on the ocean. <laughs> so how does how does Assad respond? Let us let us see. Get to me. The difference is. You don't fucking know, dude. You can see a bear, okay? And you know where bears are on the land. <laughs> we know where <laughs> whales know where are in the ocean. Are if, you, if you can see the bear, you might be in trouble. You can <laughs> see the bear. Yeah, I like the idea. Hey, look, you've seen the polar bear, so you're okay. Oh, it's running towards you? Well, just outrun it. Oh, you can't? Oh, it's not, it's course, not you we, seeing we can, the bear you need to be worried about. It's the bear you, seeing you that yeah, needs, needs to be I was about to say, if you, if you see the bear, there's a good chance you're already in a bit of trouble. Dude, that's a perfect animation right there. Is like him explaining this. And of and course. Like the, one of the, whichever, whichever polar bears are. He's just like, if we can see the polar bear and points at it, it's like, then we're safe. And he continues to explain it as the polar bear keeps getting it closer. Keep like, <laughs> we can see it, so it's fine. Apply this think, to animals that are dangerous that live in urban areas, like snakes. Well, maybe not in America, but, you know, snakes, spiders. Yeah, yeah. Like, you got to be worried about those. They can kill you. And they live in houses and stuff. Not snakes, fortunately, but, you know, spiders and stuff. They can be in your house. So do you just go out in the ocean? Just go to space. You know, I bet Hassan, if he... he Hassan's the kind of guy who... Do you, got, do you know about the ravenous bug bladder beast of Troll? Yes. I yeah. know. Well, Hassan's the kind of guy, he reminds me of that. Hassan is like, if, a, if if he sees a bear and a bear sees him, and the bear is charging him to attack him, Hassan would put his hands in front of his eyes, assuming that if he cannot see the bear, <laughs> the bear cannot see him. It might work, you don't know. Um, yeah, and, and obviously everyone's referencing, it's like, wait, is he suggesting the whale is invisible? It's like, let's, let's yeah. continue. Let's continue for a second. So much more information... Does he think blue whales are invisible? <laughs> you can see a bear, you can't see a blue whale. So, oh, someone in chat brought up Dracula Untold. Exactly. Exactly. If Hassan just covered his eyes, he wouldn't be able to see it, therefore he wouldn't be afraid of it. <laughs> just Solid logic. Genuinely incredible. Because uh, I thought it was like, I didn't realize that's what we were dealing with when I was listening to this video. I was like, is he actually, he's actually arguing this. Okay, all right. Ways it seem like they know what they're saying. We have not mapped out. We've only mapped out like what ten percent of the fucking ocean or some shit. Like, <laughs> uh, and again, this is one of those ones where like it's better to just let the guy respond than us because he's gonna have way better arguments to make. No, I. We've only mapped out ten percent of the ocean. Ocean. Um, I think the topography depth. of the ocean yeah, floor. Yeah, we know the whole thing. It's complete. I think we we know Do a decent amount. Well, watch what he does. Cool. There's the entire world's oceans mapped out by depth, by temperature. <laughs> got salt maps, <laughs> temperature maps. There's current maps. What else would you guys like to Wait, see? Current maps. <laughs> as in, as in the current. Yeah. Currents, currents like the Gulf. Or Street is it just like a really that. updated? Yeah, I, know. I don't know. Oh, oceans are I, I hard. Don't know. It's oh. confusing. Yeah. Oh my True. goodness. Mysterious giant shark. <laughs> In early this will be interesting. Scientists from Japan conducted a study. To look so we know Pacific sleeper shark, Greenland shark, exaggerated features. You know, we know all of that. But I have a feeling that he is going to assume megalodon. <laughs> More about at these depths, it's hard to believe anything could survive. But surprisingly, there are many fish and living organisms down there. Oh no! What are you about to say? What are you saying, dude? This shit is fucked. <laughs> dude, like, look this at is the. It's at the bottom of the fucking ocean. Yeah, but oh, that it, it can climb right left. up there and get you while you're. The top left just wants to be your friend. I know he's chill. He's like, there's a lot of scary monsters down here. I just need someone right now. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> he wants someone to hug. Dude. Yeah, like Hassan, if you can withstand the weight of like twenty thousand semi trailers stacked on your head and can hold on to your, <laughs> onto, like you can breathe in and not exhale for like fucking two. Hours. Like a day to swim down to the yeah, bottom these, of the ocean. These creatures can't yes. survive where you would be. No, they cannot. 
they the live right difference. at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. And it's as like people, underwater, man. The pressure. The mm-hmm. yellow mm-hmm. one is cute. The yellow one is very look yellow at lad. Yeah. <laughs> Got him over there. The one on the bottom yeah. right, not so much. Not so much. Yeah, he's just trying to hang out with all these monsters. It'd be a sitcom. Shit down there. It- this is a fucking comb jelly. It's just a moving plastic bag. <laughs> This is a Dumbo octopus. This is the cutest thing in the world. Yeah, it's been <laughs> confirmed by a it's fish biologist. Night. You can't see any. It's pitch black down there. You can't see shit. And then there's like fucking little aliens down there. Except for <laughs> this thing. This thing looks pretty cute. I bet that it's it's a vicious creature, though. I bet it's, it's like, not. It's not. not. <laughs> yeah. It is not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nope. Just a Dumbo octopus. It just kind of flaps its ears and then floats. Bro, you can't even see, dude. It doesn't... It covers the entire fucking thing. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude. It's just a fucking oh Greenland my shark. Oh god, dude. Dude, this is just like a, probably like a 300-year-old shark who's just chilling, just having a good time. And his song's like, oh my god. Sure. I mean, if he's scared of blue whales eating him, it makes sense, <laughs> I guess, that he'd be scared of a Greenland shark. Isn't that a Greenland shark? What? What? What are you, a fucking shark expert, dude? Why? <laughs> <laughs> what are you? I don't know. You can't know. I don't know. Sir, you I don't can't. know. Yeah, this is this is unprecedented. I love that. What are you, a fucking shark expert? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I almost thought he said Shark Exorcist for a second. <laughs> That's a great movie. Yeah. The Greenland shark can live 200 plus years? What? <laughs> you know that <laughs> you know, <laughs> tortoises can live 200 years. Wait, yeah, why, is that more, how good. why is that think more scary? How good. Is that more scary? Shouldn't that make it less scary? It's a little old man shark with a walking frame. <laughs> yeah. No, swimming, no, that oh, means... A swimming frame. <laughs> Just no, like, frame. oh... <laughs> No, it's got hundreds. It has centuries worth it of, has experience centuries of experience on how to hunt and yes. kill humans. <laughs> no, specifically it is an Hassan. Apex predator. How to hunt it's and like kill a war Hassan. vet. I've seen things in my years <laughs> on this ocean floor. God, old, old. I tell scary. you, but I, can, I can't remember them so very good. Well, 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 what are you, a shark expert, dude? So that's five mysterious <laughs> sea creatures. Megalodon is extinct. It is real, but it's extinct. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, congrats. Oh, come on. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> we came so, so close. close. to saying one true thing. Hassan, <laughs> <laughs> you were this close to greatness. I left it. Damn it. I was, I was happy with Hassan for a second. Well. You gave it your best ever, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, those are just some little bits of it. Um, I guess the fishery. I don't know if that's what he, the the channel is. I guess I don't know. But um, yeah, let me let me take a look because this this video is on A V N G J. Full, um, edited by. So the fish. Let me the fishery. Fishery. You know the uh, ocean is really cool when you oh think yeah. about it. There's like there's so much cool stuff in there. Some of it's scary, but um, mm-hmm. there's plenty of stuff on Earth that's scary <clears throat> too. So yeah, this is this looks like A V N J. Uh, looking through his other uh, <laughs> uploads, fear of water. Um, fish biologist reacts to this and that and the other thing. Seems to be the guy. And I just find it amusing that no matter the uh, the topic, no matter the genre, the same result. Hassan knows fucking nothing about what he's talking about. It very confidently states all of these perspectives. <laughs> yep. and like, oh my god, look at how scary this fish is that lives like 8,000 kilometers below the surface of the planet. Well, yeah, we just sit here wondering, like, why are you watching this, people? It's like, oh. Now, <clears throat> I know many people are aware of this. I know you are, but many people aren't, okay? And I had to have this play on EFAB. Now, I considered mm. getting 
the original context plus the original actual quote just to compare, and then I was like, oh, but it's all in this one place from someone who edited a short reacting to the thing that I want us to react to. So you can just basically have his commentary on top, which is mainly just laughing. Um, I almost don't want to spoil it in terms of just, this is how I first found out that Hassan said this thing. Now, I know you both know it's uh, been said. No. And I know people in chat will know. But I'm just going to play this video. And this video, for context, is um, <laughs> a streamer called Our Relevant is has made a short on YouTube of him reacting to someone who made an animation making fun of the concept of someone being like, you know, spread the wealth, but also when I get wealthy, I want to keep it. Just your standard sort of thing. And they reference a quote, and then our relevant stitches it with the thing that it's referencing. And so I'm just going to play the whole thing. Enjoy. Okay. The grossly affluent is a moral obscenity. Our economic system inevitably leads to a exploitative power hierarchies. Redistribution is the only ethical option. Uh, but now that I think about it a little more clearly, <laughs> is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? I think I heard that in a video game once. And you know, he literally did the meme, dude. He did the meme. Is it, that is well, the, literally the is like, to is a be... man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? Is a Bioshock Andrew Ryan reference that is supposed to be libertarian, right? But actually, it is inherently socialist. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what? Yeah, that quote. Yeah. No. If, it, it, okay, okay. That, if, that, 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 that. Andrew Ryan, well, if you got a let's rags, if you got a little in... bit confused, that what he meant by this is the meme is that it's making fun specifically of Hassan having said it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. All right. So. Um, this is pretty unreal. Wow. First time I saw it, I couldn't believe he'd fucking <laughs> said this on his stream, but he did. Um. I mean, is... where do you even begin? Uh, how, I'm trying to see from his perspective how he thinks that, you know? Like, I'm trying to figure out how could he twist that into being, which is, I, how can he twist that into being <clears throat> inherently socialist? I guess my, qu I, I almost feel like, hey, do you know who Ayn Rand is? Like, I'd be curious if I know what his answer is she, to that. She escaped the Soviet Union. I don't well, know that I it... mean, you don't even, you don't need that, you don't even need that, really. I was just, um, because it's like, fundamentally, the whole point of Andrew Ryan is it's like, hardcore, like, libertarian. And I don't, I don't know that it's even relevant if, say, for example, I don't know, there was a famous quote from Hitler where he said, like, do do all of the good except the stuff that's real bad. You wouldn't want to cite it at that point. It is a it is a quote that applies specific like using it and being like, hey, you know what? It's socialist. All it does is cast a, an image in everyone's head of Andrew Ryan. It's like that guy is not a fucking socialist. <laughs> what are you it's doing? Socialist <laughs> is like, why would you? Why would you say that the quote from Andrew Ryan supports an ideology? <laughs> it's absolutely not. It's, uh, it, it, yeah, so the idea being that the animation, I think, was made after Hassan said this, and so it's just amusing. And like I said, I saw this animation, and I was like, that's, that's funny, uh, that's I guess. That's funny, yeah. But then, <laughs> yeah. then I saw Hassan actually say it. that's what always fucking it. happens. Um, wow, have you, have you seen the whole cartoon, Rex? Yeah. I have not, no. Right, well, I don't know if we, we should play fun. that, because that's a lot of work for well, someone like a... We'll just be playing it and just watching the whole thing without saying yeah. anything, so... Just put it in your back pocket I'll, I'll to watch. You. Yeah, I'll yeah. find right, I'll do it. for you to watch it, yeah. It's um, um, hot diggity... There, yeah, there it is. He was in, um, I think, Adam and Sitch's chat, and I was like, Oh my god, uh, your video was hilarious. The animator? Like, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Hot diggity he, uh, he's been around for a long time. I want to say I've seen that like guy in memes and stuff before through the years or at least like something similar to it maybe i'm just confusing him with someone else he's made a couple i think he made a um a new guy video that was re relatively popular remember that meme it was like the first meme might have been 2020 oh, yeah. or something i remember the i, I remember, remember the that guy, yeah. yeah is a man not entitled to the brow <laughs> i think i heard that in a video game once and you know he literally did the meme dude he did the meme is it that is literally like is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow <laughs> i just cocked it, it over that shit it doesn't stop being funny <laughs> amazing <laughs>
Let me tell you why it was actually in the socialist manifesto word for word. It's, it, it is just so bizarre to see somebody take a quote from a hardcore libertarian in a game that is clearly heavily based on the stuff from Ayn Rand. <laughs> just be <laughs> like, just be like, yeah, no, that's 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 just known socialist Andrew <laughs> Ryan. That's like a socialist quote. What are you doing? <laughs> Infinitely funny, and it only spells to everybody that he has no fucking clue where it's from. But he still is like, it's from Andrew Ryan, but it's inherently Bi socialist. Uh, Bioshock, yeah, they got it wrong. The writers of Bioshock, like, they got I, it I wrong, just, man. It's just funny because it's like, so I guess you don't know. You, do you, do you know what rap shit is? Do you know what, like, the point of that city <laughs> was and the objectives of Andrew Ryan? Like, why do you think he said that? And do you think that it supports the position that you're... I, uh... The Sun Piker. Why is he so popular? An infinite source of hilarity. I'm afraid that's it for Hassan Piker coverage. That's all I got. Alright, that's um, fine with me. <laughs> yeah. So much. Um, so, next up... We got us a wonderful little video that I, I was linked. It's only, it's only two minutes. Um, but oh. it's called Every Shitty Video Essay Ever, which there's been a couple of these. Um, I, I like a lot of them, really. Yeah. But um, yeah, after all the stuff we've covered on EFAP, I feel like this will be familiar. But let's let's have a look, see, shall we? Then hit the, she loves you. Hi, Michael, and this is my video essay channel. <laughs> Today, I'm going to talk about your favorite band, or maybe a movie you like. Here's a bold claim about them that I can't possibly justify, but would make a good title to <laughs> The me. Beatles invented music. <laughs> Alright. YouTube video. Here's some information I found. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. So it's fucking so true. Accurate. Yep. Uh, and that's all this video is going to be, like, so yes. Please. These essay videos, they're like the anime girls from that site, the hollow <laughs> site, whatever it is. Hey, sometimes you can tell the difference between the characters of those like, hollow girls, okay? This shit, it's all That's the same. That's true, I can distinguish between the hollow live girls. One of them doesn't have their leg all the way raised, so it's very, it's very unique. Someone said there's a comment that this is Moeller in the comments of this, I think. How the fuck is this anything like what I do? Like, can, we'll go a bit further, but can you spot any trope in here that is something that I do in my videos? Media about the band. You speak. I didn't really bother to dig any deeper, because why should I? Now I'm gonna misuse a handful of big words and sayings to cover up the fact that I don't really have that much to say on this topic. The Beatles' titular album, Revolver, was entirely detrimental <laughs> to the rock world, and they worked round every clock to come up with the follow-up. <laughs> the follow-up in question being Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Here's an isolated track from a song you know. I read the news today, oh. I'm gonna pause just in case, because I have no idea how this is. Just in works. case, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Bet you never heard an isolated track before. <laughs> now I'm gonna make a bold statement <laughs> that's just my opinion, but frame it like it's a fact. Oh yes. boy! <laughs> hey -o. True. 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 Fucking everyone does this nice. one. Nice. There are three key aspects in every hit song that make it a hit. Oh god, it feels like when we cover Filmento. Like, there are, there are these things you have to do when yeah, doing this thing. Here are the rules. You have to do that are totally yes. arbitrary and meaningless. And, I've and discovered wrong. all of the rules for a thing. I am I've not an industry. The, rules, yeah. the lyrics, the beat, and of course, when all else fails, the guitar. <laughs> 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 yep. By the way, how about these sexy motion graphics, huh? <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> fucking Mark Brown. <laughs> the only thing that's preventing you from realizing this is a ninth grade class presentation. <laughs> Why am I talking like this? <laughs> I heard it Why am I talking like this? <laughs> Talk kind of like this once. Voice. Sounds pretty academic. Furthermore, remember that bold claim that I made at the beginning of the YouTube video? Did you expect me to prove that claim? And that's how the Beatles invented <laughs> music. There it is. I hope you like nice. this thing. This is it an thing. opinion piece in video form? Is it supposed to be like an academic journal? What the fuck is this? I don't know. I have a Patreon. <laughs> Nice. It feels like it's referencing all the shit that we've been through the past three years. I don't know. It's funny because that last part is interesting in terms of like, wait, what? What exactly is this? Because it's called like a video essay, but it's 
Like, what, what does that mean? What does that actually mean? Um, Who fucks kids, what right? What you're doing here? Yeah. I feel personally attacked. It's like this. This it addresses so many things. It's wonderful and it's so quick. This is what Gadelb is supposed to be as well, basically. Yeah. Just more specific with the stuff we cover. Um. So. Similarly, in terms of just talking about how shitty video essays are, um, I believe this is a, well, it says High Top Alex retweeted, so I'm assuming they're, they're, they're on good terms. But uh, check check this out. feel like we're a little bit too honest with this one. Uh, Fringy, do you want to read this? Uh, okay. Oh, boy. Uh, people often ask, how can I make videos like you? I don't know if that's what this guy sounds like. <laughs> and the answer is simple. Come up with a very basic take on a movie and write it out in the most outlandishly convoluted way possible. Add an instrument from a sad song at the end and edit in monochrome. Repeat every three to six months. Nice. I don't Do know like why you. he would read tweet that though well because it's like lol we have fun here and it's like but this is what you do like <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's, yeah because no. you, you can't I do top, that like i top doesn't thinks that he doesn't think he's part of that group no i'm sure he thinks it's much more meaningful identify it being about him because he doesn't um, have no. the self to understand that the key formula that we've identified bazillions of years ago with these guys is you watch the movie and you go what uh what is the theme and it's like if you can't come up with one just make one up and then pull what was useful to justify it. Add While that. ignoring a whole bunch of other information. Yeah, and, and then, then make do it a sound wishy washy ending at the end, throw in really some important. big words. Yeah. yeah. It's like it, this mattered a lot, whatever I was talking about. Which is funny because they're they're usually only like ten to fifteen minutes and they say very little and waste a lot of time. Um but I don't know, I saw this and I was just like that's pretty honest. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. basically what you guys do, um, but you know that's 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 fine. Which means we're done with that video essay portion. Now onto the boy. next topic. Who knows where we're going this next? This medley. I know it's crazy. Gaining intensity. Um, it's like the chapters of this podcast. It's like Resident Evil, where the last episode has nothing to do necessarily with what came before it. Do you remember when we talked after? about Eternals? <laughs> that was the thing. Yeah, we that was a while ago. Oh my um, god, you're right. So, uh, this is context, so we're gonna read this, or rather, I, I guess I'll just read this out, and you guys are gonna be a little bit like, what? Why are we reading this? It'll make sense, but for now we're just gonna read it. Uh, it regards the, uh, I guess, c combination of talent between Lashana Lys Lynch, I think is her name? The, the, uh, the lady from Captain Marvel and No Time to Die, yeah, talking about right. um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge being a writer on... Uh, the, the film as well. So, first quote says, uh, Lynch said her biggest wish for the character was for her to be a real woman. This regards uh, the new 007, I forget her name, but that's who she was in the film, um, whose line of work doesn't make her masculine and slick, something she says Walla Bridge ran with and helped her bring to the screen. She has it together. She's highly competent and highly, very highly skilled, but she's a real human being, and sometimes she's awkward, Lynch explained. Awkward. And that's what's so clever about Phoebe's writing. Once, we had a conversation about her possibly being awkward. There were some moments that I read that were just like, Oh no, is she really going to say that on the, uh, in the scene? I'm so here for it. Like, okay, this seems relatively normal okay. so far. Okay. You continue. I thought there might be a scene where she's coming out of the toilet and you see her throw a tampon in the bin. We don't need to make a meal out of it, but we're in the ladies' room. You're going to see someone pick their nose or pull out a wedgie. Bottom line, this woman's going to be relatable. Of course, while it's fascinating to learn about how Lynch's character was developed, this isn't the first one of the film's stars has spoken about Waller Bridge's transformative impact on the film. Um, okay. That tampon throw was transformative. So, it, it, would you say it is safe to be like, what the hell? That's the input? I'm just oh. baffled. So, right now. I, I, so if, if we were... If, so if we had a masculine character, um, uh, let's say a guy, if you will, who was, you know, just a guy bond, whatever... And in order to make him more relatable to men, he just had, was screaming in pain, trying to get out of his ass. <laughs> no, no, kid, and just, fucking right. just trying to get that shit out, you know? Um, it's really weird. And a lot of people saw that and were like, what the fuck is going to happen with this new Bond film with this writer, Phoebe Waller-Bridge? Like, what, what, we need to see 007 lady throwing a tampon in a bin. I see that that's very necessary. Very strange. Very now... That, combined with a bunch of other things, I don't have more references at the time, because this is the multimedia medley, we're going real fast, at least by EFAP standards. 
a lot of people were not looking forward to her writing influence on uh, James Bond, as well as she's, I think, I don't know if you guys are aware, but she's going to have a major influence on the new Indiana Jones. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, the concern is she's going to take over for Indiana Jones. Which is... Um, Wait, so is it, she's acting in that, right? Is she also writing it? Um, I'm not, I'd have to check. I just, I just know that obviously her influence is why I was kind of vague on that, because yeah. Right. Um, that would be strange to be the character, and then you write the character, and then you write that. Okay, all right. Uh, continue. So, with that in mind, many people in different spheres were worried about her input, and they were they were like, "Oof, no time to die and go suffer." Um, I knew this. I don't know how many people did know this, but that that was just something that was known. And then I was linked. I this. Uh, I. I apologize, but we do have to check out a bit of a Chris Duckman review. Oh um, no! Just a bit, just a bit. Oh. No. So. Okay. Good old Chris. It was else to say no. Chris is talking about No Time to Die, and uh, and he says this. With that character, if they ever decide to do more, but people get up in arms about a lot of things nowadays. Uh, outrage is very popular. It's extremely monetizable to get mad about things and scream. And people were upset that they brought on Phoebe Waller-Bridge as a writer because I guess she's a woman. I don't know. Brilliant. That's that's got to be it. It's because she's a woman. You thought, Chris, this is exactly the kind <laughs> of incredible, insightful commentary that you're known for. Fucking brilliant job. You'll go far in this business. You're saying all the right things. You're saying all the right things. Keep it up. Wear that Metroid shirt. Uh, it's proof he's a nerd. On, man you got all your cred there in the back just keep keep it going you're doing the thing you're um, nailing it so like everyone linked this to myself drinker gary a couple of others being like this is obviously a direct message and i was just sitting there like well so <laughs> did he actually ever find out what the issue was because does he know that they're okay with female writers does does he know that D i guess not uh so this is pretty awkward and i guess it's just like a cheap shot which is pretty funny because he's recently been on this whole bent of like we got to be respectful to people who are creatives and giving their own voice to different things but simultaneously be like shut up women haters just after saying man these people like to hate because it's so monetizable it's just like give me yeah, some layers of irony here light, chris like exactly bending over you know and yeah. just, God, he never says anything interesting. And the most interesting thing he says is when he, like, leaps out of his cage of niceness to say something edgy. And it's just like, shut the fuck up, Chris. Come on. Sit um, down and be a good boy. Tell yes. The things they but something interesting, the, the, funnily enough, it was, uh, I was on an open bar with, with Drinker and I was uh, told about this. And I think it was in the Discord. There was, there was this video made and it was called, like, uh, Chris Duckman destroys Critical Drinker, and the video was just playing that clip, basically. And it's like, huh? It's, like, it's just like, yeah, destroyed, and now I would I would like you to read the description, Rags, of this video. I snipped it out. A, a Chris Duckman video here? So this video was created by someone to clip out something from a Chris video and labeled it, it destroying Drinker, and this was the description right. of that video. Okay. Chris Stuckman is known for his movie and iconic. <laughs> Sorry. Is... Chris Stuckman is known for his movie and iconic catchphrase, Get Stuckmanized. <laughs> he is also an up and coming Hollywood director working on his debut feature film, Shelby Oaks. Critical Drinker is a failed screenwriter who mostly rants about black and brown <laughs> people in the media. He's also friends with Mecha Random 42. Brie Larson, Mike Zero, Mike Zero, The Quartering, Overlord DVD, Jeremy, Geeks and Gamers, The Fandom Menace, Midwestly, Doomcock, That Star, here you said that, That Star Wars Girl, Nerd Rotic, Heel vs. Babyface, The Critical Drinker. I guess you can <laughs> stop because Baller. the point is apparently just for tags. This has nothing to do with anything. Okay. Um, yeah, all right. This is just a YouTube algorithm. Help. Why are you even reading this? Do you don't have anything better to do? Um, you wrote it. it yeah. <laughs> you wrote, wrote it. But not only that, just God, how embarrassed would you be if you're Chris Stuckman when he says, known for his iconic catchphrase, get stuck get, for nice. the, the, the actual <laughs> shittiest catchphrase ever <laughs> in the universe. Get stuck manized. And then Critical Drinker is a failed screenwriter. It's like, what do you mean? He's a published author. I don't know that he ever did screenwriting, did he? 
just I didn't even know he was a screenwriter. I, I don't know how good he is as an author. I haven't read his work, but I didn't know he was a screenwriter. Dang. <laughs> just mostly rants about black and brown. People. Isn't isn't the meme that Ben Shapiro was a failed screenwriter? I don't know. I uh, I I have some memory of that, but I, I, I didn't know that uh, I didn't know that Drinker had ever tried to write a screenplay. That's. But even the the, the, the irony here me. being that it's okay to be a failed screenwriter. Well, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the funny part, right? Is it's like, are you shitting on somebody for trying and not succeeding at their goal? That's a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. Should have him. Um. So. I just thought that was kind of just funny, and like obviously everyone in the comment section was just like, "Where's the destroying? When does that happen?" And the guy was like, uh, "Like the whole video." And then uh, this was shared on the Discord as well. Um, I just screenshotted to erase the, the names. This is discussing, uh, I think the topic was Critical Drinker in, in relation to just coverage of movies, but um, I don't okay. know, if, either, you, either of you could take this one if you want. I, I can take it, sure. Uh, there's a gap here. What, what, what do we got? Let's, let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm just going to rant here for a bit. As a wannabe filmmaker who has spent years trying to learn and is still learning what makes a good script, this shit's kind of disrespectful. People like Star Wars Theory, Mahler, Quartering, Critical Drinker, all these guys have no respect for the struggle it takes to write and direct a good movie. They have this stupid idea that world building and lore and flashy fan service are all you need to make a good script. They have no understanding of plot structure, narrative development, or how to make a coherent character arc. Because in their mind, all media should exist to please the audience's self-masturbatory fan theories. If these guys were just random people making fan fiction for fun, I wouldn't care. But the problem is, these guys have massive followings, and they legitimately think they're good writers. It's so, so annoying, man. Who, who is he talking about again? So, this is the thing. I have no fucking clue who they're referencing. What? When has yeah. this been anything that we talk... We value... We opposed to f just vapid fan service. Yeah, we complain yeah, we, about it a lot. We were famously hated upon for complaining about Luke's appearance in Mandalorian Season 2. This is not us that they're talking about, Man, clearly. The video just shitting on fan service. Exactly. Like, <laughs> and then it's like, no understanding of plot structure and narrative developers. Like, have you seen any of my videos? I talk forever about these things. Like, yeah, so... It talks too long about them. What have, what have you ever said that you think you're a good writer? You don't write fiction. Nope. Never <laughs> like, said that. <laughs> and you got, they right, legitimately so. think. It's like, I've never even fucking claimed this. Like, not even as a joke. What the fuck? And then, uh, I really don't like the power it says they have no respect for the struggle it takes to write and direct a good movie. That is precisely sure what drives us. About we I'm basically sure we've often talked about the people that we really respect and admire as filmmakers, writers, and like how difficult. Yeah, the, the whole point of it's espousing this, like, yeah, it's really difficult to write something good, but the effort is always worth it. We often lament the fact that so many people work so hard on movies that are shit because it gets yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Def we definitely do that. Talking about all the people who are working, like actors, and you know, com composers, everybody working on the set, VFX artists. Set designers, costume designers, props, and like the generally really good in movies because people really put a lot of care and effort. People into work this. really hard on movies, but that's yeah. never been anything that we've ever. People work hard on stuff that isn't good as exactly. well. Exactly. Hard on the Third Reich. Yeah, what? You, you, you could have said the room, but <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I would just go as far as saying like you know Lord of the Rings. It's like phenomenal work from basically everybody involved. Uh, and then simultaneously, The Last Jedi, it's like, it's really, really hard work went in there from a lot of people. Um, we got, we got different yeah. results. Different, different results. Uh, yeah, some people, than others, some people maybe worked hard, but did a horrifically bad job, but... Well, I mean, it, it's ultimately the discussion of, like, people, people, when they observe your work, are usually pretty unreset... Like, how hard you work is usually secondary to whether or not they enjoyed it. It's something like Jackie Chan talked about, where he's like, are you going to go around to the theater and tell everybody, well, we worked really hard, we were there for like 12 hours today. Like, you can't explain that to everybody, they just see what's there. Yeah. Um, it's the same with like, basically all creative enterprises. People don't care how Bungie said, pretty much everybody who's really good at kind of, like, it's just something that you have to acknowledge. It's like, people don't 
care that much how hard you work. They care about whether it's good or not. Well, all you have to do is look into this person's opinion history, and you'd be able to point hypocrisy. And what I mean by that is they probably, oh, probably. Uh, like everyone probably else, shit on something. they probably yeah. complained about Cyberpunk 70, 2077. Let's just take that for example. And I could and be like, you have no respect yeah. for the struggle the developers went through when they were making that. Yeah, you have no respect for the struggle of making video games. You know how hard it is to make these video games? It's a miracle that they work at all. Exactly. Part two? Yeah, some hangs. <laughs> Rags, is are in part two. Part two. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't. A thousand times this. Fans don't want a compelling... A one thousand times this. I do like that. Fans don't want a compelling story that challenges or surprises the audience. They want exposition dumps with references to stuff from five films ago that none of the living characters would know about. What, it's what? all fan fiction level storytelling. <laughs> The worst kind of storytelling, as it's all self-gratifying. Holy shit, so first of the all- The worst kind of storytelling, wow. Good. I, I just assume Chronic it's all in reference to Star Wars, because it always fucking <laughs> is, right? So, oh, we yeah. don't want exposition dumps for stuff from five films ago. It's like, that literally happens in TLJ. Fucking Luke talks about how the Jedi in the prequel era was, was shit. He, he has the whole thing about it. So they're already doing the thing you're complaining about, so I don't know why you're bringing this up as a counter. And then, I, like, this, none of the living scenario. characters would know about it. Fucking all of them still know about this shit. What do you mean? Oh, this one sounds like a joke to me. It does? I don't think it's a joke at all. Yeah, fans don't want a compelling story that challenges or surprises the audience. No, that's they want sarcasm. Um, yeah. That's not a joke. As, as in, like, the, well, so the point is just, you just take the, the point is just the reverse of what is literally being said. Yeah. Um, so this idea that we want exposition done, I've always hated that, by the way, when people are like, God, if, we, if you had your way, it would be five hours of people talking about the state of everything. It's like, man, remember when talented writers could have exposition alongside character development? Remember that? Well, exposition is just... Like, exposition is just a term that describes basically information that you need to know. There are many different ways that you can relay exposition. You don't have to do exposition explicitly. Commonly cited ones for fantasy slash sci-fi worlds being brand new is you have a guy who doesn't know how things work. That's an easy, yeah, that's your easy shortcut of this guy is a foreign person. Because so, otherwise it's weird for people to be like, hey, remember that hyper-specific event? that I'm going to name very formally and speak about in extreme detail, even though we should all know this. Like, that's, yeah, you can get around that by just having the outsider. Yeah, and... and you got lots of options, you know? There's lots of ways to achieve the... There's a lot of ways to tell a story. And so, yeah, this isn't the typical criticism where they go for the whole, like, trying to be, I don't know, consistent. They're actually criticizing that they think what all, all we want is fan service. I just, it's so, it feels like it's not even regarding us. Like, you must have no fucking clue what, what we do here. Clearly, this person has yeah. heard of us, and they have hated that whatever they think we are, they, they hate that idea. But that well, happens I, more I guess than it's just, it I don't should. know, it, maybe there's something like Star I don't know enough about quartering do, I don't know. But why, why are you getting bunched in there? <laughs> I get bunched in all the time because I'm, <laughs> I'm spooky boogeyman. I honestly, you I don't you hang out with those pesky anti SJWs. I don't think I'd be anywhere near as hated if not for refap. I think the videos alone do get me hated quite a bit, but like I am a persistent like icon of frustration because I have even even the fact that I respond with you guys to fucking anyone. It makes it but like, yet people can feel comfortable like t shitting on people's films and stuff. Yes, but they don't want to get criticized by other people on the internet. Well, it's interesting, right? We usually wait for when a content creator says something that's incredibly stupid or, dare I say, incredibly harmful. For example, if we'd kept going with that guy earlier after he literally sicked his fucking audience on Jay, uh, maybe without realizing it, we it would feel to me that we have raised to a tier where I could start saying things are a little bit meaner because I'd be frustrated, right? And th there's sort of that angle. These lads. They, like, criticize that we would do that, but feel that that opens the gates. That because we- they know that we've done that, they can then say whatever they want about our characters, and they're usually pretty damn harsh. Yeah, they say some pretty nasty things. But they never see that as a problem, because they already know for sure that we are kind of evil. Yeah, I, like, I oh, know See, okay. this is- this is one of those moments where it's like, introspection, please. Please. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um... 
So yeah, I don't know. Is it like just just random. Co it is interesting to see the discourse in different subreddits about how awful we are. And I read it, and I had the exact same reaction as Friggy. I was like, "Who is this about?" Like, I don't even yeah. understand the references. But I'm sure they were relevant. Um. But yeah, I know. I hate to say it. We've only got two more stops left on our train. Oh boy. Oh my goodness. Then we're back home. And they're literally quite small. So, you know. Yeah, the stops wow. just kept getting wow. smaller and smaller as we went. Now, there's this video where, because you guys in chat, you probably remember, we covered a little show called Squid Game two EVAPs ago, Yay. I think. And uh, we, we spent quite a while ripping into the VIPs. Um, it was not small at all. We were all very frustrated with them. I think for free, you'd, uh, you'd been attacked by Hail at this point. Um, yeah, I, was, I wasn't that. But uh, yeah, we, we definitely had some things to say. Now, I, I don't even want to do this for any particularly large analysis. I just love the way that this quote is delivered by this actor. So basically, he made a video. It's 20 minutes long. And, I mean, I recommend it. You know, you get some insight. Basically, he wants to go over why... Well, he wants to respond to that criticism, is the idea. Um, so he makes a lot of arguments. Some that you guys will be more than familiar with and dismiss as quite fallacious. But some that are like, oh, okay, that's fair enough. And this is one part where he says this, and I just wanted to play it. By definition, I'm number 14. Uh, so I am principal cast, and I'm qualified to speak about the production, not for the production, not for Netflix, but about the production. And I'm telling you that that script, people have said it was done through Google Translate. I don't think that is the actual reality. <laughs> and, and, and probably I don't, shouldn't have even, like, yeah. <laughs> I, would, I don't, I don't think that's that, what happened. But... You might have it, wanted it, to sound a little sound more confident like it, yeah. if you were going to defend yeah. that. <laughs> like, holy shit. Yeah. Because you, you, you think when he delivers the setup that he's going to go, it wasn't done that way. But instead he goes, I don't think that was I don't that was think it, it was done, done that, way. that way. Like, man makes you worry uh but um what to take what you should take away from this video is what i did because i listened to the whole thing is that um it was everything the director wanted it, it, there was nothing to do with the actor's poor performance necessarily it was the director was like this is exactly as i want it i was like okay um but it's consistently one of the most criticized parts of squid game by everybody basically yep um that and so we are at the last stop on the train, everyone. All right. Uh, this one, it was just really strange. Uh, uh, we did a we did a little video covering Train to Busan. Cat, you may remember that one. I don't know. It was it was a little, little fun. We got Dankular on, a little zombie movie. Yeah. And somebody felt the need to share their perspective in the comment section. And after I read the first sentence, I couldn't wait to share it with you guys. Um, <laughs> So this is from our video? This is, this our is in our comment section, yeah. Uh, oh, right. So, from home. From, yeah, from home. So, uh, I don't know. F Fringy, would you like to read this as the last one? Okay, sure. I'm excited. Again, this regards Train to Busan. Uh, right. Uh, is it so bad with cinematography in the West that you decide to review films from your vassals? Or do you think <laughs> everything that is done in the subordinate countries is automatically yours? <laughs> Mola reminds me of a Hollywood celebrity. While he has fame, he talks nonsense with friends and cheap drugs. <laughs> when fame starts to fade, he does something crappy to make the audience remember him. P.S. The review on the non-hype father <laughs> got 125,000 views. There are so many few people actually <laughs> watching you. Uh, PPS, the Black Widow view was not so good, even for a month's vacation, let alone two months. What, what is this? <laughs> what is so, this? This is a wild <laughs> ride. Um, um so th I guess this person hates Koreans. Apparently. Um, I guess they have a really poor view of Korea and Koreans. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> um... You You're talk. a Hollywood celebrity, you had fame and it's starting to wade, and then you do something crappy to make the audience remember you. It just when I'm um, famous, I talk nonsense with my friends and cheap drugs. <laughs> like, and cheap what? drugs. And it's also the funny. Drugs like, the, 
the father got 125,000. So few people. It's like, man, 125,000 and few. Are t- are two. <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> a lot of people. I just like, I, it's not about the view count, man. It was about appreciating a movie that I thought was fantastic. There are so many few as well. So many and, few. And, and that second one, that <laughs> second one, I, I don't even understand that one. <laughs> what do you say? So, it wasn't so good for even a month's vacation? What, what is that? What I, do you think was being done in the month slash two months? What do you think was happening? A vacation? Uh, like what, That video what? was made in a day. <laughs> what the hell? Like it took one afternoon to cut they're together like, a four-hour um, video. They're like babies. They have no idea how it works. They're like, if it was uploaded, then every other day was nothing. It's like Hassan. Didn't Hassan yeah. say this? Uh, he said that YouTubers you'd only like upload once a month or something. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. What do you think they were doing that month? <laughs> it's fucking incredible. Um, I don't know. Even the first sentence is bad. It's so. Is it so bad with cinematography in the West? You decide to bad remove films from your vassals, like. I, I like the idea. It's like the cinematography in the movies is so bad. I need to see the cinematography in Korean movies. The cinematography specifically. Cinematography is not the issue with Hollywood. No, well, no, it's no, it's not. Cinematography is really good. Did he just mean movies in general? But he used the word. I think he means movies, but said cinematography because it makes you sound smarter, even though it's not the right word at all. Um, uh, incredible. I, I feel Man. like it's one of those ones where people just like I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> yes, no, uh, <laughs> maybe. Um, he does something crappy to make the audience remember him. Is he saying that we did Train to Busan because we were losing fame and thus decided to do something crappy to be remembered by? It's like so we what? losing fame. So to that end, we review a four-year-old movie from Korea. <laughs> It's a nice. really That's weird cool. thing to do to be remembered for. It's like, it's as simple as this. That's how desperate we are. You can proof. That just shows how desperate we are. You can trace the timeline. It's open bar, I think, two. Count Dagula tells me to watch Train to Busan, and I'm like, fine. And then, like, the following day I watched it, and then made Fringy watch it, and then made everyone else watch it, and I was like, should we do an EFAP yep. on this? And then we did. It's just... It's just that's it. There was nothing. It wasn't mm-hmm. about trying to desperately. There's no like, sinister agenda. We're not sitting in the the Republican Party headquarters from The Simpsons, like <laughs> in a dark, pitch black room, figuring out our plans. Lightning strikes in the background. <laughs> yeah, while lightning strikes and doing weird chants as we as we assemble to figure out our plan to get more views and money. And someone is right. So many few people needs to go in to Godelb. So many few Oh, I see that you've got Dark Souls 3 wallpaper. I do, yeah. Uh, Dancer of the Boreal Valley, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. All right. Doing his fun dances. He's he. I mean, I wonder if he wanted to just set up a dance studio and that mm-hmm. dream was stolen from him. And that's why he dances around with a sword killing people. I can't, didn't get my dream, so nobody does. We need to discuss a few of me. There's a couple memes that are stand out. I'm going to post them. I like them so much. I was going to say, we're at the end of the train. It only makes sense. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> this is hilarious. The Nuggy Marine. It's so clear. This is hilarious. <laughs> the Nuggy Submarine. I can just imagine him. It's a symbol of safety. <laughs> That's just got the, the little nugget. McDonald's sign on the side. <laughs> little, little head. Oh. I do love that. That's great. <laughs> 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 oh, He's funny. just scooting around the ocean in his little nugget submarine. Safety first, that everyone. Right, so that's really great. And then we have this, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that Simpsons episode. There's a man not in, you know, the grease. Uh, oh, yeah. Steal Willie's retirement. My retirement grease! No! Man, you have to wonder <laughs> what the commentary would be from Hassan playing through Bioshock. Playing Bioshock, Oof. yeah. It would be something else. Um, but yeah, that that's we did it, lads. Wow! Yay. The multimedia medley is complete, and uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like we should probably do this uh, some other time too. I'll try and do it. Th- this format's kind of fun, huh? 
Huh. Yeah, that's fun. I like a little medley. media medley, marvelous, me magical adventure Mumbleau. journey through the, you know, what whatever it is this is. Because we got so much covered that we never have to talk about again, like Battlefield 2042 and Eternals and Eternals, all of the... Eternals, yeah. yeah, you just hit all of these Growth. things without having to spend the whole day. Um... Yeah, I suppose that, that you know at that point we we're just gonna move right into the old super chats unless there's anything else you guys wanted to mention and talk about. Not that I'm aware of. You no, know, I think I've been talking enough. I don't really have anything else to say. I suppose. I I guess I could call it there and feel satisfied. Um. Well, I'm gonna make you say more stuff now with these questions that we'll be answering. So sorry uh, about that. You know? What what do all the what do all the mentally challenged <laughs> psychopaths want to tell us? Go on. Well, yeah. What are you asking with? us? Yeah. Well, just funny. I'm oh, clearing through all of my tabs. They're just like, man, we did talk about all kinds of fucking different shit today. Holy shit! Like, yeah, what? that was a that was a war ride. It was indeed. Wow. Um, so, as I am trying to set up Mario Party because that is the normal normal man thing to do. I'm also I'll play some Mario Kart. Trying to, trying to get, get back. Come on. You know how super chats are from the insane people. It just, it just, it lags. It's like, how fucking yeah. rude. How incon- uh, Yeah. How super inconsiderate. Right. Um. So, well, the first one says, Oh boy, another glorious e Rooney. It's fuck my life. It's been a long day. I need this toxin. I'm glad we can provide such things. I know that we, we yeah. took one week off and it was very upsetting for a lot of people. I was like, we did do a double. We did a double, everybody. You know, we did do a double. A double was done, did so. I feel like you know, it should be okay. Um. Also, some people were like, "Am I going to talk about Jurassic World Evolution?" I haven't played it for more than three hours, so I feel like it's not enough yet to actually say anything meaningful yet. Um. Though they have labeled what I think the tutorial is the campaign. Um. Oh, I, okay. Uh, so I played it for like two or three hours or whatever, and I was like, hmm, this feels weird, because it's not really a campaign, it's just you get levels, they introduce features to you, and then you complete and move on. And uh, I was told, it's like, yeah, that's not really the campaign, the chaos mode is the campaign, or something, and I was like, why is this called chaos campaign? Mode. Like, <laughs> why can't you just call it a tutorial? It's like, I imagine... The mode of chaos. They wanted to make it sound better than tutorial. That's probably well, they the can, logic. They can advertise it as a new mode. You can't say the tutorial's a mode. That won't fly. But if you call the tutorial a campaign, ooh, guys, we have a campaign. You know, you're probably right. Um, hi, Rags. Hi, Frongo. Hi. Yo. Hi, Raggleton. Hi, Mubshly. Hello to you. Hello. Oh, there we go, that's working. Um, can y'all tell plush rags to stop staring at me so menacingly? I told him Mola will be here soon. But he's not staring at you menacingly. He's just worried. He was mo he was modeled after myself. I'm never menacing. He was just worried about old Mumblo. He was like, where is he? And believe me, I am more than likely on the way. Um... Favorite Firefly guest star in Buffy and Angel? Well, I guess I'm the only one who can answer this because I'm the only one who's seen Firefly, right? Well, I guess there's only in well, Buffy and right. Angel. Yeah, <laughs> like, I vaguely know. Yeah, I vaguely know who's in Firefly, but I mean, yeah, I apologize. What's going to be the obvious answer of probably uh, yeah. Mal being Nathan Fillion? He's yep. fucking awesome. Of course, he's awesome in both. <laughs> Now I'm going to have to show the meme, dammit. <laughs> it's, it's too good. Sometimes if you post a meme and I, I don't laugh at it, I'm like, there, we can get away with it. No one will feel left out. <laughs> but if I laugh, it's like, uh-oh. For just being funny. If, if they made us crappier memes, we'd be able to get away yeah, with it. Yeah, EFAP fans, you doing? All right, here's, here's your meme, everyone. Pretty good one. <laughs> I thought it was like the Fantastic Four logo behind it, but I was like, oh no, it's probably like Channel 4 or whatever. Ron Burgundy. He's good. Very good. Alright. Boom. 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 Everything is set perfectly now. Um, Guys, I'm worried. I want my plushie to get here, but in order to do that, it'll have to cross state lines, Kappa. I, I know what you're doing there. Very clever. Um, Hi, Rags. Hello to you. Eternals is very cool. Very cool. 
Um. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like oh, you try to convince yourself. <laughs> well, this was before we discussed it, so maybe you know. Right. I don't know. Who knows maybe what happened? Know to tell those things in the film. Um. I want Anime Doggo, Frongo, and Longo to Gibbs all the many shackles. Rags his waifu for laifu. Oh. No. Oh. Wait, you want you want us to give you the shackles, or you I, would I'm like to give sure. us the shackles? I would like. I would happily receive some for you. What we did? Watching, I'm sending that. As I'm watching, like Rags doing his little talky thing, I'm trying to yeah. figure out what it would look like if I did that for. Uh oh. The uh oh. Well, I'm, I'm just sitting here trying to figure out like what what I would do. Well, unfortunately for you, Rydal's currently doing a commission for me that isn't related to the the talkie talkies. But I think that if we could all get them, that would be pretty cool. Oh, I mean, that I was cool. I was gonna give it a try myself, but <laughs> I mean, uh, even if we just had the eyes blinking and moving around a little yeah, bit, yeah, like just do the Star yeah. Fox thing where it's just like you know, I mean, you're a failed screenwriter. Like what use would you be in making that? It could just yeah, just hey, a little bit of movement don't, on. Don't this. cut at me so much, jeez. <laughs> Cause you've got that long, the, the long beak thing, yeah, so I, when I, it moves, well, the, it'll really show when it moves around a bit. I, that was my thought process too, because like, it's pretty clear at this point, this Plague Doctor mask, it's like, it, it ain't functioning like a regular one. Oh, <laughs> The guys. eyes move and... We've got, yeah. we've got Beowin art. <gasps> <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes. I'm so glad that you oh. made that. Can you help me cross just... the current? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's this little, this little water. <laughs> that is excellent. Oh. Okay, now all my windows are getting fast. confused. Hang on. The nuggies coming out of <laughs> his pants. Full image coming. Oh, there we go. That's great. I, I want to see a story about that shark just making his way through the world. <laughs> Jenny. A world. <laughs> Jenny, I miss you so much, <laughs> but I'll I'll try my hardest to 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 live without you, as difficult as it may be. Man, you gotta feel bad for all those nuggies falling out, though. Just, well, maybe they're free seen now. So much he's seen so much that he's world weary at this point. Yeah, he would be what Kang should have been, but no. Yes, but couldn't no. have that. <laughs> Kang is very charismatic. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, Bowen. Good shit. I'm glad that we can inspire such imagery. <laughs> it's the spooky old shark. The fact that it was old was even scarier. Yeah. Because that's how that works. It's a veteran of the sea wars. Mm -hmm. I like the idea that when Hassan walks down the street, he moves out of the way of old people because they scare <laughs> Well, they're probably, they're probably like Republican or something, and he's like, you know. can't trust old people anyway. You don't know where they've been. So anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A reminder that Arisham somehow made Eternals based on current racial and cultural differences when actual people just learn to fish with a stick. Hi. Um, yeah, I guess we didn't talk about that. The, uh, they were created with very specific, like, human elements that wouldn't have necessarily yes. been refined or existed um, as they did at that point, well, right? Well, I think some of them wouldn't have existed and some of them would. Right. Um just because of, yeah, because of just the way that humans had spread out across the world by that stage. Um, yeah, I'm not, I, 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 I would say that is the least of, the, you know, like if we're talking about problems in that film, like, uh, I, I'm willing to look past that in favor of the much more catastrophic issues in terms of the plot <laughs> world building. Well, that's the thing, highlighting an issue like that, I, I would, like, I, this stuff I'd have, I'd have to go look in to, to see about timeline well, proofs and it, accents it would be and stuff. the big one of, it would probably be weird if you lived in Mesopotamia to see people who didn't live in Mesopotamia. Yeah. Like, basically anybody who isn't specifically from that region of the world. But as and you then said... just apply that to all of them. Um, as problems go, that's pretty... It, it, like, it's dwarfed by some other things yeah. that were said Well, because I, I can easily just write it off just like, yeah, whatever, who cares? Compared to, you know, oh, hey, like, there's a giant rope... Like, there's a giant cosmic entity in Earth bursting out of it and that did nothing <laughs> the film sounds so retarded 
<laughs> I, no. I'll see it eventually someday. I just it's enough for me to know it. Um, oh, meme repository yeah. just just joined chat saying Eternal's bad. How dare you? It is. Yeah, it is bad. Oh, dude, shit's but... nine out of ten. It's great. That. <laughs> just... <laughs> I mean, it, oh. it, you know, there was, Julia Cudney said that Black Widow was, uh, did you say brilliant? So, you know, you, you can have all kinds brilliant, of reactions yeah. to all kinds of things. It's just, uh, some of them bewilder, as you say. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, hi, Mauler, Fringy, and of course, Rags. Hello. Hi. Uh, hey. been watching for quite a while and have always enjoyed the content. Tomorrow's my birthday, and I'm currently on Corona Coronacation. Thanks, y'all, for everything. Well, well. Oh. If you were born in the Bretains, it is now your birthday. So you know what? <gasps> Happy birthday. Even if it ain't. Um, hi, Roller, Mringy, and Frags. Hello. What That's up? sort of me. Hmm. If you had an x-ray vision, or if you had x-ray vision, sorry, uh, how would you lads use it? Hmm. I feel like I'd offer really cheap, <clears throat> um... I don't know, just like X-ray services to, to really undercut the uh, the, the uh, medical sector. I'd try and find someone who knows shit about X-rays and be like, "How can this be utilized best for society?" Because I have infinite right. X-ray vision. Like that seems better. Well, yeah, I'd also worry about else? radiation, I guess. Um, I guess maybe if we assume that, like, can I switch it on or off? Because I don't want it on all the time. That just be I, scary. It's, it's, it's almost always something you can swap on on and off. It's not, you know, it's. Not, it's not always on. You could toggle it. You could use it when you need it. Oh, you decided uh, that's the case? Said, look at, uh, <laughs> somebody said to look at lottery tickets. It's like, whoa, that's possible. I'll just do that and then amass a bunch of money and then see what Take I can do. Take over the whole there. world. Yeah, oh, that true. would be awkward because eventually they'd be like, are you are you cheating? And you're like, what? No. What? How? Uh, but then I just say, like, how do I have the capacity to cheat on this? I guess if no you one knows you have x But the second they find that out, oof. Well, I mean, is it illegal to use I was gonna say, there'd be no fiction? law against that, presumably, so... I... I yeah, would imagine it not. Would, yeah, <laughs> If you have X-ray vision, you cannot use it for this. <laughs> Just in uh, case anyone has it. Huh. I would look at people's penises and say, Hey, nice penis. And then walk away. Mm-hmm. No, I wouldn't. But you wouldn't see anything, um, would you? you just see, like, the, well, not the X-ray woman. equivalent. What is the yeah, X-ray? Yeah, the X-ray... Oh, is that what we're saying it is? You can just see whatever you want through I thought it was want, like or... you see skeletons and stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you want to go down that far, I suppose, like you could focus it to different layers. You've just made right. up a bunch of stuff for yourself here. Yeah, I was just saying well, it's like... Well, all we have is, all we have to go with is just x-ray vision. We don't have any other qualifiers. Yeah, so well, we went with I literal and you went with making like shit up. Yeah. Like well, then how could machine. you see the lottery numbers if it goes through all the way? Would you be able to see the colors of the I, numbers or the... Wow, that was just something someone said in chat. I don't know if that's how it actually works. I just took their word yes, for it. If it works generally, that way. Generally, the portrayal is that you can toggle it on and off and you can sort of like identify which layer you want to look into. Like you won't look through the entire block of a city. You'll just look through the wall and see who's behind it. Right. So I, so I, I that's kind of what I was going with is it's general. Now you're just stealing the powers from a peep and Tom. I'm just saying. Stealing the powers from peep and Tom. I, the lottery idea is an interesting one, especially you could, cause you could be able to, you could say like, hey, I want to buy 20 lottery cards. And then you could know which ones are right and which ones are wrong. And you could, I don't know, maybe give back the wrong ones or you could play. Because generally when you buy lottery tickets, you just get the one off the top. Right, yeah. Knowing yeah, which so ticket is the winner doesn't you? actually necessarily help if you can't. And also, yeah. what if they like print the tickets like they do here when they just print off with the numbers that you mm. get? Because we have plenty of the scratchy ones. Well, there's oh, going to yeah, be. Yeah, sure, but... There are going to be applications of this that we haven't thought of that would be great ways to make money. I used to oh, I'm a yeah. radiologist. That's the problem. I don't know. You I could don't see. Know oh, you could see the tumblers inside of a lock. I guess oh. so. Yeah. But, well. Uh, I was gonna say there is an aspect of like it would be, you could be really good at stealing stuff. I'm like that's probably not. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just it, what, it's what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not saying we do them. Absolutely. We're thinking of you know, um, if you were gonna use it for medicinal purposes, you would have to teach yourself what to actually look for. That's the thing. Yeah, you'd have to learn like yeah, medicine. What if, 
Yeah, what is it that is unusual and what do I need to be... Right, because you wouldn't be able to print the results for people either, so it'd be a pretty worthless service. You need to be an expert in all things medicine. You and it could. ended... Uh, mm. it, it ended with, uh, by the way, I appreciate you all massively. Oh, thanks. Thanks so much. You could... But you could probably be an incredible SWAT team member. Oh, yeah, yeah. You I can. mean, at that point, you yeah. probably need to tell them about your ability to better utilize it, right? Well, yeah, I mean, you, I imagine you would tell them if you're, like, on the SAS. And then at that point, yeah, you, you would just be... You wouldn't be... You wouldn't be so much on the team, you'd be observing with binoculars. Yeah. yeah. Guy well, I was going to say, if the, if the government knows about the power, I assume... I'm not sure what the best use of it would be. I don't know that it would be in SWAT. It would likely would be in medicine. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's maybe an odd I don't thing. know. Yeah. Um, boop, boop, boop. Rax, you're spoiling the chat. Stop talking through PFP. No. And the sad thing is, you're not going to see that much of that right now because I'm playing a game and scrolling through the super chat listing, so I can't yeah, keep clicking right, on Discord. Because for some reason, that's how Discord works on this. You need to Hopefully, they it. change that at some point. They should. Yeah. So a really cool thing, or I can toggle it on or off, like it's a yeah. hardware acceleration feature. So let me allow it, and then that's that. Yeah. Instead of this silly nonsense. Fringy, your goo gave me big mommy milkers, thanks. Th that's a lie. <laughs> hey, that's there's fair. money in that. There's money in that, them there goo. There mm. is money in that, but that, that would be if it was mine, which it wasn't. Well, whose was it? I, think it was thought slime. I don't know. It's someone's. It ain't mine. Oh, mm. someone else is good. Give some big mommy milkers. Yeah. I was gonna say. Uh, I mean, it was only a compliment to the goo. I don't know why you wouldn't want to take it. Why would I take it if it's an inaccurate description of the goo? I mean, y y for many reasons. Like. The fame of knowing that there's many. Who but why would it be the fame if it's false? Also, when my goo comes out, and it doesn't do that. Well, thank you for confirming something more about your goo. Uh, yeah, but have I not just confirmed it by saying that's a lie? We could have said could no, nothing. You usually do. <laughs> Maybe I could have really said nothing, but I decided not to. Hmm. Hmm, nothing. Hmm. Well, I'm just glad that we can note more about your goo we couldn't previously. This movie is Transformers level with every historical event is done by us nonsense. Do the MCU yeah, is that at this point? The MCU is, yeah. Every historical event has something to do with one of the factions. How fuck cool is it? Um, I feel like the concept of the Eternals would have worked better if it were in its own universe and not connected to the MCU. Make it more space opera. Um, maybe, but it's still there'd still be problems with the characters, I guess, not being involved in like a variety of things yeah. that happen on Earth. I mean, well, because I thought for a second that they were saying don't connect it to the MCU overtly, kind of like Guardians 1, it's pretty separated, or did they mean don't have it connected at all? I think they mean don't have it in the MCU. Well, um, yeah, at that point I suppose it would be improved, but it sounds like a disaster regardless. Mm. Um, because there's still all the issues with the plot. Yeah. Aliens gave us a plow because humans weren't smart. Well, humans aren't yeah, smart. Yeah, they did give us a plow. Which is wow. Feels weird, man. We didn't, have, they didn't. We didn't even get the credit for coming up with that one. Yeah. Did we at least get the wheel? Tell us we got the wheel. I think we got the well, because the wheel existed before like 5000 BC, right? So I presume. Oh, that thank we got goodness, the wheel. we got the wheel. Maybe, yeah, soon, maybe. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know for sure. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Bill Skarsgård was greatly wasted in Eternals. Who'd he oh play? yeah, he played uh he played the deviant bad guy. Oh. Oh well. <laughs> As you said, you said that he just like sort of just dies. Yeah, he's the only reason he's there is because they need deviants to fight in the film. So there's deviants and then they kill them and he's the last one left and then he shows up right at the end when the external plot has changed to stopping the celestial and then he's there and then he dies. It's, it's like a storytelling dead end. It's really bizarre. Do you think it's like, did it feel as though like it was like the Predator where they clearly reshot the ending and so the bad guy just sort of disappears? I don't know. 
I, I, it doesn't, no, because he, he's there and then he dies, and it, it all seems like it's happening in the same, I, I'm not sure, I don't know. Um, Fastos can create all kinds of crazy tech, but not a hearing aid. Uh, yeah, I guess we didn't talk about there's a deaf eternal. Oh yeah, one, one of them is deaf, which is like, the, I don't understand why you would create, if they're a robot, <laughs> and you made them, why would you do that? And let's there's pretend for a moment that... Deaf. We're creating the Eternals, and Rags is like, let's have a deaf one. You go, why? Um... What could possibly be your reasoning for why we should have a deaf one? What would... Uh... uh In-universe? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. The, the actress is deaf, but the character is deaf in-universe. Maybe the enemies... use some kind of a horrific sonic weapon? But why would it matter if you're a robot? And then why wouldn't they all be deaf? And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um Maybe I got nothing off the top of my head. Oh, and also I'm pretty sure in the they say that she introduces sign language to humans. Mm. Oh. Um, oh which it just feels weird. Just, why would you why why, why would you do yeah. it like that? It feels a little bit uh again, it's like man. That feels like an idea that I you hate got to say immediately, it. but then you didn't... It feels a little tone deaf. Uh, a little bit, yes. Um... Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Yeah, like, it, uh, it just feels weird rewriting humans' history for no other reason than just being like, Ain't that neat? It's like, what are you doing? It's not neat at all. Is it not more neat that we made it up ourselves and developed it over the course of hundreds of years? I think so, yeah. Um... But whatever, well, look what we got out of it, and it's like, not much. <laughs> it's not really anything they did with that, uh, but hey. So yeah, I don't, I don't know why they did it, and whatever reason you could come up with, you just ask the normal question of why didn't you do it to all of them, and then he's like, yeah, wait a minute, why Why the fuck? She's just crippled for some reason. Because uh, compared to the rest of them, like, I, I gotta imagine hearing is important when dealing with deviants. Um... I would imagine it is because you want to hear them. I guess you can <laughs> see them, but I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, she is like one of the stronger ones, though. She's like the only one who manages to put up a decent fight to Icarus, so. Um, okay. So I she's get... quite strong. I, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something to do with, I don't know, going really fast sonic booms, maybe? I don't know. Well, you just make it with the capacity to be able to sustain it, right? Like, well, uh, yeah. You again, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know why you. Would that's a really do odd that. thing to think, isn't it? It's like, well, she had to be but deaf, again, otherwise. It does... makes more sense if she wasn't made, but she was, so she was made like she's a robot. Yeah, I, and besides, you could just have Unless... it so that her hearing turns off whenever she's running fast, right? Right. Yeah. Because you're telling me that, what, the sonic boom would damage her hearing to the point where she'd go deaf, but it doesn't damage any other part of her body? It's like, okay. No, well, yeah, I mean, at that point. And also, she's clearly quite resilient. Exactly. In that film, she takes a decent amount of damage. Um. Weird. Oh, oh I, I guess, Fringy, I, uh, my buddy Fun just sent me this. Oh, boy. So. Is it my I meme? Oh, damn it. Well, not really, but... Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah. So it was better to get in chat. This? Pringles. Snack safely in Halo combat in one day. Oh! Okay. Pringles may have spoiled when Halo's <laughs> multiplayer's coming out. Oh! I mean, I'm, I'm up for playing it. I guess it's just from a marketing perspective. Does it make sense to release it so staggered? Multiplayer, then campaign. Um... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I, they, I mean, maybe they're I'll trying to I'll be excited to, take... to play it tomorrow. <laughs> I wonder if there's an aspect of, do you think they're like, well, what if Battlefield and in, in, uh, in, in Call of Duty are just sort of meh received? Oh, I feel like the really... easy one is it's the 20th anniversary of Halo tomorrow. Uh, uh -huh. And Xbox. Yeah. Ah, so that, that might be the reason why, because it coincides. Okay, so clearly it is an unsubstantiated. Interesting. I mean, huh. I'll, I'll be happy because... Oh, I'm fine man, with it. Like, if it comes out polished... Oh, I, I I'm of two minds because like I haven't finished the Endgame video and and I, fuck. Dude, I got so I got so much stuff I gotta do. Like the idea is like jump into Halo multiplayer to test test it out. Like, well, yes, oh, it's just for me. It's like that might be the next one. So it's like, damn, these timetables are starting to yeah. overlap and cross over. 
Well, I guess you knew that was going to happen, right? Uh, I, well, because the game comes out next month, so I got some time between them, but, uh, yeah. I'm sure it'll all work out. It'll be great. I, oh, yeah, well, I mean, I can play that. And I get, because I've been playing Mario Kart a bunch, and now I need something, a new game to, mm -hmm. to jump into. Um, a couple of dollary dues for the EFAP crew for the Halloween entertainment. My bae and I binged the Resi arc. Many a good tism was had. Oh, that sounds like fun. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks. More stuff on the way. Don't worry. Uh, hi, Rags. Long man good. Hope you will be in the next one, Fringy. Oh, he is. Ooh. Wait, what's that? Sorry, the next what? Halloween arc. You will be the in next. Oh arc. yes, that's right. It feels weird. We're basically just going to be recording Halloween arcs as the new ones play, or the recent one. Yeah. The old one plays, I guess. But yes, it's all done already, and I'm yes, excited it's to like see it. Eating while you poop. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorite depictions of humans in multiracial fiction is when humans' superpower is our ingenuity and ability to improvise, adapt, and overcome. All of this. All this does is make humans into crazy hairless monkeys. Hi, Rags. Hello. Um, we talked about this before, I think. I said something like, I like the idea when humans are exposed to, like, the multi-civilizational universe of aliens and stuff, we're just the ones that are resilient in terms of, like, we will fight to the bitter end sort of thing. That's one of the attributes of humans. Even if we're kind of, mm -hmm. like, you know, the, the least advanced, least intelligent, least understanding, we will... Uh, principally never give up. I like I like that as part of something that's human or whatever. And this, they're obviously saying like the fact that we will adapt and overcome issues and stuff. It's like, yeah, that's cool. But if this movie's just like, well, you fuckers were given all the hands up by everyone else. <laughs> like, thanks, bro. Well, I guess not just you, but a bunch of different planets. Yeah. A bunch of different people who then got blown up. But again, like you can write that that way if you want to. It's just not very satisfying for me, at least, anyway. You can't talk about that. Well, I just did. God dang. And I'll do it again. Oh my goodness, well, go. if you're gonna do it, do it after I'm gonna go get some water. So do it once I'm gone. <laughs> I can only handle one of those incredible hot takes at once. Oh my god. I've already got a water. <laughs> so much more advanced than rags. I got a water, but it's nearly empty. Oh no. Man, this minigame's interesting. You have to choose a barrel and then you get whatever bananas you get. I got the most. Oh, the ghost top tier. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, where are we here? Do, do, do. I hate how the movie has the Eternals directly affect human history. In the comics, the Norse, yeah. Greek, etc. gods and the Eternals just exist. Humans see their adventures and tell stories as myths. Oh yeah, the Greek gods are gonna in Thor. Oh, God, we have not got the room. <laughs> we <laughs> no, we don't. Russell Crowe, go away. We can't handle it. Who knows what else we'll be dealing with, because that's one that we're probably going to be interested in, I would say. Uh, oh, of course. Taika Waititi and... yeah. I already know for a fact that, like, Taika Waititi will make it worthwhile to watch. I don't know that I'll think it's a great film or anything, but I'm pretty sure he's going to make me laugh, and that's good enough oh, probably. in this yeah. environment. Oh, that's a, that's a question, uh, Fringy. What, um... How does it rank against the other Phase 4 movies? Um... I mean, they're all awful, <laughs> but I still feel like Shang-Chi is on top of, like, the whole pack in terms of everything. Mm -hmm. um, man, it's tough, because, like, Black Widow destroyed a character that I liked. Um, well, it also destroys all its own characters, too. That's true. Um, that movie's probably more catastrophic in terms of character and plot, but, like, oh, and world building, too. Yeah, I, I don't know. But the problem is Eternal is the implications on space. Well, I was going like, to say, I think it's three of Earth. I think it's fair to say the world building is more catastrophic in uh, Eternals, but I would say so. Yeah, Black Widow probably has it for character, and then plot is going to be a complicated uh, yes. battle. Yeah, I still, I so think the tough. theme theming is probably going to be worse for Black Widow too, because of the whole like freedom of, from mind, and then like the whole plot line doesn't give a fuck about all the guys who well, are possibly guess, mind controlled. Is it is it not the logic of, hey, if you love humans, you should protect them, except for all those times you didn't? So, all I'll say about that is that, uh, because uh, I haven't seen it, so I'll just have to trust you, is that, do you think that's what they were going for? I think so, because it's explicitly said by uh, Angelina Jolie, and they put it in all the trailers, so I get the impression that that's the theme I'm meant to be pulling from. Alright then, yeah. yeah. You should protect the things that you love, which is, man, a little bit ain't much of a theme, is it? Certainly pretty, not with the story standard. you were describing. Yeah. 
I mean, that's the thing. I don't mind a really simplistic theme, but fucking hell. Have your events follow it, please. Yes, that'd be nice. That would be nice. Um... Do, do, do. But yeah, uh, just the idea that in the comics they were all just, they existed, they had adventures, and then the stories of those adventures became myth is like, it sounds a little bit more simple compared to what we've been told with how everything's working yeah. so far. Um, good morning, gents. Which, by the way, Longoid, you pronounced that word perfectly on your B-Day stream. It's Dutch for good morning. Oh, I don't even remember doing that. With Morgan? Is that, is that, 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 that maybe? That, that's probably. Um, I vaguely yes. remember that. That's, uh, funnily enough, I'm actually referencing something in my head there. Um, do you know what it is, Fringy? Uh, no. But would it help if I said it was Simpsons? Which one, sorry? What, what was the reference? So, I'm deliberately not being more specific. I was curious. So, Good Morgan. What, do, you, do you know what oh, I... Oh, probably the, uh, the Germans when they uh, were, um... There you go. The plant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, is this seed and celestial birth similar to what Ego tried to do? So Earth has been double celestial seeded? Uh, um, the seed is like literally in the planet though, whereas I think Ego's was like a seed planted on the surface. And then it, and then it gobbles the it all goo. up. Yeah. Wait, yeah, did we talk about that? What did the celestials think about him doing that? I, we, they never talk about it, so and like, he, I don't know. It began on Earth. It started to erupt. Like, surely that's, that's a, that's a celestial well, event if that's destroying Earth. there's a celestial Earth. in there, yes. Uh, makes you think, doesn't it? But they don't mention it. That sounds like something you're going to want to account for. Well, yeah, because Ego is a celestial. He's one of you. <laughs> Why is he able to do all this? <laughs> yeah. The land of chocolate. Um, I don't dislike this show. However, hypothetically, if I were to show disdain on YouTube, do we just ratio each other like on n Twitter? Um, so I guess we didn't have like a conversation about that, but yeah, apparently the dislike bar is going away. The ability to dislike isn't yeah. going away, but... But the dislike bar being visible is, is gone. So like the public... Well, it's not gone yet, because I can still it, see it. You see the dis... well, I guess... can't. Oh, can't you? Oh, Shit, okay. man. I, I, I still can, but I'm assuming it's just coming out for... The yeah. end is nigh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I... Here, I'll show you what it looks like for me. Oh, I've I I've seen people posting it already. I just thought it wasn't rolled out. Here, that's like one for me. Oh, what? Yeah, that's lame yeah. as fuck. That sucks. Wait, like right, right go on the... Go on the Jenny Nicholson EFAP 59, I think it is. I can't remember anymore. But, um, does it just show that it's liked now? It's, suspense. yeah, just 9.6 thousand likes, and that's... <laughs> that's no dislikes. Funny. That's pretty that's funny. funny. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna fucking... After this stream is done, if I remember, I'm gonna post that to Twitter and be like, the most liked EFAP episode. I'm, I'm so happy that this <laughs> this is such a crowd pleaser. Because, yeah, that's there's a great irony in the fact that it's, like, designed to prevent, what, bullying? And it's just like, you just I make it so that we can't said, tell yeah. what videos everyone is pissed off by. So nice. Good job. I guess you just have to work backwards. How many views does it have? How many likes does it have? And then just, you know, well, by pure if average. We, um, if we do it by looking at net positive, uh, well, net likes, let's put it that way. Uh, the most popular EFAP episode is probably fucking like EFAP, uh, the Lord of the Rings one. I'd have to check. Yeah. However, thanks to this, it's probably the Jenny Nicholson one now. Wait, so, but can I see them on my... How do I know if people are responding positively to my video now? I have to read all you, of the comments, I guess, right? You no, know, you can see it from... I think... I don't know if oh. it's from your view on your video or if you have to go into the YouTube studio. I don't know. But okay, apparently, so I can still yeah. see them. So what what does that do for bullying, then, if I can still see all the dislikes? Well, people won't know that you're bullied as much. <sighs> yeah, it's... It, I guess so people know. won't know that I've been bullied, but I'll still know that people <laughs> you'll still know. made. You'll, you'll still know. It's a, incredibly okay. inefficient, and it's not even, like... It's not a test, it's just, no, this is happening. It's like, why not Yeah, they just see... said it's happening and nobody liked it, but they're still going to do it anyway, well, and they're probably not going to walk back on it. To be fair, they did We're this many times. the dislike bar, you know? <laughs> like, they did this many times before EFAP started, and during EFAP we've come across many iterations. I haven't been writing them down, but YouTube do this every once in a while, they just remove oh, well, a feature. It's, it's funny, they've been doing it by degrees, right? The, it used to be the, the rating system, which was peak. Yeah. That was a much better system. 
And then they did likes and dislikes, but the dislike bar used to be big and red. And then people didn't like that. Well, I don't know if people didn't like that. And then they changed it to, like, grayed out. Um, and now it's gone. Bye-bye. It's gone. I feel so much safer now. Everyone does. Even though I can still see how many people hated what I made. <laughs> oh, um... They just don't know how I many people. I saw this on Twitter and it's true. Um, so, Rags, there is a, a faction in... Futurama called like the neutral people or something. I don't oh, remember what their name yeah. is. And um, one of the funniest scenes is their planet's about to be destroyed and it like zooms into the leader and he's just like, if uh, if we die, tell my wife, hello. <laughs> okay. I, we um, have no strong opinions one way or the other. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole joke is a neutral and everything. And the clip of them on YouTube has been a constant, like possibly over a decade, Everyone just likes and dislikes depending on whichever one is currently, you know, lower. Get it neutral, yeah. To make sure it's neutral. <laughs> so, yeah, I know it sounds like a meme, but that's pretty, that's a shame. <laughs> that's gone now. Yeah. I, I, I would like to say that it, it's in a tiny little way, uh, every once in a while I'd catch a PewDiePie video, and one of his videos was, can we get the like and dislike bar perfectly even? And it was my vote that made it perfectly even. Aww. And I was like, huh, that's kind of neat. Especially with how big the numbers get because of how many views he gets. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. You know, we can't get any more down votes like the Black Widow RLM video. Yeah, that was, um, um funnily enough, uh, I remember speaking to Gary. I was in a call with him around about the time that video came out. And he was like, oh, fuck, did they like the movie? What did they say about it? I was like, Gary, just watch it. He was like, no, nah, they must have, like, fuck, what did they say? It must have been something really stupid. And I was like, no, no, seriously, just watch it. Because uh, you watch the video and it's just like unclear. They're giving the most normal take on Black Widow. Well, then right at the end, they just talk about dislikes. And they're like, actually, everyone dislike this video. Dislike it. Let's get it to the lowest possible fucking like ever. And uh, yeah, never mind that. That's gone too. So sad. And, you know, you talk about all these funnier things, and I do think they're losses. But you know, ultimately, we can we can weather them. It's the, uh, the big losses are scam videos, videos that are, like, really just bad information in general. Or just v consumers v trying to express disdain for, like, a yep. business model or something like that. Dude. Or that woman who hit her dog, that got a yep. ton of dislikes, but now that's gone. Yeah, they just like those videos now. Yeah. yeah. Not that they, they exist, like, but still. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and all the Wikipedia articles, like, fucking, you know, cataloging all this, they've all just become obsolete. Or I guess, in a way, yeah. they need to just be frozen. They're an archive. Yeah, they're yeah. like a museum of how it used to be. Yeah, like, now, well, <sighs> hey, this means that now, um, YouTube Rewinds won't be the most disliked thing, because no. you, can't you can't dislike it's anything. Like, yeah, you can see it, they, yeah. they, They're gonna restart them, maybe. <laughs> Who knows? That's yeah, the theory from a couple of people. It's like, are you, are you restarting it? Is that why? That's a pretty funny theory. Fucking worthless videos. Um, so, th I've seen other people say as well, just like, with the loss of it, it's like, yes, it does prevent, like, what is a dogpiling or whatever. And I thought to myself, if YouTube said, isn't it nice that the Jenny Nixon video won't get dogpiled with dislikes unfairly? I'd be like, fuck that. Whatever. It's, it's, <laughs> it doesn't mean anything anyway, because it's all, like, just people who didn't even watch the video. I don't care. And then you're like, well, what if it were a video where you had actually done something wrong? And it's like... Well, maybe you deserved it at that point, eh? Like, people saying, I dislike this? That's probably fine, actually. But, uh, yeah, How I do you know, know how to, like, improve as well? I, no, you can still see the, that's what That's what's baffling me, that I can still see... Just get rid of it. Like, if you're actually gonna do it, just get rid of the option to dislike anything. Um... Don't do know, this halfway. God, I was trying to think of, like, solutions, and some people were like, well, you could just have a comment that says dislike and everyone upvotes it, and it's like, I guess so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how long that would last before people just give up and just be like, well, this is just it now. Yeah. Such a shame. Uh... This to cheer you up, though. Ooh. I can't look, I'm too busy trying to get my high score. Alright, I've got it on screen, here we go. My Pokemon <laughs> attacks you with Stun Seed in reverse. Wait, am I supposed to, am I reading that right? With Stun Seed yeah, in reverse? Yeah. yeah. In reverse, what happens? You get hit with... <laughs> 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 it's super effective, Eevee dies. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent job, person who made that. Well noticed.
Oh my god. <laughs> it just gets these nuts. Ah. You get hit with these nuts. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness gracious. Um uh, you were surprised at Eternal's loss? I wasn't. It lacked pre-existing invent, you said? Okay, uh, I might need help with this one. I'm gonna Let's post. do it! I'm just gonna post. Well, I'm posting it to you guys as well, because maybe it's oh. just a matter of me not being able to read. What? You were... You... You were surprised at Eternal's loss? I wasn't. It lacked pre-existing invent said use it lacks pre-existing inventions you pre-existing pre in <laughs> in you said Disney is like a crocodile but it's more like a dodo <laughs> lots all its skill from lack of need and will die at the one challenge um diet like if there's a if there's a single challenge it will fail like the I one mean... challenge the first challenge so uh, so it's for everyone everyone's confused probably I'm gonna read this out literally as it was I guess written and uh, punctuated it just says you were surprised at eternal's loss I wasn't it laked pre-existing invent you said Disney is like a crocodile but it's more like a dodo lots of its skills from lack of need and will die at the first challenge so I think you're saying you're surprised that Eternals lost money, which isn't known yet whether that's the case because it's still in theaters. Also, wouldn't maybe it, or like, either way it doesn't mean surprise the fact me. That it didn't, yeah, like, I, I, and, and, and that Disney it. is a dodo that could doesn't do well with challenge, but like I'm pretty sure Disney films are still like top of the box office this year. Yeah, like, if you told me it lost money or gained money, I can think of reasons why that would have happened both ways. I'm not I, particularly yeah, exactly. moved anymore by it um i'm uh, the only thing i want to know is how much is spooderman gonna make yeah that's because a billion seems possible but again it's hard because of covid times and all that yes who'd win in a fight both at their prime and right now uh jeremy clarkson or john cleese um <laughs> well right now jeremy clarkson probably because john cleese is like a million years old yeah in their prime I feel like Jeremy Clarkson's more of a lad than John Cleese. And, but, right. but, and yeah. I mean, he's famously punched somebody. I don't know if that counts for anything. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. If I were forced to put my money on someone, it would probably be Jeremy Clarkson, but I don't know. What do you guys I'll reckon? probably go the same both mm -hmm. times. What was. What was the. Uh, Clarkson for what now? Jeremy Cleese versus John Clarkson. <laughs> uh, sorry, Jeremy Cleese. Jer <laughs> <laughs> I like how you just way, you man. blasted Jeremy to clarify Cleese. and you fuck their names up completely. <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening, Rags. This is what we're talking about. <laughs> I got you, buddy. Jeremy Cleese yeah. and John Clarkson. <laughs> Who would win in a fist fight? So yeah. Who would win in a fight between Who'd John Cleese and Jeremy Clarkson, both at their current ages and during their prime? Ooh. Um, I feel like Cleese would win in their prime, but Clarkson would win okay. now. Is Cleese feel tall? Mm. Guy. Cleese is really, he's quite tall. Hey, he's he's not spindly, a little guy. though. That's, I think that's all right. I think he's still strong enough, and he's got the reach, which can be really important. True, true. But yeah, because he can do the, 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 the German walk and kick him in the face from, like, <laughs> Yeah, he's very like, limber. Yeah, true. He, he can do all kinds of silly walks over there and <laughs> fuck him up. Um, There's a whole ministry for it. Uh, I think the reason why I'd go with Clarkson both times because it just seems like, uh, yeah... Yeah, I, like I, I see. It, so there. this could just be my incorrect perception of them, but I see Cleese is very posh, and Clarkson is much yes. more of a lad, and therefore much yeah. like he's probably been in fights. But I could be wrong. Well, let me let me take a look. Um, because mm. I John Cleese. Uh, John Cleese was Western Supermare. Uh, Western in Somerset. I do this ain't helping me at all. 
Um, where is Jerry Clarkson? I don't know enough about these places. Uh... Clarkson is six foot five. Oh, he- wow. Okay, I didn't know that. I don't know how John, tall John Cleese is, but he's fucking tall as well, so... Jeremy Clarkson was born in Doncaster. In South Yorkshire. It says John Cleese is 6'5". He feels like oh, he's Oh, John taller. Cleese maybe is tall as well, so they're both... It, it might just be because uh, maybe, John Cleese is Maybe they are both tall. Slimmer. Well, it says on Wikipedia that uh, Jeremy Clarkson is 6'5". Oh, they're both 6'5". Oh, I thought... Yeah. Maybe because mm. he was always standing next to two people who weren't particularly yeah. tall. <laughs> so maybe that's what makes him seem... Um, he's also a bit wider. Uh, he is... Yeah. I don't know. That's tough. Well, I think there's only one way to settle this, though. We're gonna have to get them to do it. We're gonna have to get them to do it. Though we kind of wanted it in their prime. John Cleese is just gonna have to simulate it. Oh, Michael Palin <laughs> is only he was five ten, so yeah, that's a pretty big difference. Mm. I'm five ten though, so that's a pretty that's a pretty great sight. Well, my my human's five ten. Mm -hmm. Get your story straight. Yeah, you fuck. Bringy well, does this we, better we, than you we do. We like to we like to role play. That's cringe. <laughs> Any interest in watching Arcane? For reference, this is the League of Legends show, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So, I've only heard one person reviewing it. No, two people I know review it. One was Weekend Warrior, saying it's great. Um, and the other was Theo, saying it is... This is definitely worth seeing. And I was like, ooh. Okay. So... Um, I might check it out. It's like a, uh, because if you guys ever saw the League of Legends, like, trailer, uh, sort of cinematics, they were pretty impressive. I those. Yeah. Um, and I guess if they're making a whole TV show out of stuff like that, it'd be pretty cool. Chat. That, that seems cool. What's your opinion, chat? How is Arcane? We, is it, is, is it cool? Or is it not? Let's have a look. Everyone's still talking about Jeremy Clarkson. Move on, chat. Jeez. It's funny because we get told to move on sometimes. Is that the League of Legends animated show? Probably. Yes. Right. It is kind of surprising <laughs> that they haven't done more like uh, League of Legends multimedia stuff, considering how big it yeah. is. Well, think about how, like, as much as Blizzard wanted Overwatch to be a huge cultural phenomenon, they never really did that with it. I, I mean, as as when I it was know. coming out, it was super... I remember everyone was talking about Overwatch when it came out, and those... And now it's just... Shorts torn. and stuff. Wow, well, yeah, they've reached a point where there's, like, a there's really no lots of disinterest. People, people... You say Overwatch, and people are like, oh. Yeah, that game I haven't played since 2016. Yeah, yes. a game I haven't played in literally the last couple of years. I think I could check my account. I only have Battle.net because I play StarCraft 2 here and there. But let me see. I could probably check and see when the last time I played Overwatch was. Where is? Um, I'm seeing a lot of mid to okay is what I'm seeing in chat. Okay. Maybe, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll give the first episode a shot and uh, see how it goes. Cause I still remember League of Legends enough to be amused by it, probably. I uh, yeah. Cause if I click Overwatch on the game, cause there's like. World of Warcraft, Warzone, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft Classic, Overwatch, Starcraft 2, Heroes of the Storm, Call of Duty Black Ops I remember 4. Heroes of the Storm. I remember um, when that was coming out, yeah. I don't think it says the last... That used to be a thing, though, I think, on Battle.net. It would tell you when the last time... Maybe they stopped putting that on the games, because so, they're just like, people are not playing our games. I Yeah, it doesn't... Cat, yeah, Cassidy. Dispense some yeah, justice. Yeah, that's and his name now. Wait, what? Yeah. Cassidy's the name of what? Oh, McCree. Cassidy is. Yeah, they I changed. Think was oh, named right, after right, one right. of the guys who got in trouble. So now he's. I remember. So yeah. I'm sure everybody has easily adopted changing his name in reference to the character and its balancing. I'm sure it hasn't created uh, problems at all. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't say when last I played, but it used to. It did used to. It did used to say that. Doesn't want to so remind people of that now. They don't exactly. They don't want to say. Oh yeah, that's right. You look at years since we played a long time. Um, they go on to say, I was actually tired of the Harley Quinn archetype and thought, great, now Jinx got their own series. For reference, Jinx is very Harley Quinn in uh, 
Lol. The yeah. Pokemon? No. Not, not quite that, though. No. Uh, but it wasn't that at all. It could be of interest for you. Like I said, if, I mean, okay. if enough people I know say it's worth seeing, I might give it the old shot a Rooney. Yeah, maybe. Today it I looks learned... cool. Like, the animation, the art style is awesome. It looks like painterly, but sort of 3D as well. Looks mm. cool. Uh, today I learned that my cat might have an untreatable terminal illness, and it's been hard to cope, so thank you for the stream. It helps. Sorry yeah, to hear sorry it, man. To hear that, man. Yeah. It's, it fucking sucks. I agree, chat. They should have changed his name to Epstein. Um, you're going to debate Southpaw on this. He unironically thinks Eternals is a 9 out of 10, objectively. Now, I've seen different things on that. From what I've seen, it's not about being objective. He's He doesn't do that anymore, or at least... We're different he's, now. He's put a stream... It, We've evolved. It was a, a tweet I saw, I think, that said something like, that's not the only thing that's considered when, when doing a rating. And so, don't assume that he's talking about consistency, because fucking hell. How is anyone going to make that argument for Turtles? I was, like, like, unless Fringy's lied to us extensively, which, by the way, uh, props for your creativity and the lies, if that's true. Um, I don't see... <laughs> just weaving this web of lies about this movie. <laughs> it's just, just... Like, everyone in chat hasn't seen the movies, so we all just trusted you. <laughs> just like... and, then, and then there's Icarus, yeah, 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 and he, uh, he flies too close to the he sun, He flies yeah, into the yeah. sun, that definitely happened. And it's funny, because you were like, you believed me. That's so dumb, how did you... It's like, it's Marvel, Fringy, come on. <laughs> Why yeah. wouldn't we believe you? Um, yeah, so, uh, as for, like, debating, I fucking, I haven't even seen the movie, Rags hasn't seen the movie, uh, if we had no. seen the movie, I don't think we'd want to debate it, I, I don't think we'd care. I'm, I'm not that passionately invested in, like, shit. I think, it. it's fair I to say, between the three of us, it is the least passionate we've been about a Marvel thing, or an yeah. MCU thing. It feels great! It feels yeah. great! Yeah. than it's... even Shang-Chi, I felt like there was more to, of interest to talk about there, despite it's that being freeing. a very, like, it is freeing, yeah, I will sludgy. say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you got like a 9 out of 10 enjoyment of that film, uh, I'd be staggered. But have all the fun Yeah, me that too. I have. don't know what you'd be latching on to. That's a 9 out of 10. Fuck me. That's cool. I, there are so few Nine games or yeah. so few movies we give not like that is, if someone said that, like if one of you came to me and said, I found this movie, it's a 9 Whoa. out of 10, I'd be like, wow. Despite nine out of ten is what would be high. considered commonly by many people, I don't give Civil War a nine. I don't think. I wouldn't give it a nine. I don't. I, I'm trying to think of if I I've think, ever I think said it's that. More in the eight territory. Yeah, I I would be much more comfortable in eight, but nine. Like I'm trying to think of. I guess the f Saving Private <laughs> Ryan is like a nine. I was gonna say know? like I maybe I'm not making the point clear. Like the Hot the fuss. reason why this is surprising to us is like we save nine for like the ones that are fucking top tier. Like stuff that we have to make sure to like super look into. It, we're we are hesitant to give thing a nine. Yeah, like nine, nine is that's that's rip. You've done, you you're in like the best of the best at that point. Um, you know, like aliens. We yeah, we, it's uh Ooh, nine. That's what's it? More Lord of the Rings rating, probably eight. But. A mm. high eight, I think. Probably. Um, the I would have to rewatch it to be able to cite what I consider yeah. to be the even, flaws, but yeah, even even Lord of the Rings, we would want a rewatch to see if it was a nine. That's how, that's how prestigious. You just want to be careful. A nine prestigious is. Yeah. nine. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want your move. You want that nine to really mean something. You don't want to fucking give it to Eternals. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> well, I uh, again, <laughs> if it was like you know, if you guys were purely rating on enjoyment, what gets a nine? I'd be like, well, so there's gonna be a lot of things, I guess. Um, I don't even yeah, know. A lot of things Resident, get a nine Resident on Evils that, yeah. and Van Helsing's and all kinds of movies. <laughs> um, that would be a much larger I mean, list. We'll say that. Much. Yeah, but I was gonna say like, but. The awareness there. You know, if I said, yeah, Van Helsing, fucking died out. We were laughing our asses <laughs> off watching it. It was so much fun. But I mean, amazing. nobody's mistaking us for thinking it's, like, <laughs> really good. It's actually, I don't, like, a really good Yeah, movie. you know what I mean. I, I, so, I, I don't know. I just, yeah. Because uh, I didn't think, from what Springy described, I don't know that Eternals is that kind of movie, you know? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say so. Like, <laughs> it's Now, I haven't seen it, granted. Well, I so, just don't. 
one I of the don't most, know. One of the most common things I hear about it is that it's boring. So I'd be like, I'd be surprised if it were like a romp of a movie. Nostalgia could have described Van Helsing as boring, so what do I know? Which means it, it is that is confirmation it's not boring. <laughs> I, uh, we'll... I mean, I, I think Eternals is boring. I, I was quite bored um, while watching it. So like, so what would you say is the meme factor of, of the film? Is there much of one? The meme factor? Yeah, like watching it with friends, really could you meme? find no, it? No, I, no, I, no, no, I was gonna say, I don't think so. Like, that... I wouldn't show my friends that. I would... It takes itself <laughs> pretty seriously. Friends. It does have some of the Marvel quippy stuff, but it, tr it takes itself a lot more seriously. Yeah, meme just said it's dull, so dull. It's dull, dull. Yeah, that's that's apt. Dull. Well, now that meme said it, I guess we know it's true. Well, he's someone I trust. Um, yeah, I trust meme. But you know, he's probably been bored by things that I found exciting and vice versa. So maybe he's fucking lying about his dull I feels. I just, uh, I was just gonna say about the DCEU. There's a lot of meme factor in there. Like, Man of Steel was surprisingly memeable. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I just from what Frank described, it didn't sound like this movie has a lot of a lot of a meme factor. Not many moments where you laugh out loud. Except so for stupid Icarus it is. flying into the sun. That's right. pretty meme. -y, <laughs> but uh, but otherwise, it's, it's, yeah, I ain't got much. Fly into the sun. Be the meme king you were born to be. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine if the Eternals yeah. were aware of the Icarus story? They saw him doing that. They're like, no. no is he actually? You had one job. Is he actually flying into the? Oh my god. What a Chad. What a Chad. He's doing it. He's doing the meme. Um, hey, EFAB crew and guest, could you do your best? And then there's a quote, and it's of Snatch, I believe. Uh, I'll post it so you can see it. It's uh, it's when Jason Statham is talking to uh, Tommy and when they first meet the Pikeys, I think. He's like, you're a sensitive boy, Tommy. There's a little voice for it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they want us to do our normal voices, in which case, you're a sensitive boy, Tommy. He has to go next because he's Australian. Mm -hmm. What was the line exactly again? Sorry, I posted it. It's, you're a sensitive oh, boy, Tommy. I didn't see it. Yeah. You're a sensitive boy, Tommy. <laughs> there you go. Wow, you laugh at Tommy as you finish the sentence. Brutal. Well, you're a sensitive boy, Tommy. Perfect. Um, hey, Muller, is your first name James? No. <laughs> But James is a fine name. Vringy, how often do you use the word gobsmacked? Rarely. Very rarely. Oh, there's your answer. Mm -hmm. uh, guys, if we stop saying hi rags, we can cut the super chat catch up in half. So anyway, hi rags. Oh! Hi. <laughs> um, Squid Game super chats when? So that'll be, I think they're first up on the catch-up, which will be Wednesday. I don't think anything else is being scheduled, but we should be able to do a, a catch-up then. And we will keep doing them until we defeat the Overflow. Uh, Y'all familiar with the PS1 D-make of Bloodborne? I am. It looked real neat. You guys see it? Yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, no. I remember that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I do know what you're talking about. It does look very nifty. It's very cool. Like I said, PS1 graphics are becoming their own style now. Uh, yeah, I mean, because it, it was just super interesting to look at, and then, in a, in a sense, seeing... thinking about the original in your head, and then watching it play out in PS1 gravity, there's something very interesting about that. Um, these deviants sound like Metroids, life-sucking creatures that were made to be predators for something, then ended up turning on their creators. Um... Yeah, but I guess the difference is, like, the de the Deviants aren't actually, like, life suckers. That just seems to be the ability of, like, one specific one for some reason. They just eat things. Do we see them doing they that? Do. They just eat... Huh? Do, they, do we see, like, so when you say eat things, is it like a... Like a... They eat... Yeah, they're just, they're just, like, predators that just eat eat people. Like, that's that's what they do. That's what they try like to the do. Like, the flesh right. sustains them? Just standard sort of thing? I, I don't know, just like you munch on it, like, num num num, oh, food, yummy. Like, I think that's... It, we it's just see taste. one I guess, that so, the juice out of the, uh, the I, I, I must be coming across as a little bit weird, and I understand that. I guess because I'm thinking about them as, like, cosmic creatures, and it's just like, right. they, just, they just eat flesh? It's like, okay. Yeah, they just eat things. That's what they do. They, yeah. 
But then one of them, for some reason, can suck out the juice, and I guess, like, Icarus knows that somehow. Right. Oh, that's the juice. And out. doesn't think that there are any repercussions of allowing that to happen, because when it sucks up Ajax, it gets the power to heal itself, which makes it really hard to kill. Yeah, and when that's... it sucks up Chad, <laughs> it gets super duper strong. Damn, the first two powers, they're pretty useful ones in terms of self-sustaining. Yeah, healing is a really good one, yeah. Hmm, you'd think he'd be more concerned about that. Yeah. Wait, why wasn't he I killing mean, them then? I... I don't know. He lets them kill Ajax, and then he doesn't kill them. He just leaves it, them there. Yeah, because I was gonna say, I get what? that part, but like once they're done, surely he would kill them himself. Um, I mean, I would. <laughs> because well, they're only going they, to be a danger to him slash the Celestial, well, right? Because so. they, they, if he didn't show up in London, they would have killed his uh, girlfriend. So you know, makes you think. Like, mm. what's your plan to just set this up so? Because none of the characters would have thought to go look for Ajax if they hadn't been attacked. And them See, looking gets the team together, the team that then defeats him and stops the grand plan. Oh, it's like League of Extraordinary Bowman. A bit. Uh, oh, I've got somewhat, a question. Yeah. I've got a question. Do I it. was I was, I was, was laying in bed and I was thinking about this, as you do. And at the beginning of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, right? At the beginning of League. Yes, yes. Why? So... Was it part of the Phantom's plan to actually kill Quartermain there? And if so, why go to talk to Quartermain at all? So, so is it be So I get I, I see what you're saying, because like they, they do most of the collecting of the things that they need. Cause so the he brings in Quartermain to capture the others. That's his that's what his reasoning was. Um I think he says we needed someone like Quartermain to get hide. Um and so you're asking when they're in uh, Dorian's place because they clearly intend to kill. But if they did, they, no, that no, would be too early. No, no, in Africa. Um, presumably. So the the guy who was with him, you know, the the butlery guy, he was evil. So yeah. I'm assuming that yeah, he yeah. wouldn't have allowed Quatermain to be. Bl it was on a timer though. Well, they and they clearly like throw knives and bomb, like shoot at him in a, a bunch. Um, like they're tr they're clearly could, trying to kill Quarterman. Could it be argued that if Quarterman couldn't pass that test, he wouldn't have been worth it anyway? I don't know. I think that's pretty. I don't. I don't know. I mean, if that's pretty dumb logic to think that. Well, if we ambush him here, he's not worth having. Well, it reminds me of um. Oh fuck! What is? What am I? Th brain, help me out! Come on! I'm You're, referencing I, I'm something. I'm thinking of it too, and I can't remember it. Oh fuck! What is that? Shang Chi. I, like, you and I. It's Shang Chi. Where it's like, yeah. I sent them all to fucking kill you because I knew they couldn't, or whatever. <laughs> it's like, what? It's a like, good thing a lucky, a stray bullet or something. Exactly, it's so didn't, you know, stupid. A, piece of sh a little piece of shrapnel didn't, you know. Hey. But I, that's just, I was just thinking of that when I was laying in bed. I was, I don't know, for whatever reason, I was like, wait a second. I think this part of League of Extraordinary Gentlemen doesn't make that much sense. I'm a little confused here. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I don't think any of us, like... Even like picked it out. Our brains were too busy trying to. Oh, there's so with much the to think about. That yeah. Yeah. Ah, oh, so I was. I don't know. That's that was a thought. That movie was fun. It, there is fun in that movie. I think it would fall apart on further inspection. <laughs> like, but that's fine. Um. Uh, oh yeah. So I answered that one. Da, da, da. May I try? Hey, Mola, are you bad at pronouncing Japanese names because you hate women? Um, I hate women and men. I don't see why it would be just about women. And I wasn't the one who suggested Andrew. It was it was Rags, and it was a good suggestion. Um, Rags plushie is hot, and it came with a free dust bag. Yeah, the the little bags they get with you are quite nice as well. They are kind of nice, yeah. And, uh, keep them safe in it, or use the bag for whatever you may want to use it for. Um, in case it's a while until y'all read the super chat from a few weeks ago, I'm sorry for sending spoiler messages to you, Rags. I ask for forgiveness. Oh, um, yeah, you bet. Certainly. I don't remember what they're referencing, but sure. I think someone had sent me, um, so, some, I think it was either Squid Game spoilers or something, but they'd sent, they'd sent spoilers in, uh, my DMs. I see. Um, any chance of EFAP movies for Dune 1984 and 2021? We've thought about it. Uh, it would obviously be after Fringy and Rags see it in theaters. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't know, and it could work because of the fact that we probably won't do a normal EFAP for that now. Um, if we did the EFAP movies for them, we can still get our commentary out. Especially, Dune is a movie that would have space for commentary, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, we could do it. We could discuss it on a medley, if that's a new format where oh, we just true, okay, we true. saw it. Spend yeah. a little time talking about. It. Here's like here's a movie we saw, or here's a game we played, or something. We'll put that in the maybe pile. I think that's a possibility. Yeah. Because my, I know free. It's gonna take a while still to get to theaters in Australia, mm -hmm. and I'm waiting to see that with my dad because we haven't been to theaters in ages. But he oh, has. No, uh, he... I, I've been able to go to theaters. It's just not out yet for some reason. It doesn't come out until December. Um, but once you've both seen it, we can think about a possibility on that. Uh, Mauler yeah. sketches should have been part of the movie poster. Make it canon. Also, hi, Ragzizzes. Hi. Uh, sorry, it's been a while since my last chat. Still working on a more direct way to super chat without Susan taking a cut. Also, sorry for not giving you B-Day wishes. You stopped the streams so I wasn't able to. Happy B-Day regardless. Don't you worry about that. Thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, it's the biggest downfall of the super chats is that YouTube takes the 30% cut, which is, um... Is complicated uh, in terms of like, do you think that's the right or wrong sort of thing? It's like, I mean, they provide a pretty damn good service, so it's like, hmm, hard to say exactly what kind of cut they should get, but it's bigger than most of like all other services, right? Um, I'm not certain off the top of my head. Is, what is Patreon's? Is it? Is that thirty percent or is that? Uh, Patreon's is pretty I think, little. No, I think there's varies depending on um when you signed up, actually. Um, mm. I think uh, if you signed up early, you got a better cut than people who signed up later. But I'm not sure. And then, uh, obviously Streamlabs is the stronger cut for the creator, but I don't know if, um, have Twitter done monetization yet? I think they have, right? Uh, I think they've done the tip jar. Right. Don't know I what don't their know splits that, are, yeah. but yeah. Thank you regardless. Uh... How long did you guys discuss this dumpster fire of a movie, and how much did I miss? Also, high rags. Uh, hour, and, hour and ten minutes, I think. So probably an hour because we had like ten minutes of talking to beginning. So, okay. yeah, which is a lot shorter compared to most of our MCU coverage. We spared you all. Bringy could have tortured us a little bit more, but he just decided not to. Yeah, very kind. Uh, the only hero saving the world from deviance is Kylo... Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh my god. No. I don't oh, think he's oh, gonna oh, be in the MCU. Uh, that is true. Um... Never seen Squid Game? I think it's trash. How worthless are comments like this one? Why do people say things like this without experiencing it? Um... I was actually listening to some, uh... I think it was Amazing Atheist. He was talking to somebody. And they ask him, has he seen the Squid Game yet? And he says, no. Like, like, aggressively. And it's like, okay. And he oh, says, when why? something is that popular, <laughs> I just don't want to see it out of principle. What? And I was like, nice. okay. <laughs> All right. Just like, he just doesn't like it. If something's real popular, he'll see it eventually. It's like, wow, that's a strange mindset, but you go and do you. Man, you feel very strongly about this. Um... The idea of cosmic beings gestating inside planets is monumentally retarded. The inner cores of planets are solid, outer cores are molten metal alloys. I guess Hollow Earth is now canon in the MCU. Like I said, I don't know where to begin to explain how wrong everything is in that movie from what Fringy said. <laughs> the amount of physics involved in how much stupid there is. Yeah. It, it, it upsets the mind. It does. My my head hurts. <laughs> Thinking about and it. You shouldn't do that to an audience. What's, 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 why are you doing that? Don't don't be doing that. Uh, did any of the Eternals get snapped? The Celestials. Also, did Fastos invent the gas chamber? Oh no. Well, I guess we'll never know exactly what he invented fully. But um, as for the other question, my brain was almost uh, like, well, maybe they're exempt, and it's like, but why would they be? I don't fucking know. I have no idea whether they're exempt or not. I, g I think we're meant to presume that they didn't get snapped. But that should raise questions in their mind as to what they are. Because remember, only two of them know the truth. The rest of them think that they are, like, living beings. 
So you think they'd be like, man, it might be worthwhile to check to see if the other guy's been snapped. But I guess we just have to presume that they were just chilling out doing their own thing. <laughs> um, Meme just said, according to the director, the Eternals weren't snapped because they aren't technically alive. Um, oh, they, fuck um, off. Um, we got some big old questions about what it means to be alive. So if you're sentient, you're like, they're not alive, they just have personalities <laughs> and love each other and make decisions and they're intelligent. Ooh, that's interesting as a thought. But yeah, uh, we were oh, actually she, talking about the Celestials, better. but... Okay. Well, it, it wouldn't oh. be a Marvel fucking property if the director didn't say something retarded, like, in defense of their <laughs> movie. <laughs> Fuck, Mary kill, Bowser, Donkey Kong, DDD. Fuck Bowser. Marry, oh, marry Donkey Kong, yeah. Yeah. Wait, Mary Donkey DDD. Kong kill DDD. King DDD. Yeah. Yeah. No, the oh, other DDD. No, you know, I, I, you know what? Um, <laughs> that's a tough one, actually. I think I'm gonna marry DDD. Oh. He, he seems like a lovable goofball who's always trying his best. What? Uh, Wasn't he the evil crocodile? No. No, you're thinking of King K. Rule. Yeah. Oh, King okay. K. King DDD's the penguin. Yeah. Kind of. It's kind of like a penguin. What is he? He's some kind of a- some beaked creature. I think I'll marry DDD, uh, and then I think I'll fuck Donkey Kong and then kill Bowser. Oh, what? No, we're definitely- we're fucking Bowser. I wanna- What do you I mean, mean we? Man. <laughs> wait, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, oh, wait, okay, 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 yeah, <laughs> you can fuck whoever you want. Definitely fucking Bowser. Um... He would either fuck or marry Bowser, because he's got all the stuff he has, the castle. Yeah, King DDD the... also has a castle. And oh, a but bunch all, the, of all the cool robots and all the minions. And yeah, he's just King so DDD has a bunch of minions. <laughs> feral and handsome. And he goes go karting with his his enemies, so he has a merciful side to him. There's so King much to DDD like. King DDD is always looking out for the welfare of his kingdom. That's like uh, he's a misunderstood. Ugh. So well, <laughs> but apparently, so, so like King... the Kirby games have huge lore, by the way, and like actual really interesting character development and dynamics. So That's I will. Anyway. So I'll fuck Bowser, marry King DDD, and then kill Donkey Kong. Damn. Yeah, but I, I man, Donkey Kong, he's he's a, he, you know, he's a hero. He goes out and is so does King DDD, right? He sounds like a really great guy. He, he, well, that's he's, what I'm he's saying. Bowser, King, Bowser is is a villainous character. King DDD, mm. King DDD is more of an anti-hero, and Donkey Kong is like actually just a good old-fashioned hero. <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. Bloodborne esque. <laughs> that's a comment. Well, <laughs> what? Kirby lore is Bloodborne-esque, is what someone bloodborne -esque. said. Bloodborne-esque? Fucking hope it's not. <laughs> bloodborne lore is horrifying. I, I think it's the idea that there was like a really expansive lore in uh <laughs> in the in that world. So you're I, not well, saying there are people who that, like, draw power from blood, okay. Uh, maybe not, but I, I you know, I, I like I hear that Meta Knight has like this full-blown just arc. He goes on this massive arc <laughs> across like the whole series. And the same goes for, like, King DDD. He's got, like, a giant arc and stuff that keeps changing for him. It's just interesting to think about. This little game about a little pink ball that just goes <laughs> on adventures and eats things. All the final bosses are eldritch abominations. Oh, okay. Sweet. I, I can see the connection there. I would love to see Efab do Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, fun, but the writing is atrocious. I figure. I absolutely I figure that one. Uh, I could yak your ears off about everything wrong with that movie. I think I saw someone summarize the plot pretty quickly and I, like, couldn't believe it. So we're in for a really fun ride with that one when we get around to it. Um, anyways, I've got my second Rags plushie. Uh, gave one to my mum as an early Christmas present. The other keeps me company while playing The Last of Us. Still waiting for the two maulers, though. Oh. Sweet. Um, yeah, they're gonna be a little delayed, but they're on the way. To watch movies with you. Congrats, Eternals. You made the time travel in Endgame less confusing in comparison. Is that true? <laughs> like, no. I don't think so. That's... No, it's <laughs> when... not. When you have, like, a bowl of spaghetti and then someone else is like, here are loads of Christmas tree lights dipped in acid, it's like, that doesn't really help the spaghetti or anything. <laughs> it doesn't really change anything <laughs> about the status of the spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ring Daddy G forgot Thanos' brother Harry Styles. No, I I got around to that. I did I mention think. it eventually, yeah. Um, yeah. What are we, are we, what we weren't supposed to take it. anything from that, right? He's just there. He's gonna probably be important in like future stuff, but I don't know what that means to us now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like the scene itself didn't it didn't say anything specific or. Not really. Woohoo! I for one can't wait. I'm assuming because like you, you just naturally, I'd be like, is it gonna be a vengeance thing? Is he mad that? I have no. I don't think so. I think he's meant to be like. I don't know. I I don't know. I have no idea. Um, been a while, EFAP quote without context. The final aardvark is a graphic novel set in the cinematic universe of White Chicks. It's the second in a series of film adaptations. That's a quote from Rags. I... I got no fucking clue wait, with that one. Wait, say, say that again? Oh, was it? You, you try to make that sound like you didn't quite get it when you didn't hear any of it. Be honest. None. <laughs> Not a word. Well, how about you the read it? The final aardvark... Yeah. The final aardvark is a graphic novel set in the cinematic universe of White Chicks. It is the second in a series of film adaptations. When did I say this? So how drunk was Rags when this was said? I must like... have been in... I'm, if someone can tell me where this is from, I legitimately would like to go back and hear myself saying this, because this is news to me. Are you sure I said Are you this? sure? Are you certain? That I, I said this. It's just Rag says some weird stuff. It's like, yes, yes, here and there. Sure, but this is on another level. Um, the Dog Pictures game that you just played, while horrible, actually used some accurate slang from the military. Embrace the suck is a real term. They say that in the military, <laughs> embrace the suck? Why would that even be military specific? Okay. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Got, I got nothing. Um, we should do an EFAP quiz with who said this line sometime. That could be fun. Uh, who said this line? And to think, Sitch thought this trash was entertaining. Sitch said Eternals was entertaining? Okay, yeah. It's fair. I mean, it's, Fine. yeah. I'll I don't, I don't blame a man for just being entertained sometimes. Uh, hang on. Ego didn't need to destroy a whole planet of intelligent life to birth Peter. Also, keep up the amazing content. I guess that's different. I guess that's different for some reason. I was gonna say, wait, but Peter is like half celestial, isn't he? Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. They don't know, so how am I gonna know? Yeah. Um, despite not liking humans in my Transformers, um, at least they treat them better than apparently everyone else, including Marvel. Heck, at least Michael Bay depicts them as capable of fighting off aliens. I, I mean, I'm guessing people really aren't happy with the idea that, like, humans are sort of shepherded and, and sort of sorted by other people in the universe at this point. Which I guess is yeah, kind of fair. Uh, it's frustrating, but what are you gonna do? They got so many fucking greater powers that are in this universe now that humans are just fucking puppets. <laughs> like everyone's puppets. Yeah, we're just at the whim of shit. Didn't Quill Celestial Half die along with Ego or something? Yeah, he uh, he lost the benefits of being, I guess, part Celestial. But I'm just saying that it's interesting that he could. Just I guess extend that part of himself out to beings? I don't fucking know. Mm. Um, so here's a hot take. Batman the Dark Knight has a lot of plot issues, such as Joker's plan post his capture, and the gun jammings in the beginning. Would love to hear your thoughts. Also, hi Rags. Hi. That's an interesting observation. Yeah, That's that is quite interesting the observation. Thoughts. How about that? I'm hmm. trying to think, um, uh, if there's anything sort of in, in the queue for us eventually looking at anything to do with the Nolan trilogy. Maybe one day. I don't see why not. But right now, just a little bit busy with all the other sludge in, 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 and, and also good stuff. We've covered some good stuff. Yeah, there. yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, don't know. Also, hooray. I got my rags plushie. So cool. Hi, rags. Hello. Rags, I love the animated avatar. Always neat art. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, Rigel did a great job with it. 
I'm sorry we can't show it right now. <laughs> Look at this. It's something to do with the re GTA Remastered. Apparently they used AI to upscale the signs, uh, like on storefronts. Um, so a lot of the jokes are just like lost because the, uh, the AI couldn't tell what it was meant to be rendering. Um, I've, heard, so, I've heard there are terrible, yeah. terrible yeah. things so, coming out of this. Look, look at that. Guitar Wank becomes Guitar Hank and Air Guitar becomes AR, AR Guitar. And you can't even see the guitars behind them. Like, you can't see the guitars. There's there's nothing there. Well, fuck, I, because I, I'm not familiar enough with the games, but there's a character I saw Week of Warrior posting about who was like, completely botched in the remaster in terms of their actual model. They looked retarded. Um, there's a lot of weird, weird mistakes. The rain looks like horrific. Oh, um, the big one I just saw is that, um, the, the, the look at this. Look at, look at this image. The rain is rendered behind the ocean. So, like, look at that. <laughs> Wait, what's that? <laughs> like... <laughs> at least the ocean's not wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I like that the chat is this nice raid rock star. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the dude's That's face. That's what thought. It's rock star. You have so much money. You have fuck you money. Like, come on. This dude's face you... is like, what? Yeah. <laughs> what am I it's looking at? way better than this. And then you, and the fact that you delist the old ones too, yeah. so that you can't buy those on Steam, but so that your only option is this. <laughs> Ocean greater than rain. Originals. Yeah, I hope you guys held on to your PS2 copies. I got them up on my shelf, fortunately. That's the thing, man. There's, there's gonna be a growing industry of rescuing the original copies of media because we're getting yeah. to spookier times with well, that. Especially when you got them delisting the old ones so that you can't buy them. Why didn't she? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why didn't she do try like? Yeah, it's just disappointing. But hey, Grand Theft Auto Five out for the fifth console. On, but hey, what about Grand Theft Auto Six? What's that? What are you talking about? You mean Grand Theft Auto Online? That's out. That's you can play that. Um. And yeah, so these ones now, I think we're, we're done with the Eternals, and now we're moving into the section two, which All would be right. good old Battlefield. Uh, what's this insane need to destroy and leave out core cool mechanics slash ideas when it comes to modern VG devs or filmmakers? All the weird ideas that suck. Um, I, I don't know, uh, we, there's definitely a general theme of, like, the more it appeals to wider audiences, the less complicated it is. And by complicated, sometimes that literally just means less features. Which is frustrating. Uh, this applies to, like, almost every great franchise as it goes along for gaming. Um, but there are some that remain strong, I would argue, and some that have improvements as time goes on. It's just... I guess part of it as well is just chasing what's important. Uh, sorry, what's in... what's liked. What's popular, that's the word I was going for. I think I'm already entering a time of brain melty. But that's okay. Uh, what's worse, COD Vanguard or BF 2042? Yes. It sounds like um, Vanguard is a disaster from what I've heard, but maybe it's Battlefield based on everything Rags has said. Man, I don't know. I haven't played Vanguard, nor shall I. I just... Well, so the I don't know. things that I've heard about Vanguard, there are a lot of things. So, number one, historical accuracy, pfft, like, no, no interest in that at all is what I've heard about Vanguard. Weapons in, in locations where they shouldn't be, things you know, like a complete over-exaggeration of the real events um, that it's trying to mirror, because the whole shtick with Vanguard is it's meant to be like the birth of special forces. Um, so again, that's- I don't know if any of you just saw that bullshit, but holy fuck. I- oh no, it's muted. Uh, that oh, could no. be cool. Um, as a- as a thing, like if I'm um, trying to focus on, um, how World War II kind of birthed the idea of hyper-specialized soldiers that have very unique skill sets that they needed to develop to sort of combat the threat. But I mean, from what I've gathered, like in terms of um, the story, it's just full-on bombastic, crazy action adventure again. Um, no interest in telling the story of a normal soldier. Um, 
We're and then from what that. I understand. Yeah, we, we don't you care about that anymore. Stories about we soldiers. Have... You're the first mega super man who is going to be the um, special forces person, whatever. Apparently, Vanguard has red dot sights for guns. Holy shit. Holy fuck. Um, <laughs> uh, and from what I understand about the multiplayer, the big thing is that it is like, it is very clear that this is Modern Warfare 2019 and that they've like applied a World War II paint over it. Like it looks so similar, um, but worse. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's what I hear. And also that there's like issues in terms of like the game, uh, in terms of core design as well. So it sounds like it's not a good year for your first person multiplayer shooters. Mm. Uh, as an armchair historian, COD pissed me off more than BF, also high ranks. Hello! Right. There, there's your answer. Understandable. I know that the big, the big one was, um, there's, there's a mission in Stalingrad, and it's like, you know, the Battle of Stalingrad, and it opens up, like, all peaceful and calm, and it's like, dude, like, that's not... You do understand that, like, these battles don't just start like that in a day, right? Like, they don't just- it's not just everything's peaceful and then all of a sudden you get bombed. Like, just completely blown out and then you've got Nazis already swarming into the city. This is- Like, the only reason you would do that is because you want to do your crazy action set piece where your character runs around and everything's getting blown up and it's crazy and nuts. Um... Which feels like that's just the Call of Duty format now. Every time that you have something that could just be, like, presented in a m more believable way. Like, fuck it, more explosions, amp it up, go crazy. Uh, and then the consequence is you've created something that's less intense than, like, World at War, where it's a lot more just... It feels a lot more grounded. Um, the world doesn't revolve around you. You aren't the specialist, superest, most duperest, awesome soldier in the battlefield. You're just a cog in the machine trying to make your way and achieve your objectives. I've already seen Call of Duty social media go back to promoting Warzone. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Um, <laughs> just pump out the next oh. one, pump out the next <clears throat> one. Which yeah. is, I'm gonna chat like, mention. Uh, go World, War, World at War Stalingrad mission was a better reference to Enemy at the Gates. Dude, the first Call of Duty 1 is like hardcore referencing Enemy at the Gates. Um, with its Stalingrad mission. Call of Duty had a lot of references to films back in the day. Mm -hmm. I mean, like... The, the the I mean basically like the whole Call of Duty four, uh, that that whole thing was like just lots of references to Black Hawk Down. It was really cool though because it always felt neat. It's like ah I, I've seen those two. That's that's a nice touch. I when I see Vanguard and I'm like oh this looks like it's like panically rushed out because they had a hit and they just had to get a new game out to capitalize on it and make as much fucking money so that the monkeys who buy these games you know will, will just hit it while it's hot and with well, Battlefield I'm like they clearly spent a lot of time fucking this up Why well you it's funny you say that because Vanguard is Sledgehammer and they have had four years uh, if we're just going based on the release schedule. It was actually Black Ops Cold War that should have been the rushed one, because seemingly they only had two years to make it. Um, so did they from, just, like, reset development when one of the games was I a hit? I think or? what happened was that there was internal conflict at Sledgehammer shortly after the release of um, World War II, and then there was a shake-up of the studio. And that might explain why <clears throat> it hasn't come together so well, because it kind of feels like a... Because that was what happened with Modern Warfare 3. Infinity Ward lost, like, 40% of its employees between 2 and 3. Um, and, and it shows. But again, you don't need to release a new Call of Duty every year. But, I mean, it doesn't matter, because it's going to make a bunch of money, so... Wait, sorry. Someone posted in chat, we are the first to treat a COD game like a movie, in quotes, attributed to Vanguard writers. Are you... Oh, is that a off. meme? Yeah. Is that a meme? Or did they actually say that? <laughs> Please tell me that's a meme. That's... Vanguard is a meme. Yeah, that's cringe for many reasons, but... Yeah. 
<laughs> I really hope that's a meme. Um, also, also, I hope you enjoy I'm my not Holy shit. my spooky ween avatar. It's a lion jack-o'-lantern. I'll be changing it back to my normal avatar after this super chat. Very well. Yeah, it's nice uh -huh. stuff. You can't go wrong with some jack-o'-lanterns. Um... Have you heard how awful the launch of... Oh, well, this is good timing. GTA, uh... DE... Yeah. What's DE stand for? Uh... Definitive GTA? Edition? Oh, maybe. Definitive... Yeah, Trilogy Definitive Edition or whatever. Um, can only play through Rockstar Launcher on PC, which was down the entire first day, now gone entirely, uh, not to mention yeah. spelling errors and glitches. That's a... Yeah, Rockstar loves to release you stuff through where you have to get it through their launcher. You don't even have to worry about, like pressure to release this thing from the public at least like because it's remaking the original three it's just like take the time to have one person on your team play it and then go oh guys one person on your team should test this product before <laughs> like, you send it out unbelievable people aren't gonna be that it mad must, if it took another those, year you know it's one of those they saw it and they said fuck it just put it out yep and I guess no one thought anything about it. They're just like, it doesn't matter if this is a crappy product. Just put it out. Enough people mm. will buy it to make it worthwhile. To hell yeah. with it. Enough people will buy it to make it worth this the, the effort. It doesn't matter if it has a terrible reputation. It doesn't matter. Enough people will buy it. Um... Humans in the Transformer comics are the only species able to prevent total destruction of their planet. In three years after the Decepticon invasion, they were able to efficiently counter either faction. That's interesting. Um, I guess, like, everyone else who ever goes up against the Decepticons loses, but... You know, if they really are robots that shoot things, it's like, I could see Earth putting up a pretty good fight against them, you know? I think we should give ourselves more credit. Do you mean like we could just we got a bunch outright of beat them? Planes and tanks and artillery. And well, it's just because a lot of movies sort of uh, portray the military as like a lot more incompetent Stupid. than they actually um, are. From memory, the military is like like people criticize Michael Bay for being very pro-military in his movies. As oh in, yeah, the Transformers movies have them having like a pretty significant role. I yeah, they, like, I'm they pretty sure that we have like a group of characters who are the military and they do fight the. They do fight the Decepticons, and they do pretty well, I think. Um, At least yeah, from we, the I think we see, we see variants of sometimes humans do well, sometimes they don't yeah. do well. Um, but then as the movie... This is so funny, because these movies suck. As the movies go on, they actually become progressively more competent at beating them. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. Man. We'd be, it <laughs> would be pretty funny if we were to watch the Transformers movie and be like, so these are fine. <laughs> like... I don't know that we will. I'm pretty sure Transformers 2 is like abominable, like, in uh -huh. terms of its plot. Uh, but hey, maybe we'll be surprised that they're not as bad. <laughs> maybe it has great characters. Maybe I mean, Sam Witwicky. Maybe maybe it has favorite. consistent... I don't know if it's say great, but maybe they're just not as broken. <laughs> they're just annoying. Maybe. Um... How is Battlefield Portal? It has Battlefield 3 and 2 maps. I'm hoping they don't put specialists in it. Uh, I don't think Rags, you said you haven't played that yet, right? Rags, or? I did not play Portal. We've got nothing for you on that one just yet. Nothing on Portal. Are you... I was just like, I'll just play the new game's signature mode, as uh -huh. it has been in Battlefield for the last couple of years. Well, know, sure, but long. I mean, it's it'd be worthwhile to see what they've done in the Portal, right? If you can... Yeah, a lot of the maps. problems... It looks like all the problems, like, persist through Portal. Uh, um, I mean, it's the so same well, game, yeah. right? It's like built on the same engine. It's the same core mechanics, so I guess that would carry over. But maybe having different weapons and old maps, the more balanced, maybe. Maybe, um, but I'm, I'm. Then again, they weren't made for 128 players. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just haven't. I just. I guess I just haven't really had an interest in Portal. Well, I was actually asking. I was, I was just gonna say, like are you planning to return to the game or no? Um, maybe just to try Portal, but mm -hmm. uh, to play the actual game, no. I think I'm legit done. Mm -hmm. A Battlefield broke me this quick. A Battlefield game. I have like 1,600 hours in Battlefield 4. I've, I've max ranked Bad Company 2 on two systems. Same with 3. 
on four, I got about 1,600 hours. On one, I have about 800. So I've played a lot of Battlefield. And this one is just so bad, I'm not even, not even going back to it. That Damn. was quick. I'll, instead, I'll be probably just be playing other just other games. Uh, I got friends that we're gonna be trying to get in Deep Rock Galactic. Uh, we'll probably be playing Back for Blood a bit more. Uh, there's a glitch in the game that uh, that fiddles with the difficulty, but once that's fixed, we're probably gonna really spend more time in Back for Blood. Play some uh, Aliens Fire Team with us, right? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Um. So, Halo Infinite has won this year FPS Wars? Maybe. We'll see, I guess. Well, maybe. maybe. We'll have to see. If I was gonna put any money on it, I would say yes, but we'll see. You never know. You never know what can happen between, uh, you know, launch time, but... Hmm. Also, was Extra Credits a design consultant for Battlefield 2042, seeing as there's no factions? Oh my goodness. Oh That's right, you can't God. play as any of the factions. It all makes sense. Sounds like Battlefield 2042 game devs watched too many extra credits videos. Oh my god, two references. Damn. Ooh. Oh boy. The memory on this chat. Beautiful. Um, I've actually just had a chat with my friend about Halo Infinite and its current com competition. Is there a competition happening? Oh. Um, okay, anyway. Fuck my life. All they have to do is not do anything stupid. Um, I assume in regards to that's the downfall of the other FPS right now, doing stupid things. Yeah, maybe. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's not going to be too much longer before Halo Infinite is out, and we will know what's going on. Some armors in Halo Infinite will be findable in the campaign, semi-open world to unlock from what I've heard, also high ranks. I'm fine with hey, I'm fine with the idea of using like single player to unlock multiplayer skins. Like that sounds like a good idea to me. I mean, Halos have done it before in the past. Beat the game on legendary, you have Hayabusa armor now. Unlock all the skulls, you get the da 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 da. da. Very true. Uh, imagine a World War One game having more context than a game based in 2042, or more content. Sorry. Oh my goodness. Um. <laughs> Uh, Be Beowin just sent me this. Oh my goodness. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, oh, you were long, man. That... Oh, wow. <laughs> 510. <laughs> oh. Imagine seeing that at night. <laughs> I was gonna <laughs> say, fuck no. Chasing after you, it's scary. Uh, just keep, yeah, keep was... a hold of that. It could be a fucking creepy Ooh. thing to have it a to have it a game. I don't know, or a movie. Uh, Long um, doggo. Someone said, but that was for free rags. No, you had to buy the. No, you had to buy it back then. You bought to buy the game. You didn't get the multiplayer for free. Um. So is Cod World at War still the king? I think um, a lot of people pick COD 4 as the king, right? Yeah, generally COD 4, COD 4 king, yeah. 2 is pretty World. darn good. World at War I like a bit, quite a bit. I like World at War, yeah. Modern well, Warfare 2 I, I really adore, but that game is uh, not balanced very well. I got a, a weak spot for Black Ops. Um, oh yeah, yeah, Black Ops, Ops 1. Yeah, that's true. I, I like Ops that one great. quite a bit as well. That was the good era. That was when yeah. Call of Duty was uh, pretty good, consistently. Uh, now I have a little rags to watch over my Minecraft world like a good boy. Excellent. Rags is good at taking care of Minecraft worlds, right? I am. I'm. I am. I'm really good at Minecraft. There you if go. I don't, if, if I say so myself, I am quite good at Minecraft. I got back into it really pretty. Heavily, when a friend of mine started up a server that a bunch of us uh, made some other friends play in. I'm um, putting a lot of work into it. In my little area, it's nice. It is nice. 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 Uh, can we get a fringy drinking bird instead? Oh. <laughs> yeah, they look those things. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I suppose suggest I could say gnar every time it goes down. It's like, maybe that'll be annoying. <laughs> like... 
Or maybe it does it once it's full. Maybe. Call me crazy, but I think they're trying to breed out competitiveness. Do you think? Does that explain the choices? I, th I think there's absolutely the idea in mind that they want to get rid of, like, the competitive feel of a game and to kind of, um, you know, temper any sort of competitive attitudes. Well, I hate to break it to them, but that's a big part of the appeal. Yeah, it is a big part of the appeal. So good luck with that. Some other game will come on the market and fuck you up the more you do this. People really like competitive games. People want- I know it's like, apparently it's been decided somewhere that it's just a bad thing. But mm. people, especially gamers, love to be competitive and to play competitively. They love to win and do their best and get better. They like to poop talk. Yes. But that's bad. It's like, oh. Um, the Ohio Beehole Butthole Tickler is what I named my Raggy Plushie. Oh. But you'd have to call it the Arkansas Butt Tickler. The Arkansas Butt Tickler. Oh <laughs> my goodness. There are many from different locations. Uh, is this just Jay's personal Jared? Same vibes. Oh, we're already on to the next guy. Um... And no, I mean, you know, clearly that guy was only interested in responding to videos that are critical of Zack Snyder, but doesn't respond to them, just yells. <laughs> it's like, okie dokie. <laughs> I mean, because we didn't really talk about that necessarily, but in terms of how EFAB works as a format, right, just responding to things, like, what he did, that's possibly one of the worst. Who's worst? Him or Hassan? Um, well, yeah, but Hassan, like, leaves. <laughs> he doesn't, he just... He's not there. Could it be argued, because apparently his son listens as he leaves, so could it be argued that he's oh, okay. still better because he actually, like, manages to, even if he only watches from a distance and then says, True! Is that better than someone going, I hate this, and has no idea why? I don't know. I feel like the... I feel like the next one, the, the, the latter is more of a reaction in a sense. I don't know. It's... I don't know. They're both really I'd doing a great job. Watch the second one. Well, he was way funnier, yeah, because like the funnies of Hassan is less to do with him and more to do with just thinking about it in a meta sense. Like he's just fucking leaving. But um, yeah, I don't know. They're both working real hard to be the worst. Hassan is better because he sometimes repeats the things his chat says. It's like that's true. His chat can sometimes <laughs> offer some insight. <laughs> that's where he's at. Um. Longman, you really are gay. You missed my super chat on EFAB Gaming 29 at 3.12.15. And you didn't say what it was. You just... Just say that I missed it. EFAB Gaming 29? Was that the one before? Uh, the Aliens one? Because Aliens was 30, I think, so... I think? Look, if I miss a super chat, I'm very sorry, but like... Don't send a super chat saying I missed a super chat. Send the thing again. Then I can answer it. It'll be great. I mean, if you're going to send something, because, like, it's going to be very difficult for me to find that, um, super chat, basically. Unless you're in chat right now, and if you at me with whatever it was, I will, I will make sure to grab it. Um, it still baffles me that you can't super chat gay. I mean, isn't that homophobic? Uh, wait, you can't super chat just the word gay? Surely you're allowed to say gay. I would imagine you'd be allowed to. Because, yeah, that'd be fucked up if they remove your ability to say gay, because, yeah, I don't know. Also, as a token well, of goodwill... On gays are. Is they hate the gays. Uh, as a token of goodwill, and to mean, uh, I, the, the, to show I mean no harm, high racks. And... Hello! The crouch crotches for the good boy. All oh right. my goodness gracious. Um, have y'all seen the HUD sucker proxy? The HUD sucker proxy? I have definitely not no. seen that. That's so specific, I feel like I'd never forget it. But, uh, no, I have not. Uh, the HUD... Is it an anime? The HUD sucker proxy is a 1994 comedy film co-written, produced, and directed by Joel and Ethan Cohen. Oh. Sam Raimi co-wrote the script. Ooh. I've never heard of that. I feel like I should I've have. I've never heard of this either. Um, 
Yeah. The Hudsucker Proxy, a comedy of invention. With Tia Robin, Tim Robbins, Jennifer Jason Leigh, and Paul Newman. Hmm. Yeah, I've never... Let's see. Uh, greedy executive Sidney J. Musburger hopes to take control of the company he works for by purchasing a majority share, but he must first devalue the stock. So he convinces the board to appoint know-nothing recent graduate Norville Barnes, Tim Robbins. And apparently it's a comedy, so, yeah. A lot of people saying it's good. Um, the fact that Fringy had to say... You have broken space is enough for me to not watch this movie. Yeah. Hey man, it can be tough, but they pulled it off. They did. Uh, not every superhero is Homelander, you dingus donkus. I mean, yeah. it seems to just be the popular thing right now, and I'm so bored. Oh my god, Superman's gonna lay some people because he's evil. Blah. He's evil. Wholesome Superman at this point is, like, that's, uh, that's subversive. Lame. I mean, there's the uh, Clark and Lois show, right? That's the... Right, where people... yeah. Well, that's more wholesome. Mm-hmm. Um... Here in my garage with my Lamborghini. But you know what I value more than the material things? Context! Well... Wow. I don't even know what this is regarding. Oh, I guess it's, um... Taking Snyder out of context, right? <laughs> right. just keeps playing this clip! <laughs> okay, buddy. If you're gonna make it, just breathe. Um, Axe Snyder excuses his edgy boy heroes by bloviating nobody's perfect, but saturates Man of Steel with banal imagery of Christ, who is perfect. Oh, well, often used that way, I guess you could say. Um... The fuck? Well, so, it, I would say it's worse than that. His fucking whole speech was about how, like, all heroes are pieces of shit. It wasn't that they, they're flawed, or not perfect, it was that they're they just will- evil. He literally says that they'll commit atrocities, it's like, they'll commit um... Commit atrocities, yeah. Okay. He goes from, like, almost interesting to just insane, like, in a moment. Yeah. I suppose that's Snyder's work for you, isn't it? Snyder vision. Snyder's vision. Um, I can explain Zack Snyder's viewpoint on superheroes. He directed Watchmen and subsequently became a pretentious edgelord who thinks heroes are corrupt. I think it's safe to say that he liked Watchmen because he already felt that way. Like, Watchmen yeah. Is, yeah. is a much more cynical presentation of heroes. A lot of people just say it's a realistic portrayal. Um, I think... I'm not in the school of like, you know, like like Watchmen and, and the boys where it's like, they all suck. I'm not even going to say Watchmen's about how they all suck or they all have uh, flaws that come I'm out in very significant ways. Nice thing. No, but um, I don't, like, I'm willing to admit that there's a lot of heroes that would not only take full advantage of their positions using their power for whatever, but um, the celebrity of it as well. But like, that's why the boys season one's better than two. Fucking Starlight is like an actual person who's like, nah, I'm not gonna become a horrible person because that's just not who I am. And it's like, hey, there's a human among them. And then season two is like, nah, I'll kill people, let's chill. Got in the way, all right? That's character development. Um. But even still, I wouldn't mind that as a, a, a thing of the world if you wanted to tell that story, that everyone kind of just sucks. You can do it. Yeah, it's just, uh, I just don't think it's quite what would happen. I think it is. Especially if random people are getting the powers, you know? Yeah. Which, by the way, is not what it is in The Boys, and yet you still get, like, Starlight is obviously really... Not, I can't remember, how, how do they do it in that? Is it... Because everyone's getting... You, it's you experimented on babies, isn't it? it or something, yeah. And then it's like, you know, the, and then they'll grow up and you lie to them and then they become a hero. Yeah. You don't, you don't need the sound for this, but there's, that's, if that's, I, if that's what Vanguard is, I've, I'm staying far away and I've already seen, oh, holy what? shit. What? I have already seen the goddamn 
bayonet compilations. Oh. I am staying far as bad as Battlefield is. I'll stay with Battlefield compared to that shit. Dude, that's the sound of a shotgun chat. <laughs> do 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 do. Dude. Hey, it's fast-paced gameplay, all right? That's that. Uh, yeah. That dude just spawned right next to him too. <laughs> oh my! Wow. Um, this guy is Arthur Fleck laughing at the setup and not the punchline. He just wouldn't let Jay finish a point, and then once he had, he was like, "I have so many things to say." He's quite a music lad. Yeah. It's been a while since we had a video where the person making it had just no earthly idea what they were doing. Also, high rags. Hello. It was quite amusing. Um, fuck, marry, kill, marriage, fuckage, and fridge. Uh, I mean, fridges are good. Wouldn't want to get rid of them. What's more important to society, the fridge or the concept of marriage? Like, <laughs> all refrigerators or just a singular fridge? Uh, all refrigeration, I guess. All refrigeration. Or, or wait, 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 wait. Are we talking about fridging? Like the character. No, thing? that's boring. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I'm choosing to interpret it as a literal fridge. There you go, you stumped the cast. Nice one. I'm gonna choose the, the fridge stay. We have to get rid of marriage and then I guess we'll fuck fuckage. Why not? I assume you guys are distracted by Call of Duty clips. Yeah, so I have no idea what's happening. I, no, that's that's fair. I'll, that's, that's, I'll go with that answer too. <sighs> Give me the options one more time. <laughs> Don't even know that you'll care that much, but... <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. I'm glad you're gonna take this very seriously. Fuck, marry, kill, marriage, fuckage, and fridge. Marriage, fuckage, fridge. So what it so fuckage is let me see. Fuckage when nothing goes your way, everything you to state of being three. Uh I just a fuckery maybe? Marriage, fuckage, fridge. I guess I wanna fuck fuckage, marry marriage, and kill fridge. Why do you wanna kill fridge? Why I wanna marry marriage. If I ca I can't kill marriage because then I can't marry fridge. Well, you can just make sure you do it in the right order and you can still marry Fridge before it gets killed. So I can kill Fridge and then... No, I could marry Fridge and then kill Marriage? Mm -hmm. No, I had to kill Marriage and then... Oh, fuck, which way would be best? I'm confused. What's, what's, you marry Fridge and kill Marriage. What's the problem with that? Well, if I kill Marriage, then my marriage is over. Uh, I guess that's not so bad. It was just a Fridge. <laughs> I suppose you're right, actually. That is true. <laughs> Since there's no rags, think of your snow. My snow went back to the great sky, and one well, day it will return to me as snow again. His snow can be put in the freezer, right? That's true, it can. I assume we still have freezers in this world, so it's all good. We do. Yeah, yeah, we have freezers. We can just make a really crappy freezer, and it would become a fridge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really low-power freezer. <laughs> yeah, it's just not a. Gr it's not really a good... Yeah. Um... BVS hates superheroes more than the boys do. Um... Hmm... It's kind of hard to say. Not sure. In BVS, you st they still... What you have in BVS is the, the end. As in, Superman save, sacrifices himself to save everybody, and Batman is like, it's time to make a team to protect the world. You know, you can argue... BVS... as a movie says at the end, hey, maybe we should be so fucking edgy. <laughs> but, um, the boys... I mean, the end of season one is a bit hopeful, but season two just farts on all of that, so, I don't know. I don't know, I think the boys kind of hate superheroes more if I was to choose one, but I can understand choose neither. Yeah, I don't know which one kind of weighs it out. Um, I think at least... Like, the Justice League stuff, the Snyder stuff, at least he toys with the idea that the good heroes will do the right thing, even though that's executed really, really poorly. 
I mean, you know, if we're being generous to Zack, he thinks that's happening basically all the time. He just, like you said, he's the execution, like like Superman ramming Zod through buildings. You're like, oh man, and he's like, he's doing the right thing. He's beating the bad guy. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. <sighs> Unlike Wonder Woman, they chose the wrong side. Where did you learn to pick sides? On a farm? Oh, noise. Where did you choose sides? On a farm? Learn a family guy. <laughs> yeah, we got two people said that it is a super chat. I can understand why. Oh, uh, why does the Fringoid say it's funny, isn't it? And it's never funny. Also, high rags. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I think it's funny every time Fringy says something's funny. Without if fail. If it's not funny, it's certainly unusual. Mm-hmm. I have so much to say, like, oh my god, I don't like this, oh man, etc. <laughs> yeah, this is extensive commentary. You had to you had to pause it to slow that down, I would say. Uh what does Fringy find difficult to draw? Ah, uh, hands. Hands are really difficult to draw, but that's not just me. I think that's a lot of people. So many different ways that hands can bend and contort, and you know, yeah, hands are difficult. The question is: Is this guy better or worse than Hassan Pika? We just talked about that. I feel like it's hard to choose. Yeah. Definitely makes you think that uh, there's a scale out there, and that maybe not everybody's cut out for it. But we certainly can't go by audience retention, because fucking Hassan is apparently the best one. At least in the format, because I don't think... He is number one in terms of that format, right? There's nobody else who's got a higher view count than him for just sitting there and responding to random shit. Seemingly, yeah. He does that like every day, or at least most days. <sighs> Maybe that's how you'd argue he's worse. Because he's like, the, at least the other guy's doing it from passion, Hassan, you have no clue. Go. What exactly the goals are. Um, Ty looks like a cross between a golem and Randy Stare. Uh, gives me creepy scary vibes with his school shooter physique. Okay. Uh, hi there, Rags, Muller, and Fringy Boy. Hello. Hey. Hello. Uh, this little clown boy is like Bizarro Hassan. Hi, Rag. Bizarro Hassan. Is that? Would it be uh, Bizarro Hassan? I don't know. It would just be another Hassan. Is, yeah, it would just be a similar Hassan. He's like adjacent on the scale. It's just a different variant. He's, uh, he would have been uh, pruned by the TVA because he's gone off script a little bit. He's become a snidoid. This was not what Kang would have wanted. No. The problem with this Thai guy is that he needs time to gather his thoughts. This kind of knee-jerk reaction does help you understand the argument. It doesn't help you, I think this was what they meant to say. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, this is, this is the thing. Um, I hate to say it because it sounds a little bit vain, I guess, but like this isn't something everyone can do. You sometimes do need time. We're all relatively experienced with the uh, on-the-fly arguments, usually because we're familiar with the subject. Um, yep. But, like, I, I say that as if he's not fucking familiar with Snyder's work, which it seems to be, like, one of his major passions, so I don't know what happened. But, uh, yeah, not everyone's cut out for it, and you should probably maybe make a video instead of streaming if all you've got to say is, I have so many things to say! And then you don't say them. <laughs> Maybe he did later. This one just says, God! I meant to say it does not help. Yeah, yeah. God? It just says, just God. Well, he was so, he was exasperated. Just absolutely ruined by Jay's horrific commentary. Um, we age by the minute. I am a retarded. I mean, it's, it's just... <laughs> It was a great way to sort of add that portion, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I was 12 then, now I'm 13. I see the error of my ways. <laughs> I have evolved. I just I'm like the idea of... I'm a teenager. 
I thought it was funnier if you think in regards to the the channel age, because if he was like, you know, we were young back then and the channel's only like half a year old, it was a month ago or something, you'd be like, what the hell do you think you're saying? But um, in terms of, and, and referring it to our, I just like, I wonder if he runs it alone and he just says that it's a group of people. I'm sure that's not the case, it would just be amusing. Um, Rags, I'd like to hear today's verse from the Bible. Uh, Alright, yeah. Bible verse of the day! Alright, therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in your brother's way. Not oh, a bad one. Pretty good. That's nice. Pretty good. That's a good one. That one's a keeper. Come on, Wario. You're fucking it all up. Uh, Regarding disliking any random reason, as a former musician, I love Whiplash, but I will not watch it again because of how close to home it hits. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, That's the thing, man. I, I just... Uh, when it comes to disliking something and you it just it just hits you in a particular way it's just like yeah it's totally fair we've never really taken issue with that and if someone said i hate lord of the rings because it isn't faithful enough and obviously i haven't read them so i'd just be like okay i know there'd be plenty of people who'd want to argue that but still i've been watching efab 43 and the debate on spider-man homecoming the arguments of adaptation we're interesting for sure. I know this has been just it's just been going forever. This whole thing. I think it was a huge shock back when we first sort of talked about it because I think a lot of sort of people in this sphere just automatically assumed that when we talk about like the continuity between sequels, that we would take that same argument and apply it to comics and their adaptations. Mm -hmm. But we were like, no. Uh, it causes way more problems if you try and maintain a system like that. And uh, I honestly think it, it makes for worse results if you have that kind of restriction. Ultimately, anyway. It means you can't do lots of uh, awesome things. Doesn't mean I don't understand it, though. In the animated Spider-Man show, he explains how the spider bite gave him the knowledge about what enzymes create the web fluid for his web shooters. Oh. That's unusual. I mean, um, I guess that's just, you just have to go with all that. Alright. Sure. Yeah. Alright. Mm hmm. Odd, but alright. Um, I think people are mostly upset about the origin being different. It doesn't usually change, and that Iron Boy is the Spider Man coming into the MCU. I, 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 I just, I don't know. I, I don't. I just never find any stock in the argument. It's, um,. It's one of those ones that's, like, rhetorically super effective, but when you dig into it, it makes no sense at all. I just, like, so it just, it gets around, and so we just sit here, like, awkwardly, just be like, what do you think you mean when you say that? Iron Boy. Though I'm not gonna go as far as the guy on Twitter who said that's a slur on the same level as the N-word. <laughs> Which, <laughs> that tweet got around. Um, hi. I wrote the post you responded to. Just wanted to say no hard feelings, Fringy, and thank you for taking the time to respond to my dumb post. Oh, sure. No problem. No problem indeed. Um, why do you believe Uncle Ben's death motivated MCU? Uh, I, I think there's enough clues to, to assume that. That Aunt May lost someone relatively recently. Yeah. In Homecoming. And, um... Yep. They got the initials uh, BP on, on that suitcase, right? In Far From Home. So I think yeah. there's enough there to say that they're probably gunning that that there was, was the history. Enough. Yeah. Uh, this was a good EFAP. Better than average IMO. I like it. Thanks oh. for the vids, boyos. You all inspire me. I have more letters to use, so I'll keep trying. Or typing, sorry. Like, oh, there you go. Yeah. That's where it Better ends. Better than average is pretty good. Yeah. Because I think EFAP's average is pretty good, so, you know, just like, I was like, oh, it was better than average? Woof. Better than the MCU. I, I don't know that that's a compliment, so. It, it is. It's just not much <laughs> fun. <laughs> um, I'm honestly thinking that people don't view the person 
as a hero. They view the powers as the hero, but it still doesn't explain all the tism. Hi, Ra. Hi. Um. You? I don't know the... Are we ever... Like, I'm trying to think, even Green Lantern, like, it's not... You don't... Like, I'm assuming there's more to Green Lantern than you just... You have the well, ring, because I mean, they're all different, the big, and then they the can go evil and like stuff. Big willpower, yeah. More so than, than that ring. When you... When you do the yellow through fear and stuff, are you still a green lantern or you called something else? No, they're yellow lanterns, and then there's red right. lanterns. They're different groups. No, oh, fair enough. Um, I suppose um, it's just just more often than not the hero title is not there because of the power, and certainly no. not because of the power alone. Well, it's usually something more substantive than just that, because that's a surface level. The actual meaning is something beneath, you know, there's something more. Um, hit that yoinky sploinky. I don't know what a yoinky sploinky is, but I'm worried that if I hit it, I would break it. Like something bad could happen, yeah. I don't know. Like it's, yeah, like it's fragile, <laughs> you know? <sighs> Yeah, like if a car, if a car had a, a Yoinky part Splunky. that was called the Yoinky Splunky, I don't know if I'd want to hit it very hard. Maybe it's like a knob or a gear, perhaps. Like it's, or that's just a filler word that someone said. Like, hey, roll up the window, or and, and, and make sure to hit the uh, the uh, what the the the, 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 the Yoinky Splunky over there. You know, the the like that's just their filler word for the thing. That could be if it, it were in a sci-fi movie, I'd be like, that's a lame name. Yonky Splunky. That would be it would be a joke name, but it would be an in-universe joke name. Yeah, I like could see it. Like a scientist that, yeah. would discover a planet and it would be called Planet Yonky Splunky. But everyone in the universe recognizes that Somehow, it's a silly name. I feel like that would be way better at a Zack Snyder sci-fi. Like everything's so Yonky serious and edgy, it's like Planet Yonky Splunky. Like, we must use the boom tube get to get to the oh, Yoinky Splinky. Boom tube's not even like his memes. That's just DC's meme. I don't know why they call it a boom tube. I will forever <laughs> question that. <laughs> we have to use the boom tube to get to the Yoinky Splinky. <laughs> 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 at, at that point, you just like, come on. <laughs> what are we? What have we become? <laughs> Yoinky Splinky. <laughs> Um, you ever notice how everything went downhill since Cats came out? Truly, <laughs> 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 Cats was the harvest. Cats was. <laughs> cats fucked oh, everything up, guys. Uh, is that on our watch list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we got so much shit on our watch list. Oh my god, Cats. <laughs> cats. Oh, cats. The movie that literally nobody likes. <laughs> the movie that nobody <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Uncle Ben died from a broken Yoinky Sploinky. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Someone pulled a gun and Yoinky to Splinky. <laughs> EFAP watch list longer than FBI's. Yep. We'll get there eventually. Um. Just got my rags plushie during this EFAP, and I couldn't be more happy with it. Uh, oh, happy with that's it. Great. Can't wait to get a little mubshly too. Go along with it. Also, hi rags. Hello. Uh, yeah, should be on the way. And happy to hear it. Um, is does, is there diamond proof? MCU Uncle Ben even died violently. Uh, oh. It, are you asking, is this solid proof that MCU Ben died violently? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't know if there's anything, um, in the MCU, but there might be something third party you could probably get from one of the writers, but they're doing that, um, prequel animated series now, right? Yeah, but is that in the MCU, or is that...? I assume it'll be as canon as the TV shows are, I don't, I don't know. I mean, what if is, like, sort of tangential canon, though? It's not, well, like, so... the main time. That's the problem, isn't it? What if is canon in the way that fucking anything is canon because of the way that the timelines work? So it's just like, I guess so. Yeah. Well, no, because they would have been melted by the TVA, right? No, well, Kang's gone now. Fuck him. Not anymore, they're gone, yeah. So well, there's so, a whole multiverse out there. Capital Opinions is asking me about that. 
He was like, uh, which is the first true Free Will MCU movie? And I was like, um... I'm not sure. And then he was like, well... I don't know what it means at this point, though, in terms of the time. I guess we would have to presume that the first Free Will time, like, movie was potentially, like, Avengers right at the end. Mm. Um... Uh, why would you? Because it has that? to be from when t uh, it has to be from when 2012 Loki became a variant, right? And so um, if they traveled back in time. So does that mean Iron Man three is like the first Free Will one? It depends on where they. I guess it depends where they. I don't think. Yeah, we can't argue it that way because all know, of time, yeah. all of time is available all of time to the TVA. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then that means they're all Free Will and not Free Will all at once. Yeah, they're all Free Will and not. We did it, everyone. Oh, That's a satisfying answer. Yeah. Um, well, so the funnier part, I guess, was that the Cavalier was like, you know, is it Shang-Chi? Is it blah, blah, blah? And I was like, well, the problem is we don't actually know until Loki Season 2 what the fuck even happened at the end of Loki. Yeah. Like, it's not really clear. We can guess, but I'm not sure what happened. That clears it up, thanks. <laughs> Literally not answering <laughs> it at all, really. <laughs> well, there is no answer. And maybe it's, uh, that's the lesson. The lesson of never fuck with stuff like this in your story? Yeah. Just don't bother. Mm. Um, that's me, to be honest. I don't know what that's regarding, unfortunately. Uh, I resent that assertion. Also, hi, Rags. Notice me, Senpai. Hi! See, I gotta keep him waiting. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice them, though. It's uh, good to be noticed. Here's money. You love me yet? Oh, now I know what this is regarding. It's the, um... The Not super yet. chat one. Um, yeah, love is... Not you yet. can't just rush love, Oh, okay? that's right, yeah. Love is complex and beautiful. And the truth is beautiful, too. And that's all we need, because lies are bad. What else did Wonder Woman say in her movie? <laughs> I forget. The truth is know. beautiful. <laughs> Just accept she the terminal act. illness. <laughs> she, no, you're right. <laughs> Some people uh, thought she could because of how hot she was, though. And now she's gonna play the queen in Snow White. Naturally. I'm sure she'll pull it off real well. Yeah. Do you ever think sometimes that a director just isn't familiar with her work because they don't watch all the stuff she's in, and then they're like, oh, she's really high profile. Like, people love Man, her. She'd uh, be bring her on. And they're like, one. scene one, yeah, just shoot that she's like, hello, and they're like, oh my god, <laughs> what the fuck? Can we, can we like change this? No, it's too late. <laughs> See, that'd be a South Park joke right there. They'd be like, no, 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 I don't want you to act like a fucking zombie. Try something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then add action, it's the same thing again. <laughs> And like, but the director's character is one that he genuinely thinks she's getting the wrong idea. And he's like, no, 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 you, you're doing like a dead person. I don't want that. I want someone who's very lively. I want, <laughs> I want somebody who's charismatic. Like, if you read, well, that, that, do you read your characterization? You are living. Wait. Uh, uh, all right, let's, let's try it again. <laughs> and then like, take 10,000. Okay, again, I want you to portray somebody who's alive, all right? <laughs> Are you actually a dead person? <laughs> What's happening? I'm so confused. Uh, yeah, good luck to her at all future endeavors. Um, wow, I can't believe this comment. Please pay attention to me if you don't like. I hit myself with a, a 2 by 4 for pleasure. Hi, Rags. Hi. <clears throat> Yeah, you're all nuts in the super chat section, all right? Um, may I have five attention, please? Wow, hogging all the attention. I don't know. We'll give you four. Uh, is this still Richard and Mortholomew EFAP in the works? Oh, right, Rick and Morty. Oh, uh, well, maybe. Uh, we'll have to see what's going on with that. Uh, so, yeah, all I can say is big maybe. Um, so that might be worth checking out. What was that, sorry? Solar Opposites, the the one by Justin Rowland. Uh, do you mean in regard to EFAB or just in general? Oh, no, just, we should maybe check it out and see if, how that one is. Well, I mean, if you want to put it on the list, we, we are 
Oh, we, yeah, we have yeah. things for EFAP movies to watch, things to watch just for coverage in general, and then things we like to watch casually, and our casual list is now fucking overflowing. That casual list is huge. Also, any of you seen slash have interest in the French Dispatch? I don't I've think I've seen that, no. Dispatch? I don't think- I haven't even heard of that one. I've heard of it, but I've not seen it. Also, High Rags, and others. Hello. Um, the French Dispatch. Um, a love letter to journalists sets off, sets in a love letter to journalists set in an outpost of an American newspaper in a fictional 20th century French city that brings to life a collection of stories published in the French Dispatch. Story by Wes Anderson, Roman Coppola, Hugo G Guinness, Jason Schwartzman. I, I don't know anything about it. Alrighty. Tilda Swinton's in it. Bill Murray's in it. Mm. Benicio Del Toro's in it. Jeez, that's a huge cost. I mean, it's three people. What is this? Adrian Brody. Yeah, there you Le go. Four. Tim Timothy Chalamet. He's a uh, dude, right? And also, Chalamet. Really wow. Chat. Chat. Chalam. Chalamet. 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 And he, here, <laughs> I'm gonna post this picture. This look, he looks, this looks like a fake, this looks like a, a, a fake person. He looks like a, a wax figure. Something yeah, about him, he just doesn't uh, look real. I mean, he's, uh, I wonder how old he is, because he's been in, fucking in movies for ages now. But he's, he's around, yeah. He's probably in his 50s, I think, or? Benicio del Toro. Let's see. Uh, he is 54, yeah. Um, and then sending this just to spite the super chat commenter. Well, spite complete. Though I'm not sure they'll register it, they seem to be kind of insane. But maybe. Uh, why does Rags have two sets of eyebrows? Why do I have two sets of he eyebrows? Have two sets of what? I was gonna say, I don't see two sets. Did I think those little, like, cream patches at the top there next to the eyebrows? Those aren't eyebrows. Are eyebrows? No, I know. No, that's no, just... those are. Yeah, that's. That's, that's just. Yeah, those are eyebrows. Fur there. Yeah, that's, that's fur color. That ain't no. Those aren't eyebrows. They're the that's little. That's no eyebrow. Um. I am rather mentally challenged and depend on rags to nourish my parasocial needs. Thanks, guys. You bet. Anytime you need me. No problem. Guy. Um, I may be retarded, but don't you dare call me emotionally invested. <laughs> Very well. Um, Mum says it's my turn on the brain cell. Hi, Rags. Hello. Just make sure you don't break the brain cell. Um, also, next TFA part when, mutually? Hi, Spundu. I don't, I, I don't know if that's meant for you, right? <laughs> I, I spun do. Do. <laughs> Like, I have many names. <laughs> Sp Spundu is one of them. I um, have many names. There are some who call me Spundu. Naturally one of my favorite names. Uh, TFA part when is, is just one of those perpetual questions. And one day you'll see it drop into your box. And you'll be like, oh my god, there it is. And you'll click it. And then lick it. Because that's the way you do it. Oh no, I'm mental? Man, what am I gonna do? Sad face. Yeah, I'm, I know. I, uh, there's not really anything we can do about it. Sorry. Except, well, respond, you know? That's something we can do. Mm -hmm. Please notice my mental challenge, Maul. <laughs> what? They're mentally challenged. <laughs> I just, he's just like, but notice my mental challenge. You have been noticed. Be stupid. Mentally unfit. Hi, Moringi Rags... Ragas... Ragapaw? Hmm. Ragapaw? Moringi Ragapaw. Ragapaw. Oh, that's not a bad name, Moringi Ragapaw. Mm-hmm. I'm with stupid. Uh, you guys are the only people I super chat to because I know that you're going to respond to them. Vision meme. Maybe I am mentally challenged. <laughs> 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 Oh, 
Well, yeah, we, how, okay, how are we doing here? Yeah, we're up to 7 hours and 40 minutes today. It's gonna be one of those oh, long boy. boys. Yeah. This one just says, heh heh. <laughs> They're getting self-aware, these super chats. That is pretty funny, though. Um, here's some monies to feed my parasocial relations. Also, based waffle time and high rags. Based waffle time. Hello. Waffle time knows what's up. Waffle time. Um. <laughs> Muller, what do we gain from this? Guys answer evil points. Well, this is the thing. I don't even know what that chatter was trying to achieve with what he said. Uh, it was... I guess he's annoyed that we respond to super chats, which I've never understood because if you That's are a, a, one, yeah. a viewer of EFAP, it's all sections so that you don't have to listen to it if you don't want to. Yeah, it's not spliced in and mixed in in the middle. Yeah, you just watch the show and then leave when it gets to that part. I know plenty of people do, and that's totally fine. It's, it's up to you. Um, but to be like, why do you respond at all? It's like, oh, all right, jeez. Um, it was me that made that post. Uh, I had made that in a moment of anger. I will concede that they all look alike in that context. Oh, about the anime stuff? I thought it was just funny. Don't worry about it. I, uh, I just, because, because, I think we pissed off a couple people because they just assumed that we thought that they were all the exact same thing in general. When, like, it's very much about the personalities, and of course none of us fucking know anything about that. I'm just saying that they all were staggeringly similar in terms of their, their dress and, like, apparent sort of attitude. Um, but, you know, is that really a failing on the designers, or is it just what's popular? Yeah, I don't know. Just, it's the chicken before the egg, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think the issue is that the anime pick has multiple uh, art styles, while I'm... while Hololive pick is clearly all made in the same art style and outfit. I mean, yeah, it's... I don't think there was much analysis needed. You can tell the difference. Like, <laughs> it's, it's very clear. Yeah. Um, it's just that they... when you see that with no context, you're like, fuck it hell, they're all the same. Uh, hi, Rags. Hmm. Hello. What are your thoughts on the I new Resident about. Evil 4 VR game that came out at the end of October? Planning to play it? Maybe stream it? Hey, uh, I don't really have any interest in it. I don't have VR. The stuff I saw from it, I just didn't care for what I saw. It's not my thing. I just don't have any interest in a VR of it. Um, I, I'd say I'm the same, same as you on that, really. I don't know why I would want Resident Evil 4 in VR, you know? Yeah, I don't. I have like no interest in that game being VR. I want to. I like it how it is. I wouldn't change that aspect of it. Um, got a job at Pan Panera, and every time I prepare a bagel, I'm reminded of Mupa's endgame analysis relating to themes to bagels. Thanks so much, Mupa. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that ended up in a Goodell video, I think. Right, where it's just. I think the idea was that we wanted. A joke in Goodell where I somehow connect something in Endgame to something, and I think chat had to like just give me a, a thing, and someone said bagels. I think that's what happened. Ooh, bagels are good. Hey, so think, waffle time was a bagel. Yes, yes. It's all coming full circle. Um, if you don't read my super chat, I'm going on a rampage because I'm obviously mentally challenged. Mola spooky noises. Oh no. Seems we've awoken quite a beast in the, in the super chat section of things. Um, Hassan time travels from Sting's Ages Nice Pink Kid. Does, does that mean anything Say to you guys? Say that one more time because I legitimately am a bit confused. Um, I'm gonna opt to just post it to yeah, you just, because just, you I have just, no fucking yeah. clue what it means. Hassan time travels from Sting's ages. Nice pink kid. Oh, remember Ty said nice pink? I yes. think that's what that's a referral to. So Hassan time travels from from Sting's ages, which is what it, that maybe that's probably a typo for um strange uh, no. Strange gauges. It get uh time Sting travels. Stingrays? From... No. Strange. Stone Age? I don't 
Maybe. Could be Stone Age. He time travels like from Stone Age. Age. Yeah, the Stone Age might be work. Because ST, and maybe it just got filled out. Like, oh, wait, let me check my phone. Maybe the... Well, the I and the O are next to each other. So maybe he meant to see S-T-O-N, but he put an S-T-I-N, and then it auto-corrected it to is, string. Is the idea that he's like a caveman in terms of his input on yes, modern society? in terms like, of his mm -hmm. intellect and his ability to grasp simple concepts. <laughs> yeah, you know in what? I think case, we deciphered it. I, you know what? I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I agree with this comment. It took some work, but I agree. Uh, fun fact, orcas have been observed torturing animals for fun. They might not even eat the animal they tortured afterwards. Afterwards, Yeah, I've, I've heard about that. Orcas can be quite cruel, but I guess they wouldn't know it as something of a cruel thing. I don't know. Uh, where did you learn about sharks? On a university? Hassan. Also, is Hassan <laughs> afraid of asteroids? Hi, Rex. Hello. <laughs> he probably is. He's not gonna live on Earth because asteroids could hit us. Yeah. Okay, like I said, he's going out to space, but then again, that wouldn't really be safe either, would it? So, hmm. What is the poor guy gonna do? Um, so this one's for Fringy, so I think we'll wait for a moment because he is probably getting a coffee. I do not know. I do want to defend Phoebe here. Check out Fleabag, where she wrote and acted. I would argue it's a very good character drama. No comments on her 007 work. That's very possible. I don't see why not. There's Maybe. plenty of people who say cringeworthy things, but also make some good stuff. I just wanted to put out there that, like, what I knew from why we were concerned about her as a writer was taken from one of many things, including that fucking comment about tampons. And I was just like, yeah, that seems really weird. Um, especially in a fucking Bond movie, it's like, what the hell? And so that's why people, like, had concerns. It wasn't because they hate women, which is just like, why would you- <sighs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, uh, let's hope she doesn't, you know, do any damage to good old Indiana Jones. I think everyone has a big ol... big ol', uh, big ol' hope for that, I'm sure. My super hot take. I abhor the Count of Monte Cristo movie because I know its potential from the source material that the movie does not ever come close to reaching. Read book, please. Also, High Rex. Hello. There's probably been a lot of Count of Monte Cristo Attempts, adaptations. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess they're talking about the first one or maybe the most famous one. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't think know. I've even I don't think I've seen him. It's as long as it needs to be. Yes, sir. Man, the computers don't even try to complete this one. I'm more than happy to be the one that survives. Um, I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077 right now. See how I'm torn apart for liking it? Uh, hope everyone here is having an e a cozy time. What are your favorite warm drinks for winter or cold ones if you're fringy in Australia? Hmm. Also, yeah, you're welcome oh, to like cold. Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, in fact, I don't really have any way to criticize liking 2077 right now because I haven't played it in so long it might have been updated far past what I played. So, you know. When I was in in, in Boy Scouts, we would do a lot of... Uh, the Most of our uh, camping would be done in the winter and fall early spring like when it was colder and in search and rescue we would do um camp outs and hikes pretty much year round um but when it was cold one thing that i always made sure to do is have milk handy so that we would we, we could use that for proper hot chocolate we wouldn't use like we wouldn't mix it with water because that's garbage crap uh, but when you use real milk, it's really, really good. So you'd put it in there and you'd heat it up and get it hot and mix it up. And when you're out there in that kind of environment where the only warmth is essentially like a fire, if you have one going, and you're going to be cold often, depends on how you dress, but you're going to be, you know, chilly often, that's really what sort of makes it the best uh, thing I've had for that. It's, it's just, it's the setting and the environment and where mm. you are that makes it the most important, or at least the best. I was just gonna say hot chocolate, so... 
I like mockers. They're neat. And Focus. cold drink is like Coke. We're in Coke. Yeah, I love... Oh, uh, that... In the same vein, summer camp. Sweltering hot here in Arkansas. Really high humidity. You'd have to travel... Uh, you'd have to walk from class to class, depending on what you were doing, whether it was orienteering or... Uh, uh, nature conservation or this or that and the other thing the merit badge stuff and there was one store where you could go to and you could spend money and they had a they had a soda machine in there and they would give you a an ice cold coke ice and all and you could drink that on the way to one of your classes if your route took you the correct way or cross there and walking through the hot you know, forest in the middle of summer while having this ice cold coke with you. Man, that was great. That thing was superb. Beautiful. All right. Ringy, you know what really grinds my gears? Whenever you witness something doing something retarded and then say, what are we doing? Not only are you not doing that, but also, don't drag me into this. I'm not partaking in whatever cringe the person covered in currently is doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a party. I mean, you know, when you say we, you don't necessarily mean that particular person. He's excluding you, of course. We can mean a lot of different things. But fair. Um, so far, I really like 2042, but there are some bizarre design choices that need to be fixed, and I hope they do address the issues. I think that the problems are too deep to the game. When you have features that, you have this many just core features that are not in the game, it's beyond, I think it's just beyond fixing. It would just need to be like a whole new game at this point. It's not like it's missing one or two things. This shit is like core to the experience. Mm -hmm. And it would, need, it would need a total large-scale revamp. And I just don't think they're going to do it. I um, think they're going to try and milk it for everything it's worth, but I don't think they're really going to make any big improvements. They might add a thing here, add a thing there, but nah, I just don't see it. Thoughts on the ultra-wide monitors and the hunt showdown? Uh, um... I don't know much about ultra wide monitors or hunt the the hunt showdown. I've heard the game is neat, um, but I really don't know anything about it. I might get into it later. All that time I would have spent playing Battlefield can be into other things, but I, I don't have an ultra wide. So neither do I. And I, I'm starting to think is is that the kind of monitor that just does the curve, or are we talking ones that are like like very like, long, yeah, very, very um, wide. It is ultra wide. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about them. I guess I'd have to use one to know. If I think it's oh, worthwhile. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's my thing. Uh, I think I've sort of, yeah, I, I just don't think ultra wides are for me. Mm. Maybe if you only, only could only get one monitor, that would be a good choice. But with three monitors and me not wanting to physically have to move my head around to look for things on a screen, especially in a game, I think 24 inches, which is where I'm at. Uh, I think my monitor is 24 inches. I think, no, 27. I don't think I'm going to go any bigger than that. Just because once you get bigger than that, I would have to, like, my eyes would have to just start looking around for things. And I just don't feel like that's... I, I, I'm fine with my screen being this size. It's already pretty big, considering I sit re uh, reasonably close to it. Sounds fair to me. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that, Fringy, or nay? Nah, not really. <laughs> um, I missed most of the stream, but I got my makeshift rags plush today. Also high rags. Ooh, nice! nice. Good. Really glad. Hope you like it. Yeah, they're all pouring out the rags ones. Um, yeah. I believe mine have come. I need to go and check my uh, my mail. I may have picked up two rags. Ooh. Or I can't remember if I actually did more than that because I think I'm gonna give one uh, to two particular people for Crimbus. It doesn't matter if they don't know who you are because you're a cute doggo. Uh, this will probably be in the Super Chat catch-up, but long-time subscriber, gazillion hour listener, looking forward to my plushie, love all that you do. Aww. Why, thank nice. you. Yeah, we're, uh, I think we're gonna try and get all the ones of today's ones done. We should... I think we're, lo we're looking... We're in, we're in... If you could split it into s six parts, we're in the final of the six, so... Also, my partner just fucking tried to kill me in the co-op thing. Thank you, Wario. I'm pretty sure he's on normal, not 
retarded, so I don't know why this is happening. Playing as Boo. Yeah, I like playing as Boo. Yeah, Boo's just on a little adventure, minding his own business. Wario, what are you doing, Shy man? Shy guy there as the valet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what is Wario doing? Waluigi's on retarded mode, and I ended up with the normal computer, and somehow he's doing worse. It's like, why are you doing <laughs> this to me? Is that how they logistically, like, created the, um... The bots for for lower difficulties, it's like they'll just sabotage you. That's that makes sense. It's like, <laughs> well, sure. You keep Must jumping on me. What the fuck are you that. doing? Yeah. We're gonna lose the game now. Thank you, Wario. <laughs> You're a legend. Yeah, there you go. I'm not angry. Well, yeah, <laughs> guys, they're just like, hey, you made it. And meanwhile, like, yeah, look at them go. Yeah, like the oh, leaving you in the wake. You have, you have, like, the, the Shy Guy Valley's watching Wario kill me, and he's just like, You guys can do it! Yeah. What the fuck's happening? Got another Baywin PC. He did a quick one here. Oh my. He's got, he's got me with my, uh, my 4 my, my four <laughs> eye <laughs> That's a lot of, that's a busy forehead. All them <laughs> eyebrows. Ladies. That's a lot of eyebrows. I mean, you know, the, there's a lot of grills out there who really like that in a guy. Oh. Well, there's a lot of grills? Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, gentlemen. I'm pretty sure it's been determined before, but what is EFAP's official position on which is worse overall, TLJ or TROS? Uh, I, well, I can do you one better. We don't know which is worse out of the three of them, to be fair. Yeah, I th think... <laughs> oh, oh! Who knows? Who well, so, could answer such questions? I'll give him the us? I'll give him a quick answer in terms of so so TFA destroys the entire world and then TLJ and TROS like chip away at it. If you know what I mean, like the main damage sits with TFA. Uh, Han is ruined by TFA. Luke is harmed by TFA but destroyed by TLJ. TROS fucks with, I guess, Anakin and the Emperor and. Then the plots for all three films are absolute fucking crap. Thematically, I think the only one that's like actively shits on itself is TLJ. I don't know about the other two. Fucking, what even are the themes of the other two? Mm. Um, most embarrassing flaw probably goes to Tross, being that the enemies don't know which way is up. And they, they, that, that was the film where they explicitly said, somehow Palpatine returned. Because <laughs> they'd given the fuck um, up. <laughs> so, um, ooh, yeah, it's, oh, man. It's hard. The three of them are fucking horrible. Is, does TFA, because it was first, that just really sets it up for extra failure. It was the one that established a lot of this. So what people like to point out, and I do think this is true to a degree. Say, for example, the three of us were given control of the trilogy post-TFA. Now, I'm not claiming that it would be some well-written masterpiece. What I'm suggesting is that we can do repairs. We can bring it back. We can make it so that, you know, different... We, we can still do a lot of things that can fix up what TFA has put us in. Um, and provide context that isn't there, but like TLJ just doubles down and does crazy bullshit itself. So like, I think it's correct to say that it, it, surely TFA is like the worst one because it puts everything in the horrible position. It's like I guess, but like the most significant damage, according to most people, is going to be what it, what happened to Luke, right? Um, yeah. Once you take, once you destroy the characters in the world, oh man, it's tough to. It's tough to hold on after that, especially because the world's fucked too. There's like, there's nothing to hold on to anymore. Can I just say Mando? <laughs> well, I, I guess like, I just, I think any of them is fair to pick. I really do. I, I, I don't know which one like are my knee-jerk choices, but I know a lot of people think Tross would be the correct answer, and I understand that. I just, I don't know. I, it's tough. Um. If I had to pick one, I might go... Uh, I, it might be... I might have to go with TFA because of where it puts everybody. Because, you know, mm. there's there's Han and... I mean, even Leia and the Republic and all... It's it just so... I think because TFA does the most to undermine the original trilogy. It's true. And it's already damaging I, Luke, uh, that movie. Yeah. Yeah, so I think why because why is he there? Because it does so much damage to the ending of Return of the Jedi. 
by just basically saying y'all actually arguably did something worse because you allowed the first order to happen <laughs> somehow that somehow that i think i'm gonna go with the force awakens i think that's what er picks. i think i i think i might do that i'm not sure it's a really fair argument honestly um it's likely going to be my conclusion when the tfa series is finished <laughs> There's a lot of different reasons for each three, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, you could still rescue... You could make it so that Luke was captured and that what is on that island is just, a like, a, a trap for Rey or something. Yeah. You know, or that Luke was uh, manipulated by a great the Darth Plagueis. Let's bring him in, I guess. I don't... You know, the, the, people going nuts over Snoke in TFA saying he was Darth Plagueis. I remember all that shit, man. It's like, that's the guy, that's the guy Palpatine talked about. Look, he's all injured because Palpatine would have tried wow. to kill him. Oh my goodness, wow. It's gonna be amazing. And then he just dies, oh and it's gosh. like, oh. <laughs> uh. And then he was in a test tube in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Like, those fucking movies are a troll. Like, the whole thing is just like, what the hell happened? Hundreds of millions of dollars, all the talent you could need. It's fucking insane, but it happened. Um, I have my plush set up and near my mouse for optimal paths. Hey, good stuff. I'm looking forward to my desk having uh, two new friends to sit there. My ragu is sitting up on uh, my shelf next to my plate, Dr. Mask. You're not wearing it right now? Enough. Um, no, I, I got multiple masks, don't mm -hmm. worry. Mm -hmm. Uh, crazy gun stuff in the news. How do we keep guns out of the hands of idiots without infringement? Mandatory training, a license to operate, similar to a driver's license. Also, thoughts on PCCs, rags. I'm fine with pistol caliber carbines, especially if you're looking for something that's a bit cheaper to shoot, uh, gentler with uh, recoil, depending on what kind you get. Uh, just good plinking material. Uh, that's sort of what I'm kind of looking to get next uh, myself, an SP5 or a Strybog, uh, maybe a KP9, I'm not sure yet. Um, as for the first part, um, I think it's just a, I, it's just something that it's, I think it's just something that's going to happen. I think this is one of those bottom up issues of why do people do this? Uh, why do people feel like they need to do this? Uh, and those are the kinds of things we need to try and fix. So we need to work on you know, mental health and the availability of people to get better in scenarios. Um, because if, I mean, if, if it's not a gun issue, because if they don't use a gun, they'll use anything else. There's too many deadly implements in the modern world that anybody can just get. Um, and you, it, it's not worth taking guns out of the hands of law-abiding citizens in order to accomplish that. Um, yeah, because there's, there's the memes about the, the van. It was like, are they going to ban vans? And it's like, no, of course not, but... Uh, the idea of like having a, a driver's license equivalent for guns, I guess that's interesting. Um, it's just that certainly Americans aren't going to be happy with the idea that they have to have a license to own a firearm. In there. Uh, you have to have, in a lot of places, you have to have a license in order to carry one concealed or carry one with you, with you out and about in public. Right. Um, so, and, and there is a class that goes into mostly the legalities concerning that. Here's what you could do. Here's what you're allowed to do. Here's what, you know, da da da. Um, but it, I mean, it, I, I think as far as guns go, you do have a right to defend yourself and it's important that, uh, they're used to essentially defend against tyrannical governments if it comes to it. I mean, that's the primary reason the amendment exists. <clears throat> um, I mean, unfortunate things happen and it's bad and we need to look at solutions to that that are productive and actually help because there are, you know, there's, there's people who are just not right in the head. They don't get the help they need. They have issues and they feel the need to do you know bad things and that's what we need to address um because i'm not going to let you take away my guns because some evil person or some crazy person used a gun to do a bad thing especially when often it's guns who stop them from doing even further bad things um so yeah that's uh that's what i have to say on it is there a chance of playing Mario Party Superstar online with friggy and rags? Plus, it has your favorite minigame, Book Squim, from Mario Party 4. Oh my god. That could be Mario, fun. It's, Mario Party uh, Superstar Online. Is that Switch? 
So yeah, it's the new one. It's basically just a uh, like greatest hits of the whole series. Okay. Is it pay? Is it bad that, that the fun. fact that Book Squib is, is already enough for me to be like, we should probably play that actually. <laughs> <laughs> called book squirm is the, the mini game i fucking love that mini game i don't know what it is it's is that the one with the shapes you have to run underneath yeah yeah oh yeah that looks like a fun one yeah yeah let me just let me just it's mario party superstars yeah that's the one i think it came out very yeah it came out only a couple of weeks ago um <clears> yeah <throat> it it is uh just uh a hundred mini games from previous games in the series right i'd love to know what their choices were uh Wow, so it says remakes of the boards, because it remakes the boards as well. Okay. Um, hmm. Because, um, you know the one where you're on the little, um, I think it's Mario Party 1, where uh, you're on little balls and you're trying to knock each other off a platform? It's the one that Pummel Party basically stole, but, like, I don't mind it because it's a great idea for a minigame. I wonder if that made it in. I love that one as well. The one that Fortia was, like, really bad at. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why he hated that game. You could never win it. <laughs> um, Lord in chat said, "Please do it at Eternals Unbridled." It's, like, it's not gonna happen. Leave me alone. The, the the coverage you got is what you got here, basically. Someone else will do it. All right. Someone else out there feels that spark, and they're gonna they're gonna tackle Eternals. It's gonna be great. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely think about that. I don't know um, when or in what manner, but it sounds tempting. Um, I'm doing a fan art if you of you all on a poster like James Bond titled Too Long to Die. <laughs> I like it. Your tisms bring comfort in these trying times. Thank you for keeping company on long nights. What are your takes on the Back to the Future trilogy? Hi, Rags. Hey, a long man, and no fringoid, I guess. Hey there. Hello. Um, I haven't seen those movies in so long, I can't comment much, honestly. I just remember really liking all of them. That's the best I got right now, because my details are very thin, because I haven't seen it in ages. But uh, that could be uh, EFAP movies, potential, Back to the Future trilogy. What about you, fringy? Um, it's been a while. I really like Facts of the Future, though. There you go. <laughs> this is our in-depth take. Is it's, the... it's, been, it's been too long. Yeah, um, it's, it's, honestly, yeah. I could... I honestly struggling to remember exactly how the movies go. Uh, other than the, the main beats, I just remember my feelings about it, so... Yeah. Maybe they're just awful. I don't know. But, um... Yeah, I've, I've just always liked them. That's my uh, best I got. Uh, how many tomatoes do you eat per week? Hi, Fringy. Hi, zero. Yeah, zero. I don't like tomatoes. I, yeah, I don't really... I guess in the <laughs> forms of... Math for me. In being in another food, maybe, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever eat them on their own. Alright. Eat a spoon of, eat half a spoon of, and don't eat. Ketchup, mayonnaise, butter. Wait, hold on. Eat. What were the so what a were spoon, the, uh, half a spoon, and don't eat. I eat a full spoon of butter, half a spoon of ketchup. Fuck the mayonnaise. Get that's, rid of that shit. It's the exact same for me. Yeah, don't, I yeah, really don't like definitely, mayonnaise. Yeah, we're on the same page with the butter. Eat the butter. I could eat butter. Oh, definitely. Uh, especially because it's more solid. You could just gulp it down. You could sort of do it with the rest. Um. Uh, ooh, would I rather eat half a spoonful? of ketchup by itself or mayonnaise by itself i'll definitely take the ketchup it's no contest mayonnaise is out of here i think i'll take the ketchup and skip the mayo i would hope so <laughs> fringy is very judgy like... right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hmm, yeah i think i would do that yeah so someone said if it was miracle whip the yeah, miracle whip would be different though Well, I mean, you got lots of yeah. answers in chat, too. I, I just, I feel like this is so hyper-subjective. <laughs> like, so, oh, someone, someone asked us about how many tomatoes we eat in a week, and then someone follows that up with, <laughs> you want to use a spoonful of ketchup? Yeah, 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 that's pretty funny, isn't it? 
Um, boo -boo -boo. The Very Cool Eternals was a Nerd Crew reference. Oh, the very cool, very cool. I still, I don't know. You could, you could be using that because you're, you're like, it is actually cool. But um, I assume they were being sarcasmo by referencing the nude crew. That was the like the second super chat. But now we're on the other end. Can you believe it? Uh, Eighty-six, an anime and light novel deals with the struggles of war crimes, the scars of war, and doesn't get tizzy. Worth your time if you want to see worst slash best of humanity with a great story. Fair enough. It's called Eighty-six. If that sounds tempting to anybody out there. Um. Turn into a Scotsman at the end. Why not? Remember, Eternals was at least partially inspired by Man of Steel, Zacky the Blueprint Arriveth. <laughs> <laughs> what do you even, what could you say to that? It's like, okay. Yeah, it's just why? Why would you do this? <laughs> why, why would you be inspired by that? But, yeah, I don't know. Um, again, I, I, I just don't know what to say to that. Um, rip the neutral response video. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I was uh, I mentioned about the the Futurama thing. Sad. Um, I have I have something that I would like to report. Uh, while we have a break in between super chats, I feel like this is the best time to bring it up. Do it. What? No, that's fake. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to see your initial reaction. You did. You did make me worried for a second there, because I was. I honestly, my brain was like absolutely fake. But then I was like, but is it possible? Uh, chat for reference. It is a Disney Plus series called The Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> yeah, but it's from the account Disney L Sus. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's it's very concerning for a moment because I just thought like I oh, could have he could have it's like no no it's like it's that weird world we live in you know <laughs> it was terrifying for a moment there but we survived um I feel Overwatch lost the normies because it got overtaken by the Tumblr crowd almost all the characters are gay slash bi and uh, constant ship wars that's so funny I would imagine bizarre. that what actually probably hurt that game though it's just like the game itself I, I was gonna say it's so bizarre like that shipping would damage the game yeah <laughs> like, i see that it would shipping is that kind of shit that people love to do for some reason it's very normal like, actually seemingly uh, shipping like yeah it's not like strictly tumblr it's still strange though like for example if you and I were, or us were just discussing fucking some, you know, two, it's like, oh, what, who would win, Big Daddy or Master Chief? I just like to go to that as a default. That makes way more yeah. sense to me that if you were like, could you imagine if, like, fucking Big Daddy and, and uh, uh, Sophia <laughs> Lamb, like, got together? I'd be like, It's like, huh? I guess I could, but why would that, why? <laughs> I just don't... I guess uh, sometimes I wonder, is that the difference between boys and girls, or is it just a particular thing? Because like it's just like shipping has never made any sense to me. I was like, I no, don't, I don't, uh, I don't care. I just oh, could you interested. imagine they get together? Like, no, I don't. Okay, okay. No. Yeah. So you know, it's nice <laughs> for, for everyone, I guess. Um, as for what killed, what do you think killed Overwatch rags? Probably the. Balancing that was far too heavily, that, that that was far too focused on the competitive scene, because Blizzard had a lot of huge interest in trying to keep this a prominent esport that just kept going and going and going, and I think that really kind of killed a lot of popular interest in the game, because uh, that's something that I hear over and over and over is that the balancing is terrible. Balancing is terrible, because uh, just wasn't balanced with the idea of most players in mind or at least a decent enough amount of general you know to the general crowd in mind um and when a game loses its as far as i'm aware when a game loses its general audience the esports scene is going to dry up as well um but yeah, i think the general audience of the people who watch yeah so i i think that's probably what it was i haven't i haven't played it in years now but i mean the lack of movement acceleration and a lot of the just alts that would just kill you and 
how some characters would just flat out just destroy others and that's that. I just stopped playing. I was on my way out anyway, I feel. Guys, remember that off-brand 7-Up called DNL? Read the slogan on those bottles. The fucking balls on that guy who made that. You can't get me a second time. Well, no, I mean, he's he's literally just... He's commenting on that. The the, yeah. this, the, <laughs> the the guy made it and I guess was trying to trick people into thinking it was 7-Up. Right. Which is... I mean, did he get in any trouble? He must have gotten in some trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, see, that's the kind of thing where you might be clear in like a literal way, but surely in a court, like, it would be easy to tell what's happening, you know what I mean? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, the big thing would be that 7-Up would be trademarked as an image, and it's, you can't just, like, flip it upside down, that's not good enough. What if you could uh, prove that you actually did create it separately with, with no influence from... I don't from... think that... I'm pretty sure that doesn't even matter if it's registered. Like, if I independently came up with the Coca-Cola logo, it's like, yeah, cool, but, like, they too did late. it first. They yeah. trademarked it first. Tough. Well, it's like the subverse thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> when Tim Pool, the game... Oh, that it was, was like, funny. I have a website. That was a... Yeah. That was a big oof. Hmm. Uh... An eight? Even with Zemo's convoluted, <laughs> improbable plan? It, it ain't that convoluted ain't, or improbable if you think about it. Yeah, and, it's, um, it's actually a pretty good plan. And Crossbones not stabbing Cap in the back when he had the chance? Uh, so, he, I get sent he that on Twitter every once in a while. People send me it as being like, your sacred cow. And it's like, does nobody know the counter-argument? Is it really that yeah. bad out there? Guys, like, whenever you come across any character doing anything, this is like the thing we talk about all the time. Why are they there? What do they want? Now, Crossbones makes it pretty fucking clear what he's after. It ain't simply the death of Cap. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Now, um, the obvious comparison with, with good old Doc Ock is he doesn't even know who Peter Parker is. He's in his way. He grabs him by his head, and I think he says... What's, what's the line? Something about living, then he says, not anymore. Yeah, he's um, trying to kill him. He is very much trying to kill explicitly him. explicitly trying to end Spooderman's life. And for some reason, he doesn't yeah. use the thing that could easily kill him at any but moment. But then he does later on, as opposed to what's happening with Crossbones, where he fucking hates Cap. He, he really says, doesn't like Cap. I've been waiting for this. Yeah, he's, he wants to hurt so, him. He, he doesn't really want to have Cap just be executed instantly. That's not what Crossbones is after. He wants to beat Cap. Now, I remember. Oh, <laughs> we're just giving away the answer at this point, which is fine with me, yeah. whatever. So if you watch the fucking fight, he's trying to beat Cap one to one, and he loses. He's losing, rather, and he keeps getting frustrated. I fucking love the fight, by the way. Uh, yeah, he cool. misses a few punches, and he goes, Brrr! like he just can't fucking get Cap. So then he, um, I think that's when he pulls out the knives, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, Because yeah, uh, yeah. Cap keeps doing yeah. counter punches, which means if you keep missing and getting punched in response, you're just like, fuck. He pulls out the knives, tries to use them, they both get ruined, and so then he uses the debt, call it a debt pack, I don't know what it is. C4. Um, now, the criticism shouldn't even be the stabbing at that point. You should just argue, hey, why don't you just fucking blow himself up right next to Cap? Himself up? Yeah. Which, to me, just shows that, a like, dramatic just... misunderstanding of the situation. Yeah. To me, and it's remember, like spoon-fed to the, the audience. Fight, before the fight, where are we gonna, like, rendezvous? And it's like, I won't. He isn't planning on walking out away from this one. He plans to die. Um, so, he pl he wants to kill him, um, and if that means blowing himself up, that'll be his last option. Before actually just trying to... My assumption is him he was just gonna detonate no matter what. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. But I, what I mean by that is that, like, th that comes last, after the knife. Yeah, it's the... Yeah, that, and... And the knives are only pulled out when you realize he's not going to be able to beat Cap with just the fists. Yeah. It's a wonderful so little all, scene. It's perfect it's for crossbones. It's all in character. And yeah. that's the important part. It is all in character. Whether or not that was the absolute best decision he could have made to expediently kill Captain America, maybe it's not, not. It's not the point, though. <laughs> that's People don't do that. People don't always make the most expedient, best possible decision. I mean, when he literally didn't writing, want to. It's not even about him, like, no, he, making a well, mistake. Well, that's, that's, that's what I'm about to say. The most important part is, is this something that this character would do? Is this what they want? Does this make sense, given what we know about them? 
That's what matters, not whether or not they're making the absolute best possible decisions. And usually, when we're talking about flaws, it's either incongruous or it's like the worst possible decision you could have made. Mm -hmm. People act rationally in accordance with their beliefs, not like rationally on a fundamental clinical level of figuring out exactly the best What's thing to do. Because someone's just said, oh my god, Civil War is such a sacred cow. It's like, I don't even, like, first of all, plenty of EFAP uh, community people don't like the movie and think it's bad, so mm -hmm. it'd be fine there. Secondly... How is it a sacred cow if we're putting up arguments in defense of it? Though? I was about to say, there's no counter to this, so as soon as you come up with one, go right ahead. But I haven't heard it yet. Would, yeah. yeah. It's so obvious, if you watch the scene, that he's definitely not simply trying to execute Cap instantly. He wants to fight How him. How about the fact that there are many Avengers next to him and that maybe you should end Cap first? They aren't next to him. They're, They're not. preoccupied. And he's just going to explode no matter what. That is the yeah, end game it, for it, him. Yeah. So say, for example, he's battling Cap and then Falcon turns up and starts fucking him up. He's going to be like, right, I got to engage right. blow up plan. By the way, this isn't writing for the movie because this didn't It's happen. in the movie. <laughs> Yeah, like this. Not only do we see what he did in the movie, but this ultimate scenario didn't happen. Oh yeah, because this is the thing that we have if to remind people of. Then, yeah, he would do something different. Yes. A yes. lot of people like to cite the whole right of the movie. It's like, it's like you're writing flaws for the movie, though, so you got to be careful. Yeah. It goes because both ways. What you've described didn't happen. So you're saying the characters are human who make bad decisions? Someone call Patrick Willems. The funny thing there is. It's not a bad decision in regards to what he wants. Uh, I think Crossbones, especially after the defeat in the elevator and then getting the building dropped on him, which again, explicit, wants to beat Cap one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but he can't do it. And so he detonates. Which causes other problems. Why is Frank constantly talking over Baller? He's off his beds again? If it is, I think I spoke over him a couple times. We just, we like back and forth in, you know? We're very passionate about the old Civil War. And what I will say is, you're not going to find better people to criticize Civil War than myself, Fringy, and very likely Rags. I don't remember how much you like Civil War. I'm assuming it's your favorite of the MCU, Rags. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like... Probably either that or the first Guardians. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I worry that we'll never get to be that good again, and it's not even, like, close to perfect. It's just something that the MCU is just nowhere near capable of. Um, but, uh, I do, like I said it years ago, and I still honestly stand by it, I would like to make a critique of Civil War and go through the film as in detail as I do with TFA. I will explicitly go through all of the flawed writing, but also talk about all of the incredible writing, because there's a lot in there that a lot of people don't quite grab, and that's totally fine. Because it's the same thing as missing, like, inconsistencies in a movie, uh, missing the, the connected pieces, too. Um, but yeah, the so like sending me the haha, he had the knife and he could have put that in Cap's back. I'm just like, man, I feel really awkward right now because it feels like you did listen to the dialogue, but okay. Also, Fringy's back. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to add, Fringy? Um, I guess it's just frustrating because it feels like, uh, something. Like, it, feel, it feels like missing the point of the the system, you know? It's not like... It's not a problem when people don't make the best possible decisions. Like, that's it's that's too simple. That's not good enough. Um, it's about whether it's consistent or inconsistent with who they are. Yeah, which is... I just feel like sometimes we're not explicit enough with that's what's important. Um, Maybe, yeah. It feels like a weird tangential development of our attempt at making a system where people are like, everyone has to do the optimal well, thing. It's like, I, it think, I think that. it's partly because there's often the problem of characters do stupid things when they should be smarter than that. Like, yes. that's often a problem. Uh, and so it's easy to interpret that as when anybody ever makes a decision that isn't the best one they could have, that's a flaw. Um... And yeah, I just, uh, the, the, we, we get scenarios where characters have a goal and they don't achieve it with the capacity that they have and are aware of, but, uh, this ain't one of those moments. Um, and it's just interesting that it gets compared to Doc Ock, so it's just like, you have to look at the dynamic with these two people. Doc Ock doesn't even know Spider-Man. Or rather, he doesn't give a fuck about him. Um... 
But yeah, and so just to come back to the whole, like, an eight, it's like, well... Um, I could Pretty maybe... Good. I think I could be moved down to a seven, depending on if I could find some more bits and bobs wrong with it. But the fact is, like, as someone who's defended Civil War since 20-fucking-16, there's not been a single argument that's come up where I'm like, Oh god, here we go again, I just gotta fucking remind them of this, 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 this. As many people still know, the first thing that me and Wolf ever talked about was Civil War. And one of his major criticisms was that, uh... Cap didn't tell Tony that, uh... The Winter Soldier was essentially mind-controlled, which would have stopped the whole drama. And I was just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did, but... That's the thing, it's just, I don't know, um... Everyone's different with that movie. Civil War, unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, is very much underrated. I know way more people who either think it's shit or mid, um, than anything else. Meanwhile, yeah. and I ain't saying this from like a bitter point of view, but Winter Soldier is considered like the best in the MCU, and it's just like, uh... Yeah, a bitter. It's one of the worst. Easily, um... I, I don't like a lot of that film in terms of what it does, but I understand how it got there, I guess. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. I have finally watched Shang-Chi. I had to fully embrace the tism beforehand, though. I like the visuals and fights. The rear was just a sludge of uh, antismy garbage. Um, when you say you like the visuals, are we talking cinematography or are we talking just like how cool like the dragon looked and stuff? Mm. I do not know. But, uh, the fight's like... I'm trying to remember what... Did you like the f fights? For <laughs> what? Did we say the bus The bus fight wasn't like the worst thing ever, right? In Shang-Chi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that one's alright. Th that one is the one that I like the most because it's it feels like the most trying to be what I thought that film was supposed to be. Trying to be like a fun martial arts movie. The mm -hmm. other ones just go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> EFAP's right about Civil War, but wrong about Winter Soldier. Nope. <laughs> I mean... I, I think we're more certain about Winter Soldier than we are about Civil War. Uh... Yeah, to a degree. Because well, the thing is, like, we'd have to be wrong about a lot of the criticisms for Winter Soldier for it to rise out of the, um... the really bad tier, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. But I, it's not like I was surprised that our take on Winter Soldier would be badly received. I, we knew that was going to happen. It's okay. It's okay. Um, more like Overwatched. Am I right? <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, also play DDLC, Dumbos. Maybe one day. Did you know that Nintendo released a video on YouTube for survival tips on Metroid Dread, with the first tip being directed at David Jaffe? The clip the clip even shows the room he got stuck on. Also, hi. Wait, right. no. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> uh, no, hello to you, see. Super Chatter. I, I need to see. Just in case you need it as a reference, I'll just post the comment there. But that sounds absolutely hilarious, and I hope it's Metroid true. Metroid Dread early survival tips from one day ago. <laughs> Something may look like a dead end, but you might be able to destroy it and find a way forward. It shows this. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it shows exactly where he got stuck. That just shows to shoot the hole. That's funny. All the top comments. Tip number one is clearly for David Jaffe. <laughs> or in other words, Metro Dread Jaffe survival tips. <laughs> the fact that almost every co comment is about David Jaffe. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, that's so that fun. You have to wonder, was that like the guy who was in control of the YouTube channel that set that out for Nintendo, or is that like a more so... Well, it's, it's official Nintendo. Well, it makes, that's Nintendo what I'm saying, Nintendo. it's like I wonder how much of the chain of command was involved in that decision, because that's hilarious. I do wonder, yeah. 
I bet I a couple the of them is, knew, and the execs above yeah. or whatever they did. Well, no yeah, clue. the execs are like, yeah, that's true. You do that need to like you know, idea, shoot the yeah. blocks. That's that's good advice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, People that would yeah. that would be pretty great if they had no context for it. They're like, I like this video. It's good. And they're like, can I send it out? They're like, yeah, of course. They're like, let's <laughs> like, yeah. make that noise. Like, oh, because it's a really good video. Because I'm just really pleased with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we did this. Yeah, no, I'm glad work. that we're getting more people to be able to play this game. Yeah, I like people who've never played video games before who might not understand certain things about their design. Or... It's good that they have an like, you know, option. Uh, in Tross, the energy required to explode Kajimi is around 7.66 times 10 to the power 36 joules. Uh... I don't even know if I pronounced all that correctly in terms of numbers and, and symbols. Uh, 860 billion aircraft carriers of anti-mass, anti-matter mass, absurd energy density for the Star Destroyer housing the cannon. Hi, Rags. Hello. I'm willing to let them go for stuff like that if it's super sci-fi tech. I just think it's hilariously stupid that they've got, like, that's how they did it storytelling-wise. Look how scary it is. We've got, like, a thousand Death Stars. Oh my god, JJ, you're, you're so good at this. I wish I could be as talented as you. Then again, I think it's pretty clear he wasn't really trying. Like, that wouldn't have been his best work. I'm just getting that shit done. Uh, Moobal, that's not the dancer. That's just some outside... Some outsider. Also, the dancer's long grill with nice... Ass? I see. Hi, Rags. Wiz, Jay, Hello. and Greenland Sharks live to 800 plus years. Sweet. Wow. Imagine how spooky they are at that point. Um, Very. Have you seen Chloe Zhao's other films? They were good and won Best Picture. Was the biggest production of it... Oh, wait, I guess that's a separate thing. Um, are we talking about... Is it Nomadland? Is, is uh, the one... Yeah, because that's the one that won an Oscar. Uh, I've not seen it, but to be honest with you, I've not heard many people, like, gushing over it or anything. Uh, at least people that I know. Like, most people are just like, it's, it's eh. So, I don't know what else she's made, though. 70% of the comments are about David Javi. I could believe it! <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't, um... I don't know anything about her, uh, her past films. I don't think I've seen any of them. Was the big production of Eternals too much for her, or was the MCU formula slash idiot writers that hire too much for even good directors to overcome at this point? We shall see with Guardians 3, I think. Mm -hmm. That'll be the answer to that one. As well as No Way Home, though I, I'm i very worried about No Way Home uh, already. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it's fair to be <laughs> The best we can hope for at this point is they don't assassinate Peter. As long as we have that, yeah. could be worse. I'll be happy. Longman, what's your opinion on that sad, decrepit, lonely old loser that always seeks attention in the Moolah comments goes by the name of Jewish Frog? <laughs> I have no idea is that... who that is. Oh wait, they said Indigo Gaming. Wait, but both of them usually get top comments. I've seen Jewish Frog and uh, Indigo Gaming. So. Oh, I think I might actually know who you mean now. I was going to say, like... I wouldn't call I, it attention seeking if they just do comments. good comments, you know? <laughs> if they're good comments and people like them, it sounds like it's deserved attention to some degree. Well, at least. Mm-hmm. I am fine with the, the, the upvotes going to the ones that people like. That's the way I guess it should work. Be thankful you have a comment section. Who knows how long that'll last. Yeah. <laughs> um, Before YouTube fucking just disables comments. Comments are a little kind of used for bullying, gonna be honest. You're not even gonna be allowed to say you are bad. <laughs> um, forgot to add the actual super chat when I sent the last one, lol. Realistically, how much of Movie Bob's regular meal do you think you could finish? Hmm. Um, hmm. I think we talked about it before, like, it's like at least like three full ones for me at least on that plate. Or whatever it is. Tray. Um, and I think we've talked about how it's the soda as well is insane. Like, Yeah, the yeah. soda's going to be really filling. Um, I, it'll, I, however, it'll probably be the best part of the meal because the rest of it is McDonald's food. I like the nuggies. 
I like I McDonald's, um, mm. but maybe it's just that they're very different in America. They're just very... I I hope so, or else that will make me very sad <laughs> to hear. Um. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna say if I push to my limit, three meals would what be what takes for me to get through that. Um, but man, like I don't even know, cause it can make me quite ill. I think to to eat too much of that type of food all in a row, you know. That type of food, that <laughs> that low tier <laughs> food, barely, barely that food, just calories. <laughs> we call it food in quotation marks. <laughs> it's not quite there, but kinda. Uh, this one says, you missed my super chat. Oh, man. Well, I'll give it the old have a look through. Let's see. Hope you're not trolling me as well. I'd be very upset. Can't have that. Hmm. Alright, well, give me a sec. I will find a better way of looking for it. But we will, in the moment, just read the next one. Please read the script for the Sonic for Sonic Destruction. It's literally the funniest piece of crap I've ever read. The script for Sonic Destruction. That's what they said. Let me see here. Yeah. Sonic Destruction. That could literally be anything, and I believe it. I don't know. It's an AI-generated Sonic script. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, the AI scripts are pretty funny. Sometimes I don't even believe if they are or not, and the person who made it just claimed that. Uh, let's see. It's, it's done by the crew of Real Time Fan Dub on the Snapcube channel. It's a live reading of a script of a Sonic uh, film series. Generated by AI Dungeon with some other, you know, stuff. Uh, they did that um, for EFAB <laughs> at one point. They inputted a bunch of, like, keywords for EFAB and constructed a story. I think Metal read them out on his stream. Oh, that sounds great. They are rather amusing. Also, the guy who sent that said, like, I was just trolling. I hate you. <laughs> but okay. Ah, uh, gotcha. Um, you might need metal to translate, but Heinheimers das Ragenheimers. Oh, we know what that means. Thank you very much. What? Do, wait, what does that mean? It means high ranks in Germany. Oh, hello. Um, that Thai guy is more annoying than even your most disagreeable fo foils. Also high ranks. Hello. Um, I don't know if it's because we just didn't get too much of a dose of him, but I thought he was hilarious. Like, he's... He's like a parody of what he should actually be. Um, but I could totally see someone finding him annoying. That's fair. Look to the stars, COD developers. De uh, developers. New worlds, new wars, near future or far future tech, depending on the planetary positions and wealth. The possibilities are, dare I say, infinite. Um... We'll see what happens. The the FPS genre seems to go through phases, doesn't it? To some degree. But it's looks like we're not in a great phase right now. I guess we'll it'll just depend on on how does how does Halo fare. Yeah. Hopefully good. Hopefully good. Hopefully. Um, Passion of the Christ, directed by Zack Snyder. Could you imagine? <laughs> I would be tempted to see it, to be honest with you, just to just to see what he does. Uh, also, hi, Raggle Daggle. Hello. Goopies for the fringy boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do with those goopies what you wish to. Uh, Don Bless, kick J. Don Bless, indeed. More like gay past gameplay. Also, sorry about spelling. Them 12 hour shifts turn my brain into mush. That's alright. That's alright. I, I did say that. I said the age of consent should be 12 wings. Yeah, I remember catching one of them in his compilations. I was like, oh no. Really? Damn. Ugh. He says some weird he stuff. He saw some hot. Uh, 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 I don't even want to finish the thought. Wings is a weird guy. I mainly just like he it when he's raging at like, uh, yeah, Super Chats. 
saying he's a he's a dumbass. <laughs> I would still. What did you say about him, his IQ? Sixty <laughs> something, I think. Sixty eight. Mad. Why would you? That's oh. Shockingly low. It's, well, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's what we call dire. Like, I think that's mental <laughs> retardation. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think that's like sub, I don't know, 70, 75, something like that. Well, yeah, because the average is between 90 and 100. So you're going to say like subterranean, like he's he's not he's not worthy of being <laughs> above ground. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like like a mole intelligence. <laughs> it's like you must move underground if you can't qualify. You have to go to the camps underground. <laughs> We have valuable resources here on the surface that we can't spare for <laughs> two wings of redemption. Uh, In order to get back on the surface, you have to like, do a 1v1 Call of Duty match. How can he read with 68 IQ? I, I don't I guess you can. Uh, we have confirmation IQ, yeah. he can read. I guess he can read his chat, right? As it scrolls yeah. by. Yeah, yeah, he can yeah. definitely read. He has and trouble he also sometimes. knows so. how to read quit to menu as well. We know that yep. he can read true, that. True. I am impressed by the fact that there was a clip where he was, he he, uh, he quit to the menu and the PlayStation home screen as he was throwing the controller across the room. <laughs> like the second yeah, that, like, yeah. his hand he put in all the inputs necessary to get out. He has, he, he has <laughs> the, muscle his memory. muscle memory, yeah, for just yep. quitting to, you know, exiting the game. <laughs> <laughs> the zombies for well, Vanguard... I, I, Good. I've I've done that on accident once or twice, not because I was like angry. I just I've just been talking to people or carrying on a conversation and a little distracted. And in a game, I've just now. like boom 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 quit to desktop, and, I, and then I just suddenly realize that I've quit the game, and I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And then I have to open it back up again because like I was distracted or whatever. Eventually, you just quit a game so often, you just I don't know. It was it was weird. Uh, the zombies for Vanguard had to be outsourced to Treyarch late in dev cycle, I guess. Uh, oh. it's, it's so bad that even COD Zombies YouTubers hate it, and they love everything. Oh no! <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's unfortunate. I, uh, I, I don't know what the zombie scene is like these days, but it, it was interesting because I did rewatch the uh, Down the Rabbit Hole for uh, Wings, and... Having, like, when they have Syndicate guest on their podcast, and he's talking about COD Zombies, like, in a way that's, like, a sport and super serious. And just, to me, it's just, like, a mode, you know? Like, it doesn't really yeah. register that way, but it's like, yeah, there's a, obviously a meta never and really stuff. I've played Zombies. Yeah. <clears throat> Much. I, I, I played it a whole bunch, I just never took it the way that Syndicate was talking about it, and I guess it's just something I didn't care to uh, even yeah, look into. Yeah, it was into. never really for me. It wasn't for me. Uh, introduce my friend to Resident Evil 4 today. He had a great time. Hope all is well with you lot and high ranks. Hello. Glad he liked it. Yeah, that's the correct response. That is the correct response. He would have been you can still killed be your otherwise. Friend. Question for Rax. What is your favorite food to eat for Thanksgiving dinner? Hmm. Potato. I really do like mashed potatoes. Um, I, I, I really like turkey. And the gravy on the turkey, as well as the potatoes. I, I like cranberry dressing, um, good broccoli and green beans, and you know stuff like that. Maybe buttered corn. There's a lot of good stuff on Thanksgiving. I think I'm 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 pretty carnivorous. I think I'm gonna go with uh, turkey or some. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the turkey on it because you don't have turkey much outside of Thanksgiving. Uh, sometimes, but generally. Turkey is what you have. You you always make sure to have it just traditionally. Mm -hmm. Get a big old bird and you carve it up, and you know everything's right with the world. Get some awesome gravy on there. I prefer brown gravy to white gravy, um, and it's it's really good. I I really like that. Yes, sir. Uh, also, hi Fringy, and of course, hi Rags. Hi. Hey. What do you guys call the safety handler handles in cars? My parents call it the Jesus bar because that's what you yell when you grab it. I call it the <laughs> oh crap. I, I call it the oh crap bar. I don't I have a name for it. I prefer Jesus bar. I think that's funny. <laughs> but, that's funny. Uh, yeah, I, I, we don't have a necessarily a name for that here either. Or even a one between like the family or whatever. Um... 
What do you Eva? Know about cars? You can't even drive. You don't even have a license. Hey, I'm not a grown-up. That's true. One day we'll teach you all about automobiles. Automobile. Yeah, we can have Captain <laughs> Nemo tell you about automobiles. Uh, EFAP movies, musical, multi-special, cats, sound of music, etc. Heck, even throw in once more with feeling. No, 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 no. You're no, watching no, no. Cats right next. I guess the old one that's supposed to be good. I don't know if it is or not. I don't even know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, but but new cats back to back with the sound of music sounds very that's cruel. Jeez, like, that's that's a that's a whiplash right there. <laughs> Uh, can confirm, embrace the suck as a real military phrase. Fieldwork sucks sometimes, and you can't escape it, so you might as well embrace it. I I guess I just would have thought the the military would come up with something else. You know, because like Semper Fi well, is like really cool. The infantrymen would come up with something more clever. Well, just like you know, it was Fubar or Semper um... Fi. Right? These are cool. Or at least they sound well, cooler than him. Yeah, but Semper Fi is more equivalent to like the wins or something. It's the uh. It's just it's like the, the slogan as motto. opposed to yeah. where uh what is it when you're saying like it's it's bullshit or something what bs damn it no what are you no, I'm, I'm trying to think because uh, i know oscar mike means on the move right um oh ah no, uh, it's it's a combination Stay of frosty. names but it, no 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 it's a combination of names that is an insult like oh we are you total this is totally charlie tango or something like that yeah something like that but but, uh... I do not know what you are... I, uh, damn no, it, I don't know. Damn it. I really don't Sna know. Somebody saying Snafu. Snafu? Uh, well, people saying Fubar, you would... I assume you're not yeah, referencing... Yeah, Fubar already said that one. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's something else. Um, oh my... Oh, I'm very upset that I can't figure out what it is, because I know it. Damn it! Hassan. It is something. In the, it is, yeah, it's something in the NATO lang, uh, alphabet. It's something in that alphabet. Damn it! Well, um, yeah. Apparently, I'll figure it's, it uh, out eventually. But apparently, there's a real one. I just didn't know that. Interesting. Embrace the suck. Um, without knowing that, just came across as really lame dialogue. But, like, not enough that I would be that critical yeah. of a game just for that. Not even close. There's, there's way more problems with the game, don't worry. But, uh, interesting to know. Timothy Charmander is a good actor, but I want movies to stop trying to convince me a 6 foot 1, 115 pound dude is an action star. What if it's a sci-fi fantasy? He could be that. Could he not? Yeah. He's doing his little floompy flampy with, you know, you can do that even if you're a thin man. People say I'm Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, which I guess is what the fuck, but that is not the one I was thinking of. Um, I don't mean to be rude, but Fringy left his fly open. Oh. Oh, I didn't. I don't know, would like, they lie? I'm a like a dissection? Well, I'm not wearing pants that have a fly on them, so... Me neither. Yeah. Me neither. I'm in my no? comfy are pants. Are you wearing... What are you wearing in Welshland? Are you, do you wear kilts? <laughs> they wear kilts in Scotland. I think at where? At where? Island. Oh, so just no answer then. What do you wear? What do you? No, Rags asked no, you I... something. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, where, 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 where do they wear kilts? In Scotland. All right. I suppose they do wear them there. Yeah. There you go. Uh, as for me, I'm just wearing shorts. Which is pretty funny because we're in the How cold. How hot is it over there? We're in the cold part of with. Well, it's eight degrees Celsius Before right or after now. Before <laughs> Yeah, there it is. This is the thing. People in my area are already getting very fucking freezing, and I'm just like, ah, oh, we're finally almost at a reasonable temperature. That's <laughs> what it's like when you're an eldritch creature. Well, see, I guess. It's, it's getting hot here now, and that's concerning me. Good luck, Fringy. Chilly here. I believe in you. Yeah. Chilla. Uh, Rags, thoughts on Brandon? I love that, uh, sorry, I love that guy. Anytime I hear his name, I just have to cheer him on. Oh, oh right, yeah. I get it. 
Absolutely, yeah. Let's go, Brandon. For Good a second job. there, I was like, great work. Hey, who the fuck is Brandon? <laughs> I was like, what's, what's this guy? I, don't go? I was like, oh, <laughs> fuck, yeah, the beam. Dance, long man, dance. Also, high ranks. Hello. Uh, Uwe Boll could have made a better Star Wars trilogy than Disney is something I thought I would, uh, I've thought about often. I think he would. Uh, genuinely answering. I think it would be bad, but it would be better than what we got. Uh, he and probably... what a crazy world that is. He probably would have had Luke, you know, save them all. <laughs> Do something heroic. He probably, he would, probably have... would have had Luke, Luke be a hero or something <laughs> stupid like that. You know? Han would have... Something crazy and outlandish. Yeah, absolutely nuts. Who knows what the limits would be at that point. Uh, so does the Rags plushie come with an AR-15 accessory? Um, I... no, accessories are not included, unfortunately. Accessories are sold separately. I wonder if they'd let you do that. I wonder if maybe they're not allowed to do guns. Even, like, fluffy guns. <laughs> <laughs> I'd assume they're not allowed to. Fluffy guns. Come on, they're floofy. It's gotta be okay. Um, let's go Brandon. Also, hire Rags, Mola, and Fringy. Hello. Hello. Yo. Screw Mary, Unalive, Movie Bob, Wings of Redemption, and Boogie. Also high rugs. Oh, man. Oh, man. So Boogie, Wings of Redemption, and... I don't want to marry any of these fucking people. And I love that and that's where my mind went Mary? first. It's it's the trio of failure. It's the oh. Wings of Redemption, Movie Bob, and Boogie. Oh, uh, we gotta kill Movie Bob. What? <laughs> We got it. He's too Rags, evil. Rags, there's a lot of misery to be put out of here, okay? Like, I don't know that you could just choose it like that. He might even be the healthiest of the three. It's not about that. It's about it's the good for the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Look, like, Wings is too stupid to do anything, right? <laughs> His and arm Boogie's is just, limited. Boogie's just pathetic. But Movie Bob is a force of evil. He will erase 75% of life on Earth if he gets <laughs> he a will. chance. So we have to destroy Movie Bob. It's the right thing to do. And well, I'm gonna. How are you answering those last I'm... two? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'd marry what's Wigs before it's, Boogie. It's like, what's the price? I honestly you think the what? Wigs is like a more I, genuine I think I'd marry person. Wigs. I, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I get I a lot more like... like... honesty out of Wigs uh, Maybe, than I would. But, but what? Like, imagine living with him. I think that l actually living. Do you with have Boogie? to live with who you marry? <laughs> Can we just be married? Did I just so stay just away from him? Like, straight away. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna dismal straight away. I think I think I'm gonna. Well, it's biting the bullet either way. I think I'm gonna marry Boogie. He definitely I has the better living situation. He, uh, yeah, he definitely has a better living situation, and we know that he at least has some friends that like come over and stuff. They might be. And paid. sometimes he can even go outside for a little bit, and he's got a new car, so that's great. <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I'm Marion Boogie, and I, then we can go to the next question. Yeah, I think the, the answer has become very clear. Um, so anyway, recently started Buffy, I'm at the beginning of Season 3, and I'm wondering if you have an optimal viewing order once the spin-off starts. So if you search Google for it, you'll find a decent list. I do plan within the next year to put together something because I'm gonna need it for other things I'm gonna be doing and um, I'll just make that available somewhere and then have it linkable um, but yeah it can get a little bit complicated because Buffy seasons four five six and seven happen at the same time as Angel seasons one two three four and so um, and it's not as simple as you watch one than the other it's it's like they change because different events happen at different times it, it's it's complex and it's kind of impressive that they even did it at all um, quandary for you. If you take the red pill, you spend the rest of your lives trying to save movies and media, maybe succeed someday. Take the blue pill. You're no longer able to view films and games in any way objectively, but, you, oh, it just says objectively, uh, but you will always like the new media slash movies uh, and be happy. And the first pill is what again? Uh, basically what we do now. <laughs> like... Oh, I'll, I'll take what I do now. Yeah, same here. Yeah, so... It ain't worth it. it. This answer's easy for me because, um... 
I don't... So, like, the, the meaning I draw out of the content I... Like, the media I watch, which I... Like, the... All the best stuff I've ever consumed, I consider very important, like, uh, in lots of different ways, but certainly thoroughly meaningful. That's all lost if I like everything. I suppose you could argue I would feel as though all of it's meaningful, but I like being able to distinguish a difference and understand why some things are much more meaningful and some things are just kind of silly and shit. Um, so, I, like, I... You know, knowing those two are possibilities for myself, I would not want to choose the world where I just like everything. Because, uh, fuck, you wouldn't even have taste at that point, you know? I don't mean like that in terms of you'd have bad taste, I mean you just wouldn't have taste, everything's the same. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, Lato fellow fraggot... Oh, right. Gotta watch DSP livestream. I like the idea that there are some people who are just, like, so invested in DSP that they have to... Uh... They have to give up watching any other anything else to catch his streams. It's fair. Or... Or they just want to go there, like, gawking at an animal in a zoo, you know? Like a gorilla. You're like, oh, wow, there it is. I've, I've, I've read so much, I've seen so much about them, but there it is mm, in the yeah. flesh, so to speak. I'm here in its, its natural habitat. It's like I'm inside the pen with it. Oh, good art does for people who enjoy it what bad art can never do for those who enjoy it. That's an interesting quote. I don't know who said it. While the dislike bar is hidden, it's still visible by viewers using dark magic. E.g. this stream has uh, 40 dislikes, 37 at the time of Super Chat. Also high regs. Hello. If there's a back end... here to dislike it. There's a back-end way to actually still view the amount of dislikes. That is pretty funny. Like a like some kind of script or, or a, you know, like inspect element shit. Like, if it's that simple, it's like, nice, YouTube. You fixed it. Um, but if that is true, I imagine a lot of people will get extensions just for that. On Solo and Kyle Rittenhouse both shot first and lived. Hey, yo. Well, Han Solo didn't quite live if you consider the sequels, but he did come back as a memory. Or whatever the fuck that was. To absolve his killer of, uh, <laughs> No, 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 no. Of his guilt. Kyle. Kylo. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle Kylo. Ren. Kyle Ben. Uh, Kylo is. In, that's Kylo forgiving himself. Mm -hmm. And he conjured up the image of Han Solo to do it. <laughs> Han Solo had yeah. nothing to do with it. Again, I love the idea of f actual Force Ghost Han Solo off to the side watching it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I'm watching Kylo talking to himself and saying, Thanks, Dad. Thanks for your forgiveness. And he's just like, I don't forgive you. Don't. You're, You're a piece You're of a shit. Dick. I wish you were never born. <laughs> you ruined literally everything. Um. Writer slash journalist didn't like the basic story of the director's vision of Nomad's Land. Uh, it missed most of the context of the article. Was it all that? I haven't seen it. I don't know if you nah, guys have. Or... No. Nah. Nope. I'm afraid I can't say anything about it, really. Um, I didn't like the reason shown in Civil War as to why Tony wanted to sign the Accords. He already had PTSD issues. It was perfect. Good film, though. What do you, I, what do you it's, mean? it's it multiple things all at once, oh, no. but yeah. It's this, it's that do criticism I've heard before this? where they're like, I can't remember who it was. It could have been YMS or ER or someone else I was talking to. I really can't remember, but someone said, I thought it was dumb that like some random woman just meets up with Tony and gives him all the motivation to sign the Accords right before that becomes he like a major motivation. issue. motivation. He so, had already done it. It's, it's baffling to me that this criticism comes up, because it's like, yeah, if that never happened, he's signing the Accords. Yeah. That's just a very human... Because already knew about them. Yeah. Because like, some people are like, well then, why did he use it as an argument to the people in the thing? It's just like, that's just one of many people's lives it's, they've it's, destroyed. It's a good argument. Yeah. Whether or not you've already made up your mind before another argument. It's like, well, there's another reason why we and should be doing this. her speech to him sums up the responsibility angle in the whole film, and I fucking love it. It's, um, my son is dead, and it's your fault. Like, who's gonna avenge him? It's just, it just it's just left on its own, because it's like, yeah, what the fuck do you do with that? 
Um, and Tony yeah. knows he's responsible for many people's deaths because of the choices he's made. And there's no responsibility, there's no accountability. It's just, well, I fucked up. I guess we move on. And so Tony is it's too much. Um, I would say the Accords are done for Tony the second Age of Ultron's done. Yeah, definitely. And they're called the Sokovia Accords. So... Her having said that to him is not why he signs the Accords, and I don't know why people no. assume he, uh, that is the reason, but... I mean, if you watch the scene, he's basically just PTSD-ridden already. Uh, yeah. And then she comes in. Um, I think we said it before, I can't remember if you feel this way too, but like, Civil War is my favorite Tony Stark film. Uh, I think that there, there is no other choice, really. Iron Man 1 is the Maybe Iron Man pick. 1 or Avengers. I think they're fair picks. I just Civil War. He's so complex at that point, and uh, yeah, he's yeah. gone through a lot. You see him in a lot of different scenarios, a lot of a lot of different states of mind. And I fucking love the way that we end up pitting him against Cap uh, in more yeah. ways than one. Um, now I have my own adorable Rags plushie. I can say hi to hey. you any time of day or night. Thanks for keeping oh, me company. Yeah. EFAP crew, truly, oh, and hi, Rags. Oh, thank you very much, and hello. Yeah, man, uh, there'll be another Longman on the way, potentially. I, I, I'm not going to assume everybody bought the both of them. Let's leave them alone, you know, it's pretty fucked up. But, uh, yeah. more, potentially, along the way as well. Who knows? Uh, I said on Real BBC that I was revisiting Ben 10 Classic, and I finished it and loved it subjectively, but objectively, it relies on con contrivance after Season 1. Um, fair enough. Like, I, 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 don't I know, know the... About ben 10. Well, I, I, I can... Un, I know a lot of people would probably be like, Ben 10? It's like, well, I mean, you know, this, this all applies to children's content and teenage content and then adult content. Like, it, it, storytelling's all... it's all the same thing. Hence why we like to appreciate the really well-executed children's stuff, too. And so, yeah, I have not seen Ben 10, but I guess post-season 1, uh, it may rely on contrivance a bit. And that's what I hear. I don't know. Um, Fringy, idiot in military speak is usually called uh, 1 Delta 10 Tango, or idiot, sp spelled out. Oh, oh high rags. okay. I didn't Hello. Know that. That's kind of interesting. I didn't know that. That sounds like um, a standard interaction in like a military movie. Like a rookie comes in, they're like, "He's a real one Delta Ten Tango." The, the guy's like, "I know yeah. what that means," and then they all go, "You think you're hot shit?" And then he proves himself yeah. later because oh, that's what stories I, do. I remember it. Whiskey Delta, weak dick. <laughs> I thought of that in terms of like weak as in days, weeks, like. He's not it's like a weak me. Dick. I am. I have very That's strong. Right. Yeah, whiskey delta, weak very dick. powerful. Large muscles on pee pee. <laughs> My um, pee pee is uncompared. And uh, oh, I think there was another one. Uh, yeah, no, that's yeah, that was the one. Uh, thanks to Brandon, Thanksgiving will be the suck. Uh, I, I don't know how much lockdown stuff is still in America. It's always It feels like it's always different in all the different places yeah. we're in. Well, it depends where you are, right? Different yeah. states. Uh, Tales from PH. A 50-foot bronze globe in the middle of SMMOA shopping mall got stolen via a helicopter in between 1 and 2 a.m. and no one noticed till the morning. <laughs> wow. 50-foot bronze globe. <laughs> Fucking hell. That Nobody saw that flight through the air. Dude, that's huge. Like, the... How the hell is wow. that? Wow. So wow. That, yeah, that's they cool. just lift that right out, huh? That's that's hilarious, though. That is really Dude, that's one that's of those things cool. where if you discover it's happened, you just, you can't be mad at the people who did it because you're so impressed. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're like, <laughs> It's just what? really funny. <laughs> Coming in and not, especially if you work there and that thing's there every day and you walk in and it's just gone one day. Yeah, and you just like, it takes you a second to register that it's yeah. not there. Like, wait a second, how come I can see across the... Yeah. What, yeah. Uh, wait. Wait, what was what? that? Wait a minute. 
There's just an empty little like boltings or whatever where it was attached. They're just this just in there like the little stabilizers at the bottom and nothing there. You can picture there'd be a janitor character who never notices anything and he's just cleaning around it and hasn't picked it up yet. <laughs> no, he's he's cleaning around it as the theft is happening. <laughs> he just doesn't even know. He's just sweeping. He's got his little headset on or whatever, sweeping and mopping yeah, and slowly but surely. Yeah, slowly but surely yeah. the cloak looks up behind him and disappears. The bastard probably listens to Aoife. Um, yeah, and like he slightly he hears a noise and he's like, "You kids better not be here once we close." I like the janitor guy. Chill. It's all right. He's I nice. do as well. Yeah. He does his job, you know. I get. Yes, the globe got stolen under his watch, but I mean, we all make mistakes. And what was he gonna do? Oh, well, what was he gonna do? He, <laughs> hop on like the, the guy. I like the idea that the guy who's helicoptering it out is just like, I'm still in this statue and you can't stop me. It's just like, Willie hears you. Willie don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you go right ahead. <laughs> Willie's got so many great jokes in The Simpsons. We have to kill movie Bob. Rags, 11, 13, 21. <laughs> Wait, you got the date. You do it the, uh, the non-American way. 13, 11, 21, yeah. Yeah, you're doing it the stupid way. It's all confusing when you do it that way. We it hate it. It doesn't make sense to do month, day, year. I'm sorry. It's honestly the worst thing in America did. Day, month, year. You please. should apologize, Rags. Just for that. Nah. It's all good. You say that, but I don't feel it. It's alright. If Mola. If Mola frags and ringy. Uh, wait, no, that's not even- that's just me saying it wrong. If Mola, Rags, and Fringy <laughs> all scratch each other's backs, we could call it the Trinity of Scritches. Hi, Rags. <laughs> I guess we could. Hello to you. What, uh, a, what a line. What a line, what a film. Southpaw really thinks Eternals is 5 or 6 out of 10. Oh, I mean, that's <laughs> still, like, too high, but... Where'd the nine come from then? Was it a troll? Or? Yeah, well, I... I, I don't... What, what do you mean? Like, so he said it was a nine, but he didn't mean it. I don't know. It, it was... Okay, I mean, that's... Like, it, it was great. All right. I, it was well, great. Because that's nine... That's confusing. I don't even... <laughs> I mean, it's... Or, under Sopa's new enlightened system, is a five or a six great now? Oh, James said the nine was so, subjective. I'm guessing he's saying oh. it's a five or six for consistency, which I still think is pretty generous. I, still, that's that's very high. Um, Jeez. But I, I honestly, I'd still be I, curious about the nine for subjective. Yeah, but... it's like, what did you, what did you like so much about it? I do not know. Yeah. Thanks again, Mola slash Fringy, for advice you gave me. My channel has uh, no rags advice. Sorry, rags. I guess he's must have been on <laughs> Fringy stream right. that this happened. I don't know. Uh, my channel has 384 subs in just over two months, and it's been fun. Shameless plug, check out Baffled Buffoon. All right. Keep on trucking along, dude. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The first 384 are the hardest. Wow. What about the yeah, third <laughs> and 384? Are they harder or less harder than the second? Uh, you know what? Sometimes it's up to you. Oh, that's beautiful. Sometimes. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, I'm just, uh... Just a Have you ever thought of putting your quotes in frames? Just put them all around you in your doghouse you... kennel thing. That almost just everywhere on the wall. Every every yeah. square inch of the wall is portraits in my own quotes. That feels <laughs> like that feels like I don't even know what show I'd put that in as a joke, but just a character where they talk to you. And you say like, well, "Oh, what I you just like said was kind of interesting," and then they just write it down and get a frame and then put it on their wall, and you're like, "Wow, you." Oh, dude, I I think you could push it even further. Maybe it's a film where it's like. Oh, I'm a big fan of this writer. Oh, and I managed to get a date with them. Wow. And then you go to their house and it's just pictures of them and frames of them and, and their quotes. It's like, oh, that's... That's cool. You, now I'm just, thinking, like, you know. could we now refine it into, like, more of a serious thing with his quotes? That they oh. say, like, oh, who said this? Because it's not credited. And then they just go, a genius. And you're like, yeah, okay. Yeah. And then later on you find out it's his own quotes or something. And then, then she wakes up one night because I keep dating and she finds out that he's tattooed a picture of himself onto her. 
Oh. <laughs> he's just insane and he loves himself so much that he has to see himself and everybody make it into a horror movie it starts off kind of funny but then as you just like oh he's just unhinged <laughs> he's like actually unhinged yeah it could be uh it could be a blumhouse thing yes. it's called like me, myself and i or something like that <laughs> me myself and i <laughs> or maybe he sees himself everywhere and he just doesn't know it like that's his pov and it's driving him insane because all he sees is himself well, there you go. We got a few genres genres you can use. Uh, whoever's out there with this incredible idea, because I know it's incredible. But you know, me and Rags are free. We're just not going to use it. So you go ahead. Go you for go it. Right go ahead. with our classic. Put us in the credits. Say um, in memory of or something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Love scratches for the good boy. You know, <laughs> just having that yeah, at the yeah. end. Randomly, just a high rags at the end of the credits. Or even better, at a random point in the film, have one of the actors turn to the camera. Hi, Rags. Turn back, and you just carry on with the scene as if nothing happened. And no one knows why that happened in narrative, but we'll know. We'll know. Or maybe it could be like, a, like an Easter egg. One of the quotes on the wall. That <laughs> just as high rags. rags. Um, the... The leave piece of paper with a middle finger drawn on it where the globe was. Oh, they left a piece of paper with a middle finger drawn on it where the globe was. That's fucking wonderful. Wow, um, that seems small. I wonder if there's enough information from that that they could determine who did it. Like a really good detective. Yeah, it looks like, so we're looking for an artist. It's like signed. He's like, man. They're really just running in these days. A pen. Hmm. But what if it's a specific kind of paper made from luxury tree? Luxury tree. Luxury tree, yeah. Mm hmm. I want my characters to kill in indirect ways, like burning down someone's house with them in it. Zack Snyder logic. <laughs> <laughs> Is it indirect when you fucking land your car on someone's face? I don't know. Is it indirect when you shoot the pet, like the flamethrower <laughs> to blow them up? Oh yeah, wasn't didn't didn't did, was it Colin that tried to argue that was indirect? I think someone said it was indirect. Yeah. Like okay. <laughs> I don't know. At that point, I'm just like, you know, we'll just agree to disagree. That's fine. Um, Kit Kat or Maltesers? Ah, uh, I like Kit Kat more than Maltesers. I think I'm gonna go with Kit Kat. Yeah. What's a Maltese? It's mm. like a little bowl thing and chocolate. Malteser. And um Maltese. Yeah. Give it give it the old Google. Um it's probably gonna do better than our explanation of it. Yeah. Uh oh Maltesers. Um Oh, they're kind of like um what are those? Just they look like they're similar to Oh, what are they called? There's like an American equivalent of them. It looks like I forget. I forget what they're called. Whoppers. Oh, whoppers. Whoppers. Um, they. Oh, so basically, if they're whop, still. Ooh, that's tough. Cause I I like Kit Kats unless I'm with four or more people. It's a little joke I threw in there. I I uh, I, 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 I got I, it. I, I, I figured it out. Yeah. 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 Um. So <laughs> I think we might. Ooh, man, that's a tough one. I think I might go with Kit Kats. But I might get more out of the Maltesers in terms of how long I could eat them. You know, kind of suck on them for a while and get to the you know, stuff inside. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've, I, I think Maltesers are fine. I've never been a huge fan, but Kit Kats, I, I do like those. Yeah, I think I like... I think I'll go with Kit Kats. I really do like Kit Kats. They're great. Yeah, they're, mm -hmm. they're cool. Because there's not a song for, uh, like, break me off a piece of that Malteser. Like, you don't really, because it would be hard. It'd be like a coconut. How do you, like, break off a piece of a Malteser? It's like a little tiny chocolate Cutting ball. Cutting off with a knife. Yeah, you'd have to have a knife, because you can't just, like, yeah. 
control your fingers without and a And that'll be really awkward, like, if you're out yeah. in a public setting and you're just walking around with a knife in your hand just in case you want to share some Maltesers. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Can't deny when these elements the when choosing. So here's a question. What do you think would win in a fight? The Incredible Hulk or the Incredible Hulk's weight in bees? Uh, I feel like it's got to be Hulk, right? Because the bees can't <laughs> penetrate us. <laughs> How do you not appreciate it? It's a great question. It, it's, yeah, it's really funny, but uh, I already saw it before, so I got my laughs in already. Um, I feel like Hulk's going to win that because the bees can't penetrate. Uh, and even skin, if they so... could, it'll make him angrier and stronger, so... Well, I think that's the big thing. That is a lot of bees. A lot of bees, but... He's Hulk, gonna crush them all with his like, hands. He's gonna... And, and then he does a sonic boom with his clap, and it kills all yeah, of them. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and if he's losing, he'll just jump away, and the bees won't be able to catch up. Yeah, he does like a ground pound and commits pesticide. Nice. So yeah, easy. Answered that in an instant. Not even hard, bro. Wow, 384 subs. That's a lot of old phones on Wi-Fi. I think they, um... Don't they, like, put real big effort now into, like, killing any accounts that aren't real? I think real? so, yeah. It still makes um, me wonder about Boogie, but... <laughs> okay, I don't know. I think Boogie's thing is that a lot of people will subscribe, but nobody watches him. Like, he's just got a lot of people who subscribe to him from in the past who've never unsubbed. Like I said, man, I'm pretty sure we're in a YouTube culture where people aren't using the sub box anywhere near as much as they're using recommended. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's... I use my sub box for sure. I, I use them both. My sub box. I use them both. I often find that I see that someone I like has uploaded through recommended, because I'm like, oh fuck, I haven't well, checked yeah, my YouTube, sub box in a while. YouTube would recommend... I mean, you go to the recommend page before you go to the sub box. Like, recommend is the default page. I don't... I, I live life cooler than that for you. My default page is the sub box. Ah, uh, I see. Um, but I, just, I watch a lot of YouTube here and there, and so I end up looking at that recommended, and it's all sexy with its, hey, look, this person released this, and I'm like, oh boy. Mm -hmm. A floor for Civil War. I love the movie, by the way. Iron Man does very little when Cap is beating his helmet off with the shield, like blasting him off or evading. When you get that tight That's in right the fight. At the end. Yeah, you, all you need for the. So this is the thing. As a writer. Right, you can have everything happen at that point in terms of the little things, and so when Cap like initially strikes him with the shield, I think that all you have to argue is that Tony is fucking that shocked really, as hell right now. Yeah, and uh, that really screwed him up. And if you remember when he's thrown, he goes and his like neck hits the back of the stone, and so I think we're supposed to take that as him being like staggered for a moment. Yep. Um. And so, yeah, all you need to believe is that he's staggered for a moment, and then he gets freaked out when he thinks the Cap is about to kill him. Which, um, makes him, you know, try to defend his face. Like, it's it's happened so quickly that I think it's he's got plenty of space. Yeah. yeah. What was the thing we were covering lately where we had to talk about how people panic, and so they make, like, there's so many decisions they can make. What was the thing? I can't remember what that was, the context of people was it, panic. Was it Squid Game? Um, Train to Busan? Yeah, maybe. I think it was both. Train to Busan, because um, the guy we covered was saying game stuff game. about people not doing oh, things fast yeah, enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. The guy, like, why are you waiting there? It's like, because he's shocked. Yeah, like, <laughs> you have to appreciate... This is the thing, maybe we need to do more of this, because it seems like some people have taken the wrong message from us. It's like, human nature is fucking complicated. Um, yeah. You get access to a lot of different results when a human is put into, like, crazy levels of stress. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, like that fight with Cap is uh, very well done in terms of trying to have it be believable that Cap and Bucky could defeat Iron Man, because that is a fucking hard thing to make happen. Yep. And it's a shame as well because um, the kind of praise I have for the choreography in that fight, I like. I think when I first saw it, I was just like, it's so cool. We're still nailing the fights in the MCU. These days, like, I fucking am sad whenever a fight shows up, because I'm just like, here we go. A bunch of bullshit's gonna happen that won't make any sense yeah. at all. Not to mention, like, fucking 
The shit with Shang-Chi defeating the dragon. It's just like, okay. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> what, 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 I guess you can just do this, yeah. <laughs> this is just something you can do. It's like, okay. Uh, to quote Southpaw, he liked the characters, the power consistency was up there with Into the Spider-Verse, found the central conflict of the story compelling, and the antagonists were excellent, barring the Alpha Deviant. Okay. Antagonist being, um, Icarus, I guess? Is I that right? I guess it would have to be, because if you're barring the Deviant, because he, yeah, I, I don't know who else it would be then, the Celestials? But, okay, okay alright. Yeah, whatever you say. Uh, Rags wasn't on that stream. Hi, Rags. Mean no harm. I mean no harm. Hi! Wait, which one? What were we referencing just now that you weren't on? Rags has been on everything. The last one Rags wasn't on was the uh, Snyder Cut one, wasn't it? Referencing... Hmm. Speaking of Train to Busan, thanks again for covering it. Best damn movie I've seen in a few years. It's fucking great, isn't it? It's, it's a fucking engaging yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Um, The one with channel advice? Oh, yeah, well, I assume it might have been the rags, wasn't it? That's that's fine, I was just joking. Um, I'm honestly surprised it took Mola so long to see Train to Busan, but I'm glad you loved it. I There's loads of stuff I still haven't seen. I'm just not as bad as Jay when it comes to this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, <laughs> like, but yes, there's, uh, there's still plenty I haven't seen. But yes, I, I could. There's still plenty of really great stuff, and that's the thing I think I was saying to you, Fringy. It's just like it would be both kind of creepy, I guess, but really awesome if a, if an algorithm could be like, I know out of all the movies that exist, you will love these 503. I'm like, oh, I'd like that they're right, and I just every one I watch, yeah. I fall fully in love with it. Be like that'd be. It'll make you question some stuff, I think, at that point, wouldn't it? Um, yeah. But uh, I don't know if, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a heady thing Yes, it is. About. Um, and that's it, gentlemen. We have caught up with today's Ooh. Super Chats at nine right. and a half hours, which I think <laughs> is more than enough I need food. for us to say goodbye. Yeah, um, what an EFAB. Feels like the we've probably, that's the most different amount of subjects to cover all in one thing. I feel like we covered yeah. a year's worth of things, so we'll see you guys in 2022. <laughs> yes, we will. Uh, thank you so much, everybody, for sending in the pictures of the plushies. Like I said, I'll keep trying to collect those ones. Um, and thanks, of course, for the donations. You'll see us again probably Wednesday, if nothing else is to interrupt such things. Um, and then I guess I'll be around on Real BBC slash Open B -b Bar and Free still doing his streaming here and there. Rags, are you yeah. doing any streaming of any kind anywhere? Hmm? No, not streaming. I don't think so, no. Well, you'll still find Rags on the old Eve happens. Anything else you guys want to say before we head out? No, nope, I'm hungry mm -hmm. and I'm tired. And I've said everything I need to say! Very ah! well! I'm here. Yeah, what a I fun I'm time. Open. I'll wrap it up. Thank you all for joining us. Fun. We Had shall great time. see you next time. Good night, everybody. Yeah, bye -bye. good night. Bye-bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> 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 Just turns into. <laughs> we all scream for ice cream, except we just start screaming obnoxiously loudly, chasing and I running the microphone like zombies too. after the ice cream man. We could we genuinely like the microphone. You have to peek it. We were like we fake something like one of our rooms had burst into, and then we like yeah. <laughs> try and window get smashed. Oh my god! Put down the gun! Like and you just like help me, rags, rags, help, rags, set up, rags. Yeah. The stream cuts you out. Pwned. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. bye.